Right. Uh, sure. How dare well, we being late? What a we cringe now lost fest. The pitches of milk, like actual pitches. Well, it's <laughs> just just like, bring us a picture, people. a picture of water, and it's like pictures of milk. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, I, didn't say, I didn't say pictures of milk. That was a misreading that is very amusing. But it I does amuse you. Are correct. Was a, was hey, I eat error. pictures of milk all the time. They're delicious. <laughs> just eat mm. pictures of milk. <laughs> delicious. <laughs> when Jay was eating the picture I mean, of the pizza. <laughs> and he's making fun of his son. Cardboard pizza. Mm. I Only guess uh, it'd be interesting. Cardboard? Imagine if there was... Yeah. Well, imagine if there was an economy in the future where, like, I don't know, we had some crazy tech where you could just print... I, I guess I don't know why I'm going with printing at this point. If we're in the future, <laughs> it's probably more impressive than that. But just prints out the food and it has the flavor, but all of the nutrients in the piece of. Why would it be a picture? Why wouldn't it just be like a block? Just, I like you. You sort out your own nutrients. like will building, and you're like, why would it be this way? <laughs> yeah. Mm. But nevertheless, so I can easily see that. Like just getting little blocks of food that have all the correct nutrients, but are flavored like things that actually taste good. Flavor mm -hmm. town. Is there really a slave? Around? I I don't know if that's a particularly marketable like name for the product. I think we'll have to try a little bit harder than that. Because um, you gotta upsell gray cubes that people would want to eat. Oh, remember our water? Yeah, cubes you'd discussion? have to really sell those. Yes, you'd. Um, I do remember the yeah, water cubes. I'm sure in the future they'll be able to flavor things that are very healthy for you, whatever you'd like. We'll have well, I mean, it's very good... Um, probably, you know, yeah. Or I we'll mean, have those... What the, um, the, the... From Star Trek, the food maker the things? Thing what are they called? Uh, I, uh, hmm. uh, they have a special name. Essentially, they just, they just make food. I'm pretty sure I know so the you... name. That's why it's frustrating me. That I yeah, yeah. Them. Like I should know what they are, but they like T Earl Grey, hot, and you tell the computer what you want, and it just makes it. Steak, uh, medium Replicators, rare. Replicators, you idiots. With, da, da, da. Replicator, yeah, something like that. God. So I, I don't. Well, I guess they. I guess they replicate. Yeah, they they replicate the food, which implies that it's not. Well, I guess it's how you take replicating. Like normally, when you say I'm going to replicate something, it means you're going to make like like a simulacrum of it, you know? Like it's not going to be the real thing. Well, I like guess to make an exact copy of whatever you know? it lacks probably isn't something that would because it sounds like you're saying like it would be missing something from the original. Well, I so I I don't know how the technology is supposed to work, or if they just don't explain it. Um, but maybe the machine has this huge, um, supply of just raw materials in the forms of like elements, carbon and all that sort of thing. And so when you tell it what to make, it gets all the materials and assembles them. So it could essentially make a steak out of just the raw particles and atoms and, it, like uh, the cells oxygen. and it assembles them together. Yeah, like it puts all those together without having to actually like grow the meat and to do it the natural way. It's the it's the same thing as meat, but it doesn't it isn't grown, it's assembled on a molecular level. I don't know. Well Star Trek is one of those you can't think about some of the technology too hard. Inertial dampeners and universal translator, because not every episode can be Darmok. And 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 on that note, welcome to EFAP one fifty eight. We're hello. We're talking about all kinds of chattings and topics and discussions, mm -hmm. but also a Rooney a video. Now the origin of this is uh, a good old friend of mine sent me a video and was like, "I like this channel." But they said some stuff in this video. That is, is very sus. And I was like, hmm. And I listened to some <laughs> of it, and I was like, what in the fucking world is this advice for writing? Holy shit. Um, cool. And, to further give context, I'm not a fan of you cannot do a thing because it's been done too many times before. 
even though I'd probably ca casually bring that up as something about stuff in history. Um, you know, like if someone like said, like, we can't just have the good guy beat the bad guy, that's too boring. it would be like, alright, I mean, yeah. you know, we should probably think about it a little bit more specifically than that. Like, instead of just being like, he's gotta do something different, because it's like a trope at this point that the good guy wins. <laughs> you'd be like, uh... Well, let, <laughs> let me ask you this. What is the difference between a trope and a cliché? That's not just a lot of definitions. <laughs> and, and should we sort of... I guess agree on the two if there is a meaningful difference. So, like definition wise, it might be worthwhile to figure that out. A trope, maybe if we talk defined about by Merriam-Webster, which I'm citing because that makes you sound smarter. Wait. A common <laughs> word. Uh, what? Neat. Go on. Oh, okay. Uh, a word <laughs> trope, a word or expression used in a figurative sense, and b a common or overused theme or device. So I like is. the first part of that. I like a yeah. commonly used one. I don't like overused. Because, right, because I think what does some overused mean that feels very uh And plus the good guy defeats the bad guy. Is that a trope? Sure. I like it though. <laughs> I don't think it's overused. Yeah, I don't think we have too many stories where the good guy beats the bad um... guy in the end. Cliche is a lot more qualitative. The, number one, a trite oh. phrase or expression. Number two, a hackneyed theme, characterization, or situation. Three, something such as a menu item that has become overly familiar or commonplace. So when a trope goes too far, it becomes a cliche. Well, it seems like actually, so cliche. So all all cliche means is not original, really. That's like that's. Like it's like I could see how a cheaply made or lazy movie would be full of cliches because they couldn't think of something mm -hmm. original or interesting themselves. But a very cool, um, like I bet if you went through The Father or pretty much basically any movie, you'll find tropes. You know, well, but I that's, think tropes that's are fine. unavoidable. Is it a trope that everybody speaks English? <laughs> like, is that yeah. a trope? Is yes, it a trope? It's enough of that. that is it a trope that, uh, like, films obey the 180 degree rule when it comes to, like, cinematography? Fringy, explain to the audience what the 180 degree rule is. Um, it's basically that if you've got, like, two characters talking to each other, um, you know, like, if you have one person framed on the left looking to the right, the person they're talking to needs to be on the right frame looking to the left. You never want to put the camera on the opposite side, otherwise people get confused. And like you can't tell where people are. We kind of yeah, talked and mentioned this with Train to Busan, in terms of um, a lot of the, did, a little bit. the camera often yeah. stands on one side of the train, one side, than the yeah. other. Mm. It's particularly important in a movie like that because of the directionality of that set. Yeah, you know, if exactly. you only have left and right to go, you really don't want to confuse them and go, "Wait, why are they going back?" Right. Exactly. Oh, that's the right way. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, okay. They're okay. Okay, they're not dumb. That's good. I guess. Reading these definitions, it feels like there is no difference between these two. It just means an overused thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like be... I like the idea that a cliche is when it's it, it's overused and unoriginal and almost like lazy. Like you're relying on a cliche, but tropes are just emergent almost. I feel like That's... cliches are almost emergent, right? Or um, I've... I think maybe with a cliche, you have to it, they're a little more specific, maybe. Um, like when a character is about like, w like when we're watching Batwoman or some show like that, well, there's no show for Batwoman. Um, and you watch it and right before characters say something, you roll your eyes and you say their lines before they do. Cause you know, it's coming. Cause it's just a cheap, obvious thing to say like that might be a cliche. Um, mm -hmm. or as tropes are more broad, I guess the problem, I, I don't know, if, if one definition says a common or overused theme or device, and the other one says a trite phrase or expression, trite means overused and unoriginal. So, like, it feels like they're basically the same thing, and that any distinction that we try to draw is just going to be, like, the one that we prefer, you know? I I enjoy my explanation. Yeah, sure, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm cool one. with that. I'm, uh... Um... I'm, like, cool with that as a definition. I guess it's just, um, interesting because you often hear cliché like, I feel like both of them are tinged with negativity at this point. Like, they're, they're not yeah. neutral terms, they're negative Trope, terms. 
trope more unfairly so, I would say, by my definition. I think um, trope is uh, typically negative when it seems like it's actually, it just means common. So, like, for mm. instance, is it a trope to say, hi, how are you? Like, is that a trope instead of just saying hi or how are you or any yeah, other number of trope? Yeah. Like the trope of small talk, how's the weather? And that sort yeah. of thing. Um, important to note, though, this uh, this gets brought up every once in a while. Um, tropes are descriptive, not prescriptive. Absolutely. They, things things are tropes because they pop up a lot. They do not pop up a lot because they are tropes. No, they're important definitely distinction. They're definitely descriptive. I guess I'm just... Now, you can make a film. You can if you want to. Now, may oh, maybe that is the difference, right? They're going to say this. That's a cliche. That's what people say, you know? Maybe you right. can use that a little in the other way, whereas tropes are more... They just, they just sort of tend to happen in storytelling. And maybe cliches are more... Uh, a little well, bit more... Maybe I guess... Uh, th what you just said is probably like the broad topic when it comes to tropes and cliches in storytelling is that you're gonna have them probably because like all creative work is derived from like something that came before like it's 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 kind of impossible not to write something that is not in some part influenced by something that came before it which is part of the reason why there are tropes in the first place, right? Like, people get inspired by a story that they like, and then they do something similar. They get inspired by, you know, someone else gets inspired by their story, and then it becomes similar. And so, like, it just becomes just a common part of, like, is the three-act structure a trope? Is it, you know, is, um, like, uh, uh, is in media res a trope? Is, I don't know, like a linear story that starts at the beginning, where it begins and then ends at the end. Like, is that a trope at this point? Now, uh, um, in media, in medias res means in in the midst of things, or in the middle of yes. things. So that's when a story like begins, that. just sort of in, in the middle of stuff occurring. You don't really yeah. get much. I don't know why you would say no yeah. fringy dot dot dot. I'm, I, do, I'm. This is a hype. Like, I'm not actually asking. Like, it's it's a topic. Um. <clears throat> uh i guess it's just um i think that um like trope and cliche get thrown around a lot and i feel like we probably worth like diving into it a bit more than that and then just saying that's a trope don't do that yeah there are I think plenty of they're... tropes that i love i think they're used interchangeably a lot to me the line uh is between writing out of laziness and writing because you're reflecting some truism that can be reflected throughout history in patterns of behavior. And uh, I don't know which is a trope, which is a cliche. Um, yeah. I'm inclined to say that the cliche is the lazy one. And the Seems trope like adheres that. more to the truisms that you can I guess it's throughout history. Like, it's more hmm. okay. Like, if, if, if you said this, this is a trope in the movie, I'd be like, okay, you know, like, tell me more. If you said, this is, this, this movie is really cliched, I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm well, less. As opposed I'm, to, this movie is very tropey. Then <laughs> you'd be like, very tropey movie. Hey, it's tro awesome. Plastic. I'm excited. It's, tropular. It, it's tropical. I guess it's funny to think about because <laughs> it's tropical. It's tropical. <laughs> I think it's, it's interesting, I guess, um, because. I find that lately I'm starting to get a little bit like frustrated with um almost this unwillingness to do straightforward simple stories anymore, you know? Like yeah. it's got to like, be yeah. different to be different. Yeah. I'm not like well, all those other writers. Well, it's it's kind of like um like the, is the cuz someone could say at this point like, in fact I'm pretty sure it would be the hero's journey is like a trope it, it is just a, it is a common recurring storytelling, um, device, but, mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't see that that is a good reason to not do it, like, because, because usually a lot of the, the, the advice follows, right, like, this is a trope, so avoid it, or change it, or don't, don't do that, um, but, I mean, there's a lot of things that are just recurring elements of storytelling because they typically tend to work. They just um, work, right. Tropes, yeah. you know? If, if you see, if you feel like you, if everything's justified, 
generally it's going to be good as long as it all makes sense. Well, yeah, it's yeah. just you ask the question of why is it that the hero's journey is often a is a very recurring um storytelling device like why do a lot of stories adhere to the three act structure why do uh, a lot of stories have it that there's like the second act low point and then the hero comes back and then wins at the end of the day it's just like a i don't just because something is common doesn't mean that you can ascribe any like level of quality to it just because something happens a lot it feels like um we need to go further than that and any explanation we have for why you should avoid it will not come from because it be it's common, but just that it's not a good choice. Right. Um, yeah, to me, like that, that three act structure is the most effective formula for an emotional catharsis. And to deviate from that, it, you're just going to get a lesser effect. So I think you can very, deviate. It's a broad just, structure, um, too. It is so a broad structure. So, yeah. There's so much freedom to operate within that skeleton. Yes. I was thinking about a lot of operations take place in a skeleton, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm. I was thinking about one that I don't even know if you call it a trope or a cliche, but um, something you want as a writer a lot of the time when you have a you're building up your villain and your hero at the same time, you want to have them talk to each other before any kind of final confrontation. You're like, oh, typically, we are not so different, you and I. (laughs) You want to make a reason for them to have some kind of conversation, and they found a solution to this in lots of different things, and the Dark Knight did the Joker was indeed caught, which means that, you know, Batman can talk to him directly, and they have like a big old chat but he wanted to be caught, that's how he got in there, and then he can get out, and so we can still have our third act payoff, and then you fast forward to 2012. Sure, Joker has a really, really well thought out, well constructed plan on how to get out. They always do. Um, you have yeah. 2012 then, Skyfall and Avengers. Both the villains in that both wanted to be captured in order to escape later, so they both t- talk to the heroes, if you know what I mean. And so yeah. mm-hmm. we get that as well. And now, because um, I've seen talk about this, the Batman trailer, Riddler is caught, and Batman's talking to him. People Ooh. are like, oh, we're doing that again. And it's like. <laughs> Well, I mean, doing that again, Cat. When the hero talks to the villain, well, like, just the, I like the, it when my hero gets to talk to the villain. The villain allows themselves to be caught because they always wanted to be, and then they'll escape. And they're just like, "Oh, we've seen this before." And it's just like, I mean, surely it'll be about the execution. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I would say it's always about the execution. I guess so it's it, just yeah. um, there's also it's worthwhile thinking about like what are the payoffs that you can potentially get from just allowing a cliche to happen? Um, because you know, a lot of like. That great drama, that ooh, potent, spicy drama, is when you've got people mm. who are just like diametrically opposed having to talk to each other. It's like usually you get some really good stuff from that. Um, and of course, like if you want a further like personal relationship between like the hero and the villain and not make them so disconnected, you want them both together. And it's not like if that's a cliche that the hero, ca- like the villain is captured and then the hero talks to them and then the villain gets away. Like, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't want to live in that world where apparently that's bad and we're not allowed well, to thing, do that anymore. I, if I notice something like that and I'm like, oh, we did this before, I am almost immediately, I have a thing in my brain that's being like, hey, chill out, that's not a criticism. <laughs> Just because it's mm-hmm. happened before. Yeah. yeah. But, I like um, when that beat happens in an almost friendly context, like the movie Goldfinger. Where, like, well, he, Bond is captured, I guess, but Goldfinger's just like, come on out for tea. <laughs> and they just they sit down. It's like, yeah, here's my evil plan. What do you think? We well, yeah, a lot of the time you'll no, have the just, villain. Uh, the villain the... calls the hero, and they'll just be like, yeah, "You're annoying just... me." <laughs> don't they just basically just beat up at a bar in movie Heat and just have that conversation? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's I lots of ways... that was like a really good conversation as well. Lots of ways to do it, and it's just that people are noticing it's like a bunch of movies have done it already, and it's like, yeah, but they're all different. So, I don't know. But a bunch of movies have done that there's a guy who dresses up like a bat and fights people. <laughs> Is that? We're not like... They also I just, did it for I that spider to person, it. too. They I did. Batman but then, but then the spider person was different like and they were upset though. about it. Because so. <laughs> we, say, we say, oh, he dresses up as a bat. No, 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 no. no. He doesn't. I want him to really fucking it. dress up like a bat. With the, the 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 big ears and the snoot and the eyes and everything, go all the way. The big web wings underneath your arms. Sounds like you want man bat ranks. 
watch, but oh, you want maybe. a guy to stitch oh, human skin that. underneath his arms and fly around. Whoa, whoa, that. whoa, whoa, whoa. I, <laughs> I, I look. don't have to be human skin. Well, <laughs> it can, it can know, be some web <laughs> material, you know, some, we don't have to jump. Nope. I, thought human, you I, thought you said he needed to, I thought you said he needed to fully commit. I'm just uh, <laughs> Within I'm reason. That's what he should do. Okay, within sure. Within reason. That's true. That That is a little bit unreasonable, I will say. I don't want this vigilante to break the law. Holy fuck, I'm just looking at images <laughs> of Man Bat. Jesus Christ, he's a... Man Bat? <laughs> look, at this, look at this lad here. He's like roiding out. <laughs> That's cool. That's really oh, cool. Oh my goodness, like Man Bat? Oh boy. He's one of Batman's villains. <laughs> We're, oh, it's a Batman villain, Man yeah. Bat. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is actually. I forget about him. <laughs> Oh my goodness! It's like Batman, but the other Man way around. Bat. That's right. He looks like uh, he looks like one of the gargoyles, but with pants. Yeah, I can see the gargoyle. Sort of... Do you have pants on? Or the gargoyles yes. have pants? You mean? Oh no, no he's wearing pants. pants. <laughs> I don't think the gargoyles <laughs> have pants. Do you think he, he had blue like legs? Fucking <laughs> <in the> <laughs> All bats have little denim jeans on. Yeah. God, those fucking That's veins, though, dude. He's just. Yeah, go look, look at those veins in his ears. <laughs> he's so he's muscular more that he's got veins. Than very man angry. Now. He's gonna fuck yeah. you up. Um. Oh. So yeah, one I I want to bring up because it's gonna line up similarly to the one that we'll be discussing in this video. We're gonna check out, but it's not the same. And the one that has bothered me for a while is uh, Barry Gaze. Have you guys heard of this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got a whole yeah. graveyard. We don't like it there. when oh, back yeah. in. I don't know. I want to say like 80s, 90s, I guess. There was lots of things that had gay characters, but they were getting killed. And that's bad, because it's... that's God. You can't be doing that. And um, the trope like would line out that, yeah, a lot of shows decide to kill their gay characters, which is fucked up, because it... I don't know... Perpetuates a state that gay people... It's so hard to like connect the the dots, just depending on like how because I think the I think the logic is that you have the characters who are representative of some like portion of the the world, and then they get killed, which means that they're no longer present in it. I think that's the, it's kind of like the the black guy not surviving until the end of the horror movie. I think might be similar <laughs> to that. You know, the in, the in concern that, like, that they raise is those characters are less important and thus they are killed yeah, yeah. which Something um, like that. depending on the content may or may not be true it could be that the writer just gave up on the fucking gay characters in order to write them and like i don't know just kill them um mm -hmm. unfortunately many things that i like quite a lot gets criticized for this when in the story it is like incredibly important and justified but it's like yeah but they're gay or they're whatever so you can't kill them otherwise you'll you'll leave that guess. trope once once you hit that point, it's like, ah, now this is the corrosive element of yeah. allowing too much consideration for tropes and what other people do influence your story. Because you may well have written a story where committing to a certain story beat is the correct decision for the story. It's, yeah. But you might be like, oh, well, but like, uh, uh, but people might say that this is like those other things and then it falls into a trope. Ah, oh, I don't know, I'm not going to do that. And it's like, awesome, so you've now made a decision that has hurt your story like, based yeah. on basically peer pressure. I think the, th right. the first death in It Chapter 2, which is not a film I particularly th thought was great, uh, the fucking clown eats a gay guy. Like, and I remember people talking about like, wow, so the gay guy dies first, bury a gay- I was like, it's fucking kill a clown who's eaten so many people, he eats a gay person, yeah. suddenly it's like horrible, like, what is this? Like, what are we doing? Do you want representation or not? To me, I see it as the opposite, it's like, it's a gay person gets eaten too, because everyone gets eaten, it's not, you know, like, you don't get- <laughs> Well, you think the clown just draws the line at gay people? <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm an evil killer clown, but I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get, you know, I don't wanna get tweeted at. And I wonder if, so say for example you're writing your story and someone's like, whoa, 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 don't kill your gay character. And you go, oh yeah, I wouldn't want to be a part of that trope. And then the next writer, the next writer, the next writer, until it's like, it's a trope that gay people are invincible. <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> bad. Kill, and then we go back to the straight. beginning. Kill your straight. <laughs> we've, sort of, we've sort of crossed over the hump when it comes to, like, with this with women. How um when, when that was the when feminism and that was kind of, kind of the thing that was in vogue that was the trendy thing more so, 
Um, we need more female representation. We need more women in this, more women in that. And then sure enough, women would get killed in stories because that's what happens in stories is characters can get killed and they have bitched and moaned. Da, 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 da. Well, this is what this is. This is what happens when you want, you know, you're going to be around. You're going to get killed by clowns. Yeah, and it feels the importance it's... of a character shouldn't have anything to do with their sexuality or their duration in the film. Like sometimes mm-hmm. a really key character can be someone who like dies in the prologue or something, and like, yeah. like sets up the whole Possibly. line of action of, for the main characters. Well, I mean, it's been said before, but like all of the story of Game of Thrones, it all comes back to Ned Stark's death, which is he's in the show for like you know ten percent, uh, but it's always that mm-hmm. that's uh, caused everything ultimately. Yeah, <sighs> and that's the thing that that was like um, that's the value, I guess, because it's it's not about actually the quality of the writing. It's just going to tell you whether or not you're. It's it's almost like the um the reverse engineering of subversion, because you're like, how do I subvert? And it's like, well, look at what's often done, and then do other things. It's like so, main characters mm-hmm. usually survive, so you can kill them. Gay people don't get eaten by clowns enough or too much. <laughs> do the opposite. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll surprise my audience. Um, yeah, and I don't know, I feel, I feel like it got to a point as well where people will be like, this show has this trope, such as bury your gaze, so I'm out. And it's like, oh. That's, that just seems really fucking strange, instead of just pointing out that that happens a lot, maybe. Um, bury your gaze, as in bury them in a grave, <laughs> like, to kill them? Yeah, it is just refers to, you have a gay, or well, an LGBT character in your show, or movie, or whatever, and they end up dying. That's bury your gaze. Okay. No, yeah, it, right. it's Barry. The, it, it's so that's Barry. My uh, he's the the gay. Cover them in berries. <laughs> See, no, you'd want to fuck like, with that if you make it like a parody movie. The gay guy called Barry. Barry. <laughs> no, not the berries. No, I'm Barry. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that could that could be his gangster name. G A Z E. Barry the gays. And he's just got big eyes. He's in the he's in the mob, and he's got really big eyes. It's like, man, it's this, this here, this is Bugsy Malone, and this is Barry the Gays. And you got um, Italian. they got pinstripe suits, and <laughs> yeah. Well, his real name's Bugsy Bugsy. Mola just wants normative values in films. I don't even know what that has to do with anything, really. I'm just talking about how often things happen, <laughs> like whether or not that's a problem. We, went, we just want to see. Dead gays. Well, p- <laughs> part of the description says the problem isn't merely that gay characters are killed off. The problem is the tendency that gay characters are killed off in a story full of mostly straight characters. Mm. So he, I have some news that I might have to break to you. It's oh. that uh, there's not a lot of gay people compared to straight people. The vast majority of mm. people are straight. So if you have a mostly gay a setting where most of the people woman. most of the characters are gay, <laughs> you will either have to come up with a an explanation for that or else it will be very strange. Can, can we say that like Batwoman that is woman. doing Barry a straight? Can we say that? I think we can. It's it's Barry the Whites is what it's doing. <laughs> um I was gonna say Luke Fox, he has, he's still not gay yet, right? They haven't made him gay. Um, nice. not as a, not that I'm aware. Yeah, because yeah, he's I definitely still straight because he almost fell for the clue master person's daughter or whatever didn't he um yeah, yeah. Him. That's right. yeah he's probably by yeah well i would assume they'd want to do well yeah but anyway it's a funny world uh gotham and batwoman it's yeah. filled every with... every woman is basically a lesbian well yeah i was about to say it's it's more accurate to say it's filled with lesbians rather than gays meaning that there's a shit ton of women and they're all lesbian like that's just yeah, how it like seems to work i don't know where the people in this universe come from the gay world. Either way, uh, that would be a show that completely bucks this trend, and look how well written it is. Mm. <laughs> Case in point, yeah, like that's, the, it doesn't that, guide that, you to that, good that, writing that, to avoid tropes, I don't think. At least not strictly. No. Like, it's, um, I think that there's, I, th- I certainly, because we've been talking about, like, you know, I, th- I think that there is definitely a, an approach that you can take we look at something that is commonly done, and you can find a way to twist it, work it around, um, like find find a find a way to change it a little bit. Um, like there, there are multiple ways that you can subvert a trope. Like there, there's more than one option. But even um, um, Star you know, Wars, it's, it's, that that first movie, yeah. not having Luke strike the Emperor down instead, his subordinate 
has a change of heart because it's so, like that. That's pretty subversive. That is subversive, absolutely. No, like you got you got loads of ways to be subversive, and of course it's funny, right? Something that is subversive can eventually just become a trope anyway. Yeah, because everybody does it. Everybody's inspired by it and does it. So and that's why it feels like yeah, it just like tunes you... forever. Like something that was created because we've i think you said it just earlier for but like you know a simple story that's almost subversive right now like whoa yeah. almost yeah like just it something... would almost be subversive to just have like i'm i'm like coming of age and little medieval town i'm gonna go on an adventure to like i don't know stop the dragon who's gonna come and destroy my town and i come back changed it's like that's it's like a really simple straightforward story but like as it stands right now that would honestly be pretty like rare now to have yeah. a story like that. Yeah. I don't know if you were you gonna say yeah. something ranks. I was just it maybe this was less of an issue back at you know back when Citizen Kane and stuff was coming out and there were well, far yeah, less subversive. So far less movies, you know, and that, and that's right. you get you still had stories of course, but you had yeah. far less movies and cinema as a as a you know, a medium was still kind of in its infancy and uh, you, you didn't have all of the, you didn't have so much baggage. There wasn't the, you didn't have as much in the way of, you know, movie tropes and things as you do now. That must have been, I guess, nice. Well, yeah, and so something would have been experimental. Less... Like, yeah. well, yeah. now it's like very normal. I guess it's also, you probably less, about, like it, now, thanks to the internet, you just have a good old database like, I mean, there's TV tropes, like a database of, hey, like, that idea you have, it's been done before. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's every every single idea that you could ever possibly come up with, there's probably something that exists that is similar. Um, and then just reminding that, you, and then, of course, of course, too. That website used to piss me off. It doesn't anymore, <laughs> but, like, back yeah. when I first discovered it, I'm just like, fuck, you can't do anything without this <laughs> site going... Oh, it's the old such and such that you're doing. Dude, it's, Fuck, it's, it's, it's like impossible it is, to be original anymore. It is the internet version of The Simpsons did it. Like, yeah, just, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, your, your main Simpsons, characters yeah. going to sleep, huh? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and they all have little nicknames too, like each trope. They do. Yeah, yeah. It's like awesome. I thought I was really smart. And I, then again, that is kind of like a great ego killer when you're in your uh, your edgy phase when you try to write. You're like, "Oh, I'm so smart! Look at me do all these crazy stories. I'm right. so insanely original." And then it's just like, "All right, buddy, chill the fuck out. <laughs> Whatever idea you thought was cool, it's not, and somebody already did it better than you will." And uh, this is a nice humbling experience. Since we'll be looking at the video about it, uh, what do you guys know about the? stuffed into a fridge trope its origin yeah i know about stuff i into assume a that's referring trope? to indiana jones but i don't i didn't know that was a <laughs> no <laughs> actually it's not that's where but... my mind goes as well it originates will save you from it originates Fridging. well you can do it, go, if you want. Go for it actually. <laughs> well <laughs> well the problem is you probably because i vaguely know you you probably have it written down someone tell me i'm at the edge of my seat it originates <laughs> it. with green lantern uh, yes. <gasps> he used, so, makes a big green fridge. And I was just going to yes. read the actual TV tropes thing to give you the, the rundown because I figured they'll have it better than I can say it as well. A loved one is hurt, killed, maimed, assaulted, or otherwise traumatized in order to motivate another character or move their plot forward. Uh, the term sometimes referred to as fridging was popularized by comic book writer Gail Simone or Simon? I think Simone, I'm not sure. Gail Through her Simone, website. Yes, yeah. Women in Refrigerators. On that site, Simone compiled a list of instances of female comic book characters who were killed off as a plot device. It is named for a storyline in Green Lantern, in which a villain, Major Force... Oh, is that his name? Okay. Leaves Major the Force. corpse... Yeah, Major Force. Uh, ah. He leaves the corpse of Kyle Rayner's girlfriend, Alexandra DeWitt, literally stuffed into a refrigerator for him to find. Years later, Major oh Force goodness. repeated the gimmick with Kyle's mother in an oven. It was just a trick with a mannequin that time, though. Um, the term came to be oh, used okay. more broadly over time to refer to any character who was uh, targeted by an antagonist who has them killed off, raped, and or otherwise brutalized, incapacitated, depowered, or brainwashed for the sole purpose of affecting another character, motivating them to take action. Okay. So you can probably see how it started, 
And you can already see how this will unravel and start to become a bit fallacious in terms of anybody who dies and it motivates anyone else to do anything. It's like, oh, wow, look at you frigid. It's like, uh, yeah. And it's like, man, that is just like, that's like common. <laughs> Got <it>. hey, <laughs> well, yeah, if, if you have generally protagonists, at least back in the day, protagonists were normally like goodish people. A lot of the times our hero would be a good person. He would be upstanding. He wants to do the right thing or she, of course. And one of the ways that a protagonist can be compelled into righteous action um, or justified fury is if a loved one suffers harm or is killed or there's some injustice that happens to them. I mean, mm -hmm. it just seems like a like, I mean, that's what I mean. It takes Inkadu dying for Gilgamesh to get his shit together. I mean, this is like the, I mean, this is as a tale as old as tales. Um, I oh, watched uh, a film recently called The Big Ugly. I don't know, I think I mentioned it to some people. I would never fucking recommend it. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's about, uh, Ron Perlman is an oil man in America, and, um, fuck, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Clockwork Orange main character did, Oh, you're talking about um, Alex DeLarge. <laughs> no, I mean... Oh, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, is that not it? The guy, uh, uh, Free, he taught history and community. Oh, oh, okay. Someone in chat's gonna tell me any any second now. I, I'm completely blank. Malcolm McDowell, that's his name. So, and he's oh, like... Oh, the actor, right. Yeah, yeah, he's like an, I think an English investor or something, and he visits Ron Pillman with his, like... Malcolm McDowell? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> so he visits Ron Pillman with his like top bodyguardy band, Vinnie Jones, and uh, that's like the the hook of the film, I guess. Like these three doing gun stuff, maybe. And it's like okay. Um, the deal goes great, and they're gonna go home. And I, and I was watching it like, so what's gonna fuck everything up then? Everyone has a girlfriend, and Ron Pillman's son is like, I want to fuck all their girlfriends. It's like okay. Bit of a strange one, but fine. And in my head, I was thinking, if he successfully, because he starts trying to um, get with Vinnie Jones's girlfriend, and I was like, so even if he sleeps with her, that surely won't fuck the deal, because that's just like drama of, hey, you cheat on me, boo. Um, I was like, I wonder how this is going to unravel. Uh, she's like partially into it, partially not, and it gets out of hand. And he kills her, and I was like, oh. So that'll be the motivation there, because now that you've killed her, that means everything's gonna fucking fall apart. And it, it, to a degree, I was like, oh, this is kind of like the fridging thing, where we had to motivate the destruction of this deal, and so he has to kill that girl. How's he gonna do it? It's like, uh, they try to sleep, he tries to sleep with her, she refuses, he kills her, I guess. It's like, yeah, I guess that'll be enough to make Vinnie Jones do what he does. Um, and what, what I'm getting at is just that when it's like a death that motivates them, but it comes from like a plot line, as in, we just mentioned Game of Thrones. Uh, Ned Stark's death, you can see it coming a mile away, just because of how every character is characterized, where he is, what's happening, he's gonna die. Um, if someone said, yeah, but it's fridging because it motivates everyone else in the storyline, because he's the leader of House Stark, sort of thing, I'd be like, that's retarded. Like, I... I, I, I you can't if, kill if, people yeah, if it motivates them? the idea them? is that... Because, you know what? When people die, that's usually pretty upsetting, and it can often change people's behavior. Um, Absolutely. If, if that if that is a trope, then it's like, man, like what what options? Like, <laughs> I'm not farting. It's fireworks. Anymore? <laughs> like, can you and not if generally tell your hero, or... well, I, like we were talking about earlier, most care most people on the planet are straight, awful as it sounds, and so if the the majority of your especially action heroes and action protagonists and things of that nature are men, then that means that they will have a female romantic interest who will serve as a, the, the traumatic death it wouldn't that even will need to be spur female. them into action. It wouldn't need, no, it wouldn't even need to. That's just Because well, Fridging can presumably go a, the other way around. Well, because they call yeah, it women it, in refrigerators, but I know for a fact that that could apply to just anybody dying at this point. Again, that's not the point, Rags. Where, where have you... <laughs> yeah, it is. That's what we're we're talking about the women thing. It's an explanation for why. Remember how now now if most like if we lived in a, a world where most people were gay, then the trope would be different. 
I guess well, it's just um when it comes to because I I imagine what the trope was was like man look at all these women who just get killed so that like I don't know our like protagonist yeah. superhero guy goes and fights the bad guy and it feels like really lazy yeah, but, and purposeless. What I it's assume like, Rags, so I, Rags' yeah. point was just that you can see exactly how that happened. It's not like nefarious. Oh uh, yeah yeah like it's it's it I mean it it follows right because what is what is like very quick way to get to uh to like drama it's like when mm -hmm. someone dies yeah um and then yeah of course, that's why you, like you've got your hero you man well, yeah like it, it's exactly you've got like your hero man he probably has somebody he really cares about you can't kill the hero man because the hero man's going to go on the adventure right so who's who's the next person then it's like well probably the person they care about the most it's like all right like straight to the drama but of course you know like the reason why I guess it's when you think about it is like yes, I think we can see how the the uh, the recurring story element arises, and I would imagine because this was came up with in 1999. It's like I imagine if you looked at it in 1999, probably would have been like, man, this happens a lot. Um, that can't be it though, in terms of the criticism that it happens a lot. Um, like the, well, there needs to be something. If there was nuance at one point for a lot of these tropes, they get boiled down because, like, it's interesting. Someone in chat just said that um, that's not a very gay trope. It's about token gay characters getting killed off once the author's done using them for representation. That's a, a way better criticism because that seems like you could actually get somewhere in terms of you detailing could, how yeah, that is happening. That. Unfortunately, very gays um, gets used on even characters that have been there the whole time, and their death is like because, very specific. I guess this is the thing, right? When it comes to because. I could imagine that part of the criticism at some stage was that the women characters who got killed didn't have much of a personality yeah. or really anything at all. They were just like, oh, I love you, my girlfriend slash wife slash important person in my life. Oh, no, you're dead. Skeletor, I'm going to get you. Like, I imagine that that was the criticism. <laughs> um, but I guess at that point, you're like, so what if I develop like a really well fleshed out character um, who is really easy to like and um you know they're just, they're just a person they they have a life they clearly have a life in the story and then they die and then that motivates my main character to go forward and they're wearing and an still... i love life t-shirt it's... <laughs> by the way it's, it's funny i love being alive <laughs> that, same die, laugh, said, uh, yeah. that, that same person said for it to be fridging it has to be like long-term grief it can't just be short-term and it's like the thing is, what you're saying makes much more sense. Like, these are actual criticisms. That's not how the trope's used. Um, believe me. <laughs> like, because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but I, I don't know that it's, it's not like I'm saying everyone does uses it wrong, but that's what I think the trouble with tropes is. Um, they get, but like, eventually it, boiled, yeah, well, broadened, actually, um, to the point where someone might just say, oh, look, somebody died. <laughs> you're like, yeah? What? It's like, I guess that's yeah, gonna that's... motivate a bunch of other people now, isn't it? Yeah, there's definitely an overlap here with what we were talking about earlier, about, like, laziness versus, like, what should happen in a story because it's actually meaningful. I mean, to, to yeah. kill off a character just for the sake of making someone angry to get some action going is so lazy, yeah. right? They killed my brother, slim. now they're gonna yeah. pay. But, like, what what constitutes a, a meaningful death, right? To, to bring up, um, you're talking about it in the first part where the little kid's brother dies in the prologue or opening scene mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, that kind of shapes him and it makes him afraid. And it's that fear that the clown ends up taking advantage of and he overcomes that fear. Like that, that would be an example where the, the death actually means something. Another one is, I was thinking of uh, the end of the third indiana jones movie where the place is breaking up and that uh that chick falls in the pit and she's also? trying to reach for the i can't remember her name but she's reaching for the holy grail and like her reach exceeded her grasp and she she fell to her death and she let yeah, uh she, she yeah she was she's overwhelmed by the the intoxicating power of that grail and she tried to grab it and she died as a result and that there's something to that. It actually means something, especially in the beat after that, where Indiana Jones is in the same perilous situation, and you don't want him to make the same mistake, and and he does. Yeah, that's good shit. Um, yeah, she was evil. You got to make your deaths mean something. Elsa was beyond yeah, just right. like I'm pissed off now. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta I kill guess these that, bastards. 
she was that highlights the point, though. Yeah. I guess that highlights the point though, isn't it? It's like we need if we're gonna say that the trope is like when someone dies and then it motivates the character, or if that's what it becomes, it's like so we we have missed something here. Like something's gone wrong. Um yeah. we've now we've now taken something where it's like Okay, so maybe it'd be a good idea when you're writing a story not to just have like some really flat generic woman character who dies and then it makes our main character go, I'm gonna get you. Like maybe you should actually try and give her a personality or like develop her or even think <laughs> about other options that you have to make this story happen. Um, but once it becomes like, oh, so when you kill somebody and that motivates the character, then it's a trope. It's like, oh, so like all, many stories that are good, like just. And now fuck. Yeah. Like this you just you just made this way too broad. Right, yeah. Um uh, Fridging is often given a very negative connotation, as it is all too often a hallmark of supremely lazy writing, quickly hurting or killing an established character as cheap anger for the protagonist and devaluing the life of that character in the process. This, that is what I completely agree with, especially how characters I'm feel. Fine with that, yeah. Um, you know, like, the, sure can be, yeah. their wife dies, they kill the guy who killed the wife, and then they're totally happy. You'd be like, no, that's not quite right, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you want to show that the bad guy's bad, he, like, yeah. kills a dog or something like that. Like, how can we just quickly establish this Fridging guy's... Your Fridging your dogs. Yeah. Fridging, don't fridge your dogs. No, if, I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. But I guess that's interesting, right? Because, like, you look at John Wick, it's like, well, so it wasn't just about the dog. So it's like, that's an interesting example of fridging your dog, where, you know, <laughs> well, we haven't fridged your dog we at all. A... There's actually a purpose behind it. Yeah, the dog came from a specific place. It had a exactly. purpose. Uh, exactly. Yeah, there was, yeah. um, I guess that's the point, though, right? Is that when when it's like, oh, that's a trope, it's like, well... Give it, give it more thought, you know? Like, think about what else is going on in the yeah, story. Yeah, because John Wick and the Green Lantern, I haven't read the comic, but presumably it's the thinnest possible iteration I of this trope. I would imagine it is. If they yeah. both qualify it on the trope, because because that's what people are going to be saying, right? Like, to clarify, it has to be that it's, you know, got these other errors to it. But we may discover today that some other things get in, put under the umbrella the way maybe they fucking shouldn't be. Uh... <laughs> so, you know, not foreshadowing it all there, but uh, it's because I was say uh, devaluing the life of that character in the process instead of giving the villain something actually interesting to do that can involve all three characters and more emotions than simple anger and angst. That feels a little bit like the person writing this uh, just involved their own writing advice, which is that never kill the person. You can do more with three people, which is really stupid advice, I think. Like... Well, yeah. I think it's just it's more complicated than that. It's like you Way could, more. but you could kill them. Like that's, a, that's you can a, do more with four or five. Well, I yeah. stop there. <laughs> Depending on your fucking writing abilities, you could do more with two than with three. You know, in terms of who they are, where yeah. they come from, and all that. So just because there's more people doesn't necessarily mean you have more content to work with. Um, no, it means more problems to solve potentially. Potentially, uh, down to the writer. Um, it should be noted that while the term mostly commonly applies to male characters, female love interest, it can be used for numerous different scenarios of all genders and different relations, from romantic, platonic, and familial. The core part is that one character is killed, or at least has something very bad happen to them for the sake of causing emotional trauma for the target. With said victim often acting as a plot device more than a real character in worst case scenario. So that's, like, I right. think the heart of the criticism. They weren't a person, yeah. they were just a thing that was supposed to um, make a different character do something. Yeah. Which I think is fair. Um, I think that's totally fair, because you could always think about it like, let's, because <clears throat> fridging doesn't mean killing, it could also mean hurting. So, like, I don't know, let's imagine we have Hero Man, and then, I don't know, his daughter, like, is, turn is basically paralyzed by the villain on purpose. And it's like, how much time do we get to spend seeing the perspective of uh, the daughter after that happens. If it just happens and then she disappears to the side while, like, the dad goes off to kill everybody, it's like, hmm, you know, you could do something with that character. It'd be interesting to see what her perspective is and whether or not she mm -hmm. feels like she still has agency, how much she participates in the story, what influence she might have over, like, the main character's choices by interacting with him in the future. It's like, yeah, so you, is... you do have options that are worth considering. What about a story that is from the POV of the villain, and the villain needs mm -hmm. Hero Man to get angry and try and attack him, for whatever reason, you know, you can make it up. 
And so we, we're seeing the villain, and he's like, what can we do? And, and this villain has a lot of power, and he's just like, kill his wife if he has one. Let's wipe her out It'll, and make sure he knows it was us. And then, you know, that scene happens with the hitman doing that. And then, you know, again, POV villain. So the hero is just trying to get to him at all times. It's like, well, that's, that's the worst kind of the trope. That woman wasn't even a character. And it's like, but what if in that scenario... Like the story isn't about that woman, but you know that killing a wife of a person who loves them is going to motivate them to do stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. If especially mm -hmm. if it's from his perspective, he doesn't care. Yeah, the villain doesn't give a fuck about what, it. I don't, think, so, yeah, I don't care what her personality is. I don't care if she likes Jenga or whatever the fuck women do. So I, I wonder <laughs> if we, because even the qualification of like you can tell if the woman really didn't have a character, I'd be like, is that bad? Hmm. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. Every damn day. I suppose someone could argue, it's like, well, if you'd given a character, I would have cared more about Hero Man and his relationship to her and stuff, and I'd be like, sure, but does the story become bad, especially with the POV of the villain? You don't even necessarily have to care about her. You have to care that he cares. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that, that is kind of, yeah. I'm trying to think of, I know that there is, there's got to be examples of this, where, like, stories start out and we get, like, very little in terms of the relationship of the character and the the people. You know, like, um, you guys see the Tom Jane Punisher with John Travolta? Yeah, I have, yeah. Like, oh, we maybe. get, what, like, I don't know, five, ten like minutes of him with his family with members? The hero. Yeah, with the, yeah. And, like, yeah. the person I think we get the most of is him with his dad. And that's still like, or his, his wife, I think. His wife and his dad and his son, like, they're the ones that get a little bit more time. But they're all wiped out. And he doesn't forget that throughout the entire movie, right? And so the, the two components of just because they're avenged doesn't mean you stop caring. It's like, I agree with that one. But the other one of those people have to be characters on their own. Like, I wonder how far you would need to push that in order to make it meaningful. When we all know that, um,. You have someone you love in your life, it's going to motivate you to do X. Do you have to know that person's character, I wonder? I'm not sure. I don't, I, I guess it's just what, yeah, like, and, if, and I mean, we could even push it further. What if the story begins with them Ooh, already dead? Mad life. Um, and then you just entirely progress from there and that's the choice you've made. It's like, is that fridging? And if so, can you qualify that as being a necessarily bad choice mm -hmm. when it comes to that particular story? Well, yeah, because uh, we I mean, meet Kill Punisher. Bill starts with uh, uh, Kill Bill starts with the brides the wiping people out. Essentially dead. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and we didn't really get their relationship that much in terms of the two movies. You get, I think, oh, one no. scene of looking at them together. You're just like, I believe that she really loved this guy, and that's that is what is important. Um. Well, so that's funny because I'm pretty sure I'm not 100. I'd have to watch it again, but I think the point was less so being with that guy, and it was more so getting away from Bill because um, even Bill calls her out that he doesn't think that those two have a relationship that's meaningful. It's that she doesn't want the baby to be brought up by Bill. Yeah, is that? Um, but that doesn't. I mean, not knowing the relationship you have with that guy or the family around them or the town that she's in, I don't think it makes it any less meaningful. And so, because a lot of people are saying, surely it's contextual, like with all of these, and it's like, yeah, I think so. And I think that's how we should treat basically everything. And so tropes that's can become as, uh, infectious in terms of, it's like a, almost like shorthand for criticism, but it's like, no, 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 you need to do more work every time, most of the time. <laughs> every time, 90% mm -hmm. of the time. Um, anyway... That's enough of us talking about it. Let's listen to someone else talk about it. Now, this channel, um, I've already seen loads of people in chat saying, have you guys not checked out her Mary Sue video? Apparently, like, I have not, but people are saying she said that Ray doesn't qualify, which... Oh, so she's Yeah, wrong. she does. I mean, <laughs> she's almost made it so that she's the archetype now. She's the poster yeah. child for Mary sue -ry. Yeah, like, I don't necessarily care to use the phrase, but I mean, if we're going to talk about it, like... Yeah, we can go look at the qualifications and like Ray. I'm I'm wondering even if she didn't qualify originally, she's changed what it means to be a Mary Sue at that point, regardless. But I'm pretty sure she does qualify. I mean, if she's not a Mary Sue, fucking yeah. name one. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, because uh, this channel's been recommended in terms of like an EFAB gas before, so this, you know, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure anyway, I'm sure thing. people have asked to get them on and stuff, and it's just like, alright, well, you know, still maybe in future, if they're up for it, but, uh, they put out this video, is like it? I said, a friend of mine was like, oh man, this is, not, this is bad, <laughs> I was like, well, let's check it out, it's called, um, Trope Talk Fridging. And so we're going to learn about fridging and how to, how not to, and stuff in a nice little presentation. See if we agree or don't. Oh boy. Alrighty. Oh, wait, is it paused? Oh. Your deaths are a big deal. Oh, Their oh. Wait, case on. video was sponsored by World Anvil. 100% ah. guaranteed to not do. Okay. Yeah, okay. Is, there, is it working for everyone else? Because it was just doing yeah. fumes on my SL. Yep. Yeah, it's on, a, it's on a World right. Anvil ad right now. All right. Let's start on a zero. Here we go. This video was sponsored by World Anvil. 100% guaranteed to not do terrible things to supporting characters. I don't want that. So, I was going to say, I, I hate I hate to pause already, but doing horrible <laughs> things to supporting characters, is that bad? I don't, yeah, sometimes supporting characters need to get fucked up. Yeah, it can happen. It'd be horrible. But, you know, that could have meant anything, so we'll just let it continue this before in its own trope talk but character deaths are a big deal they're momentous yep. so, occasions both in story and out this is not uh, only this is a total yeah. tangent but i will i'm trying to this listen music. like I, i'm trying to sorry you, yeah you've already jumped the gun a bit i'm trying to listen yeah. to relaxing nintendo music and it's very hard to do that when the video that we're watching is going to have the I completely got MP3. Completely agree. It's it's so common it's distracting the music. So this is the thing. Here's here's a topic for us all. When you picked, say you started out in 2008, really early. And you were like, I do a show, uh, well, not a show, a video series, I guess, where it's always within a particular context or a framing. For example, Trope Talk. And you're like, yeah, I always use this track. It's the Trope Talk track or something like I that. Always, I always I like use Dreamscape by 009 Sound Systems. Um, <laughs> like, uh, like how someone had said, this song is a trope. It's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this song is a trope. Um, yeah. So I've heard that before, though, where it's like, yeah, but that's the, that's the this tune. And, and I just wonder sometimes, I'm just like, but it wasn't at one point, you made it that, no, and now that's like almost an excuse so that you never have to think about the music. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Like, I don't know, surely you want to pick the music uh, uh, better associated with the content. It's almost yeah. like, don't, e don't even pick music, pick a, pick a noise almost, like just a, like a, it's a barely even a melody, it's almost like a, um, like, like you can't because you don't want to have someone try and pay attention to a melody instead of listening to you ambient it's almost music. like yeah like an ambient sort of tones or what barely constitutes as a melody something very simple and soft in the back something that's uh not too punchy um because if someone's trying to be like, oh, what's that music in the back? And they, their their mind is focused on identifying the notes of the melody. It distracts from uh, your well, words. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, I, hey, you could have, chill, well, you can't have chill Nintendo music that get you in trouble. But like, you know, something similar to that. Like those Donkey Kong Country, sort of just like the underwater, the chill ones that are pretty, uh, like, slow and, and calm. You got options. Um, oh. you don't need to always use do 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 or the do 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 or boom boom ba do 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 like you can pick different ones, all right? They burn into my head. They are a little bit, yeah. That's the thing. I was gonna say I recommend against them because they um they're like signals to you that this is a video of many, if you know what I mean, rather than its own thing. Uh yeah, someone someone in chat said, "Oh, like video game play rags?" No, it is not like video game play. Not That's not because the same. because if you don't look at the video game play, it ceases to exist. It cannot even possibly be a distraction oh if God. you don't even want to look at it. We've talked about that on past Fabs because the yeah, the problem is music. Not all gameplay is uh, made the same way. Um. 
A lot True. of people just throw gameplay in. A lot of people choose gameplay to put in. Difference being mm -hmm. the interesting gameplay or not. And that's definitely a um a choice as well. Because most people, it seems, consume YouTube videos without even fucking looking at them these days. Uh a lot do. Interesting yeah, I... in its actual relevancy to what you're talking about, right? Well, yeah, because this is all under the guise of like tropes, I guess. Because people say, ah, yeah. pausing the video trope. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> same old, same old. I want this video just for its music to just be fringy going. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the acapella. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Should that be a um? Should that be the next Goodell background music? Fringy doing that. <laughs> but, uh, I, could, I could probably come one, up with yeah one, just record uh, it for like an acapella. 30 seconds and then one, we can just one, loop it one, 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 uh, one, well now that you've thrown that out that's one, definitely what's gonna be happening <laughs> i feel like all of chat will yeah there they go <laughs> i'll have to let yeah, myself sure. know where i found so this does this song have a name does anyone know i fuck I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 it's, no, I think no, it's. I no, no, can just. Maybe it's in the description of the video. I it could be from like the YouTube it. library or something. You yeah, never know. This place to check. YouTube First place library. to check. I guess it is the. Uh, yeah. I wonder if anyone in chat knows the song name. Uh, um, apparently it's uh, sh Sheeming Weasel. Uh, that's what. Sheeming that Weasel, you mean? Sheem. <laughs> Sheeming? Sheeming weasel? I hate it. Is is that a that weasel's gonna sheem? I hate it when my weasel sheem. Is that a sheeming weasel? That's the thing I would say when I would read that out. <laughs> the sheeming weasel. What, what were you the thinking? The sheeming weasel. Did you think it was a weasel? Sounds like a tavern. You had the seed before or something. Why would you say sheeming? I, I, I like don't know how I mistook sheeming and scheming. <laughs> like a dive bar, the sheeming weasel. It's, it's very early. All right. Be, be gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> sheeming his machinations. Yes. Hey, you should put that in Godel, sheeming. Sheeming. <laughs> Oh, you, th you think I haven't already? There's a tight space I have to sheem through. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, oh anyway. God, your Goodell video, Muller. That Goodell video is fucking hilarious, man. There's four of them. There's going to be a fifth one soon enough. <laughs> Another one? Okay, I got to watch those. They so they good. basically just like a look back on the year of EFAP at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking insane shit we come How many from. can you remember? Get your EFAP bingo card. Yeah. There are momentous occasions, both in story and out, because the character dead, which is obviously a bummer on its own, but it also Can't means the total loss of all future music. potential for a given character. All their you that's say not that, true. but that's flat not true. Flashbacks, <laughs> prequels, that's, so, that's just flat out not true. Well, you, I don't know if you're trying to be more funny there, but I was I was specifically thinking about, you know, ghosts, resurrections, uh, they've left oh. tapes and stuff behind, or they've left messages, or they've given instructions. Like, the impact of that character isn't gone. When they die, necessarily. Yeah. Obi, they get Obi Wan. Exactly. Yeah. I, I like. I, 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 we were I both thinking. <clears throat> of, yeah. I don't you even don't know what you mean. said. I was listening to the music because we were talking about it for so long. <laughs> <laughs> See. <laughs> She, she she said that when a character dies, their impact is gone, and it's like no, Dude, no, that, that's when it starts. Hard. That's what that's that's that is well, the I impact. I think she was saying like their ability to. I think the I mean, they best can't do interpretation any of what she said is that they can't do anything else. Oh, for sure, but which sure, also but isn't a, true. Yeah, yeah, which is also not true. But even if they can't, you could have a character who just keeps getting referenced and talked about. Ned Stark is the yeah. example. <laughs> Yeah, the, the idea being that their presence is still there, even if they themselves are gone. Like, who they are, <laughs> the influence they had on the world. Or just that dying is the easy part. It's like, yeah, fucking Green Arrow, when he died, he came back as Green that Arrow. spooky ghost. <laughs> like, and he did, did a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, he did he the face away. laser, so... Yeah. Listen, if Infinitisms <laughs> have taught us anything, it's that this video is wrong. <laughs> a bummer on its own, but it also means the total loss of all future potential for a given character. All their arcs, dynamics, relationships, everything, all lost no. in exchange. No, that's just wrong, but that's fine. We'll move on. <laughs> yeah. For a one-shot gut punch. Now, most authors recognize hefty loss for their story, so they make damn sure the Also, not true either, the one-shot gut punch. Uh, someone could have a slow, lingering death. Yep. 
Um, sure. If you have a character who's who succumbs to an illness, if that illness is a prolonged affair, that can wear wow. down on a character uh, over time. There is a there is a current reference that I can't use. Kevin. Joker, I, exactly. Well, um, no, about uh, uh, you could you could argue the father. The film is just he's deteriorating yep. until he's going to die. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The entire story is just a portion of his transition from life to death, pretty much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or that knight in so, Monty yeah. Python that gets his arms and legs cut off. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Its impact hasn't <laughs> stopped just yet. <laughs> oh yeah, someone mentioned like Walter White. It's like I mean, I guess so. Yeah, because that's that's a uh, the impact of that news as well. You know, yeah recognize that this is a hefty loss for their stories. Sure, the impact is worth the price. True, non-fake-out main character deaths are often heroic sacrifices, protracted tragedies, or carefully woven resolutions to their arcs after all the loose ends have been tied up. They're usually given time and narrative weight to reflect this cost. The surviving characters will process their grief, reflect on what the loss means to them, and are often fundamentally changed by the experience. Agreed with all of that. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe carrying on their legacy, setting off on a lengthy quest, their layered and complex life as a personal inspiration to guide their way forward. This is not that trope. Fridging is the cute shortened form of the full name of this trope, Stuffed in the Fridge, named for a now infamous issue of a Green Lantern comic where Green Lantern Kyle Rayner's girlfriend is murdered by the villain Major Force the and infamous? stuffed in I guess it is. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. At this point, right? I've That's not read it. I don't know if it's, like, bad. But, like, stuffing a person in a fridge doesn't... You know, to me, I'm just like, that could still be good. It sounds pretty fucking horrible. Yeah. Like, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, good. Yeah. I don't know. Fridge for him to find when he gets home. Fridging is the very set of character deaths wherein a character is unceremoniously and brutally killed specifically and solely for the narrative purpose brutal? of hurting another. I didn't know it had to be brutal. It was. It's weird that she said that instead of just saying, because the important part I thought that what she was going to say was just that it's done specifically to make a character motivated. Blah, blah, blah. So it's like, however they die isn't relevant, is it? Like if it's brutal or not, if they just. <sighs> yeah. What if it's a yeah. like a cancer or a you know something like that? Well, I was that. actually about to say, what is a non-brutal death? Because brutal can be used to, you know, for chopping them up into tiny pieces or shot through the head. Like someone could call both of those brutal. So I'm just like. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess a non-brutal death would be like a like, a like death, passing away in your sleep, you know. Yeah, like you, yeah. Like you, you die which in your sleep, which could death. happen to motivate a character to do X, Y, Z. So, like, you, I assume the brutality of the death is irrelevant. Right. I would assume it's irrelevant as well. Uh, mm. Thus, my I, I think it's odd that that was brought up as a prerequisite for frigery. So is it possible to not have a brutal death at the hands of another person? Is it make so it? So it could inject just... you with something and you just slowly pass away, sort of thing. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it would be weird to describe that as brutal, but I guess someone might. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Brutally killed specifically and solely for the narrative purpose of hurting another more important character. This motivation can be Watsonian or Doylist, as in in-universe villain motivation or out-of-universe authorial intent. In Watsonian cases, the killer is specifically motivated to kill the Fridgy because it'll hurt the character who cares about them. In Doylist cases, the killer might have all reason. kinds of personal reasons to want to unceremoniously brutalize them. All right, a character death that happens only to upset a more important character. Fridges or plant vices don't get some experience. Uh, gravitas as a major character death would be given. I think there's just an element of pragmatism Wait, sorry, in that. But if, if, if they die and then, like, that's the break in the story that causes the whole thing to happen, that, that's, like, significant. Because so a character can die like unceremoniously, gravitas? but that could have incredible impact to other well, people. So this, is, this, is where we're get, this is where we're going to get into a big problem. A, like you think about for, like in Tarantino films, one of like the big things in in those is that characters just die. Like yeah. main characters will just die instantly, mm -hmm. like unceremoniously because they don't spend much time on it. And they'll just die. Is that bad? Because the example well, you're going to go with think, Pulp Fiction is that what you're thinking of there? I guess that's probably the clearest example, right? It's like yeah, he's there and then he's dead, like just like that, and 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 that's it. Well, um, yeah, because I I don't need to justify it, but like what was really cool about that is that we had him as POV for a while, then we switched to a different POV, and that character is now completely unimportant to this new yeah. POV, if you know what I mean. And so he can just be wiped <clears throat> out like any other thug. Yeah, and and that's just um one of the reasons why that's like that's just 
I think that stories could honestly stand to have more unceremonious deaths uh, rather than less. I think that, um, because people do just die. Like, sometimes it happens and it's quick and it's sudden and, like, it, you know, there's, there's not much of a reason for it. Oh, um, man, I just it, shot Marvin in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it's, um, I, I think that it, it's more often than not that when there is like a death in a story that it is super important and it gets a lot of focus and it gets um you know and everybody's really sad or it happens really slow or they get to die really slowly whereas not important characters get shot in the head or something um like that that is more of a thing that happens than characters do I guess we'll have to see where, where this argument goes. Well, and uh, Quentin curious. Tarantino does a good job of making sure all his characters in his films are properly motivated. So if one yeah. person kills another person, you usually understand why they were killed, even if there's not much to it. Like if, if they're at least motivated to kill that person, you'd be like, okay, he's dead now. I get it. That's fine. Like, I agree with this uh, girl's first point here. Like, a character death that happens only to upset. If it's only to upset and that's it, and that's the only element going into the screenplay to like to to make somebody kill someone else and it's not even motivated by character, it's just to like make things happen, that's dumb. What if but that if is the villain's motive though? Um well hopefully there would be a, an extra layer to it than just that. If like because it should tie into the theme somehow. I, th I mean, not not in every case, like in, in some key moment where like the main character is affected at the end of act two or something, there's a death involved. Oh, I'm just in saying that low point. Let's just call the opening of the film villain needs hero to be angry and try and attack him in order to he's going to frame him for something. He's like, how do we do it? It's like, just fucking kill his wife, whatever. And the, that happens right. off screen because we're doing, like I said, the villain POV. So it just it would it would satisfy this definition. And I don't know that we can just say, right. oh, well, that's bad. It's like, is it? Right. Because um, I was thinking about Daredevil Season 2. Uh, we see Punisher in his, like, prime, and then we find out later that, like, people were killed in, in particular circumstances. I don't know that we ever learn the meaningful relationship he had with uh, his family, you know, oh. beyond sort of in, in that show anyway. In that, in that show, you don't know. And so, like, I don't consider that bad. And if someone said, yeah, but they died just to motivate him to be, to be this Punisher character that everyone wants to see, and I should be like, okay, but is that bad? Or is it just neutral? And, like, whether it gets into good or bad becomes a matter of execution, specifically. Execution, yeah. <clears throat> Because if someone said, like, yeah, well, you still do find out bits and bobs about them and stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, so I guess what makes it what crosses the line, you know, how how much information do you need to know about these characters that died before, like, for it to be okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so to say it only happens to motivate a more important character, I'd just be like, I mean, yeah, that could work, I think. Um, some people are referencing Uncle Ben, does that, do you think that qualifies? Hmm. Hmm. A character death that only happens to mo motivate a more important character. It's like to a degree, and I, I, you know, I think the Uncle Ben stuff is pretty damn good when it's executed well. Mm -hmm. Well, here's one: Erskine is that fridging Erskine because he dies specifically to motivate Captain America. I imagine Cap was motivated regardless, but it definitely. Uh, uh, sure. But like, yeah, Erskine's death is specifically to to like instill fun a core like thing for him, right? I guess, uh, but then somebody would be like, well, Erskine's death means there's no super soldier serum, so it's like, there is another reason for it. Hmm. That's well, so un weird. Uncle Ben's death is symbolic of the fact that Spider-Man had the capacity to do something, and he didn't because he acted selfishly. Okay. Like, that, that was a real, real meaningful and so death, what I would say. But like, you know, like the Punisher one, if all we ever knew about the people who died in his life that motivated him to become who he was, was that they were killed by a criminal who was set free after a certain amount of time, and therefore matches Punisher's sort of perspective, is that enough yeah. to say that it now qualifies not as fridging? Right. Um... Because uh, I agree question. with you, uh, Uncle Ben's death is supposed to relate thematically to the entire point of Spider-Man's journeys like all of them to do responsibility but um you could still say it's still a death that motivates spider-man to do xyz right yeah i guess the the lesson in the case of the punisher isn't 
so obvious or there's not really much to it other than my loved ones are gone. I'm going to make the criminals pay. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily bad if it's shallow. Um, I guess I guess that would be the thing is like even even if it's flat. And and I guess at that point it's like so could you do it better? It's like yeah, pr probably sure. I I guess it's just um bad. Like at that point, because if, if this is bad, so a character death that happens only to upset a more important character, it's like I I guess I I I want to know what only means. Because like, if it means it can't have, if it has nothing to do with the theme, then it's fridging. And I'd just be like, man, it does feel like that's an easy escape hatch. All I have to do is make it like. Um, you know, like Loki's, someone referenced Loki's death in, in Infinity War. If someone said, that's fridging, and I go, well, no, it's on theme because uh, Loki sacrificed himself, uh, in a sense, to try and rescue Thor, which is something that everyone's doing in that film. They're giving up their lives and the stones uh, in order to save individuals when the whole world is at stake, and it's just, it's a commentary on human nature and stuff. Um, does that then make it not fridging? Some people are referencing Batman's parents. It's like, were they fridged? And it's like, well, thematically, again, like, it, it's all about uh, crime and, and, and what it could do to a person, uh, I guess. I, uh, it's a little bit complicated. And I guess, at that point, could you develop a thematic through line for any example, if you really wanted to? Like, even, even the Green Lantern one, is there something in the story It's like, ah, see, you know, loved ones die, and that, that changes you, that's the theme, gotcha, so it wasn't, it wasn't purposeless, you know, like, so at what, that point. So what keeps saying yeah. Vincent from Iron Man 1, it's Jensen, not Vincent. Jensen, not Vincent, <laughs> no. Vincent, he looks like a Vincent. I get, but again, if you, if you looked at, like, Jensen, you could just say, um, well, this... but, but, like, he helped build the suit, so, like, there, there is a, there is a broader world impact that Jensen had. Yeah, and I guess that's he the gives problem, is it's very Iron Man hard. his cool motivation in in a sentence, right? Like, in well, yeah, sure. I, but in your I guess what life. I'm saying is, I'll uh, even even if he, I guess that's the thing is like it's very uncommon that you will have a person who exists in like reality who will only affect one person, um, or will only have relevance to one person in in a story. Like you could always find yeah. I, I guess that's a problem with these, like, this particular definition is you're trying to figure, I'm just trying to figure out ways that it breaks. It feels like there are a lot, um, because, like, look, don't get the same exploration death or gravitas as a major character death would be given. It's like, if a death of a character creates the story, does it not have much more gravitas than the death of a main character right at the end? Mm -hmm. Like, the whole story doesn't happen without it that, is so is that. It is odd that a, a part of this is they don't get the same gravitas as a major character. It's like, that sounds categorical, Almost but like it should be that way. It sounds yeah. categorical, yeah. If they are major, they'll get a death that has more gravitas because... And I guess, here's the thing, like, given by whom, like, what, what the gravitas by whom, the story by the reader by who, like, who is the... Who is the what, what do you mean when you say gravitas? Mm -hmm. I mean, surely not every character can be given not just for time and time constraints, but not every character's in their and their demise, however that may be, is going to be given the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel well. Like... I mean, now I'm just thinking like here's here's one for you: Saving Private Ryan. Uh, did did Ryan's brothers get fridged because they die specifically to kick off the plot? Launch a plot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like because each of the members of the um, I just feel like. Of the and main everybody team. Needs the team. Yeah. Each of when, their uh, deaths when, um, last longer right. and shorter, not only based on how important they are, but just the poignancy of their death in the storyline as well. It's it's complicated. Hey, yeah, because I mean, because could you would you say like there is more gravitas given to uh Wade's death compared to um Jackson because Jackson just gets blown up in the in the yeah. church tower. Uh, but but then it's like, well, what do you mean gravitas? Because there's a difference. Wade's death is like really protracted and and really sad. It's just really really sad. Whereas like Jackson gets this crazy heroic last stand in the yeah, tower, no, and then we get extra elements of his character. The fact that he yells to the other guy to get out because he's more concerned about him than his own life. And it's like, well, what is gravitas really? What does it mean when we're comparing these? It's two? complicated because. I love Saving Private Ryan is one of the best movies ever made. Yep. Just FYI. Yep. But oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. 
It, Jackson's death, to me, it always matched because he's like an unstoppable force throughout the story. He mm -hmm. never gets hurt, and he just fucking wrecks everybody he's, he's fighting. He's incredibly calm and yeah, yeah and well, calm, and just language. yeah, straightforward. And then it's just like he's winning, winning, win dead, and just like yeah, fuck. Well, yeah, you you get those um because I mean, I I always think because just I you think about in that movie, um. Because you you see it like in the in the opening battle where there are people who just die and they're dead and then there's not any thought given to them for like a very long time because it's just that's in this situation you kind of can't do that. Um, right. Does that mean that this story is like? Would we be saying that it's bad that like we have characters who um because because one of the interesting things is like if you're paying closer attention like Saving Private Ryan there are characters who are like important in world who die in that sequence and you wouldn't know it because they just die and then that's it um yeah. is that bad because that would have happened because in reality you're not a protagonist in reality you're just like a person among other people in this world and it reality doesn't like recognize your significance um in a narrative sense like depending on who's pov or whatever um, so yeah, some people are just gonna die, and they're not gonna get as much exploration, death, or gravitas it's, it's, as some, another somebody character. Somebody said, you're thinking too much about it. When you give people writing rules, you better have fucking thought about them. You better think them. about it. I'm so, mm, what do yeah. you mean with- we've only talked about it for like 10 minutes. Well, I- I, I don't uh, care. If we talk about this for 10 hours, it doesn't fucking yeah. matter to me. This is fundamental. We're talking about mm -hmm. character deaths. Do you know yeah, how important like those important are to storytelling? <laughs> And and you know what? When you're working on your story, you'd want to think about it as much or more. Like <laughs> you really should. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not a fan of her second fridging point because the implication seems to be that, uh, like, if if every death isn't treated with the same level of gravitas, then it's fridging. This kind of reminds yeah. me of when we were talking about the orcs. and like the representation of orcs and how it's like racist because they're always like evil. <laughs> whatever that means yeah yeah but it's this idea that every character needs to be like equally complex otherwise it's racist because you're you're prioritizing well, yeah, one character or group of characters over another and well, that's, uh, that's yeah exactly the the the, we, we, the just just, just the, the one point... sec just just one sec sorry got two or yep. three people already saying she gets into this for fuck's sake stop like let her speak it's like so welcome, yeah, yeah. welcome, new you viewer. New welcome to, Sorry, uh, chat. Maybe you're new here. <laughs> no, 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 John. Like this happens every time we cover a, a, a liked <laughs> content creator. They don't know that right. that's not how we do things here. We um, right. <laughs> we we yeah. listen and say, for example, she says everything on this list that you're seeing right now is bullshit. We'll be like, oh, okay, cool. That's yeah. that's what yeah. we'll say. But if she doesn't, then do th just continue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, welcome to EFAP, new viewers. Lovely to see you. We're going to be talking about Fridgen today. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we, right now we're <laughs> just regarding these three points she's got on this little slide that we're having a look at. Uh, the is, point where a character... Like, uh, sorry. Yeah, go right ahead, uh, Jonathan. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the point where a death bothers me, and I think it would become Fridging, is when I don't understand why somebody died. Or like usually it's at the hands of another person and I don't understand why that person killed the other person. Like in the case of this Green Lantern fridge thing, I'm I'm curious about the context of it. Like yeah. you know, maybe uh it, it, if it was some kind of ice themed villain, you know, who like <laughs> stuffed the, the the girl in the fridge and like I wonder if there's something that happened before this beat that kind of contextualize it and makes it a little bit meaningful other than just like ha ah, i'm a bad guy and i killed someone close to you even though i'm not really invested you know like well, i had no um, reason to kill this person but i just wanted to upset you like that that would that would be a bad there that are piss me um, off a couple of john wick clones now already and uh i think that if we were all watching a movie and there's this character who's got a history of violence but they've got a loving family and everything's great and like they have scenes that are just so poorly put together it's like hello husband isn't it great how happy we are? Hello, child. Yes. Uh, I love you, child. 
It's been fun. They're making it's pancakes, that, uh, that drinking South orange Park juice. Parody of World War Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking of. Husband. How did I get so lucky to have the perfect wife? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, someone it's bursts really in, guns crap. everything down. Everyone's killed except main character who's severely wounded. They're crying, and they, and then they he put. Goes, <laughs> I killed your family. Come and get me. I bet you love them loads. I bet. I bet you thought well, your old well, life wasn't gonna catch up again. with you. <laughs> yeah. You got uh, you got the McBain thing. Yeah. Two days from retirement. I uh, just christened a boat. It's called Live Forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Brad Bullen just shoots him. Damn, 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 <laughs> McBain. I'm not gonna make it. Don't, don't talk crazy. <laughs> it's like just yeah. do one thing for me. Get Mendoza and McBain Mendoza. screaming to the heavens. Mendoza! <laughs> like, the garnicle as well. I don't want to hear it, McBain. That, that cat of yours is against regulations. In this department, we go buy the book. <laughs> buy book. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, yeah, the, the thing to come away with is... We the, this could have happened to us. We would have seen that shitty movie that I referenced, whatever it may be, and we see like four of them in a row, and then we go, you know what? This is a trope, and this is bad, and this is how it's qualified, and then you accidentally include things that are actually fucking excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That seems to, to be that. how this this has happened. Yeah. Uh... Um. That last. I just point... realized all, all the things I had to say. You you all mentioned while I was waiting for a gap for me to talk, so I have nothing to add. <laughs> oh, uh, the third point is mostly afflicts secondary characters or characters that writer considers broadly unimportant to the story. She said, "Well, deaths uh, that count as fridging uh -oh. mostly happen to non-main characters." And it's just like, yeah. Well, so, uh, we're, we're running into a few problems. Broadly unimportant, yeah. if you kick off the plot, you are very important. Yeah, I was about to say, that's the part that sticks out to me, is almost like, you, you even highlighted it in red, but that's kind of mm -hmm. a contradiction to the whole point of fridging. Yeah, the whole point they is are that very they important to the as story. a massive plot device. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I do agree, no, it generally sorry. happens to secondary characters, if... but... That's just generality. If we're being as mm. kind as possible, maybe she means excluding that portion of them. They don't have any importance that, other than that. Well, yeah, I, mean, I guess I, excluding I, this mm. extremely necessary, important thing. <laughs> yeah, excluding yes. those. I, yeah. And I guess uh, also we need to figure out what our definitions of secondary are because those definitions can vary. Because I would say that a villain is not secondary for the most part. Like if, like if you've got your primary characters, that's like your hero, your villain, probably your Deuteragon. Something, then maybe one more person, and then secondary is like the one below that. Well, um, let's take, um, let's on that note, let's take a new hope. You have yeah. uh, Luke's Luke parents potentially, Luke's parents get fried up, they and do. you also have Obi Wan, so it can be and both. both of them get killed to motivate Luke, true, but, uh, absolutely. Yeah, was Alderon fridged? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Older on <laughs> French. That's, that's, that's one to think about, because, yeah. By the way, someone said that's what she means. It's like, so why didn't she write that? Why didn't she see yeah. yeah. So I'm not, I'm no mind reader. Uh, but if if it's important, see, here's the thing. I use a whiteboard in my videos now. You do, yeah. <laughs> More are right. those do. coming soon. That's why there's been a delay. However... Uh, that's, that's what I really make sure that what goes on that whiteboard, what I am highlighting mm. textually that I'm saying is it's doubly accurate. Uh, if, if you're going to, if you're going to bring it up in this manner, it had better be accurate. If that's not what you mean, don't fucking put it on the whiteboard and highlight it as important because it's not only yeah. on the whiteboard, <clears throat> it is in red as opposed to black text. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. which means it's extra important I think if a writer writes a story and they I'll consider one or more of their characters as broadly unimportant then maybe they made a mistake and that character shouldn't be there because <laughs> like you don't put a character in a story unless they serve some role like they should all be mm -hmm. important it's just they're they are of varying degrees of importance if you have an well, unimportant if... character they just shouldn't be there if we have just like an opening boss scene and there's just this there's four couples all around and like just chilling out and we get to know like mainly one of them who's making a lot of jokes and blah blah, blah. and then someone comes in to fucking mug the place and he just shoots everywhere and uh, his girlfriend gets shot in the head. We didn't even know her that much, but he's just like 
shocked and distraught. And like, does this, mm -hmm. if someone was like, Ugh. We didn't even know her fridging. And I'm just like, well, wait, I don't even, we don't even know where this is going yet. Like, I don't know. I, I, would, I would just say that's it's still relatable. Like, you still get, a, you still can feel something about this. Well, I like think if some, that's if you, if you see some, like, you don't go yeah. out the street and someone in front of you gets shot in the face. You just go, like, oh, I don't know that guy. Fuck this. I'm just going to go home. It's like, that's not how that works. Like, this, there's still a reaction you have to that kind of thing. I think like, so what it's you still relatable is... if some some character se uh, reacts to this, even if it's a secondary character that's unimportant to the story, which he then is not anymore because the character does do something about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. It kind of reminds me of that movie Half Baked, where the, there's that that guy who like roommate who's just like constantly sleeps on the couch. He's always in the background. He'll he'll only like occasionally ever chime in on in some scenes and mm -hmm. like i think he does have a role in the story at some point but it's just like just a, an unimportant background character it's like why is he even there like just get rid of him like they should all every character should like there's a reason for everything being in a story every single element not just characters um someone mentioned the girlfriend in the boys was fridged now you talking about season one or two because she technically dies twice <laughs> like in a sense that's right um, first death, if we're talking about that, it's, we finally find out why is Butcher doing everything that he's doing. He says his, uh, wife was raped and killed, presumably, by, uh, Homelander. And, like, that for me, when I was first watching it, I don't need to know the relationship between Butcher and his wife to know why he's motivated now. And if someone said, yeah, but that's fridging, I'd be like, I don't, I don't know why I have to know, why is that a bad thing? Why do I have to know her exactly? I understand this person. Well, I mean, that just, I think that's, because I wonder if we're going to talk about it in this video, like if it's going to get brought up. It's worthwhile to consider why it's such a common storytelling device to have somebody that a person cares about die and that motivate them. Like, wait, they, well, it's, it's I, worth, I, I wait, can wait, wait, tell wait. you. Everyone's saying it's Hugh's girlfriend, so there's more with his than with Butcher's uh, in season one. You get, you get more, they, we get to see them together. Yeah, they have yeah. scenes together, whereas we have no, we, we have like, we only get scenes before in the flashbacks with a uh, butcher's wife is it people like not butcher it's like well butcher would be worse by this definition so why aren't we talking about that one yeah it's you guys starting to see why like analyzing stories through the lens of tropes can be just like really difficult to be ass <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just ass yeah it's because it's basically because she's a woman okay i've got a little what's going on in chat right now <laughs> what's what's happening here <laughs> uh -uh. Because, uh, yeah, Huey's, uh, I love that one. I think it's great. The, the, these two normal people who just have a relationship, the speedster, uh, which is something that surprised me about the first episode. So it's just like, yeah, that probably would happen eventually in a world of superheroes. That shit's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's horrifying. And someone, yeah, but she didn't really have a strong character. I be like, I don't know why she has to. I don't know why well, that can't be the, the yeah, inciting it's the incident. Idea that we we have a whole story where, like, a whole episode where we spend with them and then it ends like that, is that necessarily better? Just because like, it's fridging doesn't know. mean it's bad. I'm pretty sure the whole point being made here is you shouldn't fridge. And if you, yeah. people are saying you shouldn't do something, like, I don't know, it sounds <laughs> like it's sounds like it's bad. And you've got a lot of, you got a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah. yeah. Batman Welcome fridge Joker and Batman. Oh, but, yeah, let's, let's, I, think, I think the sentence you shouldn't fridge sounds funny to me. I don't know why. <laughs> don't you put stuff fridge. in the fridge. Stop, 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 don't <laughs> fridge. fridge. Don't <laughs> fridge, you guys. But let's I just got it. groceries. Let get me put some in. help. Lab, <laughs> lab, lab light of fridged himself. <laughs> 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 I wonder. Hmm. The author's motivation in killing the character is only to make the character upset. The only narrative role this death plays in story is hurting a different character, and it's still framed as unceremonious and brisk. Fridging almost Not necessarily. I mean, we've already disagreed with basically all of your points, yeah. so we'll just oh, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Those are bad points moving on. Always refers to character deaths, but sometimes the character is instead subjected to some kind of horrible torture or fate worse than death with the- Victim survives, but is very badly hurt mentally and or physically. Focus is still on anyone but the victim. Right, so the idea would be like you, I don't know, you have like some guy, it's like my wife, you In know, coma now. She, yeah, or, or like she, you know, something bad happened to her and she's like basically got PTSD and we don't focus on her at all. I guess the problem is it's like I would prefer that you would actually give her something, but is it necessarily 
can you necessarily not tell a story where you don't focus? You know. Well, let's go with a coma example. Yeah, I don't know if I just want to watch it. someone line. Yeah, well, yeah. watch <laughs> someone line in a coma. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing is, uh, what if we had it where it was different, and she's just like, pro- she's just got trauma, like ment- She's uh, she's not in a good place mentally, and then we just go and follow our main hero man. Well, and we, like, don't see her until the end. You could make that really meaningful in the the hero does all this stuff to rectify the situation he, without realizing yeah, that yes. being, being yep. with her was the thing he should have Abs- done. Yes, I was about to say. What, what like, a grim what ending what a, that point. he, like, gets revenge, everything's put right, they're all safe, and she's, like, fucking killed herself or something because he wasn't getting... Yeah, because he wasn't there. And he was so focused on getting vengeance that he didn't think about how he could have stuck it's... around and... That's the yeah. thing about tropes. You can they can but, build easy subversions by making people think that's what you're doing, sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Tropes can be an opportunity. Um and yeah, loads of people are just referencing all kinds of media right now, asking if this counts as yeah. fridging. It's just like this is what yeah. this conversation <laughs> does. It's just confusing now. Yeah. It's fridging what everywhere. Doesn't. So you go, no, and she's like, please just call an ambulance. Like, ha, ha, ha. It's a fridging epidemic in media. <laughs> <laughs> Same overall impact, the character that really matters. People saying that I just described Berserk, so I've already seen season one, I don't think that's happened in it, so it might be just, I don't know, what, I wasn't referencing that specifically, but if that's what happens in it, then neat. Isn't the one targeted for the horror, but the hero who's in the Phrygia's personal reaction to their awful situation is usually glossed over in favor of how much that focus character suffers by proxy. Because of reasons, Phrygia. Did- well, if they're the protagonist, exactly. Then yeah. maybe like we're the- going to be focusing um, more on. The so I already see a mis- I already see something I disagree with. Female characters are often secondary supporting roles. I is that is, is that, that true or is that in spe- Well, so we we got two things. Is, is that bad? Good- but. But, but yeah. broadly, the thing I find more disagreeable, is that true? Because I'm pretty sure it, it's not. Like, I'm pretty sure that if you put all stories together, that, like, that that, that it would balance out. And that, like... Yeah. Is, um, or, because or, it's or, not just girlfriends. Well, so here's the thing. Are you, are you doing the thing that a lot of people do when they talk about video games? Most ma- protagonists are male. It's like, well, most games don't have protagonists. Most games do not have a protagonist. Like, most of them is just you. Like, you're interfacing with a puzzle, or, like, you're in a 4X strategy game, and you're, like, the grand... Like, this feels to me like female characters are more often secondary in speculative fiction, or, like, in action stories, or something like that. Is this true? What if we included, like, all the stories... Like, there are so many books. Like, there are so many books that just feel like the shows where the protagonist is female. I I just don't know that I even agree with this. That, like, female characters are often secondary... This feels to so, me like you're just reading in a genre where that's more often the case, and you're not thinking about all stories. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I I could not hazard a guess um, if that's actually true or not. Um, yeah, I've got yeah. nothing to really because I'm thinking like, well, a lot of characters that are driven by action from character necessarily might be more likely to be male, especially if we go back to like including stories from as early as they started. But at the same time, yeah, I guess, but. We've got well, a lot sorry. of female centric stories as well. So, we got so many male centric stories in, in, who lose males. And talk about narratively disposable. I don't think you'll find anyone fitting that role more so than the average guy yeah. in the background thugs, soldiers. They all just get wiped out and no one gives a fuck. Practically every mook is a guy. Well, I mean, I mean, we'll just do the common one in action stories and games and stuff. You're shooting guys. You are like shooting guys. 95% of the time. Easily I remember. I, everyone you well, let me tell game. you. I distinctly remember when I played Black Ops 3's campaign, and there were like women soldiers, and then you shot them, and then you hear a woman yell out. I, I was like, yeah, "Wait, that, what?" Uh, like that was yeah, jarring. That, sort of that was jarring yeah, that, because I'm like, not this used ain't to right. that. You're like, eh. well, um, but I, I guess that's what. It, yeah. Uh, Black Widow, right? All of the female foot soldiers for Drakov are considered these these victims that we have to rescue. All of the men are wiped out. No one gives a fuck. They are mm. well. I mean, and it's it's funny because and they're behind masks to that, make it even easier. Yep, you're right. Yeah, and that's a, that's a common one. Give make the men faceless, and you kill them. Oh and yeah, you don't even give them a sec. Dude, I remember when like the controversy in Grand Theft Auto Five when they were talking about like oh you know women and stuff. It's like dude, like I'm pretty sure there's only like two deaths that must happen that involve a woman in that game. Everybody else is a guy, like who dies. 
all of the people that you're shooting are guys, like in these confrontations, or like the villains that get killed are guys. And it's like, yeah, but you don't even think about it because it's just that's just how it works. Like men are the people that you fight and kill. Um, and they have no relevance in the story at all. Like they're entirely just there to be killed, they're fodder. Um so it said you got derailed from the main topic hard. We're literally on it. Oh no, <laughs> like, not Eva. But, but, but we're on it <laughs> right now. That, even if that was true. Yeah. Oh no. Um, um, and also, someone said that was. Secondary characters are more narratively disposable. I... Someone said that was ahead. deliberate in Black Widow, as if that's a counter. It's like, it's not deliberate. They tell us that the widows are mind controlled. They do not tell us the men aren't. But everyone assumes yeah. that they aren't. So. They just because kill them. they die in, yeah, the, the, and the reason why you assume they aren't is because they die and the story doesn't give them any consideration. Yeah, That's why no you character ever says, wait, are those guys mind controlled? Should we save them? That's not deliberate. Yeah, That's an like, accident from the shitty writing. They didn't realize. They were like, no, they're just foot soldiers, guys. Don't worry about them. I don't know. Yeah, because like, that's normal. Take... It's normal to have men in the background who get shot because no one cares. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> if, if you want to look at movies like, I don't know, like The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, right? You have all of the crew of the Nautilus, they're men, a lot of them yeah. die. You have yeah. all of the baddies in the helmets, they're all dudes, and they all die. No one gives a fuck. Nope. Nobody cares. It's fine. They're just disposable but soldier men. It's if you fine. had a female soldier, I feel like even the audience would be like, oh, and then she gets shot in the head or something. We'd be like, oh shit, well, she's, yeah, okay, wow. Oh no. Which I guess, <laughs> that maybe that opens another interesting can of worms there, though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, uh, should that be the way that it is? Is that the way that it is for a yeah. reason? And does that inform these tropes too as a sort of counterbalance? Yeah, right. And as I guess and, and when we talk about like the whole female characters are often in secondary, blah, 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 blah. Um, so first off, we, we, we don't even know if that's true. If female I characters don't know that that's that true. Role, that would be which my I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely not ready to make that claim. Are you implying that if it was the other way around, it would be better? I think does it need to be even? Or does she want it to you know? be even? Well, the idea is yeah, she's explaining how we got here non-maliciously, oh, I right. guess. Because she's saying secondary characters are more disposable. Okay. Female characters are often secondary characters. So she's like, these are the reasons why we ended up here. You know, lots of women in fridges. But I, uh, I don't know the... I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that. And I do wonder... Um, doesn't that expose that it shouldn't even be about women? It should be about characters that this happens to? Secondary characters. Yeah. Can we not fridge secondary characters, it, I guess? You're blocking out a lot of, like, flaws in, in, in writing that... Because if someone's like, well, I did it to a guy, so whatever. And it's like, you, well... I mean, <laughs> isn't the point that you shouldn't do it to a character? Well, it doesn't matter if they're a girl or a guy. Well, surely, yeah. if we're... If I, I, if if the problem is killing secondary characters only to push the main character forward, then it should be an egalitarian thing issue. Yeah. Don't kill people to propel the main character forward in general, overall, period. Yeah, it's this not worse because it's one gender over the other. It's about what it, what's the point, what's the context of the story? Right. right. Um, this this keeps plus, overlapping. We wanna, sorry. You go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. This keeps overlapping with the orc thing for me. Like uh -huh. these extra as extra credits problem seem to be that it's an issue that movies are focused in one particular direction on one particular character, and it's bad that every character in the movie isn't treated with equal focus and complexity. It's like, well, the story's not about them. Like, sorry, yeah. like movies are about like individuals well not every movie but like you see it on a, a lot, lot of, of posters time. right you got the big guy in the middle or the woman like the big head face <laughs> gender doesn't matter right it's characters right you got a big character in the middle and then you got a bunch of secondary characters surrounding them that are kind of smaller in the poster yeah. and that kind of encapsulates the story right where it, it's telling you here's the character we're focusing on and the reason we're doing that is to make a more central point clear like are we supposed like in the the latest halloween movie like every one of like michael's victims that survives or something are we supposed to then follow them and the, we have an entire sequence about them dealing with their trauma and like it's, well, yeah you could do that that's, infinitely you know yeah. like it's not Ex about yeah, them. exactly that that's kind of the thing is stories there is a limited amount of space in a story yeah and you need to make decisions about who you're going to focus on and you know, just in general, when it comes to like people and uh, and like you know, stories usually 
in fact, you could say almost ubiquitously have a main character, the person who is the most important, like the one who it is about. Um, yeah. And, and of course, you know, like stories will, a lot of stories have like two characters who are basically the main characters, like Wallace and Gromit are both the main character. And if, oh, but then again, you could argue that Gromit is really the main character in terms of like <laughs> his role in the narrative. I guess that's, that's where horror gets interesting to think about. Yeah, in I have to defining yeah. a protagonist sort of thing. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. got to put up with this fucking cheese file all the time. <laughs> and well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, but I, I guess that's the thing is like, and now I'm just thinking about British comedies in Faulty Towers. It's like Basil Faulty is the main character, but that doesn't mean that Sybil isn't also like a main character. Yeah. Um, right. Or uh, or I can't believe I'm Man or Manuel. Um, like these are all main characters. I guess that's that's the point, right? Is like where you def draw the line in terms of significance or importance and how much focus you can uh, should be giving to somebody. It's it's vague. It can be difficult to figure out. Um, which is why I find these sort of very prescriptive writing rules to be restrictive. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's be. Um, you know, maybe she's got a point that we're leading up to, and it's all going to make sense. Well, yeah, I mean, depending on if this idea is that you need to stop doing this, you're going to have to come up with an alternative. Yeah. See and you're going to have to come up with a lot of alternatives. Because little... fridging is very common. There's a little book that says Aristotle on it. Does she? It just has... Oh, why? <laughs> it's just why? Aristotle. Well, it's, yeah, it's, just... it's about Aristotle by Aristotle. <laughs> it's yes, the Aristotle. Aristotle. Just one word, just Aristotle. What, what's the other one? What's the other one say? It's too blurry for me. Uh, Here, I can I can go to the main video. Yeah, I don't I don't think Watch Together does 1080. It, it, it like reduces it. Also, uh, why is there like a white outline around the black outline on the uh, oh, on it's the character? Complete works of Shakespeare, I think. Complete. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Just, I got that. Can I scroll it before like the that. the Odyssey, <laughs> the a uh, Aeneid? That's, I I can't pronounce that one correctly. And the, the Iliad. Iliad. Yeah. So we've got Machiavelli. Ooh, just Machiavelli. That's, that's uh, not what library. It, it's, it's called the Prince, but okay, <laughs> like that's what it's oh, actually he, called. Maybe he, <laughs> well, maybe he wrote other. You know, he wrote uh, an autobiography called Machi. Maybe yeah. he did, and I'm gonna look like really stupid. Hold on. What? This one says li looks. library stacking for dummies, and the the pit and the no. The, happened, yeah, the one on its side on the third or, or on the second row, I I can't or the second shelf, I can't quite. In the third one either, I can't I can't make that one out. Hmm. Or the oh, little ones, the, yeah. Are you looking at the books and, and the yes. background? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that a lot many of them are about the. Some of the smaller ones have text, and some of the bigger ones don't. Yeah, yeah, what's with the blue yeah, one being yeah, blank? Yeah. I want to know what the blue one on the bottom right is. Come on. Oh, that's uh, it's Mark Twain. Oh, right. <laughs> disproportionately affects female characters, often barely developed mons or love interests whose only salient character traits are the hero likes them. So when they're brutalized or murdered, often off... That's not, that's not no, no, usually their trait, trait is that they're like just a really good person. They're just that's a normal good person usually. They have. Very thin, yeah. but fine. Yeah. I still don't know that I would complain it's at that point. I need... You know, like, the example we gave, it was, like, clunky as fuck dialogue and, like, a blatant, um, sort of... Yeah. We know exactly what they're doing, right? There's no... You can see right through it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's not a trait of they're yours that somebody likes you. That That's no. totally independent of you, so it's, it's not a trait of yours. Yeah, because they could like you even if you're a horrible person, so... Well, yeah. they could like you and not even know you, and you Traits might not even Traits are your them. attributes, not what other people think of you. Yeah. I suppose someone could say you are you are likable. That's one of your traits. Yeah, yeah. that's but, different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's different from what she said, though. Odd. There are more nuanced male hero fam slash love and unhappy about it. In fact, that's a very easy litmus test to help determine... Okay, so now I'm getting a little bit annoyed because I feel like I should pause every time she brings up a new screen to read it first. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, test number one. Would it hit the same if it happened off screen? Is the only audience impact how much this upsets the character when they find out? But it... I, you've just highlighted a point at, in favor of like yeah I think this is the options that you have this attacks her point overall because is it bad for that to happen if someone dies yeah. off screen do you know who died is off screen it was incredibly fucking meaningful I'm gonna Aunt Peru and, and 
That wasn't off. Well, I guess you could say that's off screen, but you saw the corpses. What I'm saying is you don't even see the person at all ever. Oh. Yeah. Uncle Ben in. Uh, and uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Spider Man Civil War. Civil War. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, to a degree. Okay, I was just, you know, my example was going to be Owen from Bly Manor. We all have examples. Yeah. Ah. Where it, uh, Owen it, it, from, it, from what, sorry? Bly Manor. Um, his mum. Oh, okay. He talks about her a lot in the story. Right. And never at see one her. point she dies, never. and it's done through mm. a phone call, yeah. and we never actually see her or anything. It's just like, damn. It's and so it, it she, hits. She got bridged, though. Yeah, it That's hits really happened. hard. And so the law, the logic of would it have been the same hit if it happened off screen? Is like I don't even know what you think you're proving with this. Well, yeah, because deaths can happen on screen that are pretty like it's just like oh okay, but then you can have a death that happens off screen, but because of the writing surrounding it, it's just way more impactful. Whether it happens on or yeah. off screen should not be determining your level of empathy necessarily. It depends on the quality of the writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. None of you get the point of this video. This. It's like addressing individual points. It's like you're missing We're the overall point. <laughs> this to her this happens every time we cover somebody for the first time or like whenever. Yeah. I remember specifically High Top. Let him finish his points on Homecoming. It's like, man. This level of charitability is not extending. High top is a <laughs> cloud level for EFAP now. Like, nobody's going to be defending him anymore, point, especially yeah, after the fucking sure. Wonder Woman video. But, chat, remember back then, we got a shit ton of blowback for, for being critical of High Top. Uh, same for Filmento. He's also in cloud territory yeah. now. So. He's, a, um, he's a silly boy. And it's interesting to me because they do the whole, you know, you're missing the forest for the trees. It's like, do you know what a forest is made of? You're missing the trees for the forest. No, fuck that. Just you say, do you know what a forest is made of? <laughs> it's made of yeah. trees. That bitch is made it of is. trees. I no, I I like you missing the trees for the forest. I I I like that one. Now it's like, look at this forest. It's like, but the trees are all rotting and they're like falling down and they're just <laughs> they're bleeding. The trees are bleeding. You're missing the forest though. Oh yeah. So um, also, random trees. commenter, feel free to let us know what the point it is that we're missing. Instead of just saying we're missing the point, clearly you think that we don't know what the point is. And you it do. would be helpful. You yeah. yeah. You clearly know something that we do not know. I would love to be imparted by uh, uh, with this knowledge that you have. Please tell us the point that we are missing. I'm very so curious. The, they're not because sure when she's we're saying, physically reading They're not sure yeah. she's saying it's a bad thing. So uh, she's saying to the, the trope talk, like avoid this trope is the idea. And then if well, you whether us... or not she even says it's good or bad, that wouldn't change what our comments. Yeah, you're still was. making a lot of statements about, and also you have made statements about like shallow and good and, and bad and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, our main so. conversations are about how her um, requirements are going to make her have false positives. Because we can't, we already agreed that fridging is a thing. We just don't think that she's done a very good job of identifying it. Like, the, especially, like this, this, I say especially, it's kind of been throughout, but, you know, would it hit the same if it happened off screen? It's like, that's not a good way to test this. Mm hmm. And if she has some redeeming point at the end that ties all this together, maybe she should have opened with that to sort of frame the whole argument. And then it's like, like, here's what I think, but now let me, like, here's some, let me offer some counter Put your best or forward. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. By so, the way, like, you know, we um, can either do this where we dive into each point individually and keep pausing it, or we can watch the entire video and its duration <laughs> without pausing and then forget all the fucking points that were talked about, and then yeah. our whole discussion is a mess. <laughs> so, like, which one do you want, you know? Uh, and I was gonna say, you know, like, the, that stupid film I was just describing where, you know, like, she's like, oh, I love you, husband and kid, and then someone walks in and goes, I hate all of you, blah, 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 blah. and then blood <laughs> splatters everywhere, and she's like, ah! Like, like, just going on screaming. And if they go, yeah, would that have hit the same if she was just in the supermarket and had a phone call saying, your kid and your your husband died, by the way? I'd be like, well, I guess I guess it hits harder when we, when we see it, so... But they're both terrible. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, what... Because I mean, she's saying, like, would it hit the same? It's like, probably not, because seeing people die, like, that usually hits a little harder than seeing their grave. Mm-hmm. But it depends, because Owen, his mom, like, that one hits harder than, yeah, like, some on-screen ones, because we have the establishing elements and all that backstory and stuff. 
Oh, that's a, actually yeah, that's a great example. Someone mentioned a uh, John Aaron in Game of Thrones. He's technically speaking the death that starts the show. He's the king's hand, and when he dies, uh, it means that Ned Stark would be next to become the king's hand, and him becoming the king's hand is something many factions do not want. Um, right. And we find out John Aaron was killed eventually. But the idea is John Aaron's death motivates a whole bunch of things to happen, and it's like. We never even really find out much about him in the show, I don't think. We get a couple of lines from a couple of people about his life, but, like, it's... That would qualify, I'm pretty sure, as fridging. Mm -hmm. But, like, if someone said, oh, so I shouldn't do it, I'd be like, no, no. <laughs> like, no, I don't, I don't know why we're taking that away. Yeah. Character death uh, constitutes yeah. fridging or not. If it could happen in off screen and have just as much impact on the story, especially if it does happen off screen, it's probably fridging. It's only Oh uh, god, what a useless information. It's probably fridging. <laughs> like So okay. it might not be. Why would it think... potentially not be? We need to now yeah, talk about thanks, that. I guess. Yeah, because if I helpful. said like if the character dies, it might be fridging. <laughs> you know, like so we need more than awesome. that then. So how do I know? Yeah, how do I know if it is or not? Uh, yeah of impact is how it bums out the more important characters with no exploration of how it affects oh, the character sorry. actually being brutalized or killed. So we are saying Uncle Owen and Aunt Brew are fridging. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, are you the... saying that they shouldn't have been fridged? That that was bad that they were fridged? Presumably. Or um, I, I assume they I think guess the that's thing is, bad. I sit there, it's like, so how do we, how do, we do the story of Luke initially rejects the call to a, you know, adventure, and then there, he is motivated to do it. Like, what, what would be the thing? His home is the destroyed, whole point basically. Is that there is, yeah, the, the whole idea is there is an oppressive empire that is, you know, killing people and hurting people. An impressive How do you... empire. Oh, no, it's oppressive. Stop it. Um, <laughs> but, like, how... What what do you what do your options become then to motivate him uh, in terms of like fighting against this particular empire that is evil and like kills people who get in their way? Um, what what how do we propel him without hurting other people? Um, unless would the idea be hurt him instead, and then that motivates him? But then you could be like, well, wait, so he only cares when it affects him personally, like him personally. Well, I was going to you know say, I mean? you can easily make the, the thematic argument for their, their, their deaths. They're a microcosm of the, the damage the Empire the is doing broader, to the universe. Yeah. yeah, Exactly, yeah. So, in that sense, it's not fridging, because they're representative of other people. Of more. Um, I suppose uh, they're not... I don't think they're even mentioned by name, ever, after that scene. Um, I don't think so, no. So maybe... <laughs> The original film could be Mention tweaked. Mention their name to... afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, because if you remember when when Obi Wan dies, Luke is like pretty depressed in the uh, in the ship afterward, and then of course that gets mm -hmm. Obi Wan is mentioned many times because it was so influential, and it's just like yeah, you know, Luke spent his whole life with the uh, Arbru and Uncle Owen, so you, yeah. you'd think that maybe they Give should get small lines. At the same time, I don't know that they qualify as f being fridged. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Mm. I'm not certain if she's saying if she's uh, saying that this scene from Star Wars is an off-screen death. I wouldn't constitute this as an off-screen death because I mean, are we supposed I to would. see like his parents' flaming skulls? Uh, like, I don't know. Ah! I, I, I don't just, know. Like, like, <laughs> just holding on it gratuitously, like I don't well, think we I, need I, to see that. Uh, well, we don't need to see it. I would still consider it an off-screen death if you discover a corpse afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, it is. It is an off-screen death. Well, I think we see an on-screen corpse. What's being identified? Uh, is we th this was a time where we we don't need to see them get flamethrowered, right? Like we, that would be like because she's almost saying, yeah, like, we see, it's off screen. It. I'm like, yeah, well, it's yeah, it is off. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that this should have been on screen. The, there is no way. There's an argument to be made about what exactly is an off screen death, but I just I think there's a difference between this and say Luke just being told. Yeah, I see what you mean. Different seeing like, the bodies oh, versus being like, told oh, no. they're dead. They're seeing their their bodies. I don't know if he sees the bodies, but he knows they're dead. The he oh, he does. He does. Buildings, right? He sees his left of them. Yeah, yeah, bros. definitely a difference. It's more impactful to see the bodies. Uh, yeah, than than him yeah. being told on the fucking like a radio, like, oh, you, your uncle and aunt are dead, by the way. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How'd they die? Oh. <laughs> They, I, I, they oh. died in their sleep. It's really tragic. Um, the Empire did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Empire did it. 
You can imagine Obi-Wan did it, and he's like, oh my god, look what the Empire did. Oh, you have to come oh, with me that's now. Oh, man. <laughs> You're like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> ...is how it bums out the more important characters, with no exploration of how it affects the character actually being brutalized or killed. Getting killed off screen is such a dismissive fuck you to a character. There's no, it's no not. it isn't. It's absolutely what? not. What? What? You can't. Do, how, do we, what an incredibly stupid thing to say. We just brought up the the Bly example. It is so well handled that we never actually met her. We just get Owen's perspective of her, and then we just know that she's not got long left. The idea that she's like, well, that's a fuck you to that character. I'd be like, okay, you're insane. <laughs> like, yeah, just, how many stories have you fucking consumed to say that if ever a character dies off screen, it's a fuck you to them? Yeah, in some That's cases weird. like this, it's the opposite of a fuck you, where you're kind of giving some dignity to the death by not like portraying it in all its gratuity. Like, I, it's I mean, it's you, just <laughs> here's it's, it's for terrible you. death I'm, that they suffered. You don't really, I don't know if it was, it'd be more effective to see that. I guess I just find this confusing because, like, guess what? In your life, there's probably going to be people who die who you weren't there. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Thanos, that Thanos snaps away half of the universe. That was a fuck yeah. you to half the universe. <laughs> that was a fuck you to half the universe. <laughs> what, what a, a did, oh, what a what a dumb thing to say. Also, Jojo Rabbit. Ooh, yeah, mm, yeah. And that that is no, that handled was... fucking perfectly. I wouldn't change a thing about that yeah. aspect. Mm. Though. What a. No. I, I I just don't know what else to say other than what an incredibly stupid thing to say. Yeah. Hmm. All of those... I wanted to see Darth Vader stuff his parents into that fridge. Into um, the fridge you go. <laughs> so, so someone said those weren't secondary characters, so it applies to no matter what character you are, what we just said. It doesn't matter if you're secondary or not. Because mm -hmm. yeah, she just mostly... said an off-screen death is like, fuck you. So you could have that had... was not a secondary character's death off-screen. Like, it, so. like, imagine a character who's like the main character for three movies in a series, the fourth one, they're in the first half, and then they're like you know, they fall ill or something, and then there's this big victory, everyone's happy, he was really influential, and then you just find out he passed away during it. We didn't see it or something. Like, the idea that's like, well, that's a fuck you to them. It's like, well, no, it could be poignant for many reasons. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if the point is that they died off screen, and, like, the character wasn't there? Or, like, exactly. you know, just, I just wasn't the starkness there. Maybe of I should've. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or you're just living your life and you're really happy. And then it's just like, oh, some of you know, just, yeah, sorry, it was an accident, something happened. And then that's, like, the point. Someone said, yeah, Bambi's mom died off screen, that's right. No country for right, all men. Right. I'm not gonna say anything more specific than that. Current, because I haven't seen it. <laughs> the, yeah. the younglings got... <laughs> some, sometimes the appropriate thing is to let the audience fill in the gaps in their head, right? Yeah. Where you show them yeah, one absolutely. shot and another mm -hmm. shot, and it's like, okay, I, I can visualize what the yeah. death probably was. It's not good. I don't need to Well, there is an example in the show that you made, kind of, isn't there? Of an uh, off-screen uh, of an off-screen death. Which in a which, certain uh, sense. I'm not sure what exactly you're referring well, to. Well, you don't the... see it happen. You hear mm -hmm. it, but you don't see it. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I mean, is it that, wasn't is that necessary. Fuck you because you didn't see it. I was about yeah. to say. Do you need, it's do you need that bloody money shot? Yeah, exactly. It, it, I would argue it makes it's it much more, more powerful. It's more impactful without. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what's it? Pamby's mom definitely ended up in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 oh, nice. Probably. Uh, I, I would fridge. say the the genre has something to say about whether or not you see those gory money shots. You know, like if it's a grindhouse sort of movie, where mm -hmm. like you want to see the guys, some guy's head explode. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, like, I mean, you, we just you, watched... you expect that in that genre. Well, I mean, we just watched Squid Game. I mean, there's right. there's countless examples of you know, that happening. Oh, and shit, you're full right. Full headshots. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and full to, clarif headshots. to clarify, they've seen up to episode six, so no spoilerinos, but... Yes. Um, <laughs> with knowing what happens in episode six, I'm not going to say anything specific, but anyone who does, you know one of the very significant deaths is done while just showing a character's reaction, not the actual event. Yep. Yeah, in fact, we got a couple of those. Two of them at least, yeah, yeah. from memory. Yeah. Do uh, well, uh, that was a fuck you. To them. That was a fucking even though it was like, even though it was it's like so the so most important scene in the whole. So some people are show. saying though, if you hear it, I don't think that would. It, it still qualifies as. Ah, it's off screen. It is. It is off screen. Well, it is literally off screen. I wonder if off screen yeah. refers to just 
uh, you have no context for any of it. You're simply told by someone else that it happened. Well, then use a different definition. <laughs> say something else. Don't stay off screen. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people got fridged in Titanic by that iceberg. <laughs> by the Atlantic Ocean, that's what they got. Dude, imagine somebody uh, when that happened jumped onto the iceberg and be like, "This is probably safer, right?" Like, oh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm glad you brought up Titanic because Titanic has an example of like a very quick sub. I can't remember his name. Is the uh, you you remember the part where like they've got the guns and they're trying to stop the poor people from getting onto the uh. Yep. Onto the um, uh -huh. onto the boats, the and then he accidentally yeah. shoots one of the guys who gets pushed, and then he's just like, "Oh, nope, sorry," and then shoots himself in the head, and then that's it for him. Like, right. are you gonna say that that was like just un like? <clears throat> is there a problem with that? The fact that it was so sudden. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, this this is the problem. Is the if this video was meant to make something clear, it's muddied it completely at this point. Yeah, because now, because somebody said that apparently my take is all deaths in books are off screen because books have pages. So we're talking about. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> it, it, it is funny, right? Because... So, so can I just say, fistful? Great true, argument. Actually, true. Nothing happens yeah, on screen books. in a fucking book. You cannot refute that. Yeah, yeah. Don't, what don't the hell? I love those like gotcha for free, but like, yeah, books aren't on screens. Like, what? Yes, they you are on us. screen. Well, I guess you could put a book on a screen. <laughs> you could put a book on a screen and then it becomes oh, an on-screen Oh, that's right, that's death. right. That's, uh, yeah, that's right, Saxon. The books in Mist have screens. It's very true. <laughs> Cirrus and Akinar. That's right. Mm. <clears throat> um. So, yeah, let's... uh. Well, actually, I'm going to use the little uh, real quick and top off my... That might have been a joke. I will say, when somebody says apparently, I don't think that... I think that that means they're like, ha, yeah. fucking idiot. Right. <laughs> Use a boat. <laughs> if it's a joke. Use a boat. Use a boat, yes. <laughs> Wait, what are you writing down? <laughs> what are you writing down there? <laughs> if... Oh, it's some... There you go. I feel this isn't even representative of what they said in chat. I just think it's a really funny quote. If it's bad for someone to die on the screen, then all books are bad because nothing happens on the screen in a book. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I like it. Oh wait, someone someone to die off screen. Sorry, not on the screen. There you go. That's right, off screen. And if uh, and and if the if the idea is that, like this is taking it too literally, the problem is that I think that if we actually have the conversation about what it means to be on or off screen, we're going to start disagreeing, and at that point, I'm well, probably no. going to be frustrated with you for saying that it was taking it too literally because we will literally. disagree. Like, we absolutely will. The, uh, how far you can take this though? Because if I go, you're going to want to only kill people who are like developed, like endeared to the audience. Okay, and someone could be like, when people, I mean, uh, yeah, go yeah, go. but. Like, no. And then someone would be like, okay, you're taking it way too far. He's not saying every single character has to be fully developed. And you're like, no, no, I'm taking what he said, literally. If, if I said, it's better to have a character who's developed die than non-developed die, okay? That's my advice. It's just like, that's kind of useless, actually. Because it's just, there's so mm -hmm. many circumstances that this, this is just, just, you shouldn't have said anything to begin with. You, you probably shouldn't get upset if somebody says, but what if, and then it fucks with what you just said. That means that there's probably something there that needs reconciling well, in terms of your position. Sounds like at mm. this point, these videos are just designed to make you go, that's kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, that's, uh, and if that changes the way that you approach writing stories, <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Like, uh -oh, you could yeah. be diving down some rabbit holes you don't want to dive down. Yeah, imagine that you want to, you know, someone bursts in the room and wants to kill the main hero and shoots, and you're like, I can't have them hit the wife, I haven't given her enough development yet. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's, mm. yeah, totally. We're what a penalty, up. too. I, I cannot kill this character until I give them all of this development. It's like, fuck, I do not have enough time. Yeah. Well, it just could just be, that's not what the story's fucking about. This, this, the, it just seems to me that it's such a weird restriction. Remember, we're not mm. a fan of restrictions here at EFAP. Except. Yeah, contrary to popular opinion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's not saying that. Alright, well, uh, you know what? Everything she says that we say that she says she didn't say, we're just talking about a mystical other person with all these quotes, so don't worry about it. 
No admission of tragedy, the character becomes nothing more than a plot else's angst. Side character or not, nobody deserves that. Now, the off-screen test I'm isn't true. quite enough to say if a death is yeah. bridging or not. See, while fridging is intended solely to upset another character, well-written character oh, is almost I, wow. always upset. Wait, so are you saying this isn't fridging? This one here? Castlevania? I don't know this one. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar well, with so Castlevania. I haven't watched this in a while, because I think it's a yeah, few it's years ago at this point. Well. But, um... I'm pretty sure the idea is that Dracula meets this lady and then they get along really well and they're like, ah, oh, she's like a witch or something, and then they burn her. And that is the whole, like, that kicks off the whole story. The whole story is kicked off by he's really mad that they did this to her. And then he just goes on a rage fueled revenge. It's like, dude, that, like, that, that, you said it's fridging. Well, we'll see, I guess. But she's saying it's well written. It's like, wait, so well, here's it's the not thing. about fridging then. If that's well, this the case, follows right? the rules of anime, where if it's if it's done in an anime, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's also, what see. what was this slide? This test isn't perfect. This relates to the whole off-screen, on-screen thing. So, no, the, I guess the dead the character test. is too dead to experience complex consequences. So the survivors <laughs> are always focused on longer. So, yeah. that's not always true, but that is generally true. But, how do you get around that? That's, yeah, when you're alive, you are conscious and you can experience things. Yeah, you can, you make a bit more impact on your environment. Yeah. Oh, she's Something saying these, how do you... these are examples of how her point has flaws in it, basically. Oh, I would say that that one on the left is, like, pretty fundamental. If you're dead, you can't experience anything anymore. So, of course, you focus on the people who are still alive. Unless you're a force ghost. Unless you're a ghost. <laughs> yeah, unless you're a ghost. Um, and an on-screen death can be used to torment the main, the more important character when is still fridging if that's only framing? Okay. Sorry, only framing. while, what word is that? W-H-K-N? Which is still which, which is still fridging. Oh, is which? it which? Oh, right, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, an on-screen death can be used to torment the more important character which is still fridging if that's its only framing. Okay. If that is its only frame, right? Um, okay. Well, if yeah. the torment I doesn't mean really... anything, sure. But like. But yeah. what if it? I, I. What if the? Is it? Is that meant to be like Sephiroth or something? There. He's got like long hair. Yeah. No, <laughs> okay. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. That's yeah. the reference there. Yeah. Right. Sephiroth. <laughs> Say if, if it, the death is fridging or not. See, while fridging is intended solely to upset another character, well written character deaths almost always upset the other characters too. And since the character themselves is usually too dead oh, to care, most man. of the lingering. Well written character deaths almost always upset everyone else too. If you have a room full of blank characters, and then I walk into it and shoot one of them in the head and then walk out, that upsets all of them. That upsets everybody, even yeah. if you don't know that person. You don't even know them, so they're not well written to you. They're just a person who like, exists. Again, these yeah, casually, earlier, yeah. these <laughs> casually said things. I'm just like, but no, though? <laughs> yeah. But do tell us how that we got that wrong and that wasn't what we said. <laughs> just <laughs> set the other characters, too. And since the character themselves is usually too dead to care, most of the lingering ramifications of their death only affect the other characters. Character themselves? Sorry, hold on. Themself. Yes. All right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I always mix if if it's just themselves. If that's like the Since only the option. Since the character themselves yeah. is okay. usually too dead to care, most of the there lingering ramifications yeah. of that only affect the other characters, typically by upsetting them. So the distinction between a fridging death and a non-fridging death isn't immediately obvious from just. So this. that is I, not fridging, then. You're saying well, that Castlevania is not fridging. Yeah, but the fucking requirement, because she said it's not immediately obvious, it's like, that is what I have learned very clearly. The line yeah. between fridging and not fridging is fucking blurry. Yeah. It's very blurry, yes. Definition. The key difference is a fridging usually makes the other character briefly and shallowly, while a solid character death makes the other character That was briefly green. and shallow? Wait, what? Wait, uh, so you, a good death man. So, so was... okay, okay. So I'm just gonna do a story where I have Whoa. wife, and it's like, hi, wife, and then she gets shot in the face, and we spend the next ten minutes with him grieving, and then the story goes on from there. That's not fridging anymore, right? Because we saw. I thought the whole point of why fridging is bad is that there is no focus on the person, the was person it? who has actually suffered. I thought that was the problem, was right? But now she said that, well, if they grieve about it, like the other characters, if they mentally anguish over it, then that's good. I thought the whole point was that that's, that it does. 
I'm getting very lost. And, and the other problem I'm is, getting... like, for how long must they grieve? What is the adequate amount of time to grieve? Yeah. And I'm not trying to do this, about... like, appeal to the, the blurry line or whatever. I'm literally just like, no, wait, but if if they, like, have a scene where they acknowledge it and deal with it, and that's it, is that, is that not enough? Because it sounds like that's not enough. Some people are like that. Some people are like that. That's, that's, that's just complicated as hell. Like, I don't know that we can just... Um... Because it mm -hmm. sounds like she would say something like, you know, it needs to go forward at least into another act. Maybe she'd be like, hmm. What about, like, if, if the whole thing is... Now I'm thinking about 24, like, season 3. It's kind of different, but, like, at the end of that season, Jack Bauer just starts crying for, like, a minute um, after having saved the day. And it's like, okay, so imagine, I don't know, we have a story where, like, main character's wife dies. Well, his wife does die now. Uh, but yeah, like main character's mm. wife dies, and then he goes on his adventure, and then right at the end, he just breaks down into tears. Yeah, um, uh, and then th Thor would be wondering why. The more mainstream example, right? In Infinity War, he's like, oh yeah, of course. Thor's not yeah. giving off an emotional reaction to a lot of stuff in ways that we might expect. But then once he once everything's calm, we have to wait, and he's just alone. And he's thinking about it. It's like yeah, there it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's complicated, man. Hold yeah. It back, though. Difference is a fridging usually makes the other characters upset shallowly, while a solid character death makes the other characters grieve. Frequently, fridged characters are never spoken of again. After I was like, I'm pretty sure Luke grieved over his parents dying, but mm. she she's rather they never referenced again. I just don't know that is that because it's, it's such a like like typically the Punisher they will references be his wife again. So does he not count as fridging anymore that he often references his wife? I was about to say, you could reverse engineer this and we just have it be Uncle that they ben. never actually yeah. grieve, but they do mention them by name, like they died and this made me upset. Wow. Well, this reminds me of a, a scene in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen where we learn that Alan Quartermain's son was killed. His son was fridged and his he does he he, he doesn't like to like have it mentioned to him and it's a it's an it, it, like is that like he's fridged there but the way that it's brought up and his grieving for his son is very it happens in certain circumstances you know depending on how it's yeah, it's brought not, up not so in a situation yeah oh. so in that situation is alan's uh, alan quartermain's son was he fridged or not Oh, I got so many examples of coming into my head now of things. <laughs> um, and the reason why I'm thinking about them is because the Grand Theft Auto trilogy is getting remastered. So we got a few examples I want to go through. So in Grand Theft Auto 3, when Claude gets shot by Catalina in the chest, and then that's like the whole motivation is he wants to get revenge on her for shooting him. Mm -hmm. Would that be preferable to fridging because it happened to him personally? And we, And despite the fact that he never seems to express any clear feelings on like, you know, whether or not he's pissed off about that, except that he's trying to get revenge. Is that preferable, or is that a whole different problem? Yeah, because by this logic, um, we could fridge somebody and have a great story. So, yes. Now we're Conversely, confused. we could have a story where we don't fridge somebody, our main character gets shot, and then he goes on his revenge story, and there isn't, like, much to him at all. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to do another one. Um, in Vice City, uh, Lance's brother gets killed in the opening, and that's like a big point for Lance specifically. Um, he is not a character in that game at all. So you could say that he got fridged for Lance, but then retroactively he gets a game that is all about him. Has he been unfridged because he got a whole game where we get to learn about him and who he is? And what oh, he's is that Vice City on. Stories? Yes, that's the one. Right. Does, is he unfridged? Is it possible mm. to unfringe somebody by giving them a prequel that tells us everything we need to know about them? Uh, and thereby retroactively make them non-fridged there's a thought the fr fridges uh, can be opened and closed and fridges yeah. can be opened <laughs> so right, they fucking can. true dude so true yeah well That's do you remember true. um they can be. to, to re-reference high top i'm pretty sure point in his video was that you can't have peter parker grieving the death of tony stark and trying to uh interact with mary uh, mj as a form of trying to start a relationship you can't do that and his comment section people <laughs> being like i'm sorry like you can't grieve at the same time as trying to form a new relationship with somebody like what the hell That's absurd. yeah the, and you get into the whole like you i don't know how definitive you can be about grieving with a human being it is complicated uh, everybody's yeah. different yeah, yeah. especially <clears throat> if it's a shared grief oh you knew my father as well at his funeral oh well uh yeah i knew your father too and we've never met before he was you know i'm a son and oh i was his friend from da 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 
and literally someone's death and a shared grieving over a person can literally create relationships. Because they'll talk about what they both knew. And exactly. Like in Final yeah. Destination yeah. 3. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're referencing like, <laughs> all these references. This is one of their B facts. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This is one of their B facts where you find out the... all the shit that we've seen because we'll just reference all the stories, basically. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about the Star Wars example. Like, do, uh, can we not assume that Luke is grieving his parents by in his fighting of the Empire throughout the movie? Like, you do we need to see like, him crying in front of the bathroom mirror or something? Like, we don't <laughs> really need that. We can mm. assume, like, yeah, he's sad, and this is why he's fighting. To clarify for you, know? you, some I've seen some people say they're not his parents. They are his parents, okay? They're, oh. they're his parents. <laughs> Just because they're not blood. Like, even though they are blood, technically, because they're all gold, yeah. So, they're his parents. They, they're just not his mum and dad. Him. Well, even though, he probably would have called them... Okay, it's not important. The point, the point is that they raised him. Um, so yeah, yeah. true. It's ac action through, or character through action. You know. But I guess the big right. thing, though, would be, um, if we are going to say that it's a problem that Luke doesn't react, the criticism would be more so that it is inconsistent with who he is, that he wouldn't be upset that his parents died. Not, well, this is fridging. Like, they didn't get enough time on screen. They're just there to motivate him. Like, the criticism would be more character-centric than it would be um, some meta- Hey, this is a trope, don't do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Frequently, like, I would I wouldn't sorry. I wouldn't watch Star Wars and think like, oh well, it's been a while since they mentioned his parents. Maybe he just doesn't care anymore. And yeah, I, just, like, yeah, that would I think that's <laughs> just, just a fighting the empire for the fuck of it. Yeah, you would pack yeah. it into the general motivation he has to get the Empire out of here, the pieces of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Characters grieve. Frequently, fridged characters are never spoken of again after the arc they died in is resolved, or even before it's resolved. Try and convince me that Luke Skywalker was still bummed about Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru ten minutes later. So is the <laughs> second friend. Mm, um, I don't like, know, uh, it would be biz it would be bizarre human behavior if he wasn't. I think <laughs> it's pretty clear that, especially when you give people, that's why one of the things you do when someone's grieving, give them things to do. You know, yeah. to keep their mind off of that grief a lot of the times. If you're in a bar and someone's hassling you, maybe you have more pressing concerns. Or I'm going to take my grief and I'm going to channel that into fighting against the Empire. Right. Also, you can go, you can take this too far as well. There, There's a character, so Guild Wars 2, this story and characters are basically shit. Uh, there, there's a character whose mom dies and for like season after season after season, this fucking asshole won't just shut up about it. And he just <laughs> mopes around all the time forever and ever and ever. And everyone fucking hates him for it. So you can you could absolutely take this too far. This will be very, very character specific. Mm -hmm. um, I hate this next slide. I've just read it. And oh. For so. test number two, <laughs> would it hit the same if it killed their favorite possession? Is and it sadder, more profound, or more profoundly impactful than no, my prized collection? <laughs> so the what implication here being that the person couldn't have been that meaningful if their death is no more meaningful than them losing, like you know, a, a particular item of theirs. But the problem with this is, if I lost. A ring that was passed down through my entire family versus uh, Bob, my neighbor, who I've met three times. Like, I just, uh -huh. yeah, I'm probably gonna well, feel more for the ring. Or alternatively, if your house gets burnt down and you didn't have home insurance, it's like, you know, you know what? Like, you might be and sadder about that than that one guy you met that one time seven years ago. There are stories about this. I, I can't believe it. I think this kind of counts, but um, in God of War, the two main characters are put in serious danger for the sake of getting ashes to a particular place. Like, they will yep. go through almost getting killed many times specifically because of something meaningful they want to do. Not they, yep. What I'm almost saying is they almost value that shit above all of those kinds of very earthly, very realistic risks. What about MacGuffins and stuff, like, or some sword that has a legacy or some crazy power? Yeah. You know? Something like that. that. Yeah, like, people... Possessions can be valued. 
um, and they Absolutely. can be valued significantly in a narrative. Someone said that's what she's saying. Like, yeah, but she's saying it like it's a bad thing. Like, that's a bad thing, yeah. It's like, to, to know you got Phrygian is when they die, and it's no more impactful than a possession. And you're like, well, but that can be meaningful, so what do you mean? Mm. What if what if the point of the story is that this guy is so obsessed with his val val valuables that characters die around him, and that kind of motivates him, but then when, like, I don't know, someone breaks his PlayStation, he's like, I'm gonna kill you for that, <laughs> you know? Like, you're gonna die. I can't get another one. The scalpers, this too, they cost too much. Yeah, the Infinity War is, like, all the about Stone that. One, it's like, yeah. are the lives or the possessions more important? Yeah, that's right. Vision, the, the stone versus his life, that's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> litmus test, I'd like to propose a corollary of the iconic sexy lamp test, which explores if a story would meaningfully change if a character was replaced with a sexy lamp. This is the property damage test. If a dead character could be replaced by someone's prized Pokemon card collection and their loss would have the same or more emotional impact on the plot. What if the what Pokemon if cards were collected yeah. by many people who eventually by died of cancer what if, what and passed it down? It, yeah, I was about to say, like, what if it was his dad? It was like a cherished heirloom. John Wick, the dog was given to him by his wife. That's what gave that it meaning, yeah. that is why it matters to him, yeah. And yeah. that's what got stolen from him. Oh, there's so many counterexamples that just, like, break these rules. <laughs> Do you remember, um, Hateful Eight, when she spits on his letter from Lincoln, he just fucking yeah, punches it. Right. She flings yeah. out of the frame, and then you have Kurt, Kurt Russell just looking at her, looking back at Sam Jackson, like, what the fuck? And then he just pulled out, too, because of the <laughs> chain. I love that bit, it's <laughs> yeah. fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, reminds you... me of one of my my classes in film school where they showed us like a shot of a coffee cup and the teacher was just like, it's just a coffee cup, right? Doesn't mean anything. Or you can you in the context of a film, you can make this coffee cup mean ever mean anything. Yeah. You can charge it with a bunch of meaning or sentimentality with a bunch of scenes that precede it. And then all of a sudden when you see that cup on the screen, you're like, Oh, I really care about that thing. Like it just depends how you execute exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, you can have an item that is incredibly important to the survival of characters that is extremely like important. Like we need this thing to get us to this to safety. We need this thing to get us out of here. And if a character destroys that, the others might be like they they could be enraged and kill him because of it. Yeah, explicit. you can have a lot of fun with it too. Like, dude, where's my car or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's all revolves <laughs> around like, trying to find this thing. Dramatically, it's. It's explicit in Infinity War. He's like, I will not hesitate to choose the stone over you and Spider-Man. It's not even... It's <laughs> yeah. almost like, oh, wow, so their deaths mean less than a fucking item getting... It's just like, yes. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's like, well, that's pretty... That's a very indicative of fridging. I feel like, oh, no. And so you should avoid <laughs> it. You should not tell this story. Yeah. Yeah, you're missing what out. Wanna. Yeah, I yeah. think when she thought of this, she thought like mundane, yeah. little items, trinkets, like and my wallet doodads. or something. Yeah, or a lamp. The or, sexy or a sexy lamp. lamp. What if we're telling a or, story? Or, or, what about yeah. Luxo Junior and the story about him and a lamp? He's a lamp, and he's a person. You can make a lamp a person. <laughs> you can make a, a toaster a person. You can you can make anything well, a person. The, you can make anything. A toy they were, story. They were the, all, toy in, Story. Their possessions. They're, they they're were the little... infinity lamps. Like suddenly. <laughs> <that> was, <laughs> oh no! The infinity lamps. <laughs> and if the ultimate point here is actually no, a meaningless item, it's like well, then the problem isn't the comparison with an item, is it? It's the meaningless relationship. You don't need to bring in. What if it means less than a meaningless item? You're like, well, yeah. Right. Yeah, that character like, was probably fridged. Now, this is kind of a show, but fridging is a bad tr- Oh no! Okay, there we go. Oh, oh no! Uh, Sorry, go. all those people in chat. Bye bye! Yep. <laughs> yep. What happens when a character maybe death Maybe she's like handled? this... Maybe she's saying, what's here on the screen in text is not what I think. Oh yeah, she could still say that. I doubt <laughs> it's gonna happen, but oof. <laughs> So what happens when a character death is mishandled, dr drastically reducing its emotional impact on the audience? That's an interesting... That's bit. a statement. Hmm, alright. <laughs> because, the remember, by her definition, she's decided cool. that Owen's mother's death was mishandled. Which, yeah. mm -hmm. good luck arguing that. Yeah, by dramatically mm -hmm. reducing its emotional impact on the audience. 
Yeah, because if she was in this call uh, right now and said, yeah, but had we seen her with Owen, it would have been more impactful. I'd be like, you can't, you can't be definitive about that. You just can't. No. Mm hmm It's not a frequently misused trope or a hard day. It's bad writing. Character death. Ooh. It's, it's just, bad, bad writing. writing. It's bad writing. That is an interesting oh, statement. Oh, fuck me. Here we go. <laughs> bad writing. It's bad it's writing. Bad yeah. writing. And see, this is a big Jeez. problem because she's been so nebulous up to this point that... Like, we, we've we've given you guys so many examples of things that apparently are now bad under her definition. Oof. Jeez, do not take her writing advice. Fuck me. Certainly not this video. I'm gonna say the same I said oh, for High this... Top and for Filmento. Just one. I don't know. Just This is just the one video. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just maybe the one. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this is their one shitty video. ...are not bad trope-wise, but fridging specifically into respect for the fridged character and their narrative potential. Fridging weighs a character's not, potential doesn't necessarily. It doesn't necessarily. That's the problem. Who yeah. gives a fuck writing. about narrative potential if the story's not about them? What's yeah, if you're like, wow, you could have told the story of that guy. You're like, like yeah, I, I didn't. Told that yeah. story, but I chose to tell this story. Yeah. Yeah. You could, could tell, tell a story, story about any fucking character in the movie. Yep. Exactly the story and concludes that all their future potential and growth and dynamics in the narrative are worth less than another character feeling kind that, of bad. Okay, you've- this Feeling is kind of bad? bad. Wow, this mad. is really bad faith right here. I was about to say, like- oh. she, oh. To clarify, she's saying that this whenever a character dies, the writer has decided that their death means more than anything they would have done in life, Man, and that's we, why I've chosen it. Which is not how it works. We Ned, have fallen off a cliff right yeah, this now. is insane. Wow. Ned, Ned Stark's death, he could have. It's often I've talked about before because I really like the idea of he doesn't die there to see how everything plays out. But his death is incredibly meaningful. But his life would have been too. The idea that the writer said, nah, I'm doing it because it would be more, like more meaning comes out of him dying than living. It's like, that's not how stories work. No, this is this is the story that I have chosen to tell. I could have told a different one, but I didn't because I wanted to tell this specific narrative. Yeah. yeah, that's wrong. Just, just straight up. It's bad not a advice. zero. It's not a zero. Something of this has more value than this. It's like they have a different value. They are different yeah. stories yeah. with different. But everyone can be a main character. Like, we need some <laughs> secondary can be characters. We need supporting well, characters. Like, someone just said, "What are you?" What I are doubt doing? she would consider Ned Stark's death a bad one. It's like I know that's the problem. He counts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but carry on. Sorry. A lot of a lot of stories are good. Metal. Uh, wait, I was done, I was done, I was finished. Oh, sorry, I thought I cut you off. Um, oh, but yeah, okay. just, it, it, this is frustrating because um, I know she wouldn't consider Ned Stark's death bad. Nobody does. It's fucking great. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is that it, there's lots of boxes that one ticks, including but not limited to, you can argue that there's more meaning in him living in that universe with uh, the political positions for everybody. Tywin literally says he shouldn't have been killed because he was a really good fucking hostage. We, we, you know, it would have been much better for us, and 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 then you always have the chance of his. What I'm saying is, his death gives you story A. His life gives you story B. But you can always go to story A at any point as well. So technically mm -hmm, speaking, mm -hmm. you can argue, ah, oh, more meaning. But I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. That's how we categorize fucking. Anything. I don't know. That that's. I don't think it's that simple. No. In any change in what happens or who lives and dies, that will just create a new story. I don't yeah. have to tell yeah. any story. Right. I have no obligation to tell a story where this character lives. Well, mm -hmm. it's interesting because, you know, with us, when someone's writing a story and they're like, all right, my hero's in this room, someone bursts in with a mini gun and unloads into them, and they're in like a steel corridor, and they're really good at aiming. It just establishes that, so we're like, oh, so they die? And they're like, well, no, that wouldn't be meaningful, so they're going to survive. <laughs> and, and, and you're yeah. like, well... Okay, but you need to change it so that they're not in that scenario then, because that scenario kills them. Like, you need to do something else. Right, yeah. Um, Back to the drawing board. Instead of simply being... Because, to be fair, advice like this, I think, leads to what we end up getting. It's like, I don't have Black Widow die when she jumps off the facility in the third act, so just give her a parachute. <laughs> oh, she lives. Yeah, she lives. <laughs> we'll just we'll, we'll spawn a parachute next to her. It's like, you can't... That's... <sighs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, but it would have been less meaningful if she died. It's like, which, by the way... That's not necessarily true. It's just been funny. Because <laughs> remember, reality yeah. doesn't. Reality does not recognize the existence of tropes. It doesn't give a fuck about tropes. Yeah. There is no protagonist. Yeah. There are just things that happen. Right. Y'all are deliberately interpreting what she's saying like four-year-olds. Like, may she I? She literally <laughs> said it. We're going <laughs> by her literal writing. words and her text. <laughs> she said it's yeah. bad writing. Like, come on, come on. 
sad for a little while. This is reflected both outside of the story, since this character's killer, be it the character who kills them or the author who makes the call, demonstrably couldn't give a sh about them in their own right, instead choosing to focus on You can't say that. You can't- no, 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 You can't say that. Cannot say <laughs> that. This is you are say trying that. to no, insert no, yourself no. into the this mind real. of every story. That's- telling. that is actually a pretty significant- why would you say that they don't care, that the writer doesn't care? They clearly don't care. It's like, How hmm, the fuck could a, you know? You can't know that. You can't possibly know that. This is- um, this also, is that's wrong. Like a, that's just a weird <laughs> character judgment to make. If you kill them, that means you um, didn't care for them. It's like, wrong. wrong. Fucking wrong. This is wrong. You, you know, George Maybe Lucas you, didn't give a fuck about Vader, Sorry. did he? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> if we're talking about characters who are fridged, even then, if she's saying, if you, if you basically fridge a character by killing them like this, and denying them life in this fictional world that you don't care about them. Like, that's right. If it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Agreed. Like, I. Uh, when I'm I, writing almost... stuff and I'm coming up with characters, like, I, even if it's just a tiny one off thing where that character only appears in one episode for like one scene, I care about that character. And I, I think I think a lot about that character. And like trying to realize it as like a real person, even if it's just that they're only there for like a little blip in terms of screen time relative to the other characters. I do care about the characters. I think a lot about them, and, but the story's not about them. It's about, it's yeah. about the other people. Can you kill? They serve a role. So, yeah, I'm just. I, I guess it goes back to the whole: if fridging is just bad writing. You are going to have to come up with some serious alternatives for motivating protagonists. Or right. you're going to have to completely restructure entire stories so that we have these characters get all this depth and background and da 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 da. I, I, yeah, that, that ain't I mean, happening. That is maybe, just flat out not fucking happening. Maybe it's more accurate to say the story doesn't care about the character rather than the writer. It's like, but again, Ned Stark. He, his death basically forms all of the events to come. To say the story doesn't care about him at that point, I'd be like, I mean, I don't know about that. You know, borrow me his death. Enough. Like, when it's brought up in Minas Tirith and everything, it's like, well, the story doesn't care about him, he's dead now. It's like, no, it does. His death still it permeates through the character's fucking duties. Like, I, I don't know what else to say about that. And the idea that Tolkien didn't care about Boromir because he killed him or something, it's like, oh god, okay. No, Boromir's crucial because he represents what the ring can do to a bad or a good man. Yeah. Well, you if know? we want to, like, if I, I think she's referring to the characters who are fridged. So but, I assume but that's that the problem. they These wouldn't count. People, well, remember, she said whenever uh, a writer chooses to kill someone, that means that they believe their death means more has more meaning than their life. So, like, already that's a problem, and that's like. I don't even know that that's necessarily connected at all to fridging her overall thing. I she think just... that's general story stuff. It's... You're saying the decision to have them die will yield greater utility in the opinion of the writer than their life. Um, and that it is like that. That seems to be what the point is. And that is an interesting statement. That's all. <laughs> like, And Barney's yeah. death motivates the fuck out of Aragorn, so... Yes, it does. As well as, uh, Pippin. Yeah, uh... Yeah, what and, about and well, Frodo as well, because okay. all of a sudden he's acutely aware of like the burden he's carrying. It's like, fuck, I better yeah. be careful, otherwise I, mean, I well, might go was, down the same path. That was another thing. She made it clear to say one character at one point here, and I was just curious, like, if it motivates more than one, is it not fridging? Yeah, if mm. it motivates two people. Because <laughs> she said about the Castlevania yeah, if, one, if, it motivated like everybody or something. It's like, wait, but surely you could I still call it fridging. Well, let's stick with two. What if, what if a kid, uh, the the death of a child, and that the parents are the protagonists, and the child has died off screen or before the the story begins, or at the beginning of a story, the child dies, and therefore that impacts the parents because it's two mm -hmm. people, and assumedly the rest of the family, but primarily two people. Is that not fridging? Right. Gets, gets confusing again. Since this character's killer, be it the character who kills them or who makes the call, demonstrably couldn't give a sh about them in their own right, instead choosing the focus entirely on how ending this character's life will make another character upset for an arc or two. Their own Ugh. life and death isn't... 
just an arc or two, as if those mm. are like dismissively a whole character arc. <laughs> an arc. Can, character arc. Yeah. Can you see this? Oh, She's yeah. got like an image of oh, they they maybe invent something. They're doing something with powers. They're defending Maybe the innocent, they're getting an item, they're falling in love. Apparently all of that is irrelevant compared to their death. Like, that's what she's saying? We have to have, mm. they have to have this, we have to focus on them having the sads. And I'm like, I, mm. I just, I, I would even say that generally them having the sads is just the default of what, of what you'd expect. It's just amazing because you can apply didn't. this to literally every character that's ever died. Yeah. The argument extends beyond fridging. Uh, this oh, yeah. Particular one. ...important or deserving of focus as hurting the hero by... Pr this successfully indicates that the killer is a terrible person, but it also reflects a level of dismissiveness from the author. A love interest slash beloved Why? character can be killed or deeply, deeply hurt in a way that predominantly affects the plot by hurting another character without it feeling like fridging. This is largely a Sorry, matter of the... No, it's okay. feeling okay. like fridging now. So it's not yeah. about whether or not because something is. is. Yeah. It's, it feels like whether fridging. It feels like... The anime ruins her. Bro. <laughs> it doesn't feel like fridging here. That's mm -hmm. useful. Real fucking useful. Execution, pun intended. If the death is unceremonious and quick and off screen, that's a pretty bad sign since it doesn't really give the character their due. It doesn't highlight the tragedy of their, their life. Due. So it's no, the character isn't necessarily owed anything. Interesting she's using X-Men Origins when this was all, this is what I was talking about before, this is the villain wanted it to be this way. So you look at the events in isolation, you're like, see, this fits fridging. It's like, but what if in narrative, the villain wants to kill this character to motivate the main character to do something? This is exactly what I was talking about, actually, I can't believe I didn't even think about it. The idea here is that if they kill the wife, they'll make Wolverine angry enough that he will start trying to fight and he'll, he'll opt into the Adamantium program. Uh, turns out she's not mm -hmm. dead, by the way. She works with the villain. So I don't know why you're using this. This can't possibly be considered fridging. Mm. Like, yeah. she's, maybe... she's in on the plan. Right. Uh, uh, maybe, if it, maybe it counts as fridging if the protagonist believes the death is real. That still counts. But then, well, but, but, so what but I'm saying is... that would defy the is... criteria that she set out, I know, right? it doesn't she, really... She's the character, bad. the person who dies, quote-unquote, the wife. They have a relationship, and then she has to address this with him later, that she faked her own death to make him do what he did. Yeah, so how would that qualify if she is relevant later in the plot? Li yeah, quite relevant. Her definition was specifically that they're not relevant anymore. Like, that's it, I guess. Um, like, this film's not good, by the way, but, like, it's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of the irony here, right? Because it's, like, bad writing, fridging. It's like, this film doesn't qualify, yet it's still bad. So, so like, yeah. you know... <laughs> It just focuses on why and how this will make the main character. Every character is the hero of their own. <laughs> Screaming role. in the sky. Oh, I skipped a bit for me, sorry, I'm gonna roll it back. You did. Potential mm -hmm. lost. It just focuses on why and how this will character <laughs> set. Every character is the hero of their own story. And if they die just to further someone Wait, else's sorry, story. What is this? Feeling fridging feels fridging. bad because the dead character isn't being yeah. treated like a character, so their death impacts the death's impact is limited to the other better written characters feeling bad, not the audience mourning. So she's putting the cart mm. before the horse a bit by saying <laughs> that their death's impact is limited to other better written characters. Um, so a lot of the times a protagonist will be better written because the, the story is about them. Therefore, they will have more material. They'll be better written. They'll be expanded upon. Um, but Dude, the um... idea that every, like, every character is the hero of their own story, I was like, so? I find it interesting she's I mean, using the Padme doesn't care. as an example because the problem wasn't at all that she wasn't her own character. She had fucking three movies of characterization. Like, she's just not yeah. very well written in, like, she's not very well characterized in general. The audience doesn't, like, how much did people really care when Padme died? I remember, I was just like, there she goes. She's dead. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, that happened. And, um, now say liar. And saying that, like, her death is only going to be motivating Anakin or whatever. I, I, I guess you could say, but there's a hell of a lot going on for Anakin in the prequels, more so than just Padme's death. Um, or the her threat of her life, right? Because he does, I don't think they do a very good job of this, but he definitely believes in a lot of what the Empire represents. He makes that clear in the second and third movie. Um, but, like, the, the motive... 
being like Padme was fridged, I'd be like, I don't know if she's gonna qualify. There's so many. She's had. She has so much fucking screen well, time, and she impacts so much of the story. Yeah, this is the thing. I think it's a huge mistake for this video to say that Padme gets fridged because that disqualifies so many characters, or at least it it well it it does. Sorry, it does the opposite. I spoke. It it lumps in so many characters despite like if Padme gets three movies of existing and being a part of the plot importantly so and she dies and that's fridging i just that you i don't think you're not prepared to be consistent with this thing that you've established not at all you are just not you're not you're not going to if we press you on the amount of characters well this goes past fridging this is just this video is just like characters dying yeah um I would go as far as saying she's she's getting closer eventually to what we actually take issue with, which is just that Padme wasn't very well characterized or endearing, I guess. And we would try and fix that by giving him... Because, like, if you think about her in Phantom Menace, she's like um, a young queen of Naboo that's trying to foster some peace while the Trade Federation attack her people. There's something, there's some stuff that you can work with. And then Attack of the Clones, she's like a hands-on politician. You know, this, this again, this stuff, but, like, I think the third one is kind of where she's, like, she's Anakin's pregnant wife. That's who she is, almost. Pat, it, it, this, this opened up a whole conversation about the fucking prequels, but, like, it's, um... I, th I think you're missing the point by saying the problem with her is she got fridged. I'd be like, no, it's much more about how she's written as a person and, uh... Because she has so much screen time, and she's so important to the a plot lot. line. Uh, I don't know that she could ever qualify as being over... fridged. I don't think that's the problem. I mean, if she counts as being fridged, hey. yeah. is it just any woman who dies? Is that just what well, this is about? Some people in chat have been saying that. It's like, clearly at this point, it's just when women die. And it's like, I mean... I am. I wasn't ready to say that, but with the Padme thing, I'm really starting to lean towards that. I, uh, mm -hmm. um, all the examples tend to be women. I mean, Padme is a very strong... I, uh, <laughs> Does Arthur fridge that. himself in the Joker? Yes. He does. He does. place. Denies that character the basic dignity of being their own person. This is more than just Fuck a Fuck off. Padme sentence. was a person. She was, Dude, yeah. She was the queen of a planet. Fuck off. Well, I, I would just go... This is the thing. I don't want to under undermine, like, because I do have loads of issues with the prequels, but, like, there's a lot of... She gets a lot of characterizations. There's a lot of things she does. A lot of things she believes in. Like, I don't want to take that away from her. Um... I was never particularly invested in it, but I mean, you can definitely have references for her character. Else's story, it denies that character the basic dignity of being their own person who exists as more than just a prop in someone else's life. It takes their death. She does stuff in her own storyline that has fucking nothing to do with Anakin necessarily. Like, she makes her own decisions. I'm very confused. I don't even know what to say. This is because bizarre. the implication is that everything she does, everything she exists for is to relate to Anakin, but it's just like, I don't think Padme, uh, that doesn't count. No, it's just like... <laughs> the loss of their entire future life and minimizes its short, brief emotional impact on another character. It's dismissive. I wouldn't call the impact brief. of her death on Atticate brief. Brief! <laughs> this is kind of a... I... I just... What, what do these words mean to you when you say them? You know, I feel like we're speaking different languages. How could that be... If Padme's death has an influence that you don't feel is good enough, Fuck me. <laughs> We're in trouble. Isn't it 19 years? You can't years. kill anybody. It's like 19 years plus another... Is it 9 for the span of the OT? It's just like, that was a, that was a while. <laughs> Darth Vader, you know, you're just not getting over it, buddy. Also, now what if characters just don't get dignified ends? Like, that's a uh -oh. thing. Some kids... Some, some care. Oh, fuck. Yep. yep. Oh, fuck. so for oh, reference, no. for reference, everybody, no. there's two factoids oh. I want to tell you about. One, oh. the person who sent me this video, this was the reason. Two, oh. we've said many times on EFAP, one of the scenes that we actually think is pretty damn strong in Endgame was Black Widow's death. Absolutely. So it's the best. It's the best part of the the story. Uh, <laughs> Everyone in chat's like, like, "Oh no, <laughs> no." Yeah. <laughs> also, it's on, it's it's on screen. I I know it's on screen. I've seen it with my eyes. 
So I don't know what this is going to be about. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but this is where we're going now. Okay, well, maybe she's saying that this is a character death done right, yes. even if it stands in opposition to all of her previous stuff. Maybe, maybe maybe she's really inconsistent, and she just thinks that this one is good, but the other ones definitely weren't ever. Um, maybe that's what she says. I was going to say we could briefly review that scene and what, what meanings there, but I feel like we're going to be prompted to, so don't worry. Death and the loss of their entire future life and minimize into a short, brief emotional impact on another character. It's dismissive. Now, we're about to enter the spicy take zone because, you know, the MCU is my old favorite punching bag, but personally... Hey, same for us. <laughs> yeah, high five. High. Yeah. This is how I felt about most of the major character... Lady War and Endgame, especially Gamora and Black Widow. Loki and Vision do die fairly quickly and unceremoniously, primarily to hurt the characters invested in them, but they're given narrative weight and some dignity. Arr, I mean, it's a okay. huge payoff. Arr, okay. It's a, it's a Remember huge now. payoff for Loki as a character over. Ah, fuck. Okay. okay, I just find that interesting. They die for other people, but it's like, hmm. They're okay. given narrative weight and meaning. You see? What, what, is what does that mean? What does that well, mean? So they don't the reason I bring that they, up. They, is that that means Black Widow and Gamora's deaths do not have narrative not weight have and narrative meaning. weight and meaning, despite the fact that they are fucking significant, like hugely they are significant, significant deaths that have major yeah. repercussions. Yeah, and in terms of like consequences on existence, Black Widow's is more consequential than Loki. To be fair, so is Gamora's. So is Gamora's too. Yeah, they're both incredibly consequential. Dude, Gamora's death is the reason why Thanos wins because exactly. Peter gets pissed off and punches. And Black Thanos Widow's death is the reason why the good guys win. They win. She's the reason why they won because she did it to to bring the family together. That was her well, way of. That was her. And so that means we've nailed narrative <laughs> weight. Now we just need to nail meaning, and it's like not hard now, to what talk does about. Meaning mean? They had a they dude. All of the original Avengers are sitting there talking about how they have to make sure that they win for her. They have to do it for her to make sure that it's... And then she... Mm, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, yeah, Ooh, we've careful, barely begun, careful, careful, and it careful. feels as though she's drawn a line that's very... I was going to say arbitrary, but in, in reality, it's just a very inaccurate line. She separated Loki and Vision from Gamora and Black Widow by saying one side has narrative weight and meaning, while the other does not. Which is just an interesting thing to say. Yeah. Doesn't Red Skull say on that cliff, if you want the soul stone, a woman must be fridged? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, not to mention to it. To be that fair, exactly what happened. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I'll take it back. Unfair and tragic in universe that they couldn't be saved, feeling like bad writing. But Gamora, well, it's actually kind of fascinating. In the two movies she'd been in, her entire arc had centered on escaping Thanos and his deeply fucked up abusive parenting situation, healing and growing as a person, and learning to trust and even love her new friends. Her dynamic with Nebula was following that same track, realizing they weren't enemies but victims of the same terrible situation. Correct so far. Yes. <laughs> like, okay. yeah. I'm worried though and the same manipulative, tortuous narcissist. Thanos is as large over Gamora's arc as the root cause of all the pain and suffering in her life, and the thing that scares her most that she's constantly fighting to escape. In Infinity War, Thanos is told by Red Skull that in order to get the Soul Stone, he has to sacrifice something he loves. So he kills Gamora. Like, permanently. She's dead. Now that's bad enough. It's worse than it that's was. That's bad enough? Bad. I, why? I'm gonna- it's I'm, bad enough. I, I already, we've come across this argument before, EFAP number three, and we're gonna have to let her finish it. Because oh, you guys are not gonna like it. He kills Have Gamora, you... like permanently. She's dead. Now that's bad enough. It's worse that it works. Gamora believes that Thanos it's is incapable that it of love, works? and quite frankly, by every indication, she's right. He's a raging narcissist who can't see past his own chins, and this should have been the test of character that screwed him over. And also, meaning what? He... So, what? So, so the how dare this movie you, function? The, no, the no, problem no, that just... you've encountered here is that it is not. Um, Thanos believes that he loves her. It's not even that. that he is, does love yeah. her. He loves her. Yeah, that is, he does. Well, that, well that's it, what I'm there's saying. There's no Universal believe that doesn't it. come into it. He lo That's what love is. It's, it's similar well, to belief. It is something also, that's yeah, happening yeah, yeah, regardless yeah, yeah, sure. of your he also, choice. Um, he loves her. Yeah. He does both. But, but that's what I'm saying yeah. is from his perspective, and that is how he gets this. That, what that I, yeah. is... No, so that's how the stone rags, works. What I'm, both are true. What I'm both addressing is what her point is. She's saying the film, much like movies with Mikey did, confirms Thanos loves her. 
it's not about whether or not he believes it. It is true that he loves her in the universe. Yes. Right. And that is the issue she takes. She's like, you shouldn't be presenting this as love, which is what movies with Mikey said. Juvenile opinion. Yes. 100% juvenile. I hate, to, love. I hate to pull Rick and Morty, but even no. Hitler loved Germany or something. <laughs> but evil, evil people can legitimately love things. It's not like, oh, yeah. you're a bad person, which means that you're just disqualified from being able to love stuff. The history well, yeah, so is full I, of I horrific so. tyrants and dictators well, who loved their families or they loved their spouses or their, you know, whatever. To address this specific point in the film, the film is acknowledging that, like, what Thanos has is, like, wrong. Toxic. Like, it's fucked up. And conversely, in Endgame, we see what it actually looks like, what it should look like. Which is that these people are trying to sacrifice themselves it's for someone else. It's a great parallel, yeah. That's it's a, it's a great parallel. So like, you cannot make the argument that in universe that like Infinity War is saying, yeah, Th Thanos, man, this is this is ideal relationship right here. Like that is not the point. Well, yeah, like mm -hmm. look at the abusive dad who just fucking hits his kid every day. If that kid is then hit by a bully at school while the dad is there, you can fucking guarantee that dad is probably going to knock out the kid who did it. Like that's my yeah. son. I love him, and you're like. You love him, but you hit him. Like the, it's it's amazing to me that you're so you. Th love is the love is when you're really nice to people. Simple as that. Just like love can never be um, an influence that leads you to do horrible things, passionate thing. Like it, it's so dumb that it's like Thanos didn't love Gamora. He was abusive. It's funny because if you, if you watch him in the film. This is probably the most healthy their relationship has been. He basically just comments on how impressed he is with her. And like, yeah, Thanos' idea of like raising a person is obviously fucking horrible. He gives them body modifications if they fail battles. But from his perspective, he's improving them. Like it's, you know, yeah. he loves them. He's he's perfecting them. He's training them. You, you just like the idea is like that's not love, bro. You're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a devouring aspect to love. It's not positive in every regard. It can make no. you blind to atrocity. You can love something too much. This is literally, we just talked about Padme. That's what that is. Yep. Yeah, the whole idea is it, it overshadows like all of these other, um, you know, objectives. She, I will do fair, all of these things because I love her. To be fair, she also said he's narcissistic. Right? Narcissistic. You think narcissistic people I... can't love other people like at all? Even like narcissistic I mean... traits. You can love yourself and also love other things. Love isn't okay, some zero sum yeah. economy. Like I have to divvy up my love points. <laughs> just, um, what a just what a what a really just horrifically bad point. It's super juvenile. It is extremely. Uh, I just I'm trying to think of the word. It like two dimensional levels of analysis. The, these are very complex things. <laughs> Love is an extremely complex thing. Yeah, I don't. I just don't think Bizarre. being a narcissist makes it impossible for you to care about someone else. It'll it'll lead to that. Um, and he, I don't know that he's a strict narcissist because Thanos clearly cares about people beyond himself. Mm -hmm. Um, it's what makes him much more interesting than a he's lot of. He's still a villains. bad person. Absolutely, like, he's still a bad person. He thinks Thanos can't love. What? Well, that but would the, be a mistake, again, the right? Is you you got to remember. Yeah, it's that's from, wrong. It's POV. It's what he. It's it's his perspective. Yeah, because it's if you remember, perspective. This is what I think the film's point was. Because Gamora's like, "Lol, you can't win because you don't love anything," and then Thanos yeah, is like tearing the, up. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, he cause knows the what he's going to do. The soul stone is it something that you value personally that you're that um that is being given up. Um, so th there is no, like, objective arbiter looming overhead, like, well, no, you don't actually love her. Like, that's, that's just not how it works. And again, when we just talk about the broader story, it is a parallel, because his version of love is absolutely twisted, whereas the version of love between uh, Nat and Clint is like, that's, th they're willing to sacrifice themselves for the other. Mm -hmm. Let's see where she goes with this point. I just because I'm thinking about it more and more, and I'm like, Thanos is like characterized specifically as looking to save the world. 
And you could be like, yeah, you could still be a yeah. narcissist if that's what you believe. It's like, no, but I mean specifically, he's almost, he's willing to die to make sure that everyone else can now live. Because I'm ignoring Endgame for a second because he becomes a fucking crazy person in that film. Um, <laughs> Infinity War, he's talking about how like he's trying to save everybody and that he's motivated because he tried to do it before he was prevented and everyone died. Like, the idea that he doesn't care about anyone else, it's like, I fucking, I don't think so. And even if you could apply that to particular interactions he has with people, he still loves Gamora. I'm sorry. He does. Remember, like, the test he ran to see if she would kill him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he did that because he doesn't give a shit about what she feels and what she would do. He, he's only himself. Like, Come on. That right. looms large over Gamora's arc is the root cause of all the pain and suffering in her life and the thing that scares her most that she's constantly fighting to escape. In Infinity War, Thanos is told by Red Skull that in order to get the Soul Stone, he has to sacrifice something he loves. So he kills Gamora. Like, permanently, if she's dead. Now that's bad enough. It's worse that it works. Gamora believes that Thanos is incapable of love, and quite frankly, by every indication, she's right. No. No. Just- th that just no. seems so fucking immature to me, I'm sorry. I just do not take fucking writing advice from this person. Don't fucking do it. It will lead you nowhere good. Thanos is incapable of love. Why? Because he's mean. Because he beats <laughs> people up. He's a raging narcissist who can't see past his own chins, and this- Not true, actually. It's literally like what a child thinks. And also, yeah, also, yeah but he's but not it's just not true. Narcissist. Like, the idea that he has no- He's characterized as big picture man. Everyone else yeah. is not, like, in yeah. the film, that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what he keeps saying, like, you know, they didn't listen to me, they said I was mad, and then everything went wrong. He like, also so, acknowledges uh, Tony at some point when they absolutely. fight. Absolutely. Like, oh, this is where I'm, I'm starting to completely... Your name. I've almost like, completely damn. flipped on my position over the past, like, half an hour. I'm, not, I'm starting to wonder, like, is he a narcissist at all? Like, because... <laughs> I'd... No. I don't think he qualifies, because it's not about him. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's not really about- Well, I mean, remember, his logic is that he is willing to basically destroy himself in order to achieve this goal. Well, if, if it was all about like, him, then he'd just gather up a bunch of shit and just fuck off somewhere to take well, care of why himself. Would his why would his object- yeah, why would his objective be about saving the universe? Saving, yeah, the and, universe. And going to a little farm where he lives alone and nobody knows who he is and what he did? Like exactly, he won't and he's like, and like in the fight, he's like pretty what? much at peace that they're gonna fucking kill him because he's like, my job's done. And remember, remember, Endgame Thanos does actually say like he's not upset when he sees that. He's like, my job was yeah. done. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think he qualifies. And even if he did qualify, that doesn't mean he's incapable of love. It's worse yeah, I than don't it think works. this person knows what narcissism is. Clearly not. They're just, or they're really bad well, they, at analyzing characters, but they something's just, up. They really don't like him. So, because I find that narcissism, narcissists can be thrown out for like anybody you think is a piece of shit, basically. Well, I mean, Tony is a narcissist, but he cares about people. Exactly. Clearly. Clearly. You could say the same for Doctor Strange. People. You could say the same for Loki. Yeah. And I'm not talking about shitty Loki from the TV show, like, even before <laughs> that. Hmm. He's the one said he's, <sighs> he's less obsessed with saving the universe, more obsessed with proving his plan was correct. It's like, I don't know that you can say that that's the way, true. Uh, even, by the way, proving that your plan is correct is how you save the universe? I was gonna say, like, how can we even- how do you even determine this? Like, he's got- his goal is to do it. He's like, no, his goal is to prove his plan was correct. I don't think we find him going around the universe saying, see, I was right, when he does it. We find him, as Fring just said, on a farm, making some food. And on his own, yeah. Yeah, there's no way. We is. can't make that argument. None of you know what narcissism is, please stop talking. So here's a big fun fact. Rags made it clear earlier. <sighs> if you want to just add with Fuck the extra me. characters what we missed on your comment, that would be great. Yeah, if you if you t if your brilliant addition to this conversation is nuh uh, <laughs> maybe put a little bit more work into it. Like, you're wrong, law. I, I, I looked at the <laughs> definition, by the way. Like that was one of the things that I was doing. You probably didn't hear it, but I was looking up the definition to be sure. I mean, this yeah, person I clearly doesn't fucking know what narcissism is if you if she thinks that Nan thanos is a narcissist then she just doesn't know what it is once again she's using a word that she doesn't know the definition of 
there are several qualifications as far as I'm concerned um, in terms of definitively making it uh, without looking at a definition. I'm pretty sure it, like it, it involves just caring about yourself more than basically anybody and, and like a, you result in basically not caring about what other people think and feel. They don't, that doesn't get taken into account into your actions. The thing is, I think Infinity War actually takes steps to show that's not the case for Thanos. He does a lot of things that are unnecessary to his goals that only tell him things about other people because he's interested. Exactly. I want to see what this person's going to do. Yeah. I, I want to be impressed by other people. Yeah, will Star-Lord kill Gamora? I want to see if he does. And then he says, uh, I like you, I think, before he leaves. It's like, how, how is that? I, mm. <laughs> like, it just doesn't seem to... Fall. I'm more than happy to say he might have tendencies. I'd have to rewatch it, but like... To, to, she's saying it to the point where he doesn't love anything but himself, or he's not even capable of love. But at that point, we're not even talking about narcissism. Isn't that just like psychopathy at that point? Is it sociopathy at that point? Or, or sociopathy? I thought it, I I mix them up. Sociopathy. <laughs> yeah. You guys, words so, mean whatever you need them to mean at the time, so you can win the argument. Right. Oh, that's right, the definition yeah, of that. words. It's just the definition it's, of words. It's just kind of funny <laughs> that she, what she's essentially doing here is putting out a plot hole. It's like, you're supposed to have to love the person, but you didn't. Plot hole. <laughs> but it's really hard to prove this one. <laughs> ...believes that Thanos is incapable of love, and quite frankly, by every indication, she's right. He's a raging narcissist who can't see past his own chins, nope. and this should have been the test of character that screwed him over. And also, like, you must... So, wow, three wrong she's, things in a row. She's Brilliant. almost suggested, it's like, see, that would have been the way the story should have gone is that he realizes, damn, because I don't love anything, I can't even get the stone. But it's like, isn't it more meaningful to be like this horrible monster that you've been trained to hate? He actually loves somebody. And then yeah. the universe confirms it, meaning like, oh fuck, how does that make you frame him as a person? He loves someone, and he just gave them a- And then of course he says, it's like, what did you lose to do this? And he says everything. He loved Gamora, I'm sorry, he really did. <laughs> Yeah. Kill your loved ones to get this powerful MacGuffin and become strong is like baby's first obvious secret test of moral character, and it's frankly cr Yeah, you have no room to be saying baby's first anything. I you <laughs> analyze media with the mind of a child. That's all that I've been able to really soak up from this. You're not capable of complex analysis of these things. I thought you said tropes were bad, but now you're saying that what they probably should have done is the trope of the, the, the test where you do something evil, it's actually a trick. And by not doing the evil thing, you become a hero. You've just identified that as a common trope, and now you're saying that that would have been a preferable alternative. Well, yeah, hmm. she did. She did say that Gamora's death on its own is bad. Yes, she did. She said that's bad enough, um, which yeah. makes it even worse than that. Obvious secret test of moral character that killing your loved ones was actually the only way to get the stone. That's just lazy writing. How is that why? lazy why? writing? Why? Lazy writing. Why? 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 Oh, I don't know. Like, you, you had the grimdark option and you had the actually option and you picked grimdark because you thought grimdark was automatically more interesting. That's just disappointing. Oh, hey, look. Marvel I thought you used... said that the alternative was babies first. And she said, hey, look, Marvel used killing is bad as a secret test of character all the way back in the first Avenger and Cap passed because he's a good person. He says he'll kill. He just said he doesn't want to, but he will. And he does. <laughs> Cap kills a lot of people. A lot of people. Like in the Triskillian and all those people who are on his side. Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> we, try, mm -hmm. <laughs> we try to avoid mentioning that. <laughs> you had the Grimdark option and you had the actually interesting. You picked Grimdark because you thought Grimdark was. Ooh, so we've identified now one is Grimdark, one is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, as if Grimdark is inherently uninteresting. I, you can call Warhammer a lot of things, but uninteresting is not one of them. Just, it's, it, the amount of stuff that gets said without being explicit by her, yeah. <laughs> like... Automatically more interesting. That's just disappointing. It'd be bad enough if they just oh, okay. undercut Gamora's whole personal arc by saying that the irredeemably evil overarching... Is this not tragic as fuck that Gamora spends yeah, her whole tragic. life trying to like mend wounds from the the abuse she's faced from Thanos convincing herself every day that he was just this horrible monster never loved her and she's trying to make it all better and then she finds out that not only is she gonna die here but that she was the only person in the universe that would allow him to get that stone what, yeah because right. he loved her like it's how is that not incredibly tragic. meaningful Gamora is mm -hmm. a great character
This was <laughs> She's a this was a character. harsh ending yeah. to her story that I don't think yeah. undercuts like what? the potential other stories you can tell. I think this is a great ending, and we're gonna have to see what they do with it's her in Guardians well, it's, Three. It's a great ending for her, and it's also a really good piece of development for Thanos in this film. I'm starting to think the issue really is we can't give these bad tragic endings to female characters. It's just they're, they're you, you get to the point. You can't argue like, that this mm. has no weight though. Like she said that the other two had weight, thereby implying this one doesn't. This one has weight. This so, one has um, huge it, amounts of weight. Of course, this has weight. She's decided that it it's has... almost contradictory. Like, oh, you spend your whole life being like, oh, he is abusive, but he loves you. Okay. Like, what? <laughs> Why view it that way? <laughs> her villain who slaughtered her people and tortured her in Nebula for decades, really loved her all along. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Truly, I'm a tragic hero. N n okay, see, this is no. He okay. So, so this um, feels. This feels. Uh, this feels. You're bad. bad. Faith. He's bad the faith. villain. <laughs> he is the villain. You're bad at your job. He is. He is the villain. And he's got. Look and, what and you not, made look, me it's do. It's 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 bad. It's bad, and the story recognizes that it's bad. Yeah, and and it's so complicated too because Thaddeus is sitting here like, what the fuck. Like I had to kill. Because he was going to keep her alive through everything, seemingly. Yeah, that like, was his plan. He was just going to—he yeah. was going to protect it because he fucking loves her. By the way, <laughs> that's why he's trying to appeal to her. The scene where he offers her food, remember? And she's like, yeah. "Fuck off!" And he's like, ah, "Like, yeah, I know you don't like me." Um, I'm a tragic hero. Okay, whatever. He's, he's just... not the hero. What the? F I don't. Oh, I don't. I'm just. Well, he believes. Yeah, no, no. Like, he if, believes. Like, if that's yeah. He believes yeah. that. But the story doesn't. <laughs> and that's... <laughs> okay. The villain who slaughtered her people and tortured her in Nebula for decades actually loved her all along. It crosses the line twice by having him prove that he loved her by murdering her. Gamora's entire arc and place... Wait, why, why, the why is that a crossed line? It? Why is You're that not, a crossed it's line? Cross, crossing the line to confirm it. Why is that crossing the line? Uh. I don't get it. I don't know. I have no clue. It's hard to follow because she's, I, she's saying all of this as though we've already agreed with her, but I'm still like, I need bonus information because I'm just so far away <laughs> from agreeing with her. Twice by having him prove that he loved her by murdering her. Gamora's entire arc and place in the narrative is undercut and sacrificed to give Than- No, that's so, it, it's a little bit of a, a bit of a, he didn't, he didn't, the proof that he loved. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> he, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. That's the thing. Um, it didn't. He loved her, despite killing her. That's the thing. Well, if he hadn't yeah. have killed her here, he would still have loved her, right? It wasn't. He it, he didn't love her because he killed her. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, the, the logic. The then, logic yeah. was well because his logic was, uh, this is more important though. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. I love Honestly, her. Honestly. I would imagine oh, I have to kill her. his priorities are probably his life, then the plan, and then her. Because obviously he can't do the plan if he dies. But if yeah, the plan yeah. cost his life, I believe he would do it. I believe he would have yes. done it, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, using the... I mean, remember, he used the stones, that hurt him enough, and then when he destroyed them, it almost killed him. Yep. And uh, the he idea that he's anyway. doing that because he values himself over everything else, like, I don't believe you. Um, and yeah, I yeah, think he valued right. her, like, as number three. Like, everything else came below her, and then the plan, and then him. Just to make sure that he could do the plan. Well, yeah, because I don't mean to miss and uh, explain that. The plan is first, but not if, it, he, like, his life is what makes the plan happen. So he needs to be alive, so of course he values being alive. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if his death made the plan happen, he would have done it. If Red Skull had said, yeah. like, you gotta toss yourself off this cliff and everything you want to happen will happen, and he knew that to be true, I could see him doing it. Yeet! Yeah, yeah I could see him doing that. So I said, I'm no, coining the EFAP tra term ragging Kruger effect. It's when Rags Google something for 12 seconds and thinks he knows <laughs> what he's talking about. Yes, well, again, none... feel free to display that I don't know what I'm talking about. And we gave many, many and examples also, of how he is not a narcissist. Only Rags does this. <laughs> oh, well, uh, so I was about to say, all four of us have not disagreed with Rags' take. All five of us know what narcissism is. Like, <laughs> and to be fair, 
I'd be like, she probably does too. I just don't know that she's thought whether or not clearly that Thanos actually qualifies. Because as you can see, okay. she's very much, she hates him as a character to the point where it's muddied her ability to judge him in terms of his characteristics. Mm -hmm. I think that person might be underestimating the value of looking up the definition yep. of something. Wait, like, wait, you, you, oh, you look up the definition of a word and you, all of a sudden you know what it means, do you? It's like, yeah. It's yeah I mean, I did it. It up. That's pretty much <laughs> why I did it. it up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just, you get the broad understanding of the word, it's going to be fucking useful. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's a meme, but seriously, if you just like look at Wikipedia articles, you'll end up being more informed on a lot of things, like on a lot Absolutely. of topics that you talk about, than a lot of people. A lot of people so, don't even look up things on Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> so, Doctor, if you'd like to explain to us what narcissism <laughs> is, feel fucking free. Otherwise, shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> Yeah. Gamora's entire arc and place in the narrative is under to give Thanos a character trait that makes no sense for him and to make Star Lord sad so he acts makes dumb no in the sense finale. To him. So, oh. so Wait, you just said make Star Lord Wait, uh, act dumb for the finale, but that is a huge yeah. consequence. It means that he wins. It's Thanos a massive wins. consequence. I, I don't like her death contributes to the destruction of half the universe's lives. You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry, you can't. And well, also, she's like, decided I, I it's it dumb though. I find it really frustrating as well that it's like, I'm pretty sure that of all of the characters in the film, Gamora has some of the most, has some of the most screen time in the whole film. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that she might be like second or third in terms of total amount of screen time. I just don't like the idea that it's like, oh, we're tossing Gamora to the side, like her stuff doesn't matter. She's got her stuff going on with Peter. That's all, well, yeah. that's all happening for her. That's a story that's happening with her. Hold on. Infinity War screen time for characters. I need to know. I need to know because you can't be mm -hmm. calling it fridging if she ended up had. Yeah, she has the she has the second most screen time. Who's first? Jeez, behind Thanos. Thanos <laughs> has the most. Then <laughs> then Gamora, then Iron Man, and then Thor, then Doctor Strange, and then Star Lord like. at ten. Yeah, I yeah. So she has the second most screen time. That isn't. I thought the whole idea with fridging is that you just like toss them to the side and they got nothing. Yeah, yeah we've, we've, we've right. really deviated, I feel, a whole bunch from the original concept. Well, we've she's, really broadened fridging out. She is cramming this square peg into a circle hole. She's just like, get yeah. the fuck in there. <laughs> like, this doesn't count, though. <laughs> I mean, well, if Padme as a, if Padme was the, that was the setup, right? For, oh, fr fridging to you just means some batshit insane thing. Now we're going to Gamora. And I'm like, you, we're, we're just in crazy land now. You should... You are not the kind of person who needs to be making a video on the subject of fridging. You're a terrible yeah. at it. We, we, we push back on a lot of her rulings, and then we push back on the examples, and then when we got to Padme, just complete disagreement, and now we're in actually dangerous territory of like, so this is actually really good, you, don't, you have no idea why, yeah. seemingly. Again, do not take this person's writing advice. Don't fucking do it. I'll say don't take this, this video's writing advice. I don't know... Because I don't know. Well, what I haven't seen said. her other yeah. stuff. Oh so yeah, I maybe her other yeah. videos aren't shit. That's very true. Um, Probably not. But yeah, because she 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 said that it cuts off Gamora's story. What I think it gives it a very tragic ending, considering how yeah. the perception that Gamora's had her whole life. She doesn't even want to believe that Thanos loved her because of what he did to her. It poisons your perception of how awesome love is. Like yeah, love's complicated. Makes you wonder when it's was like it makes you wonder when you have permission to kill a character at that point. That too. Like yeah. if killing a character just ends their story. Like, well, like can are you ever allowed to kill a character? Mm. Like when is it acceptable? Hopefully maybe, she'll give us, maybe in the next yeah, that's give us an I'm example hoping of how we're it's gonna done get well, yeah. examples yet. See. I need I need a dichotomy him. here. That's what Prove would be very it. useful. Mm-hmm loved her by murdering her. Gamora's in arc and place in the narrative is undercut and sacrificed to give Thanos nope. a character trait that makes no sense for him and to make Star-Lord sad so he acts- I love that she said a person has a character trait of can love which makes no sense. It's like, I don't even know that I can say that there is no character that can't have that trait. It's like, you'd have to be literally a, a sociopath or a psychopath. I also get them confused. They, yeah, they Maybe I could Google like it for 12 seconds and I'll know the answer. <laughs> the kind of per like like Michael Myers type, where they just like they just they are singular in their goal of just they like to tear people to shreds or something. It's like can this person love? It's like seemingly not, Se seemingly not.
Terminator. I don't know the. Yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> like, but is, you know what I mean. Like, we have to go to some extremes to be able to get to those. Like Thanos is a fully on. He's like a person. He's he's got all the the person stuff going on for him. The idea that you've just been like he can't love. It's like, oh man, okay. Dumb in the finale. Oh, and to make Thanos sad, which is given more focus and weight than. Oh yeah, look at the her death. It makes a bunch of it makes Nebula sad, Thanos sad, Star Lord sad, and it fucks up an entire plot line. And it allows him to get that stone. See, frigging. It's like. Oh. I don't know, these seem like, <laughs> like, it seems like a lot of consequences, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, I thought if a lot of people were motivated or affected, yeah. yeah, I thought that was good. Are we also, because we've already had contradictions, shall we, shall we add this to the pile? It's certainly affecting more than one person, and it affects the world. This this needed, this needed a lot of redrafts, this video script needed Fuck a yes, lot of redrafts. This is something that bugs me with a bunch of YouTubers where like they they're it's not like them. Me disagreeing with them isn't the problem. It's like when they're so certain about their position and then on top and of that, it's, so it's like wrong. they're sitting on their fucking armchair, which is ironically a trope <laughs> yeah. in front of the fireplace. Uh -huh. And it's like, what? Why sh am I listening to you? Like, have you written anything? Do, do you did, did you study what it is you're talking about? Like, not necessarily that you you have to have well, gone like, do to you know school what the or words anything, but... mean that you're using right like yeah that. basic stuff like if she had framed this whole argument at the beginning with just like well i'm experimenting in writing and i'm you know i watch a lot of movies and here's what i think i've noticed some patterns then, yeah 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 and just like even if she's wrong it, it wouldn't be such a big deal but like she's just so certain of like she this is how it writing. is you guys okay <laughs> Yeah. yeah like, well, maybe this isn't how it is. Maybe you're just a little too certain of yourself. That bugs me. <laughs> maybe love is a like, little all, bit more you, complex <laughs> than yeah. good people do it. All you, all you need <laughs> is a fucking webcam, and all of a sudden you're an authority on on something. Well, in this case, like, a I, pencil. I gotta tell the world. Yeah. <laughs> I have a webcam. I'm an authority of something, then, right? Mm-hmm. Makes Star Lord easy. sad, so That's he acts enough. dumb in the finale. Oh, and to make Thanos sad, which is given more focus and weight than Star Lord being sad. Because obviously, making the pure evil villain kind of bummed out was. Well, he's not pure evil. That's... You've just called him <sighs> pure evil. I don't even think it's possible to be pure evil. That's like one of those Lovecraftian things where I'm just like, you just, you just, it's one of those made up things. Like, no one's pure evil. I don't unless, think that's possible. Unless they've got some kind of weird specific definition, like they're a person who mainly Something. does horrible things. Yeah, but that's just being mostly evil. Yeah, um... It, she's like, it was given more weight to Thanos than it was to the guy who's dating her. And I'm just like, I don't know, the story is very much about Thanos. Starlord is still... I mean, Starlord's given a moment here that, like, changes everything as a result of Gamora's death. Like, it's not exactly insignificant. Mm -hmm. Remember, it... yeah, I guess we can continue. I got Worth to the go cost still. of one of Marvel's most interesting heroines. Like, what we're going for. So she's pissed heroines that Gamora died. Heroine is what yeah. you say, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, it adds, I think it is it, the fact that she's a woman. I'm, I'm just fucking convinced of it. She's annoyed point, because she liked Gamora a lot things. and Gamora was killed. That's, that's it. Yeah, I liked her a lot too. Like, this I'm used to happen all the time do of her. when I was in my single digits and double digits. T t basically, zero to twenty. Yeah, I used to get angry when characters I liked died. I, yeah, it, it sometimes then it sucks. Then we grew up. Yeah, you you have to sort of look at the story a I'm bit sorry. more. It sucks. Yeah, you, know, you know when Anthony Hopkins yeah. died in Mask of Zorro, I remember being really fucking upset. I was like, no. Yeah, I liked him a lot. But the fact is, like, you can't. It's a very meaningful can't. death story. Like, ugh, whatever. <laughs> it's just. <Wow. laughs> Wait till someone you really care about dies. Fucking hell. I'm just, but like. The cope, you know, make a whole video about how this is a trope in storytelling Jeez, and it has yeah. to stop. It's like, all right, calm down. <laughs> like, come more what's, what's, well, what's the date on this video? This might be a video made of copium. Oh. I'm not sure if this is if this is right after, like, in game or something. Well, this, no, this is relatively new, Maybe, actually. Yeah. But she's clearly, it's clearly a position she's upset with. But it, it didn't work well, it was a bad idea, and it completely undercut everything Gamora had had in the previous movies. So, nope. not only was it a good idea, it really brings into focus exactly what Gamora's story was. It was a person who was convinced 
the, the Thanos, this creature's everything that's bad about her life was him. And he was a monster, and he ruined everything. And as much as she did absolutely find love with all of these new people, she comes back to Thanos to be able to address him personally. She has this horrific realization that he did actually love her, and that that was the nature of their relationship. Mm -hmm. That's just, I don't know why she can't find any meaning in that. I, I find that quite, it's, like, it's just classic tragedy right there. Mm -hmm. And it just recontextualizes Tried everything she me. knew. Um, Which is very disappointing. Meanwhile, Black Widow's death is similar to Gamora's, but is bad for different reasons. Oh, God. No. Everybody, oh, sh oh, oh, let's continue. Okay. Okay. Guessing game? Everybody strap it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, All right, let's oh, let's, let's go ahead and guess that game. it's about yeah. propelling Hawkeye. Her death is just for Hawkeye. That was that was what yeah. I was also gonna say. Yeah. He yeah. gets to live yeah. while the woman dies. Um, I'm thinking, what else could it be? Would the same oh, argument be made here if it was Hawkeye that died? No, no because he's a guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is clearly a female centric thing. <laughs> right. It was it was so so at first, but now I'm thoroughly convinced. But seriously, they'll put yeah, helmets um, on and stuff. Okay. Oh, oh is, she's gonna say something in here, and if you've been watching all of our coverage of Black Widow related stuff, especially the video I made of Black, Black, Black Widow, she's gonna say some video that's gonna trigger the hell out of us. Oh, <laughs> I'm holding on to my controller. Oh, God. Because uh, unlike Gamora, who had too much character weight and potential to warrant her unceremonious oh, death, uh -oh. Black Widow was. She had too oh, much, and oh, we, they, uh -oh, they worked uh -oh, too uh -oh, hard I, on no, her to I, kill her. I feel like you no, gotta, no, no, no. She just said she just said she had too much character, so I think it's yeah. So it's clear what she's about to just suppose oh, about. Oh, right, what she's oh, saying is man. that Gamora was killed when she had so much potential, oh, I, right? I get it now. I think yeah, I yeah, see yeah. what the setup. Where are we? Is. Where are we going? Meanwhile, Black Widow's death is similar to. Bad for different reasons, because unlike Gamora, who had too much character weight and potential to warrant her unceremonious death, Black Widow was completely underutilized by every other movie she's been in, with the arguable exception of Winter Soldier. We had this franchise for- Uh, Man. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Right uh, then. Wrong. <laughs> so a lot of the people that we cover, right, you do wonder, why have you decided this is your vocation. <laughs> what are you doing? Why do you, th why do you, maybe the problem is that you feel like you're qualified to talk about these things when you have no clue. She's sitting when in an have... armchair in front of a fireplace. <laughs> you, she you must just be. have, this person has no fucking clue. I don't, I don't know how you get to this point because if you watch the MCU, right? She does start out pretty thin. She is a defected person who is agent who works for Fury and is good at fighting. You're like, okay, fine. Then Avengers is basically it... drops an anvil on her character's development. There's so much. It's this huge bulk of like, okay, she's a full-on person now. Um, Age of Ultron does the same thing. Tries to add to what we already knew while pushing it forward. And Winter Soldier, is, that's like my favorite part of Winter Soldier at this point, is all the stuff to do with Black Widow. Civil War is incredibly important for Black Widow. Oh, um, yeah. And then yeah, absolutely. all of these films through line is that she's desperately trying to create that family that she wants. Um, mm -hmm. to, to be able to trust people again, because she's just learned her whole life not to. And to right. save the world, which is going to undo all of the damage she's done in her past lives. That is Black Widow in the MCU. She is very well characterized. She is very well fleshed out, and I'm very tired of people saying she's not. Um, mm -hmm. Just pay attention to her scenes. It's all there. And so, making her last scene, she kills herself so that Hawkeye doesn't have to, so that the Avengers can save the world, and so that the family can remain mm -hmm. intact, is incredibly meaningful. It tops off all oh, of yeah. the payoffs of what she's been running through in this whole storyline. Full circle is what that's called. Great death. You don't need okay. any more Black Widow after that. You've completed the story. Ignore her fucking solo movie. We yes, have, please. Let's do. see. We have uh, someone saying Rags the Qualified. Yes, I am far more qualified to discuss this than she is. I think that should be pretty <laughs> obvious. Um, I don't fucking care what qualified. Like, if, what are we talking about? Like, whether or not you've read certain like, books or trained or whatever? Basic level understanding of the material I'm talking about. If we'll just that's the qualification, we'll set the bar yeah. low. Yeah, we'll start set the bar low. 
Because generally, that's kind of all we really ask for in EFAP is this, are you just have, do you just have a decent understanding of what you're talking about? Because yeah. a lot of the times, just be pretty, you don't have to be like super familiar, but you know, decently familiar. And then the rest is sort of you and how your thoughts put that all together. Um, we have, this is an interesting one, Fringy, since you're our moral compass, you'll like this one. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> this guy said, this guy said, Rags is wrong. If someone can't be pure evil, then can someone be pure good? It's pretty doubtful. I don't think so. I do not no. think that a human being in their current state has the capacity to be pure good. With, it, with the idea that purity is 100% without blemish, flawless. Well, um, you know how well the... I guess, oh, wait, wouldn't you just, just put them in a difficult situation where they have a choice that's very morally ambiguous and see what they do? I just don't... I just well, yeah, that's where it gets to the point where you can't even achieve it necessarily be because perfectly good. none of us all agree on what course, perfect good even is. Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. what, it, what is good. That's complicated. But then there's also the fact yeah. that, you know how when we're referring to, like, perfect evil or pure evil, we were, we were going to robots and psychopaths that only stab. Meaning, like, like, meanwhile, pure good, we're looking at essentially the same the other direction. It's going to be like a robot that only does perfectly good things all the time. You know what I mean? It's like they almost and don't again, have a character. What does it mean? What does it mean if you're a robot? You don't have any free will, potentially. Right. So does like, the fact what, that you do good things as a part of a pre-programmed script mean anything? Yeah. What does that I mean? mean the does I, it mean something to the person who made you, you know? Yeah. Well, are you even, can you even commit acts that have a moral component? Yeah, that's kind of the point I'm getting. Yeah. yeah, Like, my toaster doesn't do something moral when it pops the toast <laughs> out, you know? It's not yeah. like, I ah, that, that was moral. the morally right thing to do, toast. <laughs> toaster. Yeah. Didn't burn your house down, so you did the moral good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so let me see. Let's uh, press on. For a decade, and we never got an arc for Widow that was deeper than she's hot or she's boning the Hulk. Oh, there you go. Wrong, there you go. Wrong, there you go. Wrong, there. wrong, wrong. wrong. Wow. I'm so very, very wrong. I that's think a what you happens, problem, I think. Like, I don't know. Her, yeah, I don't see how you missed that. There's, no. there's a whole. Oh, oh. What was I, cool well, about... I remember when we rewatched Age of Ultron, and you just like even in that movie, you're like, "Hey, there's like there is something going well, on here." A lot of black. She, so stuff. she's she's talked about that stuff. So I think it's just easy to acknowledge. Just you do realize that there was an arc going on for in Civil War that has nothing to do with like romantic relationships or what she looks like, right? There was a whole arc there about trying to maintain this family, and that basically that she's going to try and take the most pragmatic approach possible in terms of what's happening externally, in terms of this conflict, to try and keep the group together. That is her arc that has nothing to do with her being attractive or her liking Hulk. Hulk is not even in that story. Or do you think that she had nothing happening in that film at all? I don't know how you could possibly come away with that interpretation, but... It's, it's <laughs> oh. just so hideously bad faith, because like, how it's the wrong. hell did you watch all the scenes with her getting... You remember it's when very, Endgame... It's, it's very bad faith. When yeah, Endgame starts is. up and you have her basically organizing the whole discussion between all these different characters across the world, yeah. they all go, and then she starts tearing up. I was like, man, this Yo, is awesome that we're giving her scene. so much focus. She's yeah. playing the scene! Mm -hmm. The scene where that happens, and where she talks about her values and what she's lost. All like of what it, she's though, lost in is informed by the prior films. Yes, it is. It and all the come work out they put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Decade, Man, and we never got an arc wrong? for Widow that was deeper than she's hot or she's boning the Hulk. This made her no. narratively disposable, but you can tell. No, she, no, no, she's not no, disposable. disposable. She's not narratively disposable. Well, she's well, one no, of this the main makes sense. Characters. Well, well, think about what she's been saying before this in terms of <sighs> characters who are. At first, fridged, but now it just seems to be female characters who are killed. Period. If you kill a character, as she said, then I th then the author thinks that character is disposable; that their story is not worthy of continuation. This, as wrong as it is, mm. this is it slots right into this other stuff she's been saying. Right. There's an irony there, though, that if disposable means like disposed of once they've completed their use, is like well, technically that's should be the case so for everything, actually. Who dies, well, I was just going to say that should probably be the case. You should probably stop showing and doing things that aren't relevant to anything. If, if you're done, yeah. Yeah. If they're done. But, uh, no, Disposable, she was... I think, kind of means that they can be discarded at any time. Yeah. 
That's what I think their narrative art. When they're most potent. That's what it makes me think of, and it's just like, she isn't that. She's not that at all. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Maybe in Iron Man 2, maybe. (laughs) But not by this stage. No. Mm -hmm. The writers realized she was too disposable for it to be because for the first half of Endgame, they speed run the whole characterization process by suddenly giving her no. some character focus. No, 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 <laughs> no. You just weren't paying enough attention to the other movies. This, it's almost a payoff rather than a setup at the beginning of Endgame. This is a payoff. I because think this all is a payoff, the family yeah. has been torn to shreds. Half of them are dead. Yeah. Like, How this is, is the speed running? <laughs> Well, so she, she's arguing that she didn't have character to the point where they had to just and show a bunch of character it, yeah. in order to kill her. Right. Which is something that um, it does tend to happen in, in a lot of, like, classically bad movies. What I mean by that is, like, we have a new kind of bad these days that we deal with, but older bad ones would be like, yeah. character we've never met before is suddenly getting loads of focus at a scene. You're like, wait, what? Like, then oh, they're about you're to die. die. Yeah. You're gonna die. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And she's arguing that that's the, that's the case for Black Widow. So she's getting loads of focus right now in Endgame because they're going to kill her. Because they realize she didn't have any meaning before that. It's like, you weren't watching the movies, apparently. Mm. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Man. Dynamic with the other heroes and an alleged personal arc about Trish is a found family on the world. Alleged. Alleged. It's not alleged. <laughs> alleged. She, li- she literally says in Civil War, staying together is more important than how we stay together. Like, I don't know what more... Uh, alleged. It's hilarious. <laughs> alleged, yeah. It's not really. <laughs> nah, it's just not <laughs> alleged. Really. It's wild. You are the, you just need I think maybe it's just purely operating from memory. Like these maybe. movies are years these movies could be years old at this point. But then rewatch them for the video if you're gonna make this You point. should, yeah. Um <laughs> or or get or I don't know, like you have the footage of the scenes and they're and they're always in different aspect ratios. But you have the footage of these <laughs> scenes. You should watch them, and you should listen with your ear holes. Mm. Not a bad um, idea. Ugh! Allegedly, it's amazing. All the all the scenes they put in, and it's just like, yeah, whatever. It was an attempt to make up for lost time, so we'd be sold on her heroic scenes, but it was clearly token. The make fact that the movie lost, completely stopped token. acknowledging her death five minutes after they got back is... What? That's not what it, I mean. I wanted more acknowledgement, but it is acknowledged in the funeral. It is acknowledged, Jeez. yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Five minutes after, so they have the scene where the the Hulk they is the bench the and, and talk about yeah. But like, talk about it. To be perfectly honest with you, isn't it soon after that we end up with the we're actually doing the plan, and then the war happens. Yeah, and what? How are you going to be able to acknowledge her during the middle of a giant battle? I mean, like, this movie's thinking, really like, stupid, by the way. Like, yeah. there's a lot of problems with all that. But, like, oh my... Oh, I can't deal with this. This is, this is sad. It's frustrating. Really it's... just kind of indicative of how little she actually matters. Oh my Sacrifice. god. Sacrifice got every hero in the MCU paying their respects, a protracted funeral scene, and an entire movie well, about how hard Iron it is. Man is the main... I... Like, he is the protagonist of the series, so... Um, I think... <laughs> I uh, I don't agree with the because of the, it's weird that she's bringing up Far she, From Home. It's like, like yeah, Widow it's probably, fucking yeah. Spider Man's surrogate dad. Of course he has he's relevant yeah. to Spider Man's solo film. Black Widow got her own fucking movie as well. But um, and she did the important got part her of, little dinky grave for some reason. Well, I was gonna say the important part of the point that I actually think is true to a degree is that uh, she made essentially the same sacrifice Tony did, but didn't get as much. Uh, no, and I do think that's a mistake. Yeah, um, because of yeah, course, I would agree, but the funeral scene for Tony yeah. is is not just in world; it's also meta. It's like if you remember yeah. the feeling of Endgame, it's like we started with Iron Man, and here we are. Yeah, definitely. Like he he gave the shot for everyone else in the MCU. That's what that funeral represents beyond the narrative stuff. Um, so I can agree with her to a degree. To a degree, but I don't like this whole argument. The MCU to move on without him. Tasha got a bench in a lake and a solo movie a year and a half after she... What, what, just so, a bench in a lake, that's it. Why just is she, t- why is she saying it's else. a year and a half after as if the amount of time it took to release means it's less meaningful? <laughs> it's a really weird also, way to look at storytelling. A uh, year and a half also. I mean, flawed point is COVID it is. got that's delayed. Not, yeah, I mean, that's not that long. Well, yeah. It was actually, yeah, you're right. Year. And... But, but what if I said, like, oh, yeah, you know, the, the effects and ultimate things of, uh, I don't know, Empire. It's like three years we have to wait until we see that. Three, like, I was just about to use Star Wars as an example. Just like, that's really that's a really odd thing to say. 
Three years. <sighs> hard it is for the MCU to move on without him. Tasha got a bench in a lake and a solo movie a year and a half after she died. So yeah, she, uh, no offense to Black Widow, Iron Man was more important to that world than she was. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the guy yeah. revolutionized technology. He's... I, 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 like, what? He organized the Avengers. I don't know why he's just saying this like she should have had the same impact as a loss of the world that, that he should have. It's like, well, no. That would be uh, bad writing. <gasps> an entire movie yeah. about how yeah, hard it is it. for the MCU to move on. Got a bench in a lake and a solo movie a year and a half after she died. If we were supposed to believe she really mattered, the story should have acted like it. And well, you mean like because her death oh. saved the fucking universe? Like that kind of means that she mattered, I guess. If you look at it beyond oh. whether or not someone was crying an hour later, Jesus. If we're supposed Proud. to believe she matters, then she should be brought up in Far From Home. Like, which, by the way, she was in the opening, right? She was. Yeah. Like, like visions. I, I, this is unbelievable. Like, she didn't really matter, did she? It's only the soul stone. <laughs> what do you Should have acted like it for longer than just like the hour long dying to advance the plot for stupid contrived. So, do you want character development or don't you? I need you to make up your mind. All right. So, she's calling the acquisition of the soul stone stupid and contrived, by the way. Just the aspect of you have to sacrifice something. Sure, you love but I mean, the it. whole time heist was stupid and contrived. Well, but you're not talking about the whole time heist, are you? I don't know that I, <laughs> I hate the whole, like, Vormir is this thing that was presumably created in the universe that if you want to collect these stones, if you want to get this one, we can put, like, a curse on it, you know, mystically, that you have to give up something yeah, yeah. you love in order to get it, which is going to be harder for someone I'm to do, typically. But yeah, I don't, I don't hate that. The, the time travel bullshit is way stupider than that. Absolutely it is. ...to her dying to advance the plot for stupid, contrived reasons. Was she just getting too expensive? Is that what the problem was? No, it matches her storyline just... perfectly. Yeah, this will... The explanation for this involves you being familiar with the character, which you clearly are not. Yeah. So... Like, of course it doesn't mean anything to you, because you didn't watch any of the Black Widow scenes in the other movies. Care, <laughs> like, you don't care, yeah. I'm back, what did I miss? Everything. And nothing. Hmm. Perfect. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> and it's kind of telling that the MCU or undercut all four of those deaths in one way or another. Loki and Gamora have time-displaced versions with zero character development running yeah. around to replace their more yeah. interesting dead versions. Vision right. got an actual- Yep. No, okay, so, yeah, it's, well, yeah, but they're new characters, yeah, so. Yeah. Um... Well, I, I, I was going to say, this is opening a huge can of worms I don't even want to get into. She's like talking about how these deaths are kind of undercut by the fact that people are returning. It's like, they, that was actually an issue yeah. that we had, but Loki isn't Loki, so... No, yeah, Loki's just a, new, Loki. just a completely new per. Yeah, like, whereas Gamora literally is a new person. Yeah. And then... You have Loki Vision is just a weird pseudo same person. And then... Person who's changed inexplicably. We don't know what they're doing with Vision yet. We'll see. Because he's come robot right now, it's and then shit. yeah, and, and then we've got Black Widow got her own movie, but I'm guessing that's uh, let, let's see what she says. Vision and Wanda got to actually grieve. Plus, he's got his own not quite happy running around now for future appearances. And of course, Black Widow is finally getting that soul. Remember the thing where all the clip, all of the clips are, especially on the whiteboard, they're all different sizes and ratio, you know, aspect ratios. Some have black bars on the top and bottom, some don't. And it's all in front of a white background. Um, like, uh, to be fair, some, masking. some of these movies are in different aspect ratios, and that's just, at that no. point, that's a matter of... I don't, I don't like it myself. I like to force aspect ratio, but if some people are like, nah, I want to use the original aspect ratio for all clips in their native you know, thing, it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's all just, it's all just weird. Solo movie we will proper send off in WandaVision, and Wanda got to actually grieve, plus he's got his own not quite the same copy running around now for future appearances. And of course, Black Widow is finally getting that solo movie we were promised, which is a damn hard sell at this point now that she's already- It wouldn't have been if it was good. Wait, <laughs> it's a hard yeah. sell if he's dead? <laughs> Shit. I mean, isn't Metal Gear Solid Five like, the best-selling game in the series and the main character of that? Well, nobody yeah, wanted to see the prequels, right? I can right? be one better- I yeah. God damn it, Mahler. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted I, to see I, yeah. how anything got to the way that it I think, was. Um, I think I used to be like, oh, there's there's kind of a point there. Now I'm like, nah, there's no point really at all. <laughs> like, it doesn't I mean, I think part not. of it, part of it might be what that ending is. If the character is just like, had a ruinous, terrible, 
like ending and everything it's almost it's it's kind of like um like game of thrones in a in a way where if you saw the well, final season first it'd be like do you want to see how it all got here well, i would be I understand course, how someone would be like no. I, red dead redemption 2 most of the characters that you focus on are dead and you know it <gasps> right most of them are dead like dutch is dead after it's pretty safe when you're playing it to assume that he's gonna die bill is dead javier's dead it's like lots of them are dead, but like you're still interested in the story because you want to see how they got there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not an argument. Oh, they're they're dead. It's like well, yeah, but they could be really interesting people. Yeah, that's dumb. You'll find that loads of people have been arguing this movie should have been about her and Hawkeye, their history. Like yeah. that's yep, not yep. this insane awesome. fucking plotline they went with. It's like no, <laughs> the problem was that she died. It's like no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a shitty right. movie. <laughs> this is a shit movie. Yeah, make me appreciate movie. her even more mm -hmm. retroactively. Mm -hmm. We're promised, which is a damn hard sell at this point. Now already dead, and thus frankly irrelevant. If the deaths had been probably what? irrelevant, is, it's mind of a child. Mm -hmm. Mind of a child. Irrelevant. I thought one of the points you were making was that when characters are dead, they can still be really relevant, and that that's like good writing. Well, no, but now she's, you're saying that she is just. We irrelevant. said that she didn't. I thought she did. She didn't said that she when you kill a character, was... their uh, impact is gone, right? And we had an offshoot. Uh, yeah, about. but then she talked about Castlevania and how, like that. Oh, well, she is still relevant because it informs everybody else. Well, was weird as well. So yeah. it's possible. Yeah. It was also oh, weird because anime, this is a right. prequel as well. So. You know, yeah. So. Her being dead, it's like, what do you mean? Well, yeah, she's doesn't... she's almost doubly wrong because. This is a time where she was alive, <laughs> so she's yeah. there's still things that she can do that can make us go, oh, wow, she did that. Now that she's already dead and thus frankly irrelevant, if the deaths had been properly impactful and narratively worth the cost, none of this rollback would have been necessary. Oh. I think I'm what curious. Is, what I need, a, what I need yeah, examples I of rollback. good characters, you know, that are done well with good deaths and good endings. I need to get the comparison between the bad and the good from her. That, that'll that probably be the only thing that'll help me just understand what the hell she's talking about. Because here we've got no standard other than gender. we got no kind of set of criteria. Now, in, in fairness, okay, some characters really are plot devices in the stories and arcs of more important people. Wait. But what? That, okay. Wait, but that just Is destroys that everything. Your, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But, but not all those mm. other ones, but some are, but not all the ones that I've mentioned or that I've ever existed. Uh, Only make, halfway. How can you make a rule and then just make the opposite rule? <laughs> like, <laughs> can we just play Gothic Phone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> In fairness, the fact of the matter is that characters are not real people. <laughs> characters are parts of a story, and they exist to further a narrative. And some of them... You could say that every character Everybody is a plot device. Everybody is a plot device, yeah, mm -hmm. in some sense. The plot is their existence. I mean, mm. yeah, yeah, it's... Really, yeah. actors are not real people. Characters are parts of a story and they exist to further a narrative, and some of them really are just props in other characters' lives. And that's not a morally bad thing. Whoa, so oh. she's saying that prior to this, she really was saying it's morally bad to do, like, the fridging. It's not, mm. it's not even just bad writing, uh, it's morally bad. Um, mm. Morally bad? Like, like if I'm making Why? a chair wrong, the carpenter isn't just like, you're not, you're not just fucking it up in terms of, like, you know, how you make a chair. This is also a morally bad thing you're doing. <laughs> like, you shouldn't be attacking the wood Did this she way. really say that? Well, yeah, so it's an, an implication. If you listen to what she says. Characters are not yeah, let me people. see. You. Characters are parts of a story to further a narrative, and some of them really are just props in other characters' lives. And that's not a morally bad thing. But yeah, there is an implication. It's not, so, a, it's in, not in, a morally bad thing that some people, some characters are props to other characters' yeah, lives. Yeah, meaning there are times where it is morally bad, meaning the stuff that she's been yeah. over. That's not because exciting. now we're in the portion of yeah. okay now to time to talk about characters that are fridged qu qu technically speaking but it's not a bad thing not a morally bad oh, thing oh okay all right morally let's acceptable see. the story probably shouldn't make you think that sure we the audience may be able to guess that the hero is a small peaceful town and stern but fair father figure just exists to get torched by the dark lord in episode one to set up the inciting incident and set them on the hero's journey but the hero doesn't know that and that's yep. what's supposed to that's... be important about wow well, sure but 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 that isn't 
I mean, Go ahead. <laughs> the, hero, the hero almost never knows that. Like, the the, the, the meta of the story, they were only kill. Because, actually, X-Men Origins Wolverine is probably the only example I can come up with where they are aware that the person was killed, or in that case, framed to be, faked to be killed, to motivate them to do a particular thing. Mm -hmm. So now is she, she's suggesting that when they are aware it is bad, but that 99.9% .9 of stories, they aren't aware. I think I think the idea is, in universe, the hero is not aware that they that they are like on a hero's journey and that their family is going to get fridged. When are they? I think that, yeah, that <laughs> that's what I think. That's what I think she's saying. She's saying that the hero doesn't know that all these things are going to happen. Which yeah, is like, so, of course, because if they knew it was going to happen, they'd be like, "Let's go." Yeah, but so yeah, that, that's the, the point. Yes, up. that's you're right. They don't like, know. That. Obviously, but that's like true. of course they don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And she's and she's saying like that's the preferable thing. It's like that is the 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 thing. That is, <laughs> that is the thing. Well, I, I, I think yeah. I, and now, now I'm confused. Well, let, let, let us listen to her again because that shit is confusing. Able to guess that the hero of a small peaceful town and stern but fair just exists to get torched by the Dark Lord in Episode One to set up the inciting incident and set them on the hero's journey. But the hero doesn't know that, and that's what's supposed to be important about this. To the hero, that's their whole world. Torching that town yeah. and icing that father figure off yeah. screen just tells the audience that the hero might theoretically care, but we don't have to, and the story won't really Wait. convince you that the hero does what do you mean, care. What does that? What does that have to do? Wait, sorry, that that is totally disconnected from what you just said. That's like a totally different point. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a totally different point. I mean, this point essentially gets into you how are now well talking about meta. I'm lost. <laughs> I'd have to listen to it again. I got uh, lost. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, go for it. I'm gonna go back even further because I'm really trying to see what her point is here. But the story probably okay. shouldn't make you think that. Sure, we, the audience, may be able to guess that the hero's small, peaceful town and stern but fair father figure just exists to get torched by the Dark Lord in episode one to set up the inciting incident and set them on the hero's journey, but the hero doesn't know that, and that's what's supposed to be important about this. So I want to pause you there just for a sec, because you, you hear that whole point, right? She said you that maybe we will be able to guess it, but the important part is that the character doesn't. It's yeah, like, so that is like all stories. All of the stories that you've, yeah, yeah, because yeah. characters don't know that they're in a story. They don't know that they're. It a sounds like in a story. We're fine now. That fridging isn't even a thing because <laughs> it's yeah. all fine. But anyway, let's let it continue. To the yeah, hero, that's see. their whole world. Torching that town father figure off screen just tells the audience that the hero might theoretically care, but we don't have to, and the story won't really convince you that the hero does care. It disconnects us from. So life. this is more execution of the idea yeah this yeah. is how <laughs> this is all execution of the concept some things do it well some things do it poorly some things do it in the middle this is all in execution because the concept is there's nothing wrong with this concept it's about how do you convey this information to us the audience so you've totally shifted from the character who who's kind of removed from this now now we're talking totally meta this is about mm. us you started talking about the yeah. protagonist. Now you're talking about us. And am I misreading this? She just said that if, like, if we see it all happen, then we know like it's meaningful to them. If we see it, if it happens off screen, and they're told, then theoretically it matters to them, but it won't be impactful to the story because otherwise we would have seen it, which is just wrong. Absolutely, that's just wrong. I mean, we've already talked about the impactful off screen deaths. And what I is mean, it? Like yeah. that was one of the. That was one of the early things that just got us to just go. And what Whoa. about us seeing Alderaan explode, but Obi Wan not seeing it? Like, it's super meaningful well, to him. It, yeah. Well, it would be meaningful to him whether or not he like felt it through the Force as well. You know, say for Luke yeah. as well, right? Like, it's it's a whole planet. And the idea is like, yeah, but they did, they we weren't shown them watching it, so it's probably not going to be impactful to the story. Like, I'm curious exactly how this works. Hmm. I feel like that curiosity is not going to be rewarded. No. No, hmm. not at all. <laughs> Someone we're supposed to be relating to. And an under of the death, when the emotional impact of the death is the only thing this trope has. Now, if the father figure had been with us... Well, no, the emotional yeah. impact of the death can be presented, information-wise, to the audience in a very meaningful way. Again, that that's execution of the idea. But also, it's not the only thing that it has. What if I have a story where um the character who gets fridged is like, well, I mean, we got Ned Stark, right? The, his death is significant in terms of just politics. Like, the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just the emotional impact, it's his place within the world. So what if I fridge a character 
then it's not strictly the emotional impact necessarily. It could also just be logistics. Well, John How Aaron, does this world operate? John Aaron's the one that people were referencing at the beginning of episode one of Game of Thrones. He's the, he, it begins with his death, and we don't really right. know anything about him in the show. Uh, we know a little bit about his relationship with some people, but ultimately it's strictly a political death. He dies, and it forces right. a bunch of po politics things to happen. I see. And so yeah, but yeah, there's we can just get, yeah we can create so many different examples of um sort of these events because it's like it, it's implied there's a key component so you gotta have that it's like so what if we didn't and it worked <laughs> like that's basically all we've been doing yeah. this whole video. For say two seasons or the first act or two of a movie, serving as a mentor figure, for instance, we would expect him to die with some fanfare, and we'd be weirded out and upset if he didn't. A heroic sacrifice, a dying monologue. But again, if we do that, right? Um. You know, like, uh, there's got to be movies I could reference here, but I'm just going to make one up, I guess, because I, I can't think of one. But if you do that, like the Anthony Hopkins, for example, in Zorro, or someone else, mm -hmm. just um, if the death is quick, after they've been so meaningful and so in introspectful, and they've helped the heroes so much, and they've told them like all about war and death and stuff, especially if they talk about how death is so quick and stuff like that, and, you know, it's just something tragic happens in the middle of the next fight they have, and they're gone. You don't even get to say goodbye, sort of thing. That can be really, really meaningful. I don't know why we're blocking out sudden death. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. we would either. When, if yeah, anything, sudden quick. deaths are actually uncommon. Oh, yeah, Obi-Wan. Like, the Tarantino sudden death is uncommon. Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan? That's a sudden death, yeah. And that so it made guess... me think of uh, Goodfellas when Joe Pesci gets shot. It's very quick. And it's like, Godfather that's kind of reflective of... Too. Well, yeah, and, and it gets into the kind... question of what does she mean by fanfare? Because mm, yeah. did Obi-Wan's death have fanfare? Technically? I don't know. Serious Black, yeah? Something yeah. Like... That's actually a great fucking example. Serious Black, because it's in the middle of, like, they're ha almost having fun uh, when they're fighting back against the Death Eaters, and then the right spells cast and he's just gone. Hmm. I don't even like Harry Potter that much. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Admission that the hero made him a better man and so very proud dies so we remember how he affected the hero's journey if we didn't get that kind of thing we'd feel cheated but just because no, we because the it's on us to no, think about do. that what See, if they do all this all these things beforehand this like reminds me of like the training is done they did the things it's done and dusted they just okay time to go to the big evil and then the big evil is no i'm way stronger i'm just gonna snap you out of existence this feels super childish to me because it's like wait why didn't I get to have the characters talk to each other for a while as he bled out? That's way better. It's like, no, it's not necessarily better, because the meaning can come from the fact that their death was sudden. Like, why are you yeah, doing it's this? it's tragic that they couldn't. It is on us, yeah. as then the audience, to talk about what that death meant being so quick. Because remember, Boromir's death to Gimli was in an instant. You'd have been like, he's just gone. Last time I saw him, he was alive. Gimli, now he's dead. Yeah, Gimli yeah. shows up with Legolas at the end, and he's just kind of, he's dying. And, like, you can talk about what the meaning that has for them. M meanwhile, Aragorn was with him when he died, and Merry and Pippin didn't even see him die because they were pulled away. Like, this is all different experiences for all these different people. Yeah, Frodo learns about it in the Two Towers when he meets up with Faramir. Exactly, and we've, we've talked about how you can kill main characters off-screen. It's going to be about execution. It's got nothing to do with those specific elements happening or not. Yeah. yeah. And we're fresh off a great example of that happening in media, so <sighs> yeah, this was... Poor timing on that aspect, for her at least. <laughs> I'm blanking right now, what are you referring to? Squid Game. Ah. Anyway. <laughs> references to him after he dies, so we remember how he affected the hero. I thought you meant movies. I, you know what I actually thought you meant was well, League well, of Extraordinary often... Gentlemen? I was like, what? Oh. when does it happen? <laughs> well, I, I often, I guess, I sort of, it's kind of like how I, <clears throat> like, especially when it comes to, like, these mini-series kind of things, where my mind's just like, yeah, this is a long movie journey if we didn't get that kind of thing we'd feel cheated we the audience haven't seen the chapter one dead dad for very long the author feels comfortable just torching the place off screen after a single expository line of dialogue and then expects us to feel for the hero when the story hasn't made this death feel meaningful in this yeah uh, this sounds like i don't like it when this idea is executed poorly 
I think it's worse yeah, than it that. Like this isn't someone she's wrote a shitty story. She, she's practically got us to the point where we can't even disagree. She's like, it is less meaningful because of the less meaning that is in it. And you're like, wait, but yeah, it's wait, like, what? That's, it's, that's a tautology. Yeah, but it's not a logical, like, yeah. yeah. Because it's like, I didn't, I didn't agree there was less, less meaning in this. I didn't yeah. agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just because we don't see it exactly doesn't mean it's less meaning. Forcing us to think about it, you know, not providing us with the visuals and making us do that. Well, that is his own thing. Dead dad for very long, the author feels comfortable just torturing screen after a single expository line of dialogue and then expects us to feel for the hero when the story hasn't made this death feel meaningful. In this structure, the amount of weight a character death is given is not proportionate to how important the character is, it's proportional to how much screen time the character was given. Which you, you keep saying as this as if it's true. Screen time is you keep saying that, yeah. But, but you've just, you, the formula is not there, you've just said it's true. <laughs> also, as I, I if all screen time is equal. There are characters, like, let's take Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn has gotten her own full movie and has been significantly in two other characters. movies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still know basically nothing about her. She's still practically blank slate level after all of that screen time. Mm -hmm. Then I you, don't... Take, you take a look at Boromir. And you're like, I know so much about Boromir yeah. for how much he appears. I don't mind what she's written on this slate here. It's just, I just think her examples are poor. Someone well, said, you have once again demanding because... that she say, in my opinion. No, not this time. I'm asking that she say something. So Qualify is, something you that just you just said. Point something out interesting is that what she's got on screen is actually not what she's talking about at the moment, because this is true. Like, it, yeah, the screen time will not determine how much the character cares about them, but that's not what she's saying. She's saying that the screen time indicates how much they should be cared about, which is right. a different... That's like that's not the same point that you have up on screen. Yeah. Nothing to do with how the characters should be reacting to this law. Jing is a very disliked trope for several uh -oh. reasons. For Some character deaths have um, caveats that reduce how tragic such unpleasant they are. Heroic, heroic sacrifice, sacrifice, personal, 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 personal uh, contentment, contentment, and then and thoughts, thoughts, thoughts of loved, loved ones, ones as yeah. they die. Fridging never does. Never. Wait, never. fridging never does these. Never, what? or that it, it fridging never has caveats that reduce how tragic and unpleasant they are. But so wait, but, wait, but she said was thinking of her loved one when she died. Black Widow. She said that that's that's like the, her Widow. prime example, yeah. and she's only thinking yeah. about all of her loved ones. Family. Yeah. yeah, that's why she's dying. Remember, she's not falling while screaming. Them. She smiles at Hawkeye. Dude, she's Black Widow's doing all three. Oh, of she's these doing things. all three of them. Yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, doing it. It is a heroic <laughs> sacrifice, personal contentment. Man, that is poetic, wow! What it? a fail. That is poetic. That is like, poetic. You, you can't hear her screaming because she's, she's in the fridge. <laughs> she's in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, Black Widow is that is incredible. She is sacrificing incredible. herself for her loved ones. Yep. It is the <laughs> ultimate. This is insane. This, this, we are approaching levels of- Is this of a meme? <laughs> this I was gonna say, this, this <laughs> video might be a joke and we're just now discovering it. That's insane. That's, that's unreal. That's nuts. It rhymes. That is, I can't oh, believe wow. that. It Literally rhymes, it's like a stanza, it rhymes. <laughs> three out I, of three, that, yeah. That's crazy. That's amazing. ...to this uh. loss. Fridging is a very disliked reasons. For one thing, you'll be hard-pressed to find a heroic death trope that people like. Heroic sacrifices are basically... Heroic death... Wait, people what? like heroic sacrifices. People what about love Iron them? Man? Like, people what love them! I love like the heroic first... sacrifices! Wait, I'm confused. Yeah. What is it, why is she saying that now? That, that feels like that's not been the point at all. Wait, we gotta... I, Iron Man Boromir? I, wait, but uh, honestly, yeah, I'm, we... I'm so bewildered that she said that, I need more. Like, I don't believe <laughs> that's right, what she thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fridging is a very disliked trope. Reasons. For one thing, you'll be hard-pressed to find a heroic death trope that people like. Heroic sacrifices are basically the only one that's even halfway appreciated, since for the most part, killing a character is gonna feel bad. But more importantly, Fridge- What the fuck uh, are you on about? about? What are you on what? about? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't feel bad when Darth Vader died. What is she talking what? about? Heroic sacrifices are like one of the most obvious ways to get someone to be happy with a storyline. They love heroic people sacrifices. People love heroic yeah. sacrifices. It is, it is the greatest way that you could basically die. It is. She's like, so. It, it pretty much is the best way that you could die. She's in, so wrong. But in 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 Christianity, right? If you sacrifice yourself to save another person, that's like a free ticket to heaven. 
And it's just, like, everyone's just going to be referencing all kinds of ones in chat. It's like, yeah, do you understand how some of the most popular moments for characters are heroic sacrifices? Iron Man in Endgame, the highest grossing film of all, well, second highest grossing <laughs> uh, of all time. Borrowing. Well, hey, do you know what? What's number one is Avatar, right? Is there a heroic sacrifice in Avatar? that? Uh, kind of, isn't there? Like, doesn't he, uh, doesn't there? There are a lot of heroic sacrifices fighting. in that movie. Yeah, you're right. A lot of them die fight. Well, you think every soldier fighting, who goes yeah. out there and dies fighting for a noble cause, yeah. as you could say, is heroic sacrifice. And then you go, like, I'm just thinking of the most popular movies of all time. It's like Titanic. Jack sacrifices himself yeah, for Rose at the end. sacrifice. Absolutely. That um, was a one person. Train to Busan. Talk about heroic yeah, sacrifices. Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah. I'll just look up the list of the highest grossing movies of it's all time and see how many... How far have. down do we have to go until I there's think not a heroic sacrifice? We just got done with one of the stupidest things that she said. She contradicted herself hardcore, but now it's like, I think it's been trumped. She just said, like, people don't like heroic sacrifices. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Well, they about? Sort of, well, people halfway tolerate them. Yeah, they tolerate heroic sacrifices. No, people love them. They want them. People love them. Wally, love heroic Wally sacrifice. heroic yep. sacrifice. Well, any kind of act of good involves some sacrifice to some degree. Typically. Of some kind. Yeah. A lot of times, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Christ is an avatar of sacrifice. <laughs> the ultimate sacrifice, no, well, right? Well, not really, but... Ethan Trigel well, thinks what, he is. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> no, he, he had a bad weekend so he could go back to being the ruler of the cosmos. <laughs> Man, this is unreal. Uh. It's a trope that people like. Heroic sacrifices are basically halfway appreciated, since for the most part, killing a character is gonna feel bad. But more importantly, fridging lacks the counterbalancing qualities that can make a character death feel satisfying or earned. Like Black Widows. Oh, well, we'll wait to see what she's Well, well usually, usually when we talk about fridging, we are talking about. Uh, we're at a point where the story is unresolved, where there is more story to come. <laughs> it's just so, so funny, are we yeah. going to say that any plot device that is something that is unresolved, or it is creating something, we had a resolve, and then it has been broken, but like any trope that breaks that is, that's, that, I, nah. It's just funny because she's got, fridging never does above the three traits, because uh, there's just no way yeah. to interpret anything other than she's just wrong, unfortunately. Basically. I love the fucking salt in the comments because my Jesus comment. Fucking get over it. <laughs> I'm reading that Fucking too. get over it. That's what this story is. <laughs> a hero Try to be might objective die for once in your goddamn life. Defending their loved ones, which is heartwarmingly heroic with an element of free will and choice, or fully at peace with their fate, making them... Yeah, the Iron Giant. The he was fridged. Iron Giant. <laughs> he was fridged. fridged. No, he was fridged. Well, he no, fridged I think she's you. saying this is a heroic sacrifice. No, I'm right? saying she was. he was fridged yeah. because of his oh. stupid rules. I'm like, nope, he was fridged. <laughs> He died to make our main character sad and yeah. learn a valuable lesson about about friendship. A hero might die gallantly defending their loved ones, heroic with an element of free will and choice, or fully at peace with their fate, making their death a natural conclusion to their arc, or with some other uh -huh. caveat that makes yeah, the audience believe. Yeah, but when we're talking about natural conclusion to their is, arc, like so Black is Widow. the idea that basically we can't have any deaths until the ending. Like, the third act, I'm, we can only kill well, people at the end of the story, or what? Yeah, we've kind of been asking that this whole time. Like, when is it acceptable to kill characters? Seemingly and... at the end. Otherwise, they need to live forever. And, and if they die, it still needs to be, like, some level of, you know, there needs to be some counterbalance that... I, I get, It's weird. It feels like the appeal is, no sad things, please. Like, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It fits yeah. in with the juvenile aspect of the rest of the video. No Nobody sad. should die in any movie ever because it, it yeah. gets rid of their storytelling potential. I want more. It's like, I want more. You, you get that. You get, oh, we, this character's dead, so we can't get more of them. And I just want more, 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 more. Yeah. Stories shouldn't end. Characters shouldn't end. They should just keep going on and on and on and on. And well, on. that is an extension of Ipria logic with the whole, like, when you decide that a character dies, it's worth more as a death in their life. And it's like, okay, does that apply to ending stories? You have decided that the characters sort of having the story's end here couldn't is more meaningful than going on. It's like this weird thing that most writers would be like, what? No, I, what, I, I've told my story. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think, I'm not saying that nothing meaningful ever happens. To, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> Leave me alone. Go away. <laughs> death works to end their personal arc. And if their death is tragic, it'll often be tortuously prolonged to really drive home to the audience that, yeah, sorry. A tragic li a tragic ending to a life doesn't have to be, it could be one second. 
Yeah. The, the, why are you talking about this? She's like, Absolutely. it's usually prologued. You're like, oh, well, it, it, but why are you saying this? Stop it. Sorry, I thought That's the problem fine. with fridging is that it's often unceremonious and, like, quick. I'm, I'm assuming she's saying, like, a quality of being able to spot it is that it will be extended most of the time. When in reality, like, a lot of them are very quick. Yeah. Hmm. Some other caveat that makes the audience believe that their death works to end their personal arc. And if their death is tragic and unfair, it'll often be tortuously prolonged to really drive home to the audience that, yeah, sorry, it's not a fluke or a fake out. The character isn't making it through this one. Yeah, like fucking Jackson. That was a really drawn out scene, wasn't it? In Saving Private Yeah. Ryan. A classic Full Metal Alchemist example, spoiler alert, Maze Hughes, professional funny man and sweetheart, is unexpectedly killed fairly early in the series because he figured out the overarching plot way too early, so the villains needed him out of the way. His death serves as a major motivation for most of the heroes, most notably Roy Mustang. But I see, so he was fridged. Interesting. I'm telling yes. you, man, it's the fucking <laughs> anime rule. I hate to say it. Well, but fuck I don't me. believe, I don't agree with her on what fridging is. I'm just saying that it qualifies under her crazy rules. It's not just a token heroic motivator to get the protagonists in gear. It feels awful. It, it feels awful? It feels awful. What? It's Dude. anime, so you paid attention. Like, I don't know what to say. What do you like, even- what, Why are you not- What about the other examples where you're just- You just don't- They're- They're more than this. And you just don't know. The reason I'm frustrated is because I've been like- Or you're not familiar with it? You know what else felt awful? Watching Gamora get killed by Thanos, or watching Black Widow yeah, give up her own Black life Widow. to save everyone. Come on. My feels, though. My feels. I only want to feel good things. I go to the theater to have fun, okay, you guys? Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel sad. <laughs> I don't want to feel sad. It's tragic. It's unfair. He fights very hard to stop it from happening. All of these things apply to... Oh, my God. <laughs> like, this is this so is, bad. So, I... like, well, I'm, so here's the thing. I'm actually familiar with this material. Not oh only in video form, because I've watched the show, or at least this parts of the show. I've also read it in the manga form. <gasps> Reading. This ain't the. Nerd. This is just it's it's a, it's wild that this gets all the fanfare and the other ones are just like nah fucking like Winnow Gamora they don't fucking. Care. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you. I I cared a lot about Mace Hughes' death, but uh, at the same time, yeah, I don't understand how he qualifies while the others don't. She's like fought hard. <laughs> it's like, did you watch the scene with Black Widow? She fucking no. fights Hawkeye. Yeah. It yeah. is a is way longer, way more prolonged. God, what are we doing? <sighs> His wife and daughter are devastated, and the ramifications are felt in alley. This death would not work the same if it happened off screen. I can replace all of these visuals with people reacting to Black Widow's death. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. yeah. I don't understand. Didn't Hughes die off screen? Um, he's in a phone booth, right? I, th I, can't, I can't remember. Yeah, I, I can't remember if he dies off screen, or, do, or if it cuts to the subtle imagery of his blood washing over his family photograph. I don't think um, you'd see him get I don't, stabbed. Yeah, I don't. I think that's an yeah. off-screen death. Yeah. So. I guess that um. And by the way, whether or not it was off-screen, it could totally function off if it happened off-screen. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's a good. It's good. Yeah, it was a sad thing. I hated seeing it. It could not be replaced by a binder of Pokemon cards. It no, but neither could Black what? Widow's death. Yeah, if you dropped a binder of Pokemon cards, it wouldn't be. <laughs> To be fair, that would be a hilarious scene. You need that to sacrifice really off you love, yeah. and he just gets his Pokemon card collection yeah. frozen down. Oh, and then Red Skull is like, like man. First edition Charizard. Like, man, you loved them a lot, didn't you? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, really did. I did. I really did. Yes. But they're first editions. The sacrifice <laughs> must be made. <laughs> Can I just throw one of them? He's like, no, the binder, <laughs> the entire binder. Yeah. <laughs> Not the holographic Charizard, please. No. It means too That's much to the story, is. so it's not fridging. Fridged characters do not get. Maybe, maybe here's a here's a a, a, a slightly, it is sort of related thing. Mm -hmm. My most prized, I guess, in terms of sentimental value, my most prized Pokemon card because I kept all my old shit. I kept all my old Pokemon cards, Magic cards, all that. It is a a, a humble Caterpie. Um, it's a card that I got. It was the first trading card that I ever got. It was an extra that my best friend growing up gave to me. That has the most sentimental value of all the cards. So, mm -hmm. there you go. There's, there's your example right there. I would be upset if someone destroyed that, particularly in front of my face, or if it had an off-screen death and then I learned about it. Well, 
and there's yeah, a harsh you reality. Just come back. You're going to care more about someone destroying that than finding out mm -hmm. Jim Bob Jr. died yesterday in some country. You'd be like, well, that sucks. But the card is probably going to fuck you up a little bit more because of how much it means to you. The reality of human beings. I hate human beings. I know, me too. Good. Yeah, they're lame. And it could not be replaced by a binder of Pokemon cards. It means too much to the story, so it's not fridging. Fridged characters do not get this kind of treatment, and frankly, they're lucky if they get personal arcs at all. They die only. Well, that's the thing. You think th this is, you know, if, if Gamora <laughs> got fridged, and if it you know, the Padme got saying. fridged, and if Black Widow yeah. got fridged. Yeah, it's just, it's wild. Well, I mean, with this image of Black Widow doing literally all three of these all things if she dies, it's. <laughs> It's, and then it's saying, boring. like, it has to have an impact on the story, it's like, yeah, Black Widows didn't. <laughs> it didn't really yeah, do anything for the story didn't. at all. Nope to make another more important character feel sad or mad. It's not a heroic sacrifice, they have no agency in it, they're not at peace with it. No agency, she literally like forced uh, his whole guy to have it die. Are we, gonna, yeah. are we not gonna have any story, so can we not have characters who die and are not cool with it? Well, so this is the problem. The, the only... She's she's basically said a pizza is, and then she said it is cheese, it is tomato, it is bread. And we're like, well, it doesn't have to have cheese on it. You can have yeah. other things to qualify. It's like the bread one complicated. The uh, tomato. If she said like pineapple, we'd be like, okay, like why why does it have to have pineapple <laughs> on it? And that's what we're doing. She's she's giving us components, so we're like, well, no, not really. And then she's like, well, no, that's just more of an indicator. If you see a slice of bread with cheese on it, it's more than likely a pizza. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, no. <clears throat> and their personal arcs, if they get them, aren't neatly resolved in time for it. Their death or brutalization is cruel and unfair because it's designed to feel cruel and unfair to the character they're supposed to hurt or motivate. But also to the it audience. It can also be, yeah, it can also be legitimately those things. In the yeah, frame no. of the story, it can be cruel. It really can be cruel and unfair. And that could be part of the tragedy. The interesting thing here is that... Whether um, it's designed to be or not. She's fucked up in the... Black Widow's death isn't what motivates anyone to do anything in particular. They were already, yeah, they were already doing in motion. Thing. Yeah. Already Her death doesn't motion. make anyone do anything that they weren't already doing. Yeah. So that... Black Widow... That was like the worst fucking example, because every single thing she says that qualifies it as fridging, it doesn't qualify. As a result, it undercuts the only semi-okay parts of it, makes the experience relentlessly unpleasant and catharsis-free for the audience. Now, this is not a mistake. This is an intentional part of the trope, because it essentially sets up an unstable narrative situation the protagonist must now work to stabilize and resolve, usually by hunting yes, down and stopping Yes, it's called an inciting this incident. It's, uh, when things aren't good, and then the character needs to go and make well, things right. The problem here is that she said, like, fridging intentionally does this, like, so does not fridging them. So, so does I, a lot of things. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was useless. Why would any writer off, write so something that's intentionally narratively unsatisfying? <laughs> yeah, that's... Why would you ever do that? <laughs> Ryan Johnson. I want to write a bad story. <laughs> Ryan Johnson does it a lot, yeah. I, I share that. I, I, will say, I would just say, Ryan Johnson, why would you write something that's so intentionally unsatisfying? <laughs> I share the sentiment. I just know yeah. who to direct this question to, really. <laughs> why? ...a work to stabilize and resolve, usually by hunting down and stopping the killer. This is a motivation that starts an arc, so it's not meant to feel like an arc resolution, which is often the only part of a character death the audience halfway appreciates. But it betrays a fundamental dismissal of the fridged character, which undercuts the very emotional impact they're trying to invoke. As an example... I, just, I disagree, but carry on. <laughs> That's pretty much where I'm at now. Like, <laughs> Alan Moore just wrote go. The Killing Joke, just Barbara go. Gordon, aka Batgirl, is shot, paralyzed, and brutalized by the Joker entirely to upset Jim Gordon and Batman and kick off... So I don't believe you is the problem. Uh, I'd have to read yeah, it. Yeah, I... I no longer believe you when you reference stuff. the things that you've said, yeah, yeah, about the other stuff. Yeah. You cannot be trusted to accurately convey information to me if I'm not familiar with it, so let's just coast ahead. Yep. One last terrible joke. She's not even killed, but how that affects her is entirely glossed over in story. In fact, all she says to Batman afterwards from her hospital bed is how worried she is about what the Joker's gonna do to her dad. It's heroic of her to be concerned, but that's not why her reaction was... But that, that's, that's but character that's, writing, isn't it? I was about to say, that's interesting yeah. that she's condemning the fact that Barbara's more concerned about what might happen to her father after what's happened to her, which is really great character 
uh, building. Yeah. yeah, she even said that was character work. So I'm confused. Is this I? Uh, is it because she's a woman and her father is a man? Uh well, um, someone in chat said this is actually considered an example of fridging. So she's like, yeah, but the thing is, she's saying it, so I just like I don't know if it's true. <laughs> and I hate it when we we concede on content we haven't seen. Then this comment's like, guys, that's not at all what that story's about. And it's like, well, I it, unfortunately I haven't read this. So I'm just have to go on what she's saying. In that way, Barbara didn't matter to this story. Actually, said he kind of regrets treating her that way. He thinks his editor probably should have reined him in instead of responding with, and I am apparently quoting, "Yeah, okay, cripple the bitch." That fundamental. <laughs> what? Okay. What? <laughs> I feel like there's a That's lot strange. more going on there that we don't have context for. Let's just put it that way. Dismissiveness on the part of the creator really does drive home that fridging is a fundamentally broken trope. If the author doesn't fundamentally care Ooh, interesting. Broken. What's a broken trope compared to broken. a functional trope? An unbroken trope, yeah. I'm guessing, <laughs> is, she, is what she's suggesting it, that the, there are tropes that are almost like good, and then there are tropes that are bad, and this is one of the bad ones. Then the idea that it's fundamentally broken implies that there is no version of this that is good. It is, like, intrinsic to what it is, a bad thing. Which, which by the way, the people who said in the first, like, hour of this fucking stream, like, she's not saying it's bad, it's like... Where are you now? Uh, <laughs> like, fundamentally and morally broken. <laughs> I don't like the term either. fridging. It's stupid. Cause, like, cause there's a bit of an overlap with like gaslighting, where it's a term that has a very specific origin in like a play, in, like a woman was driven crazy by her husband who like made the candles, you know, dim and flare up, and it drove her crazy. And so you, the term gaslighting is relevant to that phenomenon, but with the in the case of fridging like the fridge in that green lantern comic that has nothing to do with why that you know that story element is bad like the mm -hmm. the, the fridging kind of makes you focus on the fridge that's not the important thing the important thing is if a death is like unmotivated and forced like why are you calling it fridging i don't get it do we yeah, have, I, uh, you can argue a short again i'm right? curious about that green lantern example like what? Maybe it actually makes sense in context. You know that that fridge. Thing. Yeah, someone was put I, I in a look fridge. Into that after this. A body yeah. was put into a fridge. Well, yeah. If if we went as far as finding out, because none of us read that, presumably, um, if we found out that it made sense that the villain did that, and that his Green Lantern's reaction to it makes sense, it's like at that point I'd be struggling to criticize it outside of just like yeah, but it's the girl deserved more or something like that. Because we come back to the whole like, well, is the story about these things or not? Um, is it right. about knowing her well before she's killed? Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, fridging. I can understand what you mean by it, but obviously, I assume it's shorthand. And videos like this are supposed to explain to a wider audience what it means to say someone is fridged, so that we can then improve the speed of communication. All this has done is fuck it up completely, though. It's a mm -hmm. quick single word identifier yeah. for a trope. I guess it's fine, and as far as yeah, that goes. it's. Yeah, the etymology of it is. Uh... Fridgedness on the part of the creator really does drop. Like, honestly, I'm not trying to be mean, but she's made it so that Black Widow was fridged. So now, like, how much does that fuck up the conversation? And yeah, this to, is to the point. This is not good. It reminds me of the Mary Sue thing because, like, I instead of saying someone is a Mary Sue, I will instead comment on the components of their characterization that are flawed. Mm -hmm. that could qualify them as Mary Sue, but that's irrelevant. It's like, whether or not they are or not, it doesn't matter. Whether or not a character is fridge or not is irrelevant. We're going to talk about the actual relationships, the meaning, the, you know... Let's just, let's just do that instead, because shit like this just makes it so no one can fucking understand each other. ...at home that fridging is a fundamentally yeah. broken trope. If the author doesn't care about the character enough to give their pain narrative weight, they'll have a very hard time convincing the audience to care when they suffer. The only way the author... So this is this irony here in that... absolutely. If, um... If a character has a wife that I don't really know and they die, or husband, whatever, um, I still, depending on what I know about them, I'm still gonna feel something for them, uh, because I know them. What's interesting about this for me is that there is a couple of examples in, and look, it's been 4 hours and 20 minutes, I don't think I mentioned it at all last stream, okay, so I'm allowed at least one, surely one per stream, in Buffy. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> Some of the deaths are not actually really about the person who died, it's about what they meant to other people. Um, like, like your, your, the tragedy and your sadness may not really come from them being gone necessarily, it's just more so focused on 
what does this mean for those other people? Um, which, in a sense, I find interesting because, like, she, she's practically said, like, it's like, what, what were they? Who were they? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, they could theoretically die without any characterization beyond the relationship they had with the person, and then we just look at what that means for the person. I don't know that it's an impossibility or that it's a missed opportunity, even. <laughs> Buffy spoilers. I was vague. You can make the audience care in this situation is by making this unimportant another, more important character. But since the author doesn't care about the fridged character, they'll have a hard time writing the more important character's reaction to their fridging. The more important character- Maybe. See, see what I mean? She's almost angling it, so it's like, if we don't care about them and only what it meant to the other people, like, that's, like, why would we care? And I'm like, there's loads of reasons we'd care. I mean, I'll, you could mm -hmm. you could not care about the character who died, but you exactly. could care significantly about who it impacted, and that could influence your writing, and you could do an excellent job. Thank like, you. all of these characters are invented anyway. Um, I guess Dom's wife could be an example of this. We didn't see her or the relationship he had with her. It was, uh, we only learned about her for ages, and then when you get to the conclusion of that, all we have is his reaction to it. You know, and you could be like, we didn't fucking know anything about her, really. I'm not saying that that's some kind of narrative masterpiece, I'm just saying you can make it work that way. Cares more about the fridged character than the author does, so their grief when they clearly can't even imagine it. It comes across as shallow and hollow because on oh, a very no, you can imagine about something and not care about it. Hopes, dreams, any traits that aren't about them. It's like you don't have to. Yeah, I, I just. How much I do mean, we know about John Wick's wife? Care. Yeah, Nothing. she got sick and died. That's all. I was about to say, they like, love each other very much. That's all we had. And it's safe to say nobody cared. Need about, like, the story in John Wick, right? No, nobody liked John Wick 1, I don't think. But maybe she oh, yeah, thinks that though. Well, that, but that's, the, that's almost a problem, right? If she hey, does classify that as fridging, know. and inherently bad, despite the fact that it's yeah. thoroughly worked with audiences, it's like, so what's happening then? Mm, yeah, I thought this, yeah, I thought that this wasn't... Are we all just strong? Impactful. And why? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like her to square that My away, because she's advocating wrong. a lot of the time that like, this is why people don't like this, and it's just like, okay, but they do. Yeah, and, <laughs> so. when, yeah. Yeah, and when, we got, when we got 90 minutes, two hours or so, I mean, if, if we have a protagonist, I expect that protagonist to get a lot more development and work put into them than I do, well, you know, a fridged character. Like, they're, you just gotta be pragmatic about a lot of this. Right. It is. A fridging isn't just lacking in resolution, it's actually lacking in real emotional weight. We're lucky. Real emotional that's weight. That's like saying, that's like saying the first quarter of a basketball game is lacking resolution. Like this is the <laughs> beginning. This is like part of the setup. The fridge, the, the fridged character is supposed to set up another character's journey or a, a plot. That isn't the resolution. Of course, this isn't the resolution part. This isn't going to create resolution. All the things that occur after it will. I feel like you're just looking for something in the wrong place. I just, I just don't like saying mm -hmm. real emotional weight. It triggers me. I, you know, I hate that fake emotional weight. Fake emotional weight. We really know the character who dies, and if we don't, then it only affects us by how it affects the characters who care about them. And there's nothing wrong with that, necessarily. That's fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. That's fine. You know, there are people who have died in real life that I've never met, that I don't know anything about, but someone that I do care about did know that person, and that impacts me. Yeah, I don't even want to reference yep. it yeah. specifically, right? But like, yes, there are, yes, <laughs> like 100% yeah, of that this one. This is a yeah. real life thing, yeah. And only if we care about those characters in turn. Killing off not invested in tells us that character was never going to matter on their own merit. They do matter, though, the because it propels the character forward. So they do matter. Yeah, because yeah, at this point, yeah, of course what matter. does it mean to matter? What does matter mean? That you exist <laughs> in the story and that, like, you're there and you're doing stuff? Rags Hitler died off screen. <laughs> he died. <laughs> he died in bunker. Yeah, what's very sad about that? I wasn't there, but it's pretty sad the story as a whole, so opening a story by fridging some clear message to the audience that most characters don't matter, which- uh, Look at the, um, look at the, cause this is interesting, look at the, 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 uh, the fire effect, and you could see the line at the bottom where it starts. Oh, sure, but I mean, I, I wasn't sure if we were gonna comment on it, but I'm not super thrilled with the, uh, the aesthetic. <laughs>
Yeah, I know. No, I'm yeah, not, it but it, very... it gets Cause, it, it runs cause extra Fringy, credits. It's not, it's, it's not very Fringy. Here's sensor. what we're gonna do. What I'm gonna do, yeah. Fringy, is I'm gonna point out that the bookcase is three dimensional, but the books are two dimensional. Well, yeah, because that's a perspective <laughs> thing. Um, and now you will never be able. I was to, about to say, go Rags, to I hadn't tonight. seen that yet. Why did you do yeah, that? Yeah, thanks, you're Dick. Gonna, you're gonna <laughs> stare. That is, a, that is a perspective at... thing where if you've got books that are bigger, we need to see the books gone. It's funny because I probably did this, but I don't have a million subscribers. Two. <laughs> thanks a lot, yeah, Rags. Two. Now it looks like a fake saying, bookcase when... with you know, like what has got <laughs> fake things on it to try to look like a bookcase. And we're not done. Think of all that space behind that bookcase. Yeah, I noticed that though. Yeah, you just can't. You <laughs> yeah. just can't oh, use. Yeah. You know, well, so, there's yeah, nothing, so, you can't use it. Though, admittedly, I would say the, the more fundamental thing is that there is it is super inconsistent. And so, like the uh, the wood, the the bricks or the stones that they've got for the um for the black outlined um uh, fireplace, they're like a texture sample and not yeah. drawn, and so it looks really inconsistent with other drawn elements back yeah yeah it's like um, a it's like a like a cheap indie game and they use a, a pre-bought a pre-bought asset yeah. from a store that doesn't fit anything else in their game and i guess normally i wouldn't say anything but i guess it's just weird because your channel is big enough that i would presume that you could just commission somebody to do absolutely that. And you know, plus, yeah. like, I have, like, that's one of the things that causes plays. I have, I have commissioned a whole bunch of new art, and it's getting sketched out and everything, and I care about it, and I'm like, no, to change this, change that, change this. All of that shit that you commission for your channel, you can write that off on your taxes, because that's a work well, expense. Well, it's business expense. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Like it's, but you're but even if it wasn't, you know what, though? Even if it wasn't, you should just still be doing it anyway, Want because, to, like, it yeah, improves yeah. the look of the videos. Um. So what you I'm said, are they seriously yeah. commenting on the background? We spent four yes, hours we four, are. four hours talking about the script. Yes, we're gonna talk a little bit we about are. the aesthetic. But well, well, I mean it's it's part of the video. It's part of the video. Yeah, it's all we needed to do to debunk the video. Those those <laughs> I, books aren't know, in three dimensions. <laughs> <debunk>. I, <laughs> I uh I, I, I wasn't gonna bring it up. Um but then <laughs> Frags mentioned it, it's like, all right, well. Yeah, now yeah, I can't. Rags. I, those books, man. Those books are the ones that are actually throwing me off now. Yeah, Rags knew no, what he yeah. did when he said it. He knew. He knew what he was doing when he brought oh, it. Oh, look at. Oh, no, no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Every, every no, time I, I look the at music, them now, I, I acknowledge get... the 3D 2D thing. It's like um, it's kind of like in a video game. Like, oh, we have the the bookshelf is 3D, but we have like a texture on the front of books. You know that sort of thing. Something I am surprised about is that there is a very few expressions on the character. The character doesn't move around much. And, like, there aren't many... I'm pretty sure there have only been three expressions, I think? Or four. Which, which is like a very and few, yeah, I, yes. It for, does feel for weird. For a character that is not colored in, you know, like, it's... And not shaded. It, it's well, not, like, it, an issue of creating the assets. It's not, like, that hard. Well, I'd fully recommend she get herself loads of assets. I would recommend it, it, yeah. It looks awesome. Look at Rags yeah, with all yeah. these little fun yeah. little characters. There is, absolutely. It's just even more to come, but y'all are going to be blown away by some of the stuff you'll be seeing <laughs> soon. But in terms of, like, you, there's no, um, like, artistic... It doesn't... Everything is its own thing. The pillar, the chair, the... Look at the board that comes down from the bottom, right? It's, it's, it's like a... It's not drawn. It's a picture that comes down. You can see by the handle. Um, it doesn't fit with anything else in here. It's not because if I was doing it and you want to go with the 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 fireplace, big sofa armchair thing, then you would have it on an easel. It would be like you've set right. it up on, on I a think nice that's the like, thing that's painting. going on there, right? Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, but this like, is the kind of yeah. yeah, you pull it down from the ceiling. It's all rolled up up there, but it doesn't fit with everything else here. Why isn't the background or, in a kitchen where we can see the fridge? Oh, you call wow. it the videos about fridging. Putting you can't even see the fridge. The kitchen. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, that wasn't wow. even the joke I, like I was making, but sure. <laughs> well, I, I feel like you could have just have a fridge sit there. Sit on top of the fridge while you're talking about this topic. Yeah, know? that could be just, fun. <laughs> yeah. And then at the end of the video, you get inside it and a nuke goes off. <laughs> <It's just okay. laughs> But I was going to yeah. say, honestly, it seems like many elements of this image are done in different art styles. I'm assuming that's the point. 
Is that the point? I don't know. Well, it's, it's really, so disparate. It's, I like, don't like it. Look at the logs, <laughs> then the like bricks, it. then the chair, then her, then the bookcase. It's like, man, these are all very different. Well, so I feel like the, the simpler explanation is this was made a while ago and it just hasn't been updated. Could be that, yeah. Maybe. Um, because you have it. So, like, like you, you just use it. Maybe. But still, it's like, because you think about, well, I have to make it. So why not just make it, like, not look like shit? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, I am more invested in a script. Unfortunately, the script is fucking too. ass. So, oh, here's another one. Yeah. So, look at the back right no, leg of it. the chair. Oh, no. no, 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 we're doing this. Oh, the back right so leg of the chair. Could be. The it first, the front two red. are like the the the. You're right. It is. Is that like you missed something? No, that that's a chair thing. Where the, the front two thing. legs okay. are actually right. more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. But it's it's the back right leg where the right side is actually red. Could and it be the front side is brown? Could it be there's a reddish light off to the right side of the room that's reflecting off it, Rags? Is that possible? Definitely. But why wouldn't it be reflecting would, off yeah. of her? Because it's it's and a little side of the, it's a little laser it's light that's pointing directly pillar. at the chair leg. It's not yeah. reflecting off the pillar though. Yeah, because like I said, it's it's a, it's a basically a cylinder light that only shines on that ah. part of the leg of the chair to create the aesthetic. Okay. Also, when like when you have the so like because I'm doing this too here and there in this new video you see it more, but with you have the 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 for me I use a whiteboard with markers of different colors and like the the last color that's being used I have different images for the one that the dog's holding right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, but with here, this is a drawing that's being on a on one of these pull sheet things, but it's framed in gray. And it just sort of stops where the image ends, you know? It's like, uh, that's just, uh, uh. You're just hating. And the white, uh, the white of the image doesn't match the white of the board. It's just like, uh, uh, uh. These are the little <laughs> touches, for, you know? It's just, because just, I just need a little break. That's, well, the, that's thing. the thing. If. All of this was just, I just needed a little break. <laughs> if um if the video was top-notch and a friend showed you this, I imagine you'd be saying all of this stuff because you'd be like, you're so close to greatness. Just get all these things tweaked and then yeah, top-notch. Yeah, like, these are the final details for you to ascend into godhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is all that you need. But I'm saying this is it's just because this has been an exhausting video. Yeah. And, like, every sentence is wrong. Um, So it's nice to just, you know, point Take out the... Take a breath. The, the fire peeing, the, like the little gif of the fire and the bottom of it cuts off on the fireplace and the different dimensions of the pro It's just, we're just yeah. enjoying it. You know what? It's Bur all a joke. Burning the it's all a joke. Fire. We're just having fun. It was all it's a joke, just yeah. a joke. Yeah, it's just a joke. And if you don't, you just don't get it. This is highbrow humor. Hmm. What we're doing here. We are, yeah, we're experts. Mm, so opening yes. a story by fridging Quite. someone sends up audience that most for fuck's sake now you pointed out that fire thing i can't not see it there's a distinct line where it cuts yeah yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Ooh. They care I, saw that. I, I saw that out hours ago i was like i'm just just not gonna mention it i'm just gonna torture well, myself I'll, the greater I'll good savior, yeah. heroic sacrifice you could have at you least know? put it in line with the two bottom logs you know what i mean just put it a little bit further down and those lines kind of match them a little bit so it would look a little better yeah, or you you make a drawing with that line in mind, you know, mm -hmm. um, or you mask the bottom of the image to where it's more blurred, so you don't get a straight line. The fire just sort of appears. It could even have done in and out. like a cartoon fire. Because they care fire, enough to get the gift. Where they did like you know like six frames of a fire just repeating, like yeah. to make papery fires. Like they could have done that. Yeah, it's this looks like a fire in Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where everything's a cartoon, <laughs> but the fire's like a real fire effect that's occurring it, on something. Yeah. Like South Park. This video don't... isn't written as well as Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No, so. of course not. Matter which speed runs the disengaged audience problem. Fun fact, this is how Supernatural Whoa. begins. I tried watching it way back when and lost interest after the first season or so, but I remember the pilot because it's burned into my brain. You, the, that's, it's not, I don't have criticisms of Supernatural, it's not a problem. The story begins with um, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's wife getting like, I think she's possessed by Azazel and she gets killed horribly and it motivates him to become a hunter of demons. So like it's pretty much exactly what we were saying. It's like that's not necessarily bad. You don't. I think you find out more yeah. about her as time goes on. And I know from the latest season, some significant developments happen in relation to the mum. But um, I remember liking the pilot for Supernatural quite a bit, actually. So 
Yeah. I have your, not seen it. So. There's your setup. First season or so, but I remember the pilot because it's burned into my brain. Even at the time, I could kind of tell the writing wasn't working. First scene. We meet our protagonists as young children in an idyllic home with their father and mother. Smash cut to the night. Their father wakes up to see his wife stuck to the ceiling with a horrified expression. Then she explodes and the house burns down. Smash cut to the main plot. It's a couple decades later. Brother one is in college and has a girlfriend. Brother two shows up and tries to give him a call to adventure to make the actual plot happen. Brother one is reluctant Jay? because he's got so much going on for him in his personal life right now. Then brother one's girlfriend gets... Has this been a 15 minute? Has the music been going on this whole time? I think or it has. Yes. yes, it has been. And I'm assuming okay. you don't know the answer okay. to that because, like me, you've tried to just fucking block it out. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it popped up again. I'm just, I'm, my brain is just like, oh, music. I know that song. Yeah. By no, the way, it's been, it's been there this whole time. Just want to point out, okay. she summarized most of episode one, but she did it in a voice that makes it sound like all the plot points are just bad. Like, it would just be like, you know, Oh yeah, there's a character who lives in a fucking happy little place, and then his uncle has a ring, and the, apparently this ring is apparently just an evil ring, and he's gonna hand it down to him, and then the crazy wizard who's locally here sometimes is like, oh, it's a big spooky ring, and so he ends up going to a different place with a bunch of elves until he ends up in a- and you're just like, why- what are you doing? <laughs> you're just saying the whole story. ...stuck to the ceiling and explodes, so it's time for a road trip. It was kind of spooky. The second time it happened, I actually laughed. I looked this up to make sure I was remembering the details right, and apparently, in the plot, both of these women were killed specifically because the bad guy had plans for the protagonist, and in the case of the girlfriend, he's the one who introduced them in the first place specifically so he could manipulate the protagonist by killing her. That's just, I mean, God, that's so funny. So self, like, What's that's what I meant. About it? It's like she's pointing what? out, see, it's fridging, but it's like, well, but wait, it has an in narrative justification. There's a reason the villain is doing this to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's the funny part? What's I missed funny, the joke. Yeah. You just <sighs> explained the reason for the thing. Just don't... <laughs> but I guess... Okay, okay, I guess. That's the pilot. No wonder death is meaningless in this show. Tr tries she's to she's have right about that. Um, <laughs> everybody dies in that show and then often comes back and stuff. It's a bit, a bit floopy. Yeah, um, it happens in fucking mm. Wars too. It's shit. Clearly disposable. Clearly disposable plus... plus all yeah, you go ahead for it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I was confused. All narrative focus uh, put on other character equals audience is not made to mourn the character who actually died. Yes, that is correct. I mean, Good job. <laughs> Move on. Not made to audience. I, I don't is know, not uh, made to mourn the character. Odd wording, but it, it's just it just goes to back to character. yes, we are not supposed to mourn that character. We're supposed I mean, to if you care want about us the to, character. You have to work for it. Well, it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm assuming you were going to say, we don't mourn that character, we feel for the, the person who's lost them. Yeah. And that's fine. Beginning of God of War 2018. That's fine. <laughs> that's not... This is what I mean. I don't understand where the problem yes. is. That is fine. Yes. Whether or not if they're a, a girl person's... or a boy, that is fine. Yeah. It's, um, I find this I'd, like, I'd like very clarification on what, how she's defining same. disposal. Oh, person oh, who God. dies, <laughs> they would dispose. Yeah, it's so post talk. Of, like if they died, they would dispose. Kind of what I'm leaning to at this point. Uh, yeah, especially I mean, she like, described she, Black like, Widow as disposable. Mm. Yeah, yeah, if you kill a character, insane. that means that their death is worth more than the things that they could do in life. That I mean, it's disposable. All deaths are disposable. Which yeah, is an absurd way to fucking figure it out. But um, yeah, we're, we're definitely we're out again because she's like. It, talking about how obvious it is, like the audience isn't gonna connect. But like, Supernatural was hyper popular. It it only continued because people just kept wanting more of it. So, like you can't appeal to the audience with this one. It worked for them. Uh, you know, on average, I guess. So I just think the audience is made to mourn the character who actually is not made to mourn them. I'm just like, I don't know. Is that a problem? Is it a problem when someone dies and we didn't we didn't know them? It's where we've been for the whole thing. Do I have much. to know everybody in a story? Tries to have things both ways. It gives us a character who clearly doesn't matter on their own, and then kills them in a way that highlights that they didn't matter. What makes a character matter on their own? Matter on their own? She said, like, a character who clearly doesn't matter on their own. It's like, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think. <laughs> um... If she's Matter just like she works own. in a diner or something, she's just doing it day to day. She hangs out with her friends maybe, and family. Like maybe she means that if the protagonist didn't exist, would the character matter? But again, but if the protagonist didn't exist, then we're talking about a whole different story. Story, yeah, it's just a different story. I mean, it, 
the character matters to themselves. Like they care about themselves. Like I'm sure they're not thrilled about dying, probably. So, but they don't have to. How they feel about it is kind of irrelevant, oftentimes, especially to how the protagonist feels about it. I think a character mattering should be like tied th thematically to the story somehow and not just be uh, like that. I liked that character. Therefore, that character matters like a comic relief character. It's like, oh, that guy made me laugh. I, I don't know. And then they die. It's complex. like, oh, I really cared well, I, about that character. He's, he mattered so much. But if I would just go into the pragmatic aspect of if you are introducing a character that does not matter, would not that scream time and effort and money go better into a character who does matter, who does have some influence on the plot or something. So here's a mm -hmm. question. It's basically been defined that if a character dies and it motivates a main character to do something, that's bad because they weren't a character on their own. They were just an, a thing that makes the character do something else. Like, so characters who die and don't motivate a character to do anything, is that like the most catastrophic thing ever? Or is it fine because it's whatever? Like someone just gets killed. Like and our character doesn't care about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I feel with her logic, you could justify it both ways. Yeah, I don't know what she would say about that. I don't because... know, yeah, we've had, we've had 16 minutes of this, and I'm still just sort of baffled at the, the I don't, I don't, I was about to call it a process, but I don't think it's a process. Mm -hmm. This is one of those EFAB acting dumb to make a point bits. If you said to any of them, this character doesn't matter on their own, I absolutely guarantee... That's not how you spell that word. You... You know you, what they, they meant. Know. Okay, so, because you're a bit slow, you I'll help you out. Know. When you say, does a character matter, <laughs> right? You've got, when they died and they motivate someone to do it, oh, so they mattered. It's like, no, that's not mattering to the story. It's like, oh. So you mean, like, they had their own character? It's like, yes. And I'm like, well, but that doesn't mean they mattered to anything. They just had a character. It's like... Maybe it means they mattered if they have uh, an impact on the world around them. Like, no. No, it means that it, they have to have a character to matter. I should be like, I have no fucking clue what you mean when you say they have to matter. I have no idea. I'm trying to find out, because otherwise I can't figure out your, your stupid formula. I think a character does matter if their death motivates somebody. I think they mattered. Yeah, mm -hmm. they influence change yeah. within the story. Maybe it's a matter right. of semantics, I don't know. All the more that it's know. necessary change. They spur agency in other characters. ...story by their own merit, but then tries to tell us that they're really mattered to the character we're supposed to sympathize with. It's like the worst kind of damsel in distress, a character in trouble whose only trait we're given to care about is that they're in trouble. It's all The funny thing is I don't, I don't think damsel in distress is a bad thing. I'm fine with... Yeah, I'm fine with damsels being in distress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fine with men in being fact, in distress as well. They, like, it's... it's yeah. Fine. This is I, mean, what I, I, I have a plays into the cons Mario yeah. goes to get Princess Peach. It's a problem. Right? She's a damsel in distress until she has her own game. Then it's okay. Well, I mean, she was in Super Mario 3D World. You can play as her. She's helping out in the adventure. Does that oh, count? Right. I, just, I just like yeah. tro tropes fucking annoy me because it's just like if you have your female character being something the man wants to save and she doesn't really have a character on her own, your story's bad. It's like no, it's not. You just said it was no. Can I mean, a man be a damsel? What's the male equivalent of a damsel? I probably still um, would be called damsel in distress. I imagine it's the same know. as you can call some male characters Mary Sue's, depending on because Gary yeah. Sue's a different yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> if Gary I see <laughs> if I see a girl locked in a tower and she's like, "Please help me! I'm stuck in this tower and I want to get out and I'm being trapped here against my will," I don't know. I don't have to be like, "Yeah, but what's your backstory?" Oh my god. What do you the, like? <laughs> dude, the definition of damsel in distress. <sighs> Bring you fucking. Like the. the, the, the Holy the world. Wait, what, sorry? Holy the world qualifies. No, yeah. Yes. So fucking stupid. It does. And that's. Yeah, that is. that I don't care if it does. That's what I mean. It's like what you see of fucking tropes at this point. <laughs> like, avoid, avoid them to, <laughs> so you get great stories, even if they kill a whole bunch of good stories on the way the epitome of tell don't show if we don't care about the character being unceremoniously we never have a reason to care if we do care about the character and they die quickly and unceremoniously and all we focus on is how bad that makes someone else feel it feels like a bad use of their how bad it makes thanos feel star lord feel nebula feel the lack of her existence in the storyline and what that means for ongoing consequences and then the fact that it ends the world
to a degree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is all of that. But other than that, <sighs> nothing. And yeah. you, can, that, you can tell. Other than that, it just gives the purple man sads. She's compensating hardcore here because she just said, like, if we don't know the person, then why are we going to care? We know Gamora well. And she's like, yeah, but yeah. it's framed as though it's only sad for the purple guy. <laughs> I think this lady needs to understand that women are going to die in stories, and you're going to have to fucking grow up and get over it. <laughs> like this Be said, thankful that we got great characters like Gamora and Black Widow. Stress. Be thankful. <laughs> Save the incel. Save the world. ...and it makes us aware of the hand of the author, which is never a good... Some authors recognize this without really recognizing Did the problem. Did it skip for anyone else? Try to... Yeah, um, I don't know if I missed anything, but we or can maybe... throw it back. Yeah, it might have just have been bad editing. If we do care about the character and they die quickly and unceremoniously, and all we focus on is how bad that makes someone else feel, it feels like a bad use of their potential, and it makes us aware of the hand of the author, which is never yeah. a good thing. Now, some authors recognize this without really recognizing mm. the problem, and will try to play it one of two ways. In one school of thought, the soon-to-be-fridged character will suddenly be given an unprecedented amount of on-screen focus. So this is closer to how we recognize it. And yeah. Our rules are very simple to the point where we don't even re require fridging as the colloquial. We'll just be like, no, it's just a character that's just poorly characterized or essentially meaningless because there's just nothing, blah, blah, blah. Like we, her rules have involved, she's now saying like, these are things that they try and compensate with. Meanwhile, we usually identify it with these. Yeah. And a handful of purposefully heartwarming or cute character traits being invested in this hitherto non-character so it feels halfway momentous when they die. I like to call this the Whedon School of Fridging or the Colson. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> Coulson had yeah. loads of screen time. In, uh, the, all the collective MC up to this point, he gets loads in this. But he doesn't he's remember those movies. He's consistently characterized, and his death is very meaningful because it's an attempt to help out the heroes, even though he's completely outmatched. I like that she's the Whedon school of thought. It's not even... Cl Whedon's a fucking legend at killing people. He's, he's like, relatively famous for it. And chat's gonna know what I'm referencing. Fucking Firefly has one of the most referenced. Uh, well, I say Firefly is more so Serenity, but you know what I'm talking about, chat. Then um, certainly Buffy and Angel's death scenes. Holy fuck, these are not characters that you don't know and only knew, but for one scene before where they talked a lot. That's not at all what Weed does. <laughs> Weedon is a legend at killing. That's a sentence. That's he is. Sorry. So is you know George R. R. is really good at it too. I'm more than happy to say. Um, this is this is bullshit. Like this is this is the worst way to kill characters. When you're like, the example she gives is pretty good. It's like, oh, uh, the little droid was like, I'm this close to retirement and I love my wife. <laughs> like, yep, off you go. Fucking um, it was his first mission. The Resident Evil movies would do that that we watched them. You know, it's like, be like, oh, this this character, he's nice. We like them. Oh, they're dead. Oh no. Ah. Oh. If yeah, you're if you're if you're just existing and Alice shows up, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a timer on you. You yeah, get the all, fuck out of that story. All three of the men she shows a love interest in, they all die. Some of them die uh, twice. Every, yeah. <laughs> like, so. like the groups that she comes across, she her arrival will spell your doom. Leave. I don't even know that she knows that Colson was in other movies. Like I, I don't, I don't even know. If she I knows could that. believe that she doesn't remember, or she never even saw it. It's hard to tell when you're just wrong about everything. It's hard to tell whether or not mm -hmm. you don't remember, or you never <laughs> even saw it to forget it. Effect. This is the author's attempt to speed run the getting the audience process without having to actually make the character. It's such a bad example because Coulson was the perfect person to kill in terms of we can't kill any main characters, but we need to kill someone that's more meaningful than literally giving them one scene of going, ha ha ha, ha I'm a nice person. It's like, yeah, this guy has been in all the other movies, he's been really friendly with everybody, he's just trying to make everything work, and he's competent at his job. And he's also got some courage in there, so like, it really, it works. It's probably why Whedon chose to kill him. Obviously he comes back in the yeah. show, but that's fine, we're ignoring that right now. ...stand on their <laughs> own, or, like, matter side. Sometimes a fridged character will give- Wait, so she's saying Coulson didn't matter? Okay. Coulson I, absolutely I... mattered. Okay. <sighs> oh, oh, boy. <clears throat> Alright, strategy two. Suddenly, tonally at peace. Have I told you guys I finished my bucket list? The last thing with the... Alright, so, so... How is that any different from the first one where you said two days from retirement in your little fucking... Like, is that... Or is that... <laughs> oh, because... Oh, is that there nearly at peace? And versus... 
I am at peace, and those are your two <laughs> strategies. I think you can separate these <laughs> that is a... enough in that you can have a character that just, I don't know, their goals are complete, but they're not, they don't have to be old or young, yeah, right? One of them is, yeah, that's right. Some kind of token justification for why their death is okay, usually along the lines of, that's I'm at example, peace now, Bob. or I already have everything I wanted, or the real treasure was our friendship, or something. This is an attempt to kludge together a satisfying character resolution so it doesn't feel completely unceremonious, but it suffers from the fact that the fridged character definitely didn't have an arc leading up to it. It doesn't fully counterbalance the disengagement. Need an arc? Hunter. You don't have to have an arc. A How does she not know arc? this? How does she not know this? You need a whole arc before you die, everybody? We've got every, but people lady, in real I got life don't get everything that they want before they. It's like, like exactly. lady, I got places to be. <laughs> We're so close to the end that I'm less invested in responding yeah, anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. yeah fucking, and yeah, she's referencing some idea that I haven't seen. So on ceremonies character death because it feels token and disc. If the character's arc was really oh my god, wrong, this is Mortal Engines. We have to see Mortal Engines. We, I'm on board with seeing that. Do we point, have yeah. to? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, we. It, that movie no, seems like, really, like it'll be perfect is, for EFAP movies. It looks insane. Maybe, yeah. yeah I right. think Mortal Engines, is, it's like the biggest bomb in history. So. Oh, right. I know that much. Ooh, maybe so, we should do an arc, really that. Is. an arc of the biggest bombs Just in history. Just all of the biggest box office bombs. Oh, yeah. I think fun. watching this, understanding that it lost more money than like anything, anything. will really be. <laughs> I think it'll be interesting watching it knowing It'll be that. interesting to think about why you would do this movie, I guess, because probably we'll kind watch of. it and be like, this was never going to make that much money. <laughs> why would you? Yeah, I, I think it's, it, it, it's, it, it, I, I would love to do an EFAP movies with it. I saw it and I was one of the three people who went to theaters and saw it. And... Yeah, $150 million budget um, and it earned $83.7 million. It is estimated to have lost $175 million. Oh, oh neat. By the way, if you look at the thing, she says, earlier in the story, fully unprompted, dialogue presumably from this character who's dying, when this body is done, mm. throw my ashes to the wind and I can uh, face anything, even death, as long as my spirit is free. You could subvert that and they don't die. Like yeah, that would absolutely. be that would be a, a beat, you yeah. know? It's like they talk about how they're ready for death and then they don't die. Like that's you know, she's saying like it's obvious they're gonna die because they've talked about how they're happy to die. It's like, no, that could be that it's obvious they're not gonna die because they're the only character that's comfortable with it. Like the, you don't know. <laughs> it's not an indicator. it's not <laughs> as strong an indicator as character we've never met before going, Oh boy, I love living. Hey everyone. <laughs> like, I sure do love dying. <laughs> I hope I will die. Oh my my grandma gave me this, my boot today. It's a real nice one. I'm gonna wear it loads. <laughs> just, I, do, I actually would like a character like that. would be funny as fuck. He just never dies. Keeps talking about how great everything keeps getting. <laughs> <laughs> need to hear them say it out loud seconds before they die. It shouldn't need to hear the characters say I love you to know they're in love. You know, I love you shouldn't be a surprise. Coming from the person who said they have to have like a speech before they die to make it ceremonial. It can't be quick. You know what? I think there are certain people who just, I don't think I've ever told anyone that I love them. You know? Well, like, just... I just have never said the words, so sometimes when a character says it, it's very meaningful because they mm -hmm. said it, and it's not cheap. It's valuable that they said it. Agreed. Uh, Empire the Strikes ad Back. break, the ad is coming, it's so close, we only probably have a minute left before the ad. Yeah, I just want to make, make sure that the example is given that Empire Strikes Back is that, basically. Yep. One of Love the most you. famous I movies know. of all time, but it does that. The audience, and neither should I'm totes cool with death now. Both just end up feeling like a way to compensate for inadequate writing last minute. You may recall, Bla but see, the problem uh, isn't. Uh... <laughs> 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 Black Widow. Widow's death and Endgame did both of these things, and it was bad because neither of these writing tricks make up for wasted character. It didn't actually do either of those things because she has a huge yeah. fucking. St it's so bizarre to pick her. At least I could understand picking Coulson because she hasn't seen the other movies, but. Endgame, like, like going after Black Widow while referencing the other movies, like, you must have seen his scenes, right? Just one of them. Just one of them. Potential. Avoiding fridging is a matter of giving- Ooh, how to not fridge. That is a lot of text. Okay. Treat oh, 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 ooh. Oh, this Here is great. Go. Treat the character oh, like right. a main character. Do you know how fucking no. dumb that what statement is? Not? What if they're not? What if they aren't? Treat the character like a main character implies there is more than main characters that yeah. are characters. Therefore, do I treat everyone like a main character, or only the ones who die? How, how, yeah. 
No, or at every least a character beloved main secondary character. character. At least a well, beloved secondary uh, character. Well, this you mean, like, gets Black rid of the Widow? concept of a main character. <laughs> yeah, it does, Entirely. doesn't it? If you treat, yeah. Also, let's be frank. People have a hard enough time writing one main character. <laughs> let's pump the brakes on that one, all right? Let's walk no. before we can fly. Give them a character beyond their relationship with the hero. Uh, hopes, dreams, agency, other relationships. Give well, them a character depends, beyond their relationship with the hero. It's so funny because I just think about how Black Widow qualifies with all of these. I'm just like, oh, you mean yeah. how she's yeah. got her own red ledger, but simultaneously wants to build a family relationship with the people? Meaning she has Give both. Give that Oh. Oh, no. I'm Give the death time and wait to have an impact on the characters, not just one scene or a couple- of... Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, wrong. Wrong. Remember the off-screen and property damage tests when handling the emotional weight? No, those Don't. tests are shit. Disregard those tests. Those <laughs> tests Disregard are bad. Tests. Forget they exist. This is just you... not particularly valuable advice at all. You haven't helped me. Treat them like a main character. What if they're not? I don't have time for that. I have one main character who I'm focusing on, so that's- where We got that out the window. Give them a character beyond their relationships. It's like, yeah, sure, but I could do that and still qualify as fridging yeah. under your definitions. So that's kind of worthless here. Give their time, death, and wait. No, that's the point. It's abrupt. It's, it's okay, awesome. So have I now written a bad story because of yes. all of these things? Yes, you if have. She yeah, said, that's what I mean. Fring, you've done worse than that. You've been morally bad. Being morally oh. bad, that's right. Yeah. Oh, you've been the moral one this whole time, and now it's yeah. like you're that's... with us. You're with us. That... Get it out, boat, that... Fringy. Take my hand. Take my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more than any claim that was ever made in this video, that one required the most like substantiation, and we just got none for it. Yeah. Mm hmm. The character this, their narrative this is another it's example of like just it's the certainty that bugs me like these yeah. rules are, are written like commandments and i'm looking <laughs> I'm at these so rules correct. and it's like i've st i've studied uh writing i've never seen these points anywhere in any books or like and you're not even paying attention to your own terminology like you say treat every character like the main character well if you did that then there wouldn't be any main characters oh, to be fair yeah. to you, i think she's referring to any character that dies must be treated like a mink, which is still <laughs> stupid. I, I, that is just like, I don't know what to do with that. It's, it's absurd. Weird. This is the thing, is um, absurd. the Capazzo being the first one to go in Saving Private Ryan, he's probably the one we knew the least yeah. about. Is that a problem? It's like, well, mm -hmm. he just, that's just the nature of the story. That's what happened. We got to spend yeah, the least time the with him. The other guys are going to get more time because they are alive for a longer amount of time in the story. Yeah. Treating and them like, like is it is it is it fridging when like other people who don't even have names are getting killed, or is that just irrelevant? Like that's nothing. Well, if they don't matter to the person, that's better. That seems to be the implication. Did the ca did, in Civil War when uh, Wanda like blew up and threw the thing up and it killed those people? Were they fridged for the sake of the <laughs> Avengers? <laughs> yes, because we didn't know them, <laughs> and it motivated everyone to do things. Oh my god, this these rules they're just they just. Ugh. Yeah, they're infectious. They Thou shalt in. not fridge. They are Thou shalt not their own fridge. Story and writing their death. Wait, does this mean that? Um. Oh, I, I, I forget his name in Suicide Squad. Uh, Milton. Mm -hmm. He got. He fridged. wasn't fridged, or was <laughs> he not fridged? Well, no, he died because... quickly and unceremoniously, so he but was fridged. only but... a. Oh, so only all right. Let's oh, discuss. and remember, they rushed his is... character development. They gave him, they rushed it. They rushed him to get it to, to, you know, become a yeah, superhero he was, and find his purpose. He was so. more, he just helped them with plot stuff. Only one of the Suicide Squad cared when he died. He was killed unceremoniously. Yeah. And so... they tried to cheat you by expediting character development right before he died. Wait, who, what do you mean? Or, or after he died. I, I'm being facetious. I don't it's believe just, that it, they did. But no, no, because I agree. I agree with Rags. It was after. I thought I was just getting confused. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's so. Does that mean by her? Oh, sorry. I'm mixing them up. Not Milton. I'm mixing. I'm mixing them up with Polka Dot Man. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Rags talking oh. about the the guy who got shot. Uh... He's talking about Milton. Yeah, yeah. Milton. So I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if by her criteria, 
many insert quotation marks as needed, does he count as being He does. He has to. Well, but... So nobody did anything as a result of his death in terms of the over, like other than Polka Dot Man complaining about something for a bit, right? Yeah, right. we got some char- we got some character about him, and I guess we also got character on the rest of them because they are their responses. And so well, we only care about Milton in relation to the Suicide Squad. We don't know what his hopes and dreams are, and we don't care because um, they're not relevant. All that we yeah, care about a, yeah. is how our heroes use his death. And to well, and I was gonna say, it seems like she would walk up to James Gunn and be like, "This whole Milton character is all wrong. You got to get us to know him." And then James Gunn's like, "No, the point is we don't know him." That's the whole point. That is the point. It's like, like that, is, that is an immoral point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have <laughs> you have become immoral. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even know Slipknot, the man who can climb anything, and he had the most impactful death in possibly all of content. And what about all of the people who died on the beach? They all got the 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 uh the the man with the spear. He got fridged for Harley. Jab. Yeah. All that we care about is his spear in relation to how it propels her journey forward. He got That's fridged, cool. he did. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Boomerang got fridged. Oh, and also someone might be able to uh, someone might argue that Rick Flag got fridged if they were being really stupid. <laughs> 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 so got fridge because all that matters is his what this does to Peacemaker. Yeah, you can argue it Man. with these flimsy rules for sure. Yeah. Character potential. Avoiding fridging is a matter of giving the due. It's about treating them like they really are the hero of their own story and writing their death or brutalization as if that's where the story actually ends. How much more impact? I mean, that literally for them it that does. Is, that is what it was yeah, for Black Widow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that is, is one to one what it was for Black Widow. I mean, a character's end is often, I mean, like, that's, that's what death is. That's the end of you. I think what she means in terms of an end of the story is that the death has a relevance in terms of what their journey was, as opposed to just, like, say, for example, you're learning all about sword fighting and then you're just hit by a train. You'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, if you learned all about sword fighting, you defeated some evil sword master person, you got really old, and then you were defeated by a... You know, a new villain who's younger and faster, and just like, oh, there's some. I can see the through line there, as opposed to suddenly hit by train. I assume that's what she means. And like I said, Black Widows. That is just 100% in line with everything that's happened to her in her story. So I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. What would a fridging be if the story actually acted like an important story? with their death and how many riots would there be if an actually important main character was iced as unceremoniously as these fridging victims are? Well, that's, uh, how many times does that happen? That's happened though? a lot of times. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's happened a that's lot. That's the thing. Important characters can just fucking die. A and lot of the times, an unceremonious just, end is what it can add to the tragedy. It all just goes back to how they do it. Like, it's... Mm, like, what, like you're going to act like all of this... Like, does she understand that for almost a decade, a show called Game of Thrones dominated popular culture? Killing main <laughs> characters and beloved it, characters left, right, and center unceremoniously. Like, did she just forget that existed? Like, she forgot about Black Widow? <laughs> like, damn, I didn't even watch the show and I know about it. If Captain America had gone over that cliff with a token little half piece now, there would have been fucking riots in the street. No. Um, had he gone to Vormir with them too, that was his task, and he, he concluded totally that both of you need to live, that no one's sacrificing themselves, and then he fucking knocks them out or pushes them away and throws himself off, I think fans would be like, Right, well, I mean, it's in line with um, a lot of what we believe to be true about him, but I don't yeah. know that, like, there would be riots, <laughs> like, in frustration over the death not be Like, I think people would, would say that this was uh, um, an ending that matches his storyline for the most part, but it, um, I think we would be actually discussing it maybe would have made more sense for Black Widow to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. Maybe. But um, Cap's already yeah. done this. He did it in his first movie. It's just that he ended up yes, getting he frozen. Did. He fridged himself. So yeah. it's it's just funny that she's <laughs> like literally yeah. people be so upset yeah. <laughs> to see Cap fucking do something like that. It's like we've seen him do something like that, but okay. And you know it. I guess this is just another trope and that you know better to write oh, actual not... characters with agency and actual characters, you see. Actual characters, Jesus. not like Black Widow. Not like, not like Black Widow. Come on, just bring on the ad. Come on. Just Personal goals instead of people shaped plot devices. 
It's funny how often that happens. Just say women. So, yeah. That's what you Thanks mean. Thanks again to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. Yeah, we're done. Yay. It's designed to help organize your world building, making the whole process easier for writers, gamers, They can help you organize that all the characters. Odd. Odd. Right. That looks odd. That looks odd right there. World maps, family no, maybe it is really good. But yeah. Calendar, custom wikis you can use for the music's still going. <laughs> built-in word processor yeah. with a scrivener like layout. It is, yeah. And fun story timelines. They also recently added a new tool called Chronos that lets you create multiple visual timelines, which also connects to a map view or more than one map view to show how things change in your story over time. You can use it to navigate events, wars, character lives, the spread of a religion, pretty much anything that happens Music is gonna in space haunt me in my dreams. Yeah, but how many characters are you gonna fridge in that war? Yeah. All of them. That's what I wanna know. How many Dude, that... people die in that war for a cause that impacts history greatly that we'll never know about? That software's pretty pimp. I'm gonna look into that. Yeah, it's nifty. So That's some cool. good came of this video. Yeah, there you go. I'm just trying to get us but, in the last 30 seconds, okay? When either they... Yeah, come oh, on. But if you don't end up subscribing world. to World Anvil, it'll be fridged. Oh, no. Then you're going to fridge it if you don't, if you don't subscribe. Well, that sounds interesting. How much check is out the link it? in the description for more details. And an annual membership, you can now get 30% off with the promo code Overly Sarcastic. Oh, she disappeared. Let me ah. see. Oh, oh, my God. goodness gracious. Spooky I didn't goes. see. I'm looking at World Anvil. Bam, 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 uh, bam. Do I have to... Where's the buy button? Create your own world now. Do I have to click here? No, I don't want to create an account. Just tell I don't me want to. No. Can... All right, I'll just look up World Anvil without going through the the link. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to. Uh, uh, no, stop saying create your free account. Just tell me how much it costs. Yeah, tell me how much <laughs> fucking money it costs. I've I've scrolled down and seen the f same thing t many times. Create your own world now. Uh, pricing. Yeah, it's... There we go. Pricing. It's in, it's right there. Right I there. found it. Yeah. Yeah, I found so, it. So we've got fifth. So um, there's three. There's man, different plans. Yeah, that that is that's kind of expensive. <laughs> like, so if you want the lowest plan, it's fifty dollars for twelve months. So fifty bucks a year, you get a gigabyte of uploads. Yes. Um. You get unlimited articles. Funny. I don't know what articles are. You get five universes slash worlds. You can have two editors, five subscribers, oh. and then you have article templates. And so, but you don't have manuscripts. You don't have interactive tables, family trees, advanced map features, markers, journey line marker, um, advanced access. I man, that, <laughs> it's just a lot of features. Is there no lifetime license for like a one-time payment? No, is they're all okay, subscription all, now. Uh, subscription. Oh, everything subscription now. Yeah, and this is yearly. Yeah, yeah so this will be the cheapest yearly. But the but there the, is a Grandmaster World. That is one hundred sixty Australian dollars. It's one hundred five American. Right. It 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 only comes with five gigs of storage. I mean, I, I guess don't know that's, about that. One. I guess it doesn't is that like the highest give package. You like doesn't Google Chrome yeah, give you the 15 highest. gigs? To, like, Google Drive gives you, like, 15 gigabytes for nothing. Well, let me check how much Steam gives you. Steam storage. Yeah, you get 15 gig for nothing on, on a drive. Uh, how about Steam storage? I forget. I used to know, um, a Steam profile storage. Um... I don't know. I it, it's not that important. I just feel like you'd. I, I guess if it's mostly word documents and stuff and pictures, it'll. You have to upload a shit ton to get to five gigs, but still. Then again, if you well, I wonder how much. I, I don't know, man. Fuck. It depends, like how many pictures yeah, you've that's, got, like and yeah, like, that's how the high thing. quality they are. Yeah, and if especially if you're talking about like maps and stuff, and you want really good stuff, I feel like if you're paying a hundred and five dollars a month, you're gonna yeah. you should get more than. You should, yeah, you should get more than five gigs. I mean, let's be, it's 2021. Storage ain't exactly expensive. Um, the, the, yeah, the free, yeah, if you spend 50 bucks a month, you only get one gig of storage. Um, funny enough, I was just looking at the top comments, and there's one of the ones that I find most interesting is like, well, this, in fairness, this trope would work if you were writing a comedy, and it's just like, that alone destroys that the whole alone, video, yeah. <laughs> like before you even have anything that we've said. And, and it would it works for more than just comedies. Absolutely, but another one I spotted is that um, Red just thought I'd tell you you're currently being covered by every frame of pause, and they're ripping this video apart. 
They've just gone through your Black Widow section. It's pretty clear you didn't watch any scene in the MCU involving Black Widow because the whole the Avengers <laughs> of my family thing was something established as far back as Age of Ultron. It's a core cool motivation in Civil War. Uh, and quite frankly, the reason they didn't bring up Nat after a bench in a lake, by the way, which is an incredibly disingenuous as to what happened in that scene, was because they did the snap, then Thanos came back to kill them. Kind of hard to mourn someone in the middle of a battlefield trying to save the universe, and quite frankly, trying to say that Nat's death, which gives the Avengers the soul stone and allows them to undo the snap, has no narrative weight or stake in the plot as a flat-out lie to push the idea that Nat was fridged. I'm sorry, Red, but oh, you're well. wrong about this entire video. And it sounds, because I didn't even know her name was, is that, like, I'm guessing Red and Blue are their names? Red and Blue, there's two of them? Yeah, there's, uh, because the that's logo has two of them. Yeah, there's a blue guy. Oh, I, oh, well, I don't know. But Maybe um... it's like a writer, narrator, or artist, maybe he does the little doodles, but I'm like, I think anyone could do that, um. Quite honestly, um, I think I mean was, I, uh, I I I'm glad that there was an effort made to have like little illustrations that some, uh, yeah, are about the point that you're little, doing. Little pictures, yeah. Um, I think the video is not only bad; it's just really bad advice, especially for people going to I, specifically yeah, for yeah, writing. I think I think it's really, really bad. bad advice. I think it'll throw you off, and I think that's yeah. the problem. Is like, I, I this, feel like a broken this record, does but I, I don't like. I don't like the, the, the sort of, like, this type of writing advice where it's like, we'll see, you need to be hyper aware of, like, what other people are doing generally, and that that should inform the decisions you're making for the story that you're trying to tell. But if you've got an idea that you think is really cool, I don't think that you should be allowing that to be warped and twisted based on, like, general perceptions at the moment of things that you should be doing and shouldn't be doing in terms of narrative structure or the types of characters you have, um, or, like, the, the kind of themes that you can look for. Fundamentally, does it make sense that your characters are going to behave this way? Does it tie into your theme really well? Does it make sense? Does it follow? Once you get that, that's that's kind of it. Like, in anything else, you can start adding on and thinking about it a bit more in terms of yeah, enhancing like it or pushing you, it further. When you have, like, ten people, and they're like, it should be a ten-second death scene. No, three minutes. No, one minute, with many things said. No, nothing yeah. said, but one minute. It's like, oh, all of you killed, <laughs> just stop. Like. Well, yeah, because the actual advice should be, well, just think about what you want to achieve with this story. Um, think about think about the goals that you have in terms of the story you want to tell and the themes you want to hit at and the character payoffs you want. And if it follows, and if it makes sense, and if it feels right to you, that that's it. Like that's it. You shouldn't be encumbered with all of this baggage of like, well, you know. But generally, there are these types of storytelling devices, and you know, it's really it's just immoral, like to to have characters get killed unceremoniously. So you shouldn't be doing that. I just yeah. I don't know how you could possibly hope to sit down and tell a story that you want to tell if like you're trying. Because the reality is, is that these rules bend back on themselves, and there will often be examples that defy these rules where it just it the rule it's like well it doesn't apply there but most of the time it's like that's not helpful that's really not helpful at all there's got to be something more fundamental that you're trying to appeal to in terms of good and bad right doesn't uh let's see someone said doesn't rags do the same stuff on a white background with maybe better points lol well i'm glad you brought it up because i thought through this quite a bit I do have fairly recently, relatively to videos, introduced a, a whiteboard that I can use to display things or make doodles and whatnot. But I had the whiteboard drawn. That was a commission to have the whiteboard drawn. I got a font. I downloaded a font that looks like someone wrote on a whiteboard, right? I have different versions of the whiteboard and the dog on the chair. Oh, the dog on the chair, I got commissioned for that. So that he has different colors uh, for the markers. So I have different marker colors and I'll use corresponding text colors so that I can, I even have them uh, in my folder. I have them. So if I go to uh, blue in my folder, then I have my whiteboard with no blue marker on the tray because the markers are on the tray. And it also brings up the dog with the blue marker in his hand because if it's in his hand, it won't be on the tray. And I can draw on top of it so that it fits with itself, right? It's not like I drew an image and just pasted it onto the whiteboard. I just draw on the whiteboard and that is an image. And I save it and I could put that on there. 
And also the whiteboard will show up in a different image that I'm getting of the dog at a desk. It, it, this is going to be this is really top level shit. It's like a 3D render. It looks insanely good. And you could see in the corner the edge of the whiteboard. So there's a little continuity there. And the chair the that the dog's using expanding. coming up to the whiteboard is the same chair that he uses when it's pulled up out to the de uh, at the desk oh, in the, the rags stuff. universe look at there, it there is, there is there is lore here so yeah. <laughs> there's i put a lot of thought into this because i like it when everything just all sort of comes together and it makes sense go getting this and i was like ah oh, these markers yeah it doesn't make sense if you know the dog's holding a colored marker and that marker also exists on the whiteboard because the dog and the whiteboard, those are two different images and one will just be on top of the other and they could slide in and move if they need to. Those are the details I got like, oh, oh that's that's the thing. That's the what I need. Verse. Going to a theater need. The rags verse. Raggle verse, rag but, yeah. ragu verse. Yeah, I'm getting some art of uh me pulling it down. So when it when it slides down from the top, I'll be pulling it down. And when it goes away or when I need to have it pushed in from the side, um, I have one of him pushing it so that it's not just the board appearing. I can have I have the option to have the dog actually making it move. It's the little things that add up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I nice. want it to look nice. Um, so that's the difference. Chad. Yeah. And just um, I saw it mentioned. It's like, well, it wasn't one of the worst videos you covered. It's like, I mean. This is one of them. It was pretty bad. We keep saying that. That's the problem. We keep saying well, that. Well, like because it's, scale it's well, true. Remember, I said the Cinema Sins one we watched last time about Train to Busan, that was like, eh. Bizarre. Yeah, it, yeah, it was bizarre yeah, it and strange. Was weird, but, but this one, like, the reason why I would probably go as far as saying this one's pretty bad is because it's just bad advice as well as just horribly worked out and then misrepresenting loads of media. Like, man, yeah. this really does tick a lot of bad boxes. It's, it's, I get what you mean. It's like it's a it's an amalgamation of a lot of frustrating uh things. And it yeah, someone yeah, said it got it very got worse as it went along. It's like yeah, it, the Black Widow part it's a really broke right, down. Yeah, like at some point it, it just fell off a cliff. It did. It wasn't just like wrong. It was a relative. It was a pretty long video, <laughs> and it was wrong for like the whole video. Almost every point made was wrong and unhelpful. And someone who legitimately followed this advice, their stories would not improve. It's almost like it you're was getting directed into the forest, you know, like you're getting you're getting lost. Like you've been given this map and you're like, all right, so the village is through this way. Oh, wait, maybe turn left. May maybe turn maybe, left. Yeah. But right could work. Also, maybe it's like, yeah, oh, like okay left and then it's like but but remember like you don't want to walk too fast all right you you want to get you don't want to get to the town before sunset or maybe you do you know it's up to you really but it, it, would, it would be morally wrong if you got there before sunset it's like but also watch out in the forest because the monsters come out at night so you might want to keep a weapon on you but then again you know like it's their land but then again <laughs> they will kill you and it's like okay yeah, and yeah. then before you know it it's the middle of the night there are a pack of wolves <laughs> descending it's on like you it's like hey a map that's just taking you to a bad place is worse than no map. Yeah, because with no map, mm. you might end up going right. to the right place anyway. You'll figure it out for yourself. You'll be like, maybe I shouldn't walk off this cliff as opposed to the map that says, do it. It's fine. You'll, you'll, there's a bridge here. It's invisible. You'll be all right. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> no, a, I do think this was one of the worst. Yeah. Let's do the Mary Sue video. No more short EFAPs. We're at five hours, 20 minutes. We haven't even done Super nah, Chats yeah. yet. <laughs> We've already tired. Doing super chats. So... But I'll keep it in mind, this, whatever, maybe we'll come back to it one day for the Mary Sue one, but I'll be honest with you guys, like, I find Mary Sue discussions fucking boring as hell. I do too. Yeah, I don't really not care. They talk, anymore. It reminds me of genre yeah, where they talk so much about what qualifies or not, rather than just, you get the point, right, that they, they're really badly characterized, that's the point. Yeah, or you can't do this in the movie, it's not this genre, or you need to do this in your movie because it's this genre. It's um, crap like that. I'm but, like, oh, you know, so. Maybe we'll check it out at some point. But yeah, um, maybe. video bad. We're probably going to move into the super schlorms now. So was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about in relation to this before we do? No, mm. it was shit. And of I'm course, ready to um, move on. I just want to see a bunch of scenes reshot with like fridges in them now. <laughs> where like uh, Hawkeye 
and Black Widow get to the top of that cliff and there's just the fridge there and they're kind of awkwardly he, fighting he, over he, trying to climb into the fridge. Hawkeye pulls her out. He climbs in. She she pulls him out. And then he see, she finally I, kind of finds her way in and then the, the fridge falls and then it does that POV over the cliff shot where you just see the fridge <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> and it's sad. What I thought you were going to say is I would like to see all of these famous and incredible scenes in you know cinema reshot with her rules quote unquote in mind to see how much shittier they are <laughs> sure that sounds great that too no um i guess if there was because i feel like that when it comes to the writing advice stuff and the takeaway i think the big actual piece of advice is whenever you hear something like that was in that video it's worthwhile to immediately even if you don't have a specific question in mind to counter it you could just be like hmm what if this is wrong and that might like help you sort of uh take more of an approach of what ways do i think that this rule breaks because mm -hmm. you know if the rule breaks then at that point it's we're, we're dealing with something a little bit different from a rule it's more like a suggestion and a suggestion can have value as well but if it's a suggestion you'd be more willing to accept that it would be contextual like it depends right. whether or not this is a suggestion of the work for me but if there's like a rule of like, this is just bad, it's always worthwhile to go, hmm, mate, what if you're wrong? Like, what if what if it isn't bad? Uh, and even if you don't quite know why you think that, or even if you don't necessarily think that, might be worthwhile to just bring that question up and then explore it. And then maybe right. you might find that there is an actual underlying truth that you can get at that is super helpful for your writing adventures. Um, yeah. That would be the thing. Don't just accept it wholesale read it and then think hmm let me think about it and then uh and then you know just go from there and then hopefully you'll arrive at some rules that are working for you right it, um it, it makes me think of the because we kind of did the same thing here we did with the the extra credits one about um you can't have evil factions remember that yeah we just spend most <laughs> of it talking about all this great media that is beloved by many that is doing the things she's talking about but she just like happens to avoid talking about those ones specifically it's just like mm. right Right. And that's I mean, the like, thing, is if you can bring up examples to the contrary, and they work, if you can figure out why they work, you're probably going to be able to hit at some underlying point that is way more valuable to you um, when it comes to writing. Like, if you can figure out why is it that this works despite falling into this archetype or trope, then maybe you'll be like, oh, so really the fundamental thing that I want to achieve here is this, rather than yeah. avoid this because other people have done it a lot. This is not helpful. Right. This is a video that you could tell when they were making this. They just they never considered when they were writing it out. What could someone say in opposition to this? Or should I double check yeah. what I just said? Right. When you have to okay. forget yeah. Game of Thrones existed, you <laughs> probably need to think a bit more. Right. Well, yeah, because I guess the problem is it's like you might run into the issue of if you think about counters you might find a really good one and it's like oh but then at that point it should be oh maybe i don't believe this and i i should uh maybe there's a different thing that i believe when it comes well, yeah, to writing it, instead of just disregarding it i doubt she'll talk to us at all but i would just be like i genuinely think you're very mistaken and, it, and, and i to the point where i'd be confident that if we gave her particular piece of information she would have to clarify and rethink the entire position especially on black widow that's the big one she's clearly not um registered a lot of what makes black widow story or... his story yeah. yeah and i um i you know it, it's a little bit it's just like it seems to be you really liked her and you really like gamora and you were like no don't die okay now i'm gonna make a video about how it's a trope to kill them and it's morally evil to do so <laughs> it's like <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> Tell me you care about someone bizarre. without telling me you care about somebody, I guess. Yeah, bizarre. Uh, terrible video. Um, not a fan of the video. <laughs> not a fan. No. Very bad. It was interesting because, uh, like, informed, bad advice, juvenile. I think it was really good for us because, like, it just got us to talk about so many things to do with storytelling. And I find it interesting that most of the time when we criticize stuff or praise it, we don't typically talk about tropes, like, ever. Mm. No. I don't like to talk about tropes or genre or things like that because I find that yeah. it just start getting stuck in the weeds because it's all big broad definitions of things that people think they agree on but then when you start talking about it we find that we disagree on a lot of the underlying things so yeah just try and take the story for what it is because like how much you've experienced in terms of media is going to differ from somebody else 
and we're trying to have a conversation, we kind of need to get on the same page. Oh, and yeah, for because I just saw, I, I don't know if it was an old or new comment, it doesn't really matter, but someone mentioning, um, I feel like Clint is a much poorer characterization than, uh, than he Black is. Widow. He's much flatter. I didn't hear any complaints. I mean, we talk about uh, characters in that film, like Black Widow is the strongest. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, she's the I least she damaged. Is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, John, Metal, you, you both, you lads want to stay, or do you want to maybe uh, go do life things? I, I'll, I'll hang out for a bit, I don't mind. I just yeah, I got can, myself I can another can of beer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm around. Very well. Uh, alrighty then, because that, that seems about that. But for talking about yeah. a wonderful video. Um, what I the good thing is we can, like, it's... we can do away with words like kill, murder, and death and just say fridge for everything. Like, everything. you hear about that guy <laughs> does, who fridged all those people? It does make the conversation quicker, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, Double dash. less words to remember. Just replace them all with fridge. Double dash? What are you talking just... about? Wait, just is tells... it not? I just saw the warning thing. That's... That looks like the double dash one. Oh, no, you're playing Mario Party, aren't you? I'm on six now. Yeah, it's Mario Party. Hud's um, and I, I don't mind that she's wrong about shit. Everybody's wrong <laughs> about something. Nobody has all the answers. I just don't dig the certainty. Speaking from this top-down place of authority, this is how it needs to be done. And there's no kind of investigation into what the, the, the proper way of doing things might be. Like, if she could have framed this all, all differently with the same points and it wouldn't come off as pretentious you know it's i mean like, god the, the, the armchair the and like, and stupid? uh fireplace it's just it's done unironically well, i wonder if it is like, on purpose i've, I've got if... it all figured out and here's how it is are you supposed well, to put that with sarcastic. yeah overly that, sarcastic yeah. is it supposed to be we're not we're not supposed to be taking I... that seriously I, I don't think there is any sarcasm. Funny. I'm not sure yeah. why, like, that's the yeah, it's name kind of, of the it's account. Funny you mentioned that, because there aren't many jokes in that video. It's very straight. Like, it's, it's yeah, actually played straight. incredibly straight. There's not many jokes at all. Yeah, and she feels frustrated um, at points in the video that she's had to deal mm -hmm. with this because these stories are bullshit sort of thing. Yeah, this was totally a serious video. Absolutely. So anyway... Anyway, all right. Uh, the first one says, "Molly, I finished Squid Game," and then it says some things that I can't read out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. So, if you didn't know, person who sent that, as well as everyone in chat, Wednesday, we're doing a Squid Game EFAP. Probably going to be oh a my long boy. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk all about it, and hopefully, we'll cover everyone's grievances as well as praises. I imagine it'll be a uh, it'll be a fun one. So mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. Ringy, what do you think of the contentious political topic that may get you cancelled? I, I don't... I, <laughs> I, I am caffeine deficient right now, so... <laughs> oh I think yeah, it's that thing. That particular, yeah. I'm, that thing. Um, oh, I agree with hey. you, it's bad. <laughs> Very bad, Zigzor I agree. Sent me this, he said he fixed it for me. Oh, did it? Oh, it he fixed so the. Nicer. Wait, what he fixed? Did he make the white match? Well, I mean, like all of it, essentially. Oh, oh, right, because he's repaint. That looks way nicer. Yeah, it does. <laughs> What's well, nicer? Yeah. Um, but the main reason being that it's more cohesive as an image. That's yeah. The the, the light, the firelight. Oh, the, the bookcase um, goes all the way books. back. <laughs> the books yeah, are does. 3D. He added some shadows. Did forget about the red log uh, at the bottom <laughs> there, the, the red he on the side. He just got rid of it. Oh, oh yeah, he did. That's all right. This is a huge improvement. I like this a lot better. It looks more cozy. That looks, yeah, like it's um. Seriously though, like I would say to like in terms of the original creator, it might be worthwhile to just like give it an update. Yeah. Like, just yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you can keep the same somehow, aesthetic as so... well. Like, yeah, I actually I like the it. fire and the logs and the, the... Like, I like that. I just, yeah. <laughs> Make it all nice and cohesive. Um, also, hi, Rags. Hello. I haven't seen this one, but you should also look at the overly sarcastic video on Mary Sue. An absolute trash video no. going as far to say Beowulf is a Mary Sue and Ray isn't. 
I mean, I'm not I don't familiar know with Beowulf, so yeah, I don't. I'm I mean, not familiar with Beowulf, so maybe I'm not sure. I've seen the weird animated one that was with Anthony Hopkins. The one by uh, Zinex yeah. and Mackies. So I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, I, I I can't remember enough of it to know if it would qualify, but I don't know. The Ray isn't part. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Also, to show yeah. I mean no harm, high rags. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, good luck. Fringe, uh, fridging is a funny trope. It's, um, I don't even know Fucking what I think stupid. in total of it. I find it frustrating. Okay. I don't know. All this told me is like, it's all about execution. Like, who gives a fucking mm. shit? If it's good, usual. it's good. Who cares if it's a trope, a cliche, whatever? Well, yeah, because if, someone, if I said, like, stupid. never gloomp a character, and you're like, what does that mean? It's like, it's when you kill them in an environment where, um, you know, fucking the main villain hit them with something when they shouldn't have been able to. It's like, that just sounds like something else. Why are you calling that gloomp? Yeah. <laughs> <What's that>? why, <laughs> yeah. Why does it need a name? It's like, I don't, don't gleam. It's like, what's gleam? So it's when you establish one thing and then contradict it later on and it doesn't make sense. It's like, oh, so... Just, just the contradiction. Make sense. Yeah, yeah, it's gleaming. Don't gleam. Gleaming, <laughs> what do you mean, fuck. Don't gleam? Why do you keep saying that? Gleaming. Like... Yeah, you definitely don't want to uh, jibby dibbit, which is when you do a handstand in a triangular room. You don't want to do that. That's a bad thing. Mm. That is a bad thing. Now I'm thinking about like, like if you have tropes in video games, right? Not, not the, uh, not the, the video series. Like just actual things that are just recurring elements in games. Yeah. And it's like I think every time you try and qualify one of those, you'd be able to qualify it without relying on um, like the fact that it's done by other things. It would always be some sort of mechanical issue in the game or, or some problem that doesn't line up with the other mechanics. I don't know, just, can we... I, I guess the focus on them being tropes feels like a waste of time. Like, yeah, what we're actually when... complaining about is that it's just a bad thing in this particular story. I find it beyond frustrating if you spend so much time identifying it, telling people not to do it, and then you go, but sometimes it's okay. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> so, so there is some other thing... I feel. Do you, do you ever feel like that's sort of almost basic, just, deduction stuff that we need to work on there? Like... You understand that if you say, but sometimes it's okay, then what you're talking... There is something else that is the problem, then. It's yeah. not what you've just talked about, it's something else. Unless it's just wasted time. general advice, like, don't yeah, fucking sure. go to the edge of a cliff, because you might fall. You're like, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I should do it with story... Because, again, like, it, I think it's just framing it as advice, like... Hey, buddy, you've never written a story before? Maybe just do three acts, okay? You can start messing around with other stuff later on, but, like, for the first time around, maybe just focus on making sure that, like, yeah. there is a beginning, middle, and end. <clears throat> just do the basics. Mm -hmm. Or, like, hey, I know, like, you've only written a couple of stories. It might be worthwhile to just, like, have a main character who goes on an arc, and it, it's just the standard. He, he thought he wanted this, but really he wanted this. Nice, basic, um, simple story. And then it's like, but but again, it's like, there's a difference between that and saying, so never, never deviate from the standard, like, the hero thinks he wants this and then he actually wants something else. That is fundamentally, you have to do that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. too restrictive. It's just too restrictive, I think. Less right. rules, please. Um, yeah, boy, here from the start, hoping to edge for at least nine hours. Well, oh, we're at boy. five and a half, so... Oh, Let's good luck! Um, mm -hmm. I mean no harm. I submit to you a very peaceful high rags. And to further uh, prove my harmlessness, hello. I submit ah. a high fringy. Sorry. Oh, hi! That's like super peace at that point. That is very yeah. peaceful. Um... Can you say, what, but you're all my real friends? This meme doesn't make sense. Okay, um... Wait, do you want everyone to say that, or just me? I, I guess I'll do it, and then that should hopefully be enough. What? But you're all my real friends? This meme doesn't make sense. There you go. Also high ranks. Well, maybe it's Shut like up. the inflection, like, like, uh... What? But you're all my real friends. This meme doesn't make sense. There you go, Like the meme, one of them is your real friend, but you're like, no, all of them are my real friends. So this meme doesn't make sense because of it. Hmm. Bringy and Morley, watch Fatman for EFAP movies, please. I assume they mean Fat Man. 
Thought Man? No, is that oh. the Buttman. Is this What's the Mel Gibson one, right? Uh, is that? Do you mean Pig, or is that a different thing? No, Mel Gibson Santa Claus in Fat Man. Oh, right, right, right. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm mixing them up completely. Um, yeah, uh, it's a potential Christmas movie. I'm not uh, for, for us for EFAP. I'm not sure if we'll do it. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. Um, Christmas. Train to Busan. I thought the main guy at the start of the movie was being told to sell off the bio company's stocks. The big wigs know what's coming and want to get out. Loved it. Watched it last night because of you. Um, I, I, specifically, I can't remember exactly what was uh, sold or sorted. I I think he was. I think that was the idea. He could see what was coming, so he wanted to sell. Right. Because they were the, the price was about to tank. Hmm. So they wanted to get rid of them and get their values, yeah. Yeah, for I think sure. that's what was happening, yeah. I, I couldn't remember the specifics, though, like uh, what stocks, if not all. I think it was just the ones related to that. Um, if ever you met someone who's never watched a movie before, which movie would you recommend to them first? Also, High Rags. Hmm. Whoa, who's never seen a movie before? Yeah. So I feel like we want to do fundamental, something super fundamental. Something grounded, probably non-fantasy or sci-fi. Probably. Um, um I would maybe a, a I was Serbian film? lighthearted and animated. <laughs> maybe a lighthearted. Sorry. Animated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a like um, a Disney one of those Disney classic movies, you know, that's really approachable. Well, like maybe Snow White has... and the Seven Dwarves or something. Lion King. Maybe that could be a good. Maybe like a Lion one. King. Yeah. No, people. Let's do. Let's do people. Actually, like um. Really. Um. I feel, if they've never seen um, a movie before, I feel like it's a good way to introduce them to how... Because it'll be a fun journey, right? To start giving them, oh, like, how about yeah. a movie with talking animals? And they're like, what? You know what? Someone said 12 well, Angry Men. That's a good choice. I like that one. Yeah, good movie. Yeah. And, Part and you know, if you want any other information on why it's such a great movie, 12 Angry Men video on my channel. Go check it out. <laughs> you made a video yeah. on that? I did. Cringe. Cringe. It's the best example of blocking I can think of in a film. Well, One in of terms them. of like cinematography and stuff. Yeah, that's what blocking. Yeah, no, it's, would it's be cinematography right. is that. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark could be fun as like an adventure. You know, this is what an adventure movie is. Yeah. I don't know about um, Human Centipede. I'm gonna vote no on that one. I think. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to go with kind of like the, an animated Disney sort of classic or maybe one of the Pixars. Something that's super approachable from all different kinds of people. It's very kind of uh, vibrant and uh, um, like you, they, they could understand all the messages. It's not super complex, I guess. Um, uh, something like that. I think that would be a really good first movie for someone. Yeah. If, if I don't know who. If they've never seen a movie ever, like you'd want to show them like a good movie that's like the moviest movie ever, like Goodwill Hunting or something like that. Finish. That movie is the moviest movie. And then you'd be like, right, time to expand your brain. We're gonna go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Also high racks. Hello. Um, sup John, high rags, and hello, all my N words. Hello. Hi. Started. Um, hello, Mola, Fringy, Metal, and Rags. Hello. Hello. Have you guys seen Dune yet? Any non-spoiler thoughts? Oh. Not yet. I'm planning to see that with my dad. He had a he had a minor surgery on his foot, uh, so he's hanging out at the house for a while until he could start walking around again. Uh, so that is that once he's <laughs> up and about. That is going to be our return to theater movie. Now that those are kind of back in the swing of things and they're normal, so we're going to go see Dune in the theater once we can. Looking forward to it. It should be a uh, should be nifty. I kind of want to go see it. Um, I've seen it and I feel like I'll wait for a little bit before saying anything about it. In fact, you'll probably hear me say stuff about it on Real BBC. For EFAB, I know that Fringy Metal and Rags are intending to see it, so I'd rather not say anything. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll talk with people who have seen it, yeah. We shall see. Um, also... Just tell it, me how it ends. Look on my Twitter, Absolutely. you can see what I said about the ending. <laughs> 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 um, 
Also, would it be better to have AI or human supercomputers? What would it be a human, human supercomputer? Human is capable be? of. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure a human is capable of it. But if you had a human who also had the thought power of a supercomputer versus an AI, I don't know. It depends on the AI and depends on the human. That's the thing. I feel like both could go either way. I do kind of wonder if of, you had a human yeah. with the potential of like a huge, amazing supercomputer, like well beyond what it is. It's like, does that are they human at that point, or are they like? I wonder if they'd alter everything about them, you know? Yeah, hmm. if something is truly an, an AI, in the sense that it, it's indistinguishable from a person, uh, or a human mind, but you give both a human and an AI the same, like, thought power, I don't know if there's really a meaningful distinction between the two at that point. Um... What is Michael Bay's best, ob objectively best movie? Fucking, I don't even sure. know. I'd have to look at the list. <laughs> I'm sure he's made some bangers, I think. The Rock uh, is a dope movie. Michael Bay movies. Is it his movie, uh, though, or is he just a producer? He directed it. Didn't oh, write it. I can never remember if he did. Uh, yeah, no, you're yeah. he, he right, he did, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, visuals in that film that are very Michael Bay. That's my favorite of his. That's probably my favorite of his. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if anything's Wait, gonna be that. Wait, which one? Uh, the Rock. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. That's Not a good one. Welcome to the Rock. Transformers. Uh, Age of Extinction. You no, know, I thought about <laughs> it. <His> greatest movie. <laughs> that's a close seen, one, uh, but I think I go with the Rock. Have you guys seen the Rock? I know. Right, I have seen John the Rock. I have, I have not. No. Oh boy, no. man. That's that's Ooh. pretty fat movies potential, I'd say. Hell yeah. Oh boy. That's good stuff. Ah. He directed all kinds of. He, he directed Press the wrong button. Bad Out of Hell 2. <clears throat> Picture show. That was a music video. That was, that was a good one. Actually, I didn't. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> hey, Frinkled. I didn't mean to get you so riled up with the Smash question. I didn't know that argument was so common. Also, thoughts on Sora <laughs> and High Rags. Um, Hello. <clears throat> I wasn't actually that riled up. That was, uh. Like, I just find it annoying. But as for Sora, that's an interesting. I find this is interesting when people talk about characters who they want in Smash, because, you know, I, I don't care about Kingdom Hearts. I don't care. But, um, yeah. that feels like a fair choice in terms of a character to include in Smash Brothers. You know, it's like a, a well-known character from a popular franchise that to some extent has been relevant on mm -hmm. Nintendo platforms. Um, that feels like a fair choice. Yeah, so I, the yeah, DS I, games, right? For, for I think Hearts. there were, yeah, like um, Dream Drop Distance or something. I remember hearing yeah. about that. But yeah, like it, it feels like a fair choice. So I can look at that and be, well, it's not a character that I personally would have wanted, but that's that's cool. And I mean, I feel like it's the same for Minecraft. Minecraft feels like a perfectly, in fact, Minecraft is a more than app. That's like a really great idea to have a Minecraft character in Smash. Um, conversely, Byleth, that that's I don't think that's a good choice. This character from this game that came out when you already have like nine characters from this franchise, no. Like, no, that's taken up slots that could have been taken up by a rep for a, a whole other franchise. Like, yeah, somebody said Leon Kennedy. It's like, that feels like a much better choice than Byleth. Especially considering that like Resident <laughs> Evil 4 came out on GameCube originally. Get him yeah. in there. Yeah. That was Get very Dante influential. Because we, we don't, we don't, Persona 5, like, that character I'm pretty sure was only in PlayStation, but that's fine. If we're going to do that, at that point, yeah, get Dante in there, get Crash or Spyro, just get Master whoever, Chief. put him in there. Yeah, put, well, I mean, they got a good relationship with Microsoft by the sound. John like, Halo, put him in there. John Halo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Halo. people tolerate, <laughs> I don't know how people tolerate the online multiplayer with that input lag. I keep... I keep like on a Smash. I'm like, yeah, I own Smash. Yeah, and I'm just, I never fucking play this mo this game. I don't know why. And then I played it recently, and the the input lag is so dreadful. Like I don't know how this is. I mean, I guess most people just do the because the PC has fine. spoiled you, or uh, I I'm assuming other console games it. have better input delay. Yeah, the than... lag is pretty no, bad. It's, it's on Smash. Smash has always been shit online. Bad online like yeah. every single one of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. The the Wii one was even Brawl was even worse. Yeah, Brawl was a disaster on some online. 
Yeah, because it used like the frame sync method, so everything was choppy as fuck every mm -hmm. single match. Again, Fring is satirized bias towards Fire Emblem. Yeah, well, sure, maybe that's an explanation, but it's not an excuse. It's, um... I mean, like... Because I know that there's a bit of a Kirby bias, but, like, that that makes way more sense to me to have a Kirby bias. Like, Kirby is a long-running Nintendo franchise. I mean, look yeah. at that! Kirby only has three characters. And it's like, Kirby's always super important, like, in terms of these games and stuff. But, um, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, yeah. really, if anything, there should be a Mario bias. Like, there ought to be a Mario bias if there is one, but... Yeah. Ideally, no bias, though. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how much yeah. Is, how much are the DLC characters? Do we have, like, a pack or something? Or are they all individual? The pricey. They're... They're 110 coins each. How much Microsoft is... points. Or 20 <laughs> red coins. That's what yeah, I remember saying. <laughs> um, Fringy, Fire Emblem goes all the way back to the NES. Okay, so I'm just gonna... Let me look up sales figures for these franchises. I'm getting tired of these oh, points. No. Like, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure that Fire Emblem has not sold as well as... Hold on. Let's look up the best-selling games on Nintendo Switch, just to put things into perspective, you know, for just how popular these franchises really are. Um, Nintendo Switch. Give me a minute here. Goalpost moved. Sorry, well, I, I'm pretty sure that in the last stream, if you remember my point, one of the big things is how popular they are. Like, I think that that is a relevant factor. Mm -hmm. Alright. Best-selling game. On Nintendo Switch is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 37 million copies. Ooh, the wow. next one is Animal Crossing at 33 million copies. So Animal Crossing, I would say, deserves more than two characters. You know what? Legend of Zelda Breath of... Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, 24 million copies. Uh, Breath of the Wild, 23 million copies. You know what? Zelda could stand to have another character, I think. Pokemon Sword and Shield, 21 million copies. Man, look at these games. Splatoon 2. 12.45 million. I am jumping a bit now. Tw uh, 12.45 million copies. God damn. Where's Fire Emblem? Hmm. Hold on. Where is it? Where is Fire Emblem? The the best selling one in the series. 2.87 million. Man. You know what? 3 million? That's like a tenth of 37 million. Everyone's asking how popular <laughs> is it in Japan. I don't. This is worldwide sales. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> like, I don't. And I mean, so the number is going to be Japan, lower. If you have to go yeah, the, the, the number will be lower. <laughs> right. Dude, like, I'm pretty sure as you just look through this list, it's like, man, it feels like you, you Ring Fit Adventure. You probably did a rep from Ring Fit Adventure. It's like, why the hate for Fire Emblem? I don't hate Fire Emblem. I think it's a cool game, but there are like 10 Fire Emblem characters in Ultimate. There's like as many Fire yep. Emblem characters as there are Mario characters, and that is bullshit. That is absolute bullshit. When we're talking about the legacy of these franchises, like that, there, there's no arguing around oh that my one. God. Just killed myself. <clears throat> I fridged myself. No. Why are there three <laughs> Metroid characters in Smash if it's just about sales figures? Okay, so like three versus ten. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say it was just about that either. When we're talking about diversity of characters, Samus and Ridley are nothing alike. But like, I don't know if you can sit there and be like, you know what, Ike and Moth, like they're, they're very different. And they're, and they're mm. like the most different if you compare them in terms of one being heavy attacks and one being light attacks. You're making it into it? I said it was one factor. Samus and Zero Suit Samus are totally different too. That's right. <clears throat> um, Oi Molly, Cinema Sin Civil War video too spoopy for you? Um, we could cover that someday, I guess. No. Uh, we, I mean, Cinema Sins is, you know, don't take too much in a row is what they say, right? Be careful. Don't OD on cinema sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you massives planning to play the next game from Supermassive Games, House of Ashes, this Halloween? Coming to you in <laughs> three or four days, yes. Mm-hmm. 
Ooh. I took a day off of that. <laughs> that is a way to spend your life, yeah. Wow, that's great. Um, it's gonna be so shit. <laughs> this game's gonna it'll be, be great. Shit. What are you talking about? Uh. Oh god, Bowser's mini game. Oh. I agree with your criticism of Atla, but still love it. So I was wondering if there's anything you remember from the show that it did really well. Hi, Raggle Daggle. I was waiting for him to say hi back. Um, Wait, yeah, Fraggle uh, Dangle. Oh, that's me. Hi. <laughs> oh, Raggle Daggle. Oh, I, oh okay. It's okay, okay, fine. It's just He's having to pee or something. It's fine. Um, yeah, Iro, I think I would argue that he's done really well. This, um, like a character that is a part of the sort of evil empire in a way, but um, doesn't believe in their goals, but at the same time his whole family are into it. And so it's only, uh, he's like building a force in the background to try and undermine it eventually, but also try to get his family to come with him sort of thing. I think there's, there's lots of good stuff there. There's too many characters that use fists in that game with free stupid logic of Smash inclusion. Okay, I feel like that's just bad faith right there. They're just like, oh, it was specifically that they have swords. I guess... Do we- alright, let's lay it out from the beginning. So, I think that the decisions that you make in terms of adding characters into Smash Brothers should be determined by a variety of factors, including, but not limited to, how popular is the franchise, what is the significance in terms of its legacy to Nintendo, um, also, also um, like, how diverse is, uh, the roster in terms of characters that are very different in terms of how big they are, how fast they move, what are their primary weapons that they have, um, you have a ton of these factors. By that metric, I do not think that there should be 10 Fire Emblem characters who Hello, fight with I'm swords. Back. That's what, uh, basically that, it. That's the take. That seems like overkill. Yeah. Uh, there's like 10 characters. There's yeah. representation for like Smash? every single game. Yeah. But meanwhile, Waluigi, who would be very different, I would imagine, from every other Mario character that they've added, man, feels like a really great choice that we don't have in this game. Yeah, I never so knew about, like... Mm -hmm. When I play started like playing Smash, I never knew about Ice Climbers, or yeah. Belch. Nest, or... Um, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, these these are some really cool choices in terms Pit? of pulling characters. Pit is another one. Yeah, yeah I never knew um, about it. a lot of these. Little Mac! Know, is kind of reaching back a bit too. Um, and also, uh, um, like, the, the Duck Hunt uh, characters. It's like, this is kind of fun, picking characters who had a history uh, with Nintendo. And it feels like there have to be more than that who haven't gotten a chance. But Byleth gets one. <laughs> Damn, those fighter passes are pricey. They are pricey, yeah. Twenty-five. Stop for discounting the first Japanese one. culture, dude. If they even got like what? eight characters, what? I don't. Is this actually an argument that like Fire Emblem's more popular in Japan, therefore that's the reason why they're in there? Because like I don't know if that's an that's an explan that's an explanation. That's not really a justification. And plus, like I don't even have a problem with that because I'm pretty sure Dragon Quest. That's not. Like, Dragon Quest I is more popular in is. Japan. Well, th that's the thing, right? It's not super popular here, but really popular in Japan. And that guy, that uh, franchise got a character added in. That's cool. But, like, that's because he's from a different franchise. Like, you're giving other characters from other franchises a chance to be in it. Because that's the reality of it. When one character gets a slot, that's somebody who doesn't get to be part of the game. Somebody who people would like it would be cool to have i think it would be cooler to have like some indie because you got hollow knight skins you should put like uh, not yeah. hollow knight uh, no there is a hollow knight skin but you could put hollow knight in the game or shovel knight that'd be really cool that'd be really cool if you could add those guys in there pretty sure oh, there's the uh, hollow knight spirits like those supporting i think there are the game. i think there's I'm a pretty skin. sure i unlocked uh, one earlier today the raker because yeah. I'm, I'm playing smash at the moment actually <laughs> yeah i i guess the problem is like I don't know um, that I, I I'm not sure why someone would be like okay so presented the option between the ninth Fire Emblem character and somebody who is from a different franchise entirely I don't know why you would say 
Yeah, ninth Fire Emblem character. Let's add him in. Because frankly, I'd be cool with not adding any more Mario characters either. But like, I would sooner add another Mario character than I would a, a Fire Emblem character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there, there, there's just way more diversity in terms of like the roster of Mario characters. In terms of size, how fast they move, what weapons they use. Alrighty then. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to stop talking about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not that invested. <laughs> Clearly not that invested, yeah. No, I know, I know. I'm, I'm very much not. I don't, I don't actually care, alright? Liar! Uh, wish I could stay and watch, but I have to go to work. I'll definitely check out soon, though. Also, hi, Rags. Hi! Hope you have fun when you finally go through this um, presumably nine-hour stream. That's, that's where I assume we'll get to, but who knows. Um... Oh boy, an EDAP when I'm operating a million dollar printing press? Let's go. Oh, oh alright, careful. Um, yeah, a million, million dollar printing press, sounds interesting. Um, if y'all think the Reddit tisms is bad, you should check out the Discord more often, mainly trash chat. The mods themselves argue objectivity doesn't exist. No, I know, that's fine. <laughs> Trust me, everyone in the Discord is allowed to believe whatever they want about objectivity and subjectivity. Seems that the... the um, the Discord, the Reddit, the the Twitter, the dreaded Twitter. Still a collection of people that really like storytelling. And um, what I've gathered is what is true. EFAP's value isn't in uh, agreeing on any particular framework. It's that, yeah, people should be behaving in, in line with who they are in their stories. Things should make sense. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to be compelled that that is the thing that should happen. You just have to want that to be the case yourself. It, as long as you have that value yourself, then everything we do here is useful to you. Um, so yeah, it's totally fine. I think um, it's not fine. But Mel doesn't think it's fine. Away. He's gonna beat up all the mods. Yeah, yeah beat up. Uh, Y'all should check out Inscription, an incredibly unique, creepy card puzzle game. Hmm. At least try out the oh, demo yeah, on Steam. Also, hi, Rags, and everyone else, I guess. Hello. Hello! Never oh, heard of it, but sounds interesting. Uh, EFAP increases game luck in Destiny 2 can verify. <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, Say that one more a, time? It's a, it's a grindy game. So Destiny while 2? So, watching EFAP, uh, whoever super chatted probably got some good drops while farming oh. some weapons. If everyone's different, no one is. I'm not sure what that's referencing in terms of the We're video. We're all individuals. <laughs> I'm not. One of the greatest quotes ever. Uh, the snap is all his, Steve's, fault, because at the end of the day, he should have just sacrificed Vision, the Marvel's director. Thoughts? Um, she did say that. Well, she's not wrong, but... Like that, but that was a choice that he made. That's that's the thing, and the choice. I was gonna say I we can make it. talk about it consequentially. That that is what happened as a result, but it is in line with Steve's beliefs. Yeah, and absolutely. it's not something I condemn, like in a moral sense. Rather, I'd just be like, it's unfortunate that he couldn't bring himself to do that. And I wonder yeah. if he would make the same decision if he could do it again. I do wonder. I think he would. Probably. Um. I mean, I don't think he's a consequentialist man, you know. Like, his well, idea would sure, be but you know, at the point of everybody initially dying, if you were like, true, Steve, true, this can all yeah. be undone if Vision dies and he's already dead, so you know, you'd have to assume that he'd probably commit. Probably, um, yeah. But um, yeah. To, so to clarify, though, it's not like it's all Steve's fault. There's a lot of things that had to happen to make it all happen, right? But um, I don't know the the context of exactly what she would have said. I'm just saying that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Steve's decision to do that um, was very important, and it would have been fucking hard as hell to be like, let's kill him, we got to. And I don't know that it would have made sense for Steve to say, let's kill him. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Vision, you gotta go. <laughs> as he gets the pliers out of the, you know, like, it, It's on the, <laughs> the foot of a lot of characters, like Gamora couldn't sustain watching uh, Nebula get tortured. Uh, Loki couldn't allow Thor to keep getting tortured. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. give up the stones for different reasons. So, uh, Doctor Strange is was probably torture. the most bizarre. Um, 
Ooh, I actually like OSP. Sometimes they do have bad takes, though. I haven't seen this video, though. Well, well, it wasn't a great one. <laughs> <laughs> now you yeah, have. have. Now you have an excruciating detail. Um, so is Superman but evil a trope or a cliche? Hi, Rex. Hello. Um, maybe it depends on how the origin begins, right? How how do you get an evil Superman? Um, then again, I I'm not sure. Is it a trope? Maybe because it applies to like, are we talking specifically? Superman fighting an evil version of himself or are we talking about the idea that a superhero or a protagonist might often have to face off against someone who's just like their moral inverse um, I'm assuming it just refers to doing Superman but evil yeah and there's a well, difference between uh... evil Superman and Superman being the opposition like the Dark Knight Returns where it's not really evil right. Superman but yeah yeah him and um... Batman differ yeah, it, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess as it's currently been presented, I'll say trope because it's sort of broad enough and you could do different things with it. But I'm not particularly certain. I don't know really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what I would uh, categorize it as, but it is like if someone was to make a brand new Superman, they're like, this time we're gonna make it so that he doesn't end up being so wholesome and uh, all about the American way. We'd all be like, uh huh. <laughs> He's gonna be more nihilistic or disenfranchised with the hero work and it's just like it's fine i'd give it a chance it could be amazing but like the <laughs> after the snyder stuff it's kind of like all right can we i just on. want a good guy i just want a great superman i want a good superman he's just a super dare i say a superhero <gasps> no that's cringe no yeah stop uh -oh. stop right there Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> um hola bonjour howdy mola fringy metal and guest Hello. Hola, guitar. Hi. It is an embarrassment of riches this weekend, Wednesday, Friday, and now again today. Woohoo! Well, there's there's even more on the way in terms of compact for yeah. EFAP stuff. So, grab your bum bum. Grab the bums. Grab your bums. Always boobs. is. Um. Watching Grace Randolph's Dune review. So racist. I, I, yeah, she's got some racist <coughs> tendencies. She says some weird shit. Oh, that is okay. This is an interesting little mini game. They like reveal to you what is in the box a further back from when it actually is. Then you gotta keep it in mind. It's kind of neat. Um, is it though? Ah, shite! I forgot to say hi, rags. Oh, hey. Um, don't forget the Dead Space 3 playthrough November 2nd. What? <laughs> what? Dead Space... Dead Space 3 playthrough? Well, yeah, like, have we... I don't remember that's a that potential up. for an EFAP. Uh, well, yeah, it always has been, but, but I, don't I don't remember... Think we scheduled as... it. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, when did we make a fucking schedule for that? Yeah, Gaslighting me, Super Chatter. Can't have that. Yeah. Wait. Um... Rags, look up Stan Lee's Batman. Stan Lee's Batman? Let's see. Oh, it's it's like a man bat person. He Oh, let me see. Um This is I'll, I'll show you a picture. I'll show you a couple pictures, actually. Mm. Alright, calm down. <laughs> Wait, that's Batman from Stan Lee? I guess that's when he... Okay. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that's closer to what you were uh, saying about I committing with the costume? Version. Yeah, I'm think yeah, I'm thinking so. I guess that was Stan Lee's version of Batman. Excelsior. Definitely, uh... Definitely, uh, Batman. Hmm. Um, I'm gay, and I'm not offended by it eating gay. Well, how about that? You can watch you're wrong. the evil clown munch, munch, munch on a on a gay gay, and, and it's apparently fine. Okay. I what think it's a really bad trope. What if you're a clown 
and you're offended that a clown was made to eat a gay person. Yeah, like as like a clown, you're a like, clown they should lore. only eat married people who are straight. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Like in the clown lore, different people just taste different. <laughs> Which I assume they would, but I don't know if being gay would have any influence on that, you know? The, the, the next one is, do the gays taste different from the not gays? It's like, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, I 100% support Barry the gays. I think they mean Barry the gays, but uh, like I said, man, Barry if, if your character is dying for very meaningful reasons, I don't fucking care if they're gay or not. Fridging. Let's use the proper no. term. <laughs> I refuse. Do you think that world building could be more important than the plot? You can have a story with basically no plot, uh, but the world will have a large part in what characters believe and how they act. So but what they act is I guess the, plot. the thing. Is, That's the thing. Well, what I was gonna yeah, I I think that um, I mean I don't I don't know what a story is without a plot because even if even if the story is. Hi, Jim. Hi, Bill. I'm going home. Bye. The plot is Jim goes home. Like, exactly. that's the plot. Yeah. You um, have to have a plot. Your world building can be, like, a result of the... Well, well I there's always the world building important. to a certain extent. Well, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I the plot's more important. I think, I think that we're talking about things in general. Like, if the, if the four pillars are character, plot, world, and theme, like, world building is lost. Um, I think that I think the character, plot, and theme are all more important. Um... But I, it, I think it's just that um, world building can only ever no. be relevant through plot and character. Um, and it's more emergent, I feel. I think it is more. You well, yeah. I, I you mean, can you have... can think about it this way. NCIS, that's set in the modern world. It has world building. It's just not. Yeah. Like the world building is, this is the modern world and there is NCIS, which is an agency of the government. And they like investigate you can have crime. A... And, yeah. There can exist a plot that just doesn't have a theme, really, at all. But there has to be world building, because all of these events take place within, like, space. Like, there there has to be yeah. some level of world building. Uh, it, it, but the plot is death, plot is king when it comes to the, those three. Um, I would say a story is a meaningful sequence of events. So there's a couple yeah. of ingredients there, plot being one of them. You need a sequence of events to have a story. Well, yeah, Whether it means something is a, is another thing. Trying to envision this a bunch of stuff happening that doesn't really go anywhere. Trying to envision the story is like, is it like a lot of us are just sitting in a room watching TV and like the world's events are sort of happening? You know, and we're just sort of like, whoa. But then even that, the synopsis of the plot would be four friends, you know, five friends, whatever. They stay in their little blah blah, blah house watching the worlds unfold and, and you know, that, that that would just be, that would be the plot. And yeah. then presumably there's going to be some kind of meaningful ending to that, like, uh, I don't know. Um, it makes me think about a uh, Tank Overfield Lane, where it's like they're all in that place, but the it's the worlds changing around them that makes them... To decide to do certain things within the place they're in without actually going outside. <laughs> right, yeah. I guess. But again, it's like impossible to not have plot because that means you you can't really have characters that don't have any interests or goals which generates plots. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts on the Scream franchise? I remember liking the first two and that's about it. Uh, I think it's the same for I me. <laughs> there were neat little movies to try two. and shake up um, the horror genre by being aware of the fact that some of the characters are kind of aware that they're kind of in this horror story and they, they talk about it as real people probably would. Okay. Like this. Um, it, it just came at a time where slashes were just so fucking boring and dead that Scream is like, what would people do if they were in a slasher movie? But like, kind of recognized it in the same way that we would if you know we were all in some kind of fucking situation we couldn't necessarily get out of, but we know there's some guy running around killing people with a knife. We'd be like, hmm, <laughs> interesting. Um, but yeah, I remember liking the first two. I'd have to rewatch them, I guess. Will the Karen E. Fat movies come out next Halloween or next Black History Month? <laughs> or only Halloween? Karen for the Black History Month movie. <laughs> Uh, oh 
Okay. Overly sarcastic productions doesn't tell people to avoid tropes, but talks about how they are executed both well and poorly. A little well, late, so not sure you if you can. knew. I'm afraid that yeah, she's outdated information. She is explicit yeah. that it is inherently bad, broken, and immoral. This is inherently bad and immoral. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Maybe she doesn't normally tell people to avoid tropes, but this time she did she's, say don't yeah, do who it. Who knows? Maybe she's just waiting for the time to pull that card. Who knows? Who knows? I did see some people saying this this video was unusual. Um, so maybe it okay. is just an unusual one. Maybe. Okay, yeah. maybe, right. Maybe. That was just a bad first impression then in that case, I guess. Uh, th blah, blah, blah. The problem with trying to avoid tropes that a lot of people don't realize is they are inevitably in storytelling, and subverting tropes is a trope too. It can just, become uh, a trope. Yeah. It, it's frustrating. It's like it's the thing, it frustrates me to categorize it this way. If someone said, like, I don't fucking want to see a story where, oh, boy grows up in some farm and eventually becomes strong and heroic and saves the princess from the evil warlock that's got her in a castle, that's boring. I'd be like, we can still make that really good, what the hell? Yep. Nope. Boring. No, I've seen it before. It's like, maybe you haven't. Maybe I'm gonna bring in a character with a, a fish on his head. You haven't seen that before. Damn, old fish head Larry. Mm-hmm. Mm what if the hero dies? Whoa, that's Whoa. brave filming. That's what pissed me off about film school. It's surrounded by people who are like, they want to reinvent filmmaking because they're all so <laughs> ambitious, right? And it's all these projects <laughs> pitching all these extreme ideas, like the, the protagonist getting killed. It's like... I feel like you outgrow that phase at some stage, you know? Like yeah, you have that exactly. edgy phase where you want to do all this crazy shit and then you're like, actually, this is retarded. I'm going to just. <laughs> yes. Just a little more yeah. normal. Right. Um, have you seen any videos by Film Courage? I don't recognize the no. name, so. Presumably not. Uh, Resident Evil Dead Aim had a man named Morpheus who became a tyrant, but the tyrant had more X and a lot less Y when it came to chromosomes. I have what's, what's Resident Evil Dead Aim? I don't get it. No Is idea. that a, one of the animated movies, maybe? Oh, maybe, yeah. I, no, it was like an on-rails shooter for... I can't remember which one it was for. Maybe... I was thinking of Survivor. That's PlayStation 2, I think. That's PlayStation 1. Is it PlayStation One, right? Yeah, you're I had right. that game as a, as a, when I was younger, and I played it all the way through. It was very short, and it's pretty shit, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the Wii had one or two on rail Resident Evil games as well. So the Wii had a lot of yeah. on rail games. Yeah. Survivor's a weird one. Looks like an arcade shooter you could use a light gun with, but you can't. <laughs> Fun fact, Major Force can't die, so Green Lantern cut his head off and hurled it into space so the man would suffer the void of space forever. Jesus. Oh wow, that's uh, that's dark. That's terrible. Ugh, that's great. Green Lantern, I mean, bro, uh... that's, that's rough. Uh, reminder that the Great Linkara referred to Black Widow's sacrifice in Endgame as a woman in refrigerator moment. Fucking... Did any of these people watch She's the movies? <laughs> No, but they just it, it, they just remember it as Marvel Sludge. They don't actually remember <laughs> what happened. It's just, oh yeah, those were just those Marvel Honestly, Sludgy movies that I saw that one time. I see this, um, the awful thing of seeing, like, maybe a black person in a role and being like, oh no, super diversity. I see this just the reverse. We're like, a woman died? Oh no, fridging. You're like, what? No. <laughs> what? Uh, Classic fridging. It was the great Linkara that said it, though. Uh, hello from Ketchikan, Alaska. Hello. Hi. Women in Fridges is a hackneyed criticism made up by Gail Simone to get a job in comics and used by people that never read comics. I mean, with all the examples she gave. I know Gail Simone, she's a comic book writer. Um, yeah. I can believe it's used by people who aren't familiar with source material. I can believe that now. <laughs> yes. Uh, watch The Last Duel. It's not woke, but great. Hi. I don't... <laughs> what a dichotomy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've heard of it. I that's, don't know. Uh, that's um, Ridley Scott, right? Yeah. <laughs> More like R Ridley... Rod. <laughs> Talk <laughs> Jill Valentine and Chris Ridley Rod. Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jill and Chris are... 
in Fortnite. I just saw that on Twitter. Oh, that's Dude, oh, that game uh... bugs me so much. It's just this amalgamation of pop culture. Hey, hey guys, yeah, if you haven't uh, if you haven't played it yet, God of War is on sale. So now's the time to pick it up. Oh, minus zero percent. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh man, down from forty nine ninety nine to forty nine ninety nine. It's on sale. Yeah, that's a super worth. Is that Steam or the no, Epic Game Store? On PC? It's not out on Steam I yet. Know. I don't think. Well, you, I don't well it's, it's, got, a, it's got a page on Steam, but I didn't know if it's on sale. Yeah, yet. It's got a page. No, no, it doesn't even have a price attached to it. I think. What is that store? I don't know. I just saw it. Okay. So I'm <laughs> guessing it's PlayStation Store of some sorts. I guess. On a scale from Moodle to just felled trees alone in the rain, how masculine are you feeling today? Because the only thing I didn't do to earn my man card is colonize some lands and kill the natives. Oh my. How <laughs> come Metal gets singled out as the person who's the zero s spectrum for virility? How'd that happen? I don't know. I feel like it was obvious. That seems... Though. Yeah. You think it would... Like, you think they'd pick me. So, um, yeah, we, we we were totally manly today. We took down a Whammon's video. That's, uh... We did. Uh, and we could get in more trouble for this one because she's more popular than um the one I've already forgotten about, the Black Widow one. Oh, my goodness. Maybe. I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm just numb to that now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just like, uh, just, like, argue with us. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> Like, listen to the things we said, please. We made ideas. We thought about it. We gave this genuine thought. Please. And it comes from a place of liking the stuff that you were saying is shit, okay? Not just hating you or anything. Metal, I'm Dutch and I want my bicycle back. I... Uh, you took oh, someone's I bicycle. Have it. Again? I, 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 I have my own one. I don't need your shitty bicycle. I, I think you guys are really gonna like this. So, Zigzor... He made this a few days ago, he said. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wait, <what's this? laughs> wait, wait, I'll get it on screen. <laughs> oh my god, that's huge. <laughs> Damn, Fringy, this... you're looking good, man. <laughs> you're looking jacked, bro. <laughs> Uh, have, I, have I got a little antenna? <laughs> you do. You have an antenna. I like this. I, I like this like almost robotic take on you. Wurst und Schnitzel, yeah. man. What does that? What does that mean? Sausage and Schnitzel, man. Oh, okay. Okay. Dog-sized doggo. Jay's blue shirt. Normal-sized German man. Dog-sized doggo. Jay. Normal-sized German Stranded man. Stranded emu human. Well-sized hybrid. Giga Chad. Australian emu human hybrid giga chat. <laughs> I like the idea yeah. that once the mask Metal comes shirt. off, there's just a green beak. <laughs> well, sorry, that's, just a beak. that's really funny, but I'm pretty sure the official lore is that, that it is just a mask. As the writer, the I'm pretty lore. sure the official lore. <laughs> The problem I'm, is I'm that I'm I'm currently tr like almost building up the friggy mythos and it's getting very confused already. Like it's already starting to <laughs> not your, make your sense. Your belt buckle me. says no, no. It does. It does no. say that. Yeah. No. This is great. I'm saving this one. <laughs> the the, really the, uh, the little folder. Like everyone has a something something size, and Jay has just says Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Five hour Doctor Who video. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we're sized in what? It is meters. Yeah, for a second there, I thought it was going to be, like, in video Minutes length average. or something. Oh, wait. Is, I'm over two meters tall? Jeez. Nice. I'm a giant. Oh, so, a, so a meter is, what, like, about 2.2 .2 feet, right? Um, How much is I, it? I, I, I'm pretty I sure know. a meter is three feet or something like that. 3.3 3 uh, feet. A meter, 3.3 3 feet. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you're a, you're a big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, was Barbara Gordon fridged for Jim Gordon? Irax. Well, that came Hello. up. Hello. It did um, come up. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I need to read it, I guess. Uh, and then be much more clear on exactly what we would classify as being fridged. Define this fridging. 
The trope slash cliche argument is a false dichotomy. There are cliche tropes and there are tropes that are frankly unavoidable, but tropes are not bad. I mean, we, we preach to the choir at that point. I don't, I don't really have an issue with something yeah. having been a trope or is a trope. You know, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. Um, when you finish with fridging, you should look up the Pandora's Box video. It's like a red stumbled on the legend and got super butthurt over it. Hi, Rags. Hello. Well, well, like the legend that it's like the curiosity of man or, you know, just like needing to... Well, I, what well, is the original it, story it of Pandora's Pan Box? Well, it, it's that, um... Well, Pandora opened the box and released all the evils into the I world. I know that. But maybe she has an issue with the fact it was a woman who did it. <laughs> much oh, like how it what? was a... Well, much like how it was a woman who took a... Who was tricked by the serpent in the um, Garden of Eden. So, I don't... I don't know. I women are up to. I'm telling you, man. They do oh, sort of okay. The so time. the myth is uh, that her curiosity led her to open a container left in the care of her husband, thus releasing physical and emotional curses upon mankind. Which isn't um, fair. I feel if you're just like, oh, I wonder what's in that box. Oh no, I've created. Well, yeah, no, I know. That's not fair. Don't fucking look in boxes. Fair. That's what you've learned. <laughs> that's why you don't open Pandora's fridge. Exactly. <laughs> Pandora's fridge. Lots of bodies in there. Yeah. <laughs> Pandora's fridge. It's <laughs> <laughs> all these fucking Pan corpses. Pan Lots Pan of skeletons in that fridge. Yeah. If you tried to live your writing career avoiding any and all tropes ever made ever, could you even write and finish a story at all? Seems impossible. Um, with how many Seems tropes there are, yeah, you're not avoiding them all. You are not avoiding them. You're just not. There's too many. And again, they are descriptive of things that arise from stories. Oh They're just... There's just gonna... Yeah, I don't think it's possible. Maybe, but... Uh, that, that's, I mean... You'd also be intentionally avoiding a lot of the good ones, so... Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues with this trope is it's... Starts from the lens of the gender politics of Gail Simone. She can't help but see everything as sexism. Well, it is weird because we noticed straight away that it's not about the person; it's about women, and it's like, oh, that's strange. Because uh, yeah. the ruling would obviously apply to women who have a husband who dies in order to fucking motivate them or whatever, right? It's like, well, it doesn't happen as often. You're like, yeah, but that's not. It's like, an okay, argument. but that's <laughs> not how we define. Yeah, that's not how it works. Um, are you gonna check out OSP's video on the Mary Sue? Maybe one day. I, no. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't. Well, I, don't I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> but maybe we will. Hey y'all, are you ready for the sex scene in Marvel's Eternals? I know I'm ready to shell out more money to corporate overlords consume product. Do they have a sex scene in it? Do they? Oh boy. Uh, how how do we know that? It hasn't has it only been shown to the press or something? Like, I don't know, maybe something on Twitter, I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was Joel fridged for Ellie? Or was the Zebra Savior fridged for Abby? Well, they were. The, well, the so Zebra was definitely a fridged. So like, what, if we're using this definition. What would ha Zebra Savior be the dad she... This, the yeah, yeah. Guy, yeah. Um, so, this is the thing. If she were in the call right now, and, I, and she knew t t Last of Us 2 well, and to be honest with you, she probably likes Last of Us 2 because it's so subversive, but... <laughs> if I said, was Joel Fridge for her, she'd probably say something like, well, no, because they had a, an entirely meaningful relationship that separates him as a character, but also their relationship together. And I'd be like, oh, like Black Widow? And she'd be like, no. <laughs> and I'd be like, no. Not like Black Widow. Yeah. I must say, I am a little bit confused. Um... Was Joel... Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, Batwoman's pot plant was fridged. Yeah, man. Just knocked right out just to motivate right. Batwoman to scream and then hit Hush in the face. Yeah. So hard that his face his fell face. off. <laughs> <laughs> the I, writers you know what totally I was saying. forgot that she didn't know that. That was a breath... That was... I, I was quite happy when that happened. It's like, yes, we're not going to have to deal with the evil Bruce Wayne. I couldn't deal with that. I thought we were going to get a whole season of that, and I was not ready for that. Yeah, because that was the big, like, cliffhanger stinger of the end of season one, and then season two, first episode, no, nah, it's done. They just get rid of him, yeah. Because I guess there's no relation to Kate, right? So it's not that significant. Mm-hmm. 
right back. Suing this? Is she suing them? Who, Kate? Yeah, sorry, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose? Is she suing them? I don't know. Someone wrote that in chat. I don't know. So I don't know if that's is that the development. I guess you could just Google News, the newest thing. Google I am Rose. googling. Yeah, just Ruby yeah. Rose. I, well, everything's from two days ago, so I guess nothing's really developed since. Hmm. Her, oh, by the what that would be really cool if if the show was really well written. The idea that an imposter Bruce Wayne suspects that he's Batman and is constantly trying to find the Bat Cave that while could not be a appearing. Whole story, yeah. <laughs> yeah, while while trying the, to play it cool and everything in front of everybody, you know, uh, that that could that be that like could be story, yeah. comedic, it, funny almost. Um, He's frustrated he can't find the bat cave and he has the t full run of the place because it's just hidden. <laughs> um, but that I think that would be really uh, that could be really good. Mm. Former Batwoman employees are responding to Ruby Rose's allegations. Um, well, I yeah, there was that one where the woman said that she was like basically really mean to them on set uh, and often late. That was that was a claim. Which is amusing. Yeah, because Do Gray Scott definitely. Well, Do Gray um, Scott said, yeah. And he said, I absolutely and completely refute the defamatory and damaging claim. I could hear it in his voice. <laughs> uh, made uh, against <laughs> me by Ruby Rose. They are entirely made up and never happened. As Warner Bros. Television has stated, they decided not to exercise the option to engage Ruby for season two, based on multiple complaints about her workplace behavior. We'll just have to see how it pans out, I guess. I absolutely condemn all the claims made by Batwoman, and we will take her down. Dude, Cameras Johnson, who plays um, Luke, he um, he tweeted out this. Batfam, you know I couldn't go the whole day without saying something. I love y'all. Don't think I haven't seen all the love today. But yeah, fam, she was fired. And it is very hard to be fired when you're the lead. Imagine what you have Wait, to do for that, that to happen. Cameras Johnson, who plays Luke. Oh, the, the guy who plays Luke, right. Yeah. Like one of the only two actors who can act on the show. <laughs> Damn. He's like, yeah, imagine... <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do to get fired if you're the lead? Damn, both hit both him and Do Gray Scott. Well, so that's that's the question is if if um if more people who are in the I don't know the crew start talking about these mishaps on set and all of these injuries and everything like that, then I guess we'll see. Like at that point, but um, I don't know. Mm. I mean, does she? Maybe she knows that there's like something preventing the real info from getting out so she's engaging in this he said she said kind of thing maybe she feels that's the best kind of war that she can wage um i guess so right because if you're not part of the because it may well be that there are people who are still employed on that show who you know want to keep their yeah. jobs yeah i, I don't, don't know, know. we we'll just have to see we'll have to see how it maybe goes. I, yeah. I mean who knows if it's who knows who's right but I think it's interesting how both Scott and her are, uh... Well, to be fair, they're both people she shat on, right? Yeah, by name, she, yeah. she was shitting on, uh, the guy so who, who plays knows? Luke. Oh, I, I'm just saying, like, the reason why maybe we haven't heard from Javicia Leslie about anything is because it's just, like, it's probably better I don't say anything. Mm. But if she was called out personally, she'd probably be like, ah, fuck you. Um, if Bowser killed um, Luigi, would that motivate Mario more? Well, yeah. That's part of the requirement, I guess, of this criticism is that it does motivate them, but it's it makes it makes a character's own value meaningless. Ultimately, that's like the implication. Like they were just used to be killed for someone else's story when they have their own story, without realizing how much that fucks with like loads of good stories, and that that's definitely a thing that happens. Like Barmy's story ends in Amon Hen for him. You know what I mean? Like that is his film. Doesn't mean that uh, he's reduced because he's just being used to motivate a bunch of other people to do things. Blah, blah, blah. They fridged him. They fridged him, damn it. Uh, just some guy made a good video about the uh, WIR trope. WIR? Women in refrigerators. Uh, uh, I kept thinking of fridges, not refrigerators. I was like, it's supposed to be an F, surely. 
women in refrigerators it's a website created in 1999 by a group of feminist comic book fans that lists examples of the superhero comic book trope probably just list every um, time a woman died where why female characters are affected by injury rape killed or depowered uh fridging uh okay i don't care fun thing is i've like seen it oh go ahead that's good. I just feel like people who make lists like that are not people that I should pay attention to. Mm hmm Fun thing is, I've seen it criticized both ways. People call it fridging to have a long-running main character just killed off, but also for introducing a new character just to kill them off. You gotta get that middle ground. And then you'll, you'll make them happy. Uh, Last Jedi hadn't come out when Red said sh uh, Rey wasn't a Mary Sue. Oh, that helps. Okay. That does help. Yeah, that does yeah. help. Especially not uh, Tross is probably the worst of the three, to be fair. <laughs> yes, yeah, it it's still it's not good and it's not good in the first, but it definitely doesn't get better. I have been going through your tremendous backlog of podcasts from the beginning, and I'm really enjoying the journey. Your discussions have helped me look at all aspects of my life more objectively. Also high ranks. Oh. Hello. Well well. Um yeah, glad you're having fun with it. There are a bazillion episodes at this point. Because Adam and Sitch were like, haha, we have more episodes than you now. And I was like, you guys, you number everything you do. We don't. Half of our content is fucking minis. <laughs> like, you gotta yeah, get them minis too. Minis and movies and. Yeah. And all that. Liars. Mubelstein, please play the Henry Sickman collection. It's hilarious, and I'd love to hear your comments out on it in a stream. Henry Sickman? What was that? Henry Sickman. Yeah. Uh, uh, Henry Sickman. You mean Henry Stickman? It says Sickman, but if this is Stickman, then that's probably it, yeah. There's a Henry Stickman. He's got the, he's the Stickman with the really big black line eyes. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Finish! <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Bringy, I agree with most of what you said about Effie and Smash, but if you say that Roy is a clone of Marth, I will strangle you through the monitor. Uh, I don't think I ever said that there is a clone. They are similar, though. Roy. They're not the same. Marth. Um, because, well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess that's the thing, is it's funny, because when I think about Brawl, it's like, I was cool with that when you had, like, two or three of them. That was kind of cool. Um, then it just went off the rails. Um, no, but, I mean, some of them are explicitly clones, but they're nevertheless part of the roster, so. Mm hmm Um, I'd love to see Liana K guest on EFAP one day. I don't, I don't remember, remember that the... name very well. Liana K. Uh, let me, let me just put it in YouTube. Liana K. Um, check video here. I want to say I have heard of her before, but I don't know anything about... Yeah, I don't know anything about her. Um... Oh, uh, she was on South Podcast. She hates The Last of Us 2. Oh, well. Well, uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's a good start. Um, OST once said Ray, not Mary Sue. That was before episode seven. That uh, would be TLJ, right? No, wait. TLJ's eight. Yes. So she must have said it after TFA before TLJ, yeah. She would um, have to, otherwise. No, otherwise, I don't understand. What... <laughs> It'd be weird. Uh, Overly Sarcastic Productions was better, but now it's like they have a minimum of one stupid take per video that's not just restricted to red, blue says weird and wrong stuff too. I don't know if it was one stupid thing in a video. That was, that was, a, that was, a, lot. That was a lot of stupid things. A lot of stupid things. Yes. That was impressive, actually, how many wrong things were said. Um, I'm Commander Shepard and this is my favorite stream on the Citadel. Oh, that's okay. good. Neat. There's probably a lot of streams on the Citadel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably, yeah. 
Um, I watched K and D's video on the Moose episode seven critique. He makes me he makes an insane EFAP Hall of Shame first pace worthy line in the first five minutes. React to it, high rags. Hello, K and D. K and D. This is, this is what it says. I'm a little. I watched K and D. Uh... K and D vid on the Moo's episode says, so I guess maybe the Moo is the episode seven critique. So that's you is the Moo you? Oh, I could Are be Moo, Moo, I guess. I'm not sure. You could be Moo. <laughs> episode seven critique. He makes an insane EFAP Hall of Shame first place worthy line in the first five minutes. React to it. Hi, Rex. Oh, hello. Watch K and D. Hey chat, who's K and D? K and D. Um. Well, I. I'll keep no, it. No, it's not K. Like K and D. I guess that's a channel. K and D. Oh, kids next door is what people are saying. Well, that would be K N D. Oh right, yeah. This is K N D. So I guess what they say they will sound the same, which is probably why they're saying it. Knowledge, oh, knowledge and defense. That would match. Yeah, the, yeah. I've only ever seen clips, and it's hilarious. He's like... just a weirdo. Yeah, he's just like a weird loser. <laughs> um, was Stormfront fridged for Homelander? Hi, Rex. Oh, hi there. I'm not even going to pretend to know at this point, you know. It's like, the rules are confusing. Uh, EFAP Season 10 rags his fridge to motivate Mola. No. No. Put it in a little doggo fridge. Um, Alec Baldwin... Okay, cold dog. Alec Baldwin fridged a Clinton Foundation slash Epstein lawyer by killing his wife? That's strange. That's a that's a strange super chat. Yeah, I got no context for any of that. Hello. Um, I rags. Which is better, tomboys or femboys? Uh, tomboys. I mean, yeah. This says Mola, please passionately argue against him, but I agree. So. Yeah, I agree as well. <laughs> Fringy, what Simpsons does this remind you of? <laughs> Uh, what, this one? This is particular. Um, um, this episode, hmm. Um... Oh... Oh, it was the best of times! It was the blurst of times, you stupid monkey! <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they were all monkeys at the typewriter working on the next great American novel. Ah... Um... Have you that that is an interesting thought experiment if you just get a bunch of monkeys set them down at a typewriter one of them will inevitably write a masterpiece just by virtue of you know if you give them enough time I'm not sure that that's going to take I mean, a long time Oh well, yeah, yeah sure well, it, the idea is if you, if you give, you give them infinite, infinite time they they yeah. will yeah it's just they they will. said like it's an interesting idea it's like it's not feasible right now <laughs> i find it really interesting that's all just that a monkey will write the best book ever just because he's typing we don't even need the enough. monkey you just make an ai at that point right well, sure but an ai is not as interesting as if it's a monkey this monkey has written the greatest book of all time and he couldn't tell you shit about it <laughs> like, well i feel like you right. wouldn't have to simulate it because it's just going to happen because of the nature of infinity but I mean, we talk about reader response. Yeah, fuck me, death of the author. We talk about death of the author. Death of the That's monkey. a real interesting one. Death of the, the monkey. 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 So what, what did you what did you mean when you you know what were you getting at when you wrote this particular plot beat? <laughs> it's like oh, very interesting. Um, and now, oh, now I, find, I get it. I find Jerry's arc really interesting in terms of you know what would you say that this is a critique on capitalism? <laughs> <laughs> huh, okay, I never thought about it like that. Thank you, uh, monkey. <laughs> Alright, uh, next up on our panel, um, I don't know, a fucking octopus that also wrote the greatest novel ever. We've <laughs> been getting in a typewriter for a long time. 
<laughs> Mr. Well, Octopus, you know. What's the that? first thing the monkeys write is Twilight, but it gets better from there. <laughs> well, <laughs> and even they recognize what they've done and burn it. They just burn <laughs> it and spin around it with blank stairs, <laughs> watching it fry. <laughs> Um, Scrotum with booger balls. Well, that would be a good reference in terms of just trying to write booger balls. <laughs> so, I I'm you so... haven't watched South Park. So yep. there was an episode where um the kids were forced to read Catcher in the Rye for their book report, and they were told like this book was banned. Like this book was banned, and of course they're like, "Holy shit, this is gonna be awesome!" And then they read it, and they're just like, "That was lame. We should write our own banned book." And so they yeah. write a book called uh, "The Tale of Scrotum with Scrotum with Booger Balls." <laughs> and <they're> like, <laughs> The whole idea is that they are just writing a book that is bullshit. Like, it is just meant to be offensive. Um, and then their parents find it, uh, and they can't read it without vomiting. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, they, finish no. it, they finish it, and it's funny, because it's like, it's like, Randy, read this. So then Scrody, he, he shoved it up this infected, oh man, on oh, this! <laughs> just, they're all vomiting. But then, oh, no. the whole idea is, oh, but this is like the greatest book ever written. The characters yeah. are so vivid and like the themes. Yeah. Um, oh, it's then, so good, but you have to vomit. You have to well, it's, so, it's, 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 it's the most disgusting book ever, but it's it's incredible in terms of its commentary. And um, yeah, like the whole idea is they frame Butters because they don't want to get in trouble, and Butters becomes like this icon of literature. Um, and everybody just keeps talking about this book and what it means, and the kids are just like, dude, it was bullshit. Like the whole point was that it's bullshit. Um. But then Butters has to write a his own book. Um, but of course, Butters isn't as lewd as the other kids. So the book is called The Poop That Took a Pee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's just like the, the you know, the poop and then uh I think Morgan Freeman narrated it. And nobody was vomiting, <laughs> but they're like, oh, this book is incredible. It's amazing. It's like the greatest thing ever. Um and it's just the whole idea of like, dude, you guys are just looking for reasons for why this is brilliant. It's bullshit. Like, yeah. sometimes it's just bullshit. So I guess that this video made me think of that for some reason. I think the other kids, oh, no, they, someone they, they, it. they pin it on Butters because they think they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get in trouble. Find it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then he well, gets the funny thing is a great author. Butters still gets grounded. He has to write his book in, uh, in his bedroom because <laughs> he still got grounded for the language. Yeah. And I remember there, there was like a gag of uh, a, 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 a game show. How long can you listen to the book and not vomit? And they just put him in a little box. Three seconds, <laughs> not vomiting. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about Touch the Stove. Well, now back to Touch the Stove. <laughs> so like, Jerry, I hear you're, uh, I don't know, you work, work in like automotive. Yeah, it all started when Touch the Stove. <laughs> <laughs> just a game show where you're standing next to an oven and like it's cool <laughs> touch the stove and you don't, you don't even think maybe they're gonna put my hand on the stove <laughs> there you go chat we'll give the simpsons reference yup yeah well like schlimpsons ha ha this ended with metal oh yeah <laughs> That's just funny. Out of context. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Metal. Oh yeah. Metal. Oh, yeah. Any thoughts on Pray. the 2017 Prey game? Also high rex. Uh, it's really. Oh, first off, hello. I really like the 2017 Prey game. I would highly recommend it to people who like like a survival exploration uh, action sort of game. It's got decent, uh, uh, just, it, I, I, I would highly recommend, uh, I, I won't go too much further. I really, I really enjoyed, nope, I got, I said I wouldn't go any further. I really highly recommend it. I gotta stick to my guns. Now that's, it, that's it, really cool and I'm gonna let you finish, but let me tell you, it is a <laughs> crying just, shame know, that Prey yeah. 2 got cancelled. Yep. I'm sorry. It just, it still upsets me. Ripperoni. Um, I haven't played it, but I plan to at some point. I will too. It is the good. It. Um, Woody oh, Insis. Hmm? Oh, wait, he's just normal boo. My bad. Hey, he's not got a crown, you fucking idiot. Hey! 
Sorry, I gotta call it out where I see it. Uh, would Yinsen's death in Iron Man be considered fridged? Also high rags. I certainly Hello. wouldn't. Not in the. We talked about it. I wouldn't know. Fuck no. No, if well, that's no fridging, not my I don't care about fridging. Like, well, yeah, fridging is a box best served cold. Yeah. The, the closest we would probably get to calling something fridging is when someone dies and it doesn't make any fucking sense. The only thing that comes out of it is forcing someone else to do a thing. Um, yeah. And as much as they may be correctly motivated by it, the nature of the death is fucking absurd. And we were like, yeah, so we would just be talking about how stupid that is. We wouldn't then say this EFAB chat is an example of fridging. We don't usually do it that way. No. Uh, tropes are story shortcuts that can be both good or bad. Um, yeah, they're neutral. I just think they're neutral. Well, it's saying they can be b good or bad. So at that point, it's the tropes aren't good or bad, it's just the execution of them can be good or bad. Yeah. So tropes are neutral. Yes. What ideas that's, do you think, yeah, that's what I think aren't shown enough? Stuff like main character or secret villain trying to sabotage the group and side characters becoming hero? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, that's those are some examples. The main character who you thought was the main character dying and it was actually not them at all. That's uh, the fun one. That this is a fun characters one, yeah. just behaving with basic levels of intelligence. I don't think they're I really talking about miss that. that. <laughs> but uh, well, like that tropes. Weird. Well, so they're I mean, that's sort of tropey. I assume you're referring to the fact that so many incompetent writers can't write people properly, and so they just end up being really stupid. Well, well I think, yeah, that's the stupid ball, right? Who's holding the stupid ball? Mm -hmm. I really hate the stupid ball. No one should hold it. Well, yeah, I, 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 I don't think that's what they're, they're after. <laughs> yes, we, we want no, the, people no, to not be stupid. The tropes we want to see more? I, don't I know think that just, it... what are what are story situations that are just not common that you would like to yeah, see Yeah, like more? people being intelligent, I guess, is what you're saying. It's just like, obviously, that's not something that's not yeah, seed. Maybe. It's just something that they badly execute is intelligent people. <laughs> that's such a tired cliche. <laughs> well, <laughs> intelligent <I> guess, people, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you badly execute intelligent people, that's like <laughs> having no intelligent people, right? Are they stupid? Yeah, so they're asking yeah. for stuff that's just not even attempted, usually. Not even attempted? Yeah. Um, well, so their example was attempted, uh, yeah. your main protagonist turns out to be the villain. Yeah. I'm, which I'm is just, very yeah. unusual. Um, the bad guy has a point trope. I, I like some level of justification for why the bad guy is doing what he's doing. He's not just bad for the sake of bad, and it's not just power for the sake of power. It's there. There really is some kind of a point or a purpose, or he is informed by things that are happening, and so he's trying to do something about it. We need more Zemos. I would agree with that. Yeah, I want just. I just want better villains in general. I consider that an upgrade from a villain who's like, I want to take over the world. It's like, okay. Yeah, power for its own sake is it's fine, but it's just like the it's it's the one tiny step above evil because evil, you right. know. It can just be boring, you which know? can be boring. Um, but yeah, I, I want to either no true. Um, you like, know what I want to like, see more of? Uh, unhappy endings where the re the resolution is kind of like not right. Things don't pan out. Or maybe just the Pyrrhic victories uh, externally you won. Bittersweet endings? But, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, you won. Like but blind it manner, wasn't kind of. Um, I, yeah, blind I think that could count. I just, I yeah. I call that you, bittersweet, yeah. I guess the thing is, it's bittersweet. I'm trying to figure out if I actually mean something different where like, I, like in Endgame, the good guys lose and it's like, yep, that happens. I mean, Infinity War. Um, I don't know if I want. I don't know yeah, if I Infinity want more War. of that. Um, um I mean, I, I, like, I just, you don't see a lot of it. That's all. You don't. You um, don't see a lot of it. Yeah. Um. But I'm definitely down with the more we won at a cost, or we had to learn like this. This we we learned some valuable lesson, kind of thing, mm -hmm. where it's not just everything's just hunky dory dandy at the very end. There's some aspect of. I mean, it's good that we won, but 
man, shame about da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Bittersweet. Um, I was about to say, Fringy, is that brought on in part by a Kid Detective, or...? I really liked that ending. Um, yeah. That felt honest to me. And I... Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just... um whether good guys win and it's all really happy it's like that is just so much the common thing that i do like when the ending actually give a little bit of consideration to hmm, maybe things didn't work out as well as you wanted Ring and rex don't like happy endings no i do i prefer happy why endings. what why would, why would they, they like say that, that? why <laughs> that is not my maybe that is not my take i do like but... happy endings i just would yeah. like to see a few more stories that uh that are like 100 percent perfect yeah endings, you know? yeah where like things are a little ideal. bit like you can still have a happy ending that isn't ideal worst. yeah of course Finish. Um, mm. hi mubes frongo and raggles hello hello all right hey no oh, there you go Self shame time. I'm 31 and I've never seen Pulp Fiction. What movie that, uh, what movie have you yet to see that's passed you by? I think is what they're trying to ask. Pulp um, Fiction. Wait, you haven't seen Pulp Fiction? No, I haven't actually. Wow. Fair enough. <laughs> What's your answer for that one, Free? Um, I mentioned I've started reading 2001 the book. I have not seen 2001 the film, and that's mm. one that I want to see. I have seen that. Um, well, I know plenty about it just through like pop culture references and everything, so I basically already know what the movie is in full. <laughs> I uh, I think I was asked this on Real BBC, funnily enough, and I I went to just IMDb's top movies of all time, and the first one I hadn't seen the list I think was City of God. I've not seen that. It's like in the top thirty or something. Because I'm not sure. There's probably something more obvious. Um, but I'm just not sure exactly which one I haven't seen yet. I've seen a lot of movies. I'm a big old movie nerd. I've seen a decent chunk of movies. Um, can we make fridging synonyms with killing, please? Someone is a serial fridger or someone goes on a fridging spree <laughs> and then they fridge <laughs> themselves. Fridging spree. Oh, no. I could see how we could use fridging themselves. That could That could be useful. Stop. Yeah. Bridging is an epidemic. It has to be stopped. Tear it out from the roots. Wipe the slate clean. Burn it down. Nobody's going to get that reference. Yes, um, it's uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Ugh. Hey, no, it's not. You know it's not. I meant uh, Office Space. See, he's silent because I was right. Oh, wait. Okay. You stop it. You just wait, keep... what? It's um the, the Mario movie with Bob Hoskins, right? No, it's okay. You don't. Know. It's um the whale movie, Jaws. Uh, that's a shark. I feel like you're just bringing... messing with me uh, now. Uh, all right, I think that's a that's a shark. That's a unicorn. Unishark. Sharkicorn. <laughs> um, broke. I'm the protagonist of my life. Woke. I'm the villain of my life. Bespoke. Reject modernity. Embrace NBC. NPC, sir. <laughs> I'm the villain of my life. Uh, while I don't always agree with everything OSP says, I think the videos provide interesting talking points, but in her video about kaiju, she says King Kong is super racist due to him being an allegory for black people high rags. I never thought that I... I ever... don't think I've ever heard that before. That's new to me. So that's the opposite take. Also, I have no idea... Rags, were you about to say you've never... Do you know the connection for King Kong and black people? Just... The In whole... terms of, like, the, the villagers, I would assume that the racist part would come from the villagers on Skull Island might be depicted as racist. Um, oh, no, I meant... But I've never heard that King the story... Kong was an allegory for black people. Yeah, the story itself. The, the, loads of people have made this connection of like it's uh, okay. a bunch of Americans go to a, a particular place, yeah, I, I pull him that. out of his homeland, and then chain him up for their own benefit. He goes nuts, and then he gets killed yeah, by I, I them the for you know being ag aggressive or whatever. Is like there's there's elements there to connect, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like I'm but not it's sure. It's not if we... racist. 
Well, no, so I'm going to... What my it... point here is that King Kong is trying to make a particular point. To say... To flip it? To be like, it's actually... Ra so I'm trying to think of how this would translate for something... You know, like, if someone was to say, blah, 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 is anti-capitalist. Then you're like, it's actually cruel to capitalists. Capitalism, it's immoral or something. You'd just be like, wait, by being... That, oh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, because I remember that when in Peter Jackson's King Kong, the, the, the whole idea is it's tragic. Like, this yeah. animal was living here in its home, it got pulled out of its home, and it got killed for it. Um, like, it's unfortunate, it shouldn't be here. Uh, then again, I guess that one doesn't have the... Well, it seems I, like... Yeah, I don't know. I'm assuming she's, like, she's almost like reverse engineered it instead. It's like, it's... Because you can connect it, it's racist rather than... Well, isn't it... It's a condemn... It, it, based on what you've said, it sounds like it's a condemnation of well, the... Yeah, the, uh, of, the idea the being it's not King act. Kong's fault. He was dragged out of his home and then strung up, and so, yeah, he rages out, and they kill him, and it's like, wow, what a fucking angry monkey thing. And it's just like, well, but you did this. Yeah, I would have... I would have yeah, jumped to something else before that, like... Like like colonialism, no one benefits from it. It like you might think that you do, like the people did, like the the white people did, but they didn't actually benefit from it. You know, it's it's like a that would be what I would go to first. But there's probably a number of messages you could pull from it. Um, it's just like the the aspect of you can't control nature. Um, you know things of that things of that nature. Don't punch above your weight class, essentially. Um, but yeah, I, I I never I never ever watched that and and, and and thought it was racist or had racist messages. Well, if someone said like the fact that there's allegorically a connection to slavery or something and that it's a gorilla, therefore racist, I'd just be like, that seems like a pretty shallow reading. And plus, like the original King Kong was made in 1933. If they wanted to be racist, they would have just been racist. <laughs> you give just straightforward about it. <laughs> like they just—you didn't have to hide it back in 1933. Um. But no, I, I mean, I—I I don't know what she has definitely said on that subject, but that sounds a little awkward and stupid. But yeah, who knows? Know. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was largely unimportant to the plot of World War One. <laughs> He was fridged, <laughs> god damn it. Uh, someone, uh, someone said, isn't it racist to compare black people to gorillas in the first place? So the the idea here, too, is that you've kind of almost trapped yourself out of an option because when it comes to, like, animals that you could use to portray something else, because animals are very symbolic depending on cultures and whatnot, yeah. the idea that you want to say, okay, I want to portray this group of people, this race, this culture, this kingdom, this whatever, using an animal. And that animal needs to be super strong, right? You might think, oh, a gorilla would be a perfect option for that, where it's it's strong, it could have brutish force and that sort of thing. And you're sort of, because of the connotations, you're excluded from using that as a symbolic way to represent certain people. So you, it, it's been locked out of use, yeah, essentially, in a way. If you had a film mm -hmm. full of animals that talk and stuff, and the, and the free-spirited, sort of patriotic one is an eagle, you're like, oh, yeah, that lines up. But then, like, I don't know, the one who's aggressive and uh, is the only character there that came from, I don't know, fucking the jungle, but he's also just a gorilla, you can easily see people being like, wait, what are you trying to say? It's like... Yeah, well, people I mean, instantly are like, oh, a gorilla, that means a black person. And you're like, whoa, fucking calm the hell down, mate. Yeah. You know, like, fucking chill. People who are looking to problematize anything. It's yeah. like the whole false positives thing. They develop a system, that system produces these all results. These results have a pattern of having these things. You look at those patterns, you find those things, those things get spotted in something else. You assume it's one of those, one of the examples. And it's like, no, no actually, it just has the superficial elements. Kind of like with the um, the video today, she was identifying all these things that come with the trope, but they're also in good things. So it's like, uh, getting a little confused here. Um, I know this isn't appropriate, but I, uh, but it still kind of is, since it is was my money being spent on you Dumbos. So do super chats get shared with Rags and Fringy? Yes. That means for every. Every dollar that you send to EFAP dot uh, EFAP Limited, uh, EFAP 
and Co. EFAP limited, uh, EFAP, uh, Incorporated. We all get LLC. some. LLC. LLLC. Yeah. So if you hate LL one of cool us, day. but love the other two, <laughs> then you just got to bite the bullet and understand that every dollar goes to <laughs> one of the people you hate. But at least two people you like it, so. It's like, yeah, free and rights can have the sandwich, I guess. Molly can have one, too. Jeez. Sandwich. Sandwich. Um, Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru were fridged via barbecue, ice burn, oh. Those poor lads. Fridge via barbecue. Um, if so, what are the percentages? Also play DDLC. Fucking, you'd be dreaming if I'm gonna tell you all the things that go onto the background of EFAP and nope. be in friggin' rags. Fuck that. <laughs> like, fucking tell you that. fucking tell you that. Um... Forgot to say hi to Metal, give us a hot take. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, hello. Uh, Megan, well, well, come on. Hot take, come on. Uh, uh, I didn't like Breath of the Wild that much. Oh, shit. Oh, my goodness that's, gracious. That's How dare you? The hot so take far. isn't that you didn't like it, you gotta say it's bad. Oh, no, I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> wow, coward. Chat, call him a coward. No, why? It's. Um... Tweet. Brutal call us a slur. <laughs> Schleem. No. Schleem. I mean, I know it's not the best game ever made, like The Last of Us 2, but it is pretty oh. good. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> a lot of people saying coward metal, you gotta do it. You're a chat do metal. What? I think they meant to say chat, but they called you a chat. <laughs> I'm, I'm a chat. I'm a window that scrolls chat on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, there you go. Mel said Breath of the Wild is a terrible game. Damn. That's not... Mm. Mm. So I'm, I'm expecting lots of Reddit threads. Well, maybe I wouldn't say it if the game wouldn't be so shit. Oh, <gasps> damn. Dare have fucking said it. <laughs> um, Grace Randolph said Black Widow and Gamora were fridged in Infinity War and Endgame. I think whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See the civil explanation for today. <laughs> That's because Grace Randolph is an idiot. A little bit, yeah. For what I saw, dude, that one video for Suicide Squad. Holy shit, the amount of stuff she said. Was not expecting that. Oh, that, that one, was yeah. that was uh, my expectations <clears throat> that was a ride. That was an adventure. That was a trip. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was what a the hell? <laughs> Remember when she just like almost exclusively talked about rating the movie through fucking tomatoes? Like, just, you know, there's some movies that I refuse to give um, a fresh tomato because of how it'll just like, shut the fuck up, just tell me whether or not it's any good. She's like if an alien made an algorithm to pretend to be a person. <laughs> ah, yes, I will give you the tomatoes for your movie score, you know? It just has that vibe to it. <laughs> they push tomatoes Man, towards you other when you ask them. Money. How good is my movie? And she just has a little basket. She puts some tomatoes down. And you're like, what? What? What are we? What? What? what what's happening? So don't you understand? No, actually. No, I actually I'm don't. Uh, fridges had their chance. Kinda. <laughs> As he lays them in half. No, she's in that. Fuck. Now she's dead. Oh. oh. Um, blanket on popcorn, popped EFAP, covering female. Yep, it's misogyny time. Hi, Rags. <laughs> hey there. Welcome to misogyny, it's misogyny time. misogyny time. Uh, you watch Berserk? Which one? The 1997 series or the 2016 one? Oh, the good one. At least by then comparing yeah. those two. Uh, yeah. Or did you watch the 2012 <laughs> movie trilogy? No, 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 no. 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 Uh, despite only making up 15% of characters, women account for nearly 50% of fridging incidents. Also, hi, Rags. Oh my goodness. Hello. Rags, you're Someone straight. Someone should get to the bottom of this. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm not. No, sorry, I made a mistake. They said, hi, Ra is the way the line broke up. Long go, you're oh. straight. All right, I'm straight for now, I guess. And uh, Frongo, oh give me your, and it just ends. Oh. <gasps> Well, I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know what you want. Give me that yeah. beak. Mm. Give me that. No. Let me no. That beak. It's his no. beak. No.
Um, aren't almost all characters secondary? The argument is l of less female primary characters doesn't change how many secondary characters are women. Oh yeah, I think she says at one point, like, typically there are less primary characters that are women, and it's just like, at that point, it's probably negligible in terms of all secondary characters. Like, yeah. changing out how many primary are women. That's fair. When I'm outlining stories, if I have, like, a main character and a villain, I refer to them as, like, the A plot and B plot, respectively, when I'm outlining. But um, I don't consider one to be, like of less importance than the other like here on the villain well, I, mean, I kind of see like, yeah secondary on, on usually just level. means they just don't have as, as much time or it's not as much about them like it's never it doesn't mean yeah. like they're fucking worthless or anything yeah i only use a and b to like distinguish them on paper mm -hmm. <clears throat> um mola racism and unbridled praise when uh, <laughs> christmas <laughs> Uh, Molly, you've been a little short lately. I just wanted to ask if everything is okay. I need my long EFAPs to get through the workdays. Hi, Rags. Well, I mean, Hello. You, you're still getting, um, obviously you've had, what was it, four EFAP movies this month? So that's probably, uh, and we're still dropping them minis. And you got double EFAPs this week. <laughs> yes, we had, I think we had two five-hour EFAPs in a row. Um, which is terrifying yeah. for the audience, I know. But, um... <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, because I'm doing a couple more shows lately on different channels, um... So, like, it's just a little bit stretched for the thin, but I am all right. I am A-OK. Paul is too busy working on the polio vaccine and unbridled catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my magnum opus. Um, oh. So... Women's rights and unbridled catastrophe. All right, this is minor Buffy spoilers. And then it says a thing that, um, yes, that makes complete sense. And, um... That is indeed the episode that goes from... I think it'll be the episode, hopefully, that Rags and Mel will both be like, Oh, the show isn't entirely shit anymore. And I'll be like, yay! Oh, hey. <laughs> That's usually the one where it kind of changes it up. Been enjoying the show a lot, really looking forward to the great seasons. Oh, yes. Let's just say, if you're on board by season three, you're in for a real fun ride. Um, some people take a little longer, though. That's all right. Speaking of Bly, when are you going to bring Drinker to justice for his crimes against Good Rat? Look, I'll, I'll make Rat. him watch a series of videos I'll eventually make for Bly, and then I will poke him with hot poker rod things and be like, Say Bly good. Do it. Say good. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Mola, Rags, and Fringy. Hello. Yo. Hello there. Of these adult video game characters, Fuck, Marry, Kill, Say Nijima... Seideo, Kawakama, and Tai- Wait, didn't we do this one? I recognize these names. You did it last time, didn't you, Rags? You looked at them. You looked them up. Which ones? Uh, no, these oh, are Oh, yeah, different. I remember that even. Yeah. Uh, well, let Did me- let me- the first one I don't remember. Say Nijima. It ends in don't be racism. And then <laughs> we have- Yeah, it's not popping up in my search. Uh, so, yeah, Sadayo Kawakami. Maybe, maybe and we already did a race And the next one is Tai Takemi. Oh, whoops. Tai Takemi. My right hand was off one position. All right, so these appear to be lady, uh, lady characters. <laughs> Looks like they're from Persona 5. Um... So let me see. I guess based on looks. Hmm. More weeb stuff. Mm -hmm. It, it seems to be more. It definitely seems to be more weebery. <laughs> I think I might go with. Hmm. Fuck, Mary, kill. Uh. I think I might want to. I want to marry Sadayo. She looks wholesome. Uh, I'm gonna. Me I'm gonna fuck Sai Najima and kill Tai Takemi. I'll second that. I'll trust your ratings, Rex. Yeah, I have no idea who these people are, but I feel like that's my. my. my extremely moderate thought process that went into that. 
So yeah, marry Beautiful. the teacher. Yeah, she seemed teachery. She seemed like the most normal and wholesome of them. So we're gonna marry her. Um, the the one I was gonna fuck. She she seems like the business type. Uh, so you know, there's this aspect of you know I'm having sex with like a powerful woman. So that's kind of nifty and cool. And the other one just sort of seems depressed. So maybe I'm doing her a favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. In Train to Busan, were the military throwing zombies out of helicopters? I think we're supposed to believe that a bunch of people tried to get into a helicopter and then zombies held on to yeah. it. Yeah. They, yeah, they were hanging on to the little landing strut yeah. thingies and then they fell off. Um, it's a good thing there weren't any zombie cats or dogs in Train to Busan. Um, I guess Theoretically, the, the, there are. There probably are, yeah. It's just that the story didn't zombie regard deer. them. Zombie deer, yeah. That's right, zombie deer. Man, zombie birds, you gotta watch out for them. You get a couple, a, a one good peck, breaks the skin, and you might be, uh, you might be in trouble mm -hmm. there. Um, I thought it was weird how the main character is told to take the rear, but he ends up being in the middle. He actually ends up being in front, I think, by the time they get through the full first fight. It's just obviously the, I think the idea was, I'm gonna punch, kick, and throw them. Uh, middle guy hit them with a bat. Back guy just keep them off us as we move with your shield. Um, but it didn't quite work out that way as they started doing it. Just the nature of fighting zombies, I suppose. Oh, is chat upset their favorite content creator is being covered in the usual way and being revealed as less competent than they thought again? Hey, look. Call us out if you think we're, we're doing something fucking hypocritical and everything. I'm totally fine with that. I just, it does feel uncanny when you see messages like, Hey, let them finish. Hey, why are you pausing so much? It's like, wait a minute, what the fuck? <laughs> Who are you? Where did you come from? And you're like, oh yeah, because we're gonna Where have new people go? in chat. Like oh, genuinely, people who this format is fucking alien to them. I'd be like, why are you? What is this? Like, let them talk. And if if their argument were to become clear at the end of it, I'm sure you guys would address that, right? We've done like, it before, well, we yeah. Of course. Before, but um, I can see uh, by the end of this video what she was getting at, but. That didn't really happen with this. Well, I saw it, like, in the Train to Busan one, someone was like, wow, they took a parody seriously. And I was like, it's like they don't even listen to us <laughs> when we cover stuff. Mm. <laughs> it's super explicit about all of that. It's just like, nah, parody. That'd be just stupid. Right. Trope talk. Inciting incidents. Trope talk. Call to adventure. Trope talk. Conflict. Not everything that happens frequently is a trope, you hipster. Hi. Hi. I mean, I just, like, like I said, I don't even see a, a huge amount of value in fucking getting the categories straight at that point. I just don't talk about it. Like, is this thing a trope? I'm like, let's just talk about whether or not it fucking can be done well. Mm hmm. Um, no what's the better term for this? Red shirting. She's describing random Star Trek deaths. Um, well, the thing about red shirts is that they don't necessarily motivate anybody to do anything. That's what fridging seems to be regarding specifically. It's not just someone dies, it's that they die to make a different character want to do a thing, and thus it's disrespectful to them as a character. That seems to be the point they're making. Um, check out the Nerf Limited Halo Needler. Very cool. The limit. The what now? Oh, I guess the... Nerf have made a Halo Needler. Nerf Halo Needler? Images. Yeah, the gun in Halo, right? That's like a Ugh. dark, dark gun toy version. No, the Nerf one looks like shit, though. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's. Yeah, the the the. Uh, it looks. Yeah, it looks kind of shit. Like I see what they tried. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't. It doesn't look cool. Either, does it, Rex? No, it doesn't. Right. I see different versions. Uh... Yeah, the Nerf one is. Meh. Like you can tell it's a needler, but. Uh... Oh, the picture I've seen is a digitally rendered one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, fridge my GF, please. I need to grow as a person. 
Uh, Joel, Jesse, and Team Abby. The Last of Us 2 is fridging the game. Fridging the game, meaning. Um, yeah, again, I have a feeling that she wouldn't say that The Last of Us 2 counts. I'm not sure, though. Like I said, she thinks a lot of stuff counts, so I don't know. Um, would an example of fridging is the townspeople in WandaVision? Hmm. Um, I guess with the exception that they don't die. Well, yeah. well she, remember, what does she learn? It involved suffering All that greatly. trauma is just for yeah. him. That's true. That suffering is just for her. Does what I mean? Like, you start... It's so expansive that it starts to just be, like, absurd. Uh, Luke never mentioned Biggs at all between dinner at the Lars house until he shows up at the end and never mentions him again after he dies, but nobody believes he didn't mourn him. Hashtag learn to fridge. It's weird, yeah, man. It's really... <laughs> it's really hard to be definitive, like, oh, Luke clearly didn't care about Uncle uh, Owen and Aunt Brew. And you're like... Eh. Luke didn't care about Han. Well... <laughs> Ryan Johnson almost made it so that he didn't. Um, apologies for the typo. I'm... no problem? No problem at all? No problem. Speaking of Titanic, LEGO is releasing a $600 set of the ship. It's massive, and you can find it in the Coming Soon section of the LEGO website. Sounds neat. The what? Coming Soon section of the website. Yeah, but what? what is... what is it? Oh, uh, Titanic ship, $600. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Um, can you fridge yourself? In Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMO from Bioware, Darth Malak, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, killed a woman he loved to eliminate his weakness, but he did use the grief to empower himself. Hi, Rex. Hi. I, I would ask you. I mean, I guess in that sense, uh, sure. You, I assume well, that's that not fridging yourself. Well, that's fridging someone else. Yeah, you're... Fr it's like... I assume that would count, fridging yeah. Fridging yourself is... Yeah, like, that's... I'm gonna kill myself so that I could be a better ghost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what yeah, better I... thing to make of your life than being a good ghost? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty sure in Star Wars, ten minutes after his parents die, Alderaan gets destroyed. He then meets Leia, who just lost her whole planet. I could understand Luke being quiet about his parents dying. Um, he's just got a lot going on, is the point. He's got, oh, uh, yeah, Leia's like, oh, your parents died. Oh, your parents died. Wow, that sounds really bad, Luke. Man, I can't imagine that. That must be real. That must really suck, losing your parents. Wow. She does console him, but he's, uh, uh, like, mourning Ben as well. Because Leia's a good one. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's a good one. She's a great character. I wonder what will become of her. Yeah, because apparently the, uh, the Obi-Wan show is going to feature her in a significant way. Uh, That's what I've heard. Oh, um, okay. That's what everybody wants. Oh, by the way, um, I'm pretty sure that um, it's been confirmed that Hayden Christensen's going to be in uh, Ahsoka as well. Dude, he's going to be, he's going to play, he's going to be in the Vader suit and he and Obi-Wan are going to have a fight yeah, and it's going to be cringe as fuck right, and I'm going to see people celebrate fight, it and I'm going to yeah. be very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very uh, I've always yeah, wanted to see Vader and Obi-Wan sure. fight. But now they're like saw, really either, fighting. Not that one. Yeah, not, that first time didn't fucking count. That Neither was about did the second time. And character in history. This one was cool because oh, did you see the part where he like did the flip with the lights? He like went, he did the flip and he oh he God. breathed. He went and then <laughs> and then Leia showed up with her lightsaber and stopped them from fighting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if that'll happen. Actually, it would make no sense. It would be. I just. I like the yeah, idea no. that just stuff that's impossible. I was like, Ray, she comes in just to stop the fight. You're like, what? Why? She's not. Is she even I alive? I time traveled like, to be <laughs> here. <laughs> or maybe a circle will stop it. <laughs> Shove them all in. Stop. Anyone we can get. Shove them. Get them in there. Um, Boys are fighting. Up. I am gonna peace out now. I just realized it's half past three, and that uh, makes sense. Oh, nice and early. Tired. Yeah, nice and early. Uh, okay. I think I'm free to... I'm, I'm free of the mines tomorrow, right? I can do whatever I want, I think. I'll allow you to do whatever you want, yeah. I feel like laws and stuff. Oh, yeah, More amnesia. Woohoo. 
Alrighty, goodbye, mortal. Goodbye, yeah. Fling, Toodle fling, fling. Long. fling, fling. Have a good one, so, man. I'm gonna fridge myself. Mm -hmm. There he goes, fridging himself. Fridge in peace. Is it just me, or are there a lot of jump cuts in her video? Uh, she had a couple flash frames throughout the clip she was using. I don't know about... Yeah. If that's what you mean. Not... Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's kind of a messy video. It wasn't very well edited. Did she just unintentionally create fridging of the author? <laughs> oh. Fridge of the author. Um, I usually enjoy overly sarcastic productions content, especially when they talk about Greek myths and such, but this is just painful to listen to. Oh, uh, yeah, it was. They should stick to Greek myths, not geek myths. Ho ho! <laughs> Glad yeah, to catch EFAP right. live. If people won't describe Rey as a Mary Sue, fine, we can just rename the trope to She's a Rey Skywalker. That's what I mean, it doesn't fix Rey as a character to say she's not a Mary Sue, it's like she's still shit. Um, the anime Yu Yu Hakusho plays with this idea by the villain pretending to kill the protagonist's best friend in order to motivate him into giving the villain a proper challenge. Highly recommend. Like I said, there's loads of scenarios you can come up with where fridging is like in narrative something, or at least how she's described it, something that the characters are invested in doing in the first place. It's like she's saying, nah, you gotta learn about that lady first. Oh, oh guy. I guess Hamlet is bad since the king is killed off stage and it's not like his death matters at all, right? Don't kill people off stage. Uh, screen, rather. That's what I understand to be true now. Uh, while I really like overly sarcastic productions, a lot of this stuff can be really hit and miss. Hopefully Red will come on and discuss this. She would be welcome to. Is Othello's wife fridging? Um, if someone died and it was a woman? No! Can say oh, well, <laughs> yeah, Desdemona. <laughs> Definitely fridging. I think her name is Desdemona. Fridging in cold uh, blood. It is Desdemona, cold yeah. Blood. So... Uh, no, she doesn't die until, like, the end. Sounds like your opinion. But then again, I guess a character can die near the end, and it doesn't, like, you have Padme, and, you know, like, like what is, like, she dies near the end, the whole thing, but... Mm. No. Well, because he... Well, I guess spoilers, but... Ah, fuck it. I'll let y'all watch the movie. <laughs> Check out Othello and Yacht. Um... Uh, yeah. Say it, Mola. Say the prequel memes. I, 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 I just mentioned the prequels. I didn't do no no prequel meme, and I, I, there was no need to do such things. It was all fine. Um, would Uncle Ben count as fridging? We kind of went over that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he probably would. I think by her yeah, definition, he, he does. Unless not because he's a man. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. not because, yeah. She did... I'm pretty sure the word women came up several times in her, like, little tidbits and stuff, so... Um, unironically I'd say Han and Luke's deaths qualify much more as fridging than Padme's. Both of them made little sense besides the gut punch. Um... You could argue but what, Han... what did Han's death accomplish? With how weird Kylo was written. I was about to say, because I was, I was about to try to argue, I guess it motivates Kylo to... And then I'm like, well, but he just does anything, so... To keep wobbling? Yeah. It motivates Rey to be angry at Kylo for five minutes. Oh. Then um, she kisses him at the end, and then he yep. dies to save her life after they smooch. Well, in fairness, uh, Kylo did forgive himself. That's, that's good. That's, <laughs> that's great. That's good. <laughs> it's good mental health, I suppose. Well, I've seen people say that. It's like, it is important for him to forgive. It's like, yeah, but it has nothing to do with like the fucking relationship he had with Han. Nothing. Nothing at all. Han's fucking dead. You don't want to bottle up all that guilt that you have as a mass murdering It's just, it is funny to me. It's like, I feel kind of guilty that I killed him, but you know what? I think that's, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, okay. What do you uh, think, me? Am what I do good? you think, me? <laughs> <laughs> what do you yes, think, I am. Me? Thanks, me. Uh, characters aren't people, don't deserve anything. 
Um, oh, you mean like there is no deserve with characters, or? I, we use that. It's in a not about way. deserve. It's about what yeah. you believe, and I believe in love. <laughs> then I, I will, will destroy, destroy you. you. That never stops getting funny. It's fucking hilarious. I this is like some of the down. shittiest dialogue ever made. It's it's at bad level. <laughs> It's <laughs> so fucking bad. Like, the the lie commonly agreed upon still is, oh, the first movie's pretty good. It no. ain't. <laughs> well, remember uh, when, when that got brought up when Az was here, and he was like, wait, you guys don't like it? It's like, <laughs> no. No, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> On account of it being poopy, poopy mm -hmm. we both chose poopy independently at the yeah. same time to describe the first Wonder Woman. Well... I guess those have kind of been revealed now. So that was the whole reason why we, me and Rags were like interested in starting this whole Rags. thing. Uh, we described something as yeah. poopy at the same time, and I was like, you know what? That's 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 true love. That's that's what wavelength right there. And then one Not day I was like, hey, Ringy, what do you yeah. think of blah, blah blah? And you went, oh, it's a bit poopy. And I was like, Rags, 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 you got to see this. We have our we have our third host. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is just as the spiders foretold. Yes. He who speaks poopy shall be the third <laughs> host of the fan. Uh, yes, Rags, you're right. Also, hi, Mauler and Fringold. Fringoid. Hey! Uh, yeah, I agree. That's fair. Also, hi. Hello. Love. Love is a pathway to power some would deem too murderous to younglings. Hi, Waggleton. Hi. However, you're never too murderous to younglings. Well, I was about to say, though, that that kind of highlights a thing, right? It's like, Atticus slaughtered children. I could picture her being like, he's not capable of love. I'd just be like, oh... <laughs> Like, <laughs> hmm. You, you bastard. I think she's also a communist, so it makes sense she doesn't understand reality. Oh my the goodness. Fuck? What? <laughs> well, that would explain that. Imagine if her read on Thanos was true, after he tossed Gamora, nothing happened, and no stone roll credits. So, you could have gone that direction, where Thanos then realizes what he feels for isn't love at all, by the universe's standards or whatever you want to say is happening in, in Vormir, but I'm not sure what you do with the story there. You have to get him to get someone to, you know, he has to convince someone to fucking sacrifice their family member, I guess, to get the stone and then take it off him. Yeah, um... Uh, yeah, and where does this soul stop? I guess it goes back. After you use it, it goes into... Well, no, if you destroy it. So what is Red Skull doing right now? Chilling. If there's no Soul Stone to guide, is he Chillin'. just hanging out? Oh, well. Just having a chill. Yeah. Less people know. Like, maybe you can get more than one. Like a little vending machine. Finish. Mini Soul Stones. Mm-hmm. Cabinet somewhere. Um, you don't need made-up examples of people hurting those they love. There's uh, 1800s Blanche Monnier, or Blanche Monnier. Mother can find Blanche to a dark room for years because she disapproved of the fiancé. Police released her. She couldn't speak. People do horrible things to the people they love. That's the thing. Not, like, Yeah, Yeah, Lovecraft's just... mother was super paranoid. She was... It, it, she was mentally ill. She was, like, put in a sanitarium. But, uh... Yeah, it's one of the reasons that he turned out the way he did was because his mom, like, kept him secluded. Wouldn't let him go out. Uh, only thing I would correct is that Trope Talk doesn't say all tropes are bad and talks about some positively. It doesn't make her tism valid. She got a lot more, trust me. Also, oi there, rags. Rogs. Hello! I don't think, um... I don't think I ever said that she said that she thinks all tropes are bad. Just that this one was bad. Uh, this is uh, like fridging someone is something you shouldn't do, and then she lines up what fridging is, and then she's accidentally said that loads of great stories shouldn't have done things the way that they did them. It's like, hmm. Which could be valid, but I don't think she meant what she eventually implied. And I'd love to go over some examples with her. Um, how dare this villain do this villainous thing? She wants Thanos to be irredeemable asshole rather than a bad person who is still capable of love. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. I think that she hates Thanos so much that it shouldn't be considered that what he has for Gamora in any way could be considered love. What great writing. That's the thing, it's a harsh reality for you that love is not some glorious, altruistic, wonderful, happy balloons and rabbits thing. It's like, there's just, there's a lot of elements to it that are a lot more complica uh, complicated. Yeah. We use love, and to mean a lot of different ways, and there's a lot of different kinds of love. It's a it's a complicated thing. 
Um, would it be crossing the line if he killed a sexy lamp? I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to... Unforgivable. ...be definitive about that. I don't know. Uh, red is right. You guys just hate women. I know. I know. Fair enough. I I'm going to hide that, too. though. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, Hulu Owl Guy here. I also think the Sunny D logo looks like a wiener. Sunny Let's D take a look. Logo. Sunny D logo. All because Sunny D is basically orange acid that you put in your mouth. You're saying that Sunny D looks like a penis? I mean, I know why that's being said, but come on. We gotta have standards better than that. Yeah, we gotta do way better than this, guys. I know what you're referring to, but it's just I don't drink it for the taste. I drink it for the wieners. I see a wiener on the label. I'm like, I gotta get some of that. I gotta. I just gotta get right in the there. label. Everyone That's in the store looks me right really weird, but yeah. right down the throat. So, Sunny D really is disgusting. <laughs> just so weird. it is kind of gross. I used to like it as a kid, but it's, it's like, liquid sunlight. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah kids, <laughs> like, kids like McDonald's and kids like stupid bullshit. But yeah, Sunny D is terrible. It's it it is like orange acid in your mouth. It is just so tart, and it's like you could. I swear, you could if, if you put some in your mouth and close your teeth, you could feel the grittiness of how fucking sugary it is, and just how ugh. Yeah. Question: Do you well, think Sunny D should be fridged? It should be thrown out. It should be garbaged. <laughs> garbage. It should be. It should be. It should be dumpstered. My God! And garbaged, garbaged. Capri Sun is better. Correct. Capri Sun is better. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Capri Sun is better than Sunny D. I haven't had Tang in a long time, but Tang is probably better than Sunny D. Uh, was Franz Ferdinand fridged? Yeah, I think we've been over that several times. Definitely, hundred percent fridged. All we learned about all all he uh, he's the most famous thing he ever did was get shot. Exactly, and that's just unacceptable. He he's his JFK. own person. He was very good at getting shot, though. He nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Was he? Ten out of because ten. Because he, because <laughs> he almost like stumbled into it. You know, like it was like a happenstance. Like it wasn't really like premeditated the assassination. Mm. That's why it was so. The guy good. was just like oh. Uh, there he is. There's our super Ferdinand. Fuck that guy. I wonder. I wonder if the person who assassinated him, if they knew that it would plunge Europe and more into World War One, the Great War, would they still have done it? Hmm. What about you, Mahler? Would you have done it? Even, even knowing. That it would begin or help begin the Great War, would you still kill Archduke Ferdinand? Well, it's something that he told me himself as to why I had to do it, so yes. So Rags could pre Rags could pre in my son. Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> Keep your foul tongue but hide your teeth. I don't remember what he said. It's something to do with Lord it says it Lord of the Rings. <laughs> The fox tongue. Yes, because some men just want a tangerine. No. Imagine if she was here to hear these points. The response would be the classic, just right. Um, be glad she's not fans in chat. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I feel like if she were in a conversation, she could be so much clearer than that fucking video, which is, I guess, ironic because it's like the the video is the time where you make it all fucking clear. But oh well. Then again, maybe I'm uh, expecting too much, I don't know. My intro to fridging was a video by Carl Smallwood. He usually does okay, but this video was terrible and he defends Captain Marvel assaulting the Dawn. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, fucking hell. How do you defend that? This is one of them, like, basic Busted tests. moral compass. Yeah, like, you're just, like, you have a flawed moral compass if you think that's okay. It's unreal. Like, there's Who, something is... fucked up about you. I know that the argument was made at one point, like, oh, people like it when he did it in T2, uh, but they don't like it when a woman does it. And it's like, no, you don't understand, you've been the sexism. You're saying that a woman breaking a guy's hand is okay. Like, why are you saying that? You know that if the rules were reversed, that wouldn't be okay. You were yeah. the sexism all along. 
fucking stupid <laughs> legal eagle who was like, hey, you know, if you feel your life is in danger, you can totally get away with like like doing certain acts like that. It's just like she's fucking invincible. What do you mean? He light he lightly touched her map. Which is assault. And then she so. tra then she trapped him in a handshake. She offered him. That's what's good. She offered him a handshake, and he was just so thrilled. It's fucked like, up, man. Yeah, a handshake from this lovely lady, and then he just gets fucking a, this battery. He almost well, it, gets fridged. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, it does in retrospect. I think we brought this up as well, but it does kind of come across as just like a little bit creepy from the people who made it. That like, yeah, suffer man who asked for a smile. You're like, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Freaky piece of shit. Um, I'd like to propose the Dunning-Kruger knowledge Dunning-Kruger effect, where knowledge of the Dunning-Kruger effect makes you more subject to it and more likely to use others of it. To abuse others. I would think that knowing about... Oh, like, uh, if you know about it, you'll accuse people of it more? That's probably well, that's true. Everything. But they're I was going to say that applies to everything, yeah. That you're not aware yeah. Like, that's, that's what happened with fallacies. So like people found out about them and they were like, there it is, I got it. And you're like, no, you don't got it. And like, yeah, I do. You're yeah, like, I, I never accused anyone of gaslighting me before I knew what gaslighting was. Right, yeah. It's like Pandora's box. Ah. You've been bestowed the gift of, uh, weird, <laughs> weird about huge. what fallacies are, yeah. Pandora's fridge. And then you abuse it. <laughs> no, Pandora's fallacy. Pandora's <laughs> icebox. Worst writing advice ever from Linkara. Why would you ever kill a character? That means taking away the ability to tell stories with them. Oh my god. <laughs> Good thing that I could literally invent an what? infinite amount of characters. I don't, but <laughs> how can you square that away with all stories? Like what? Does he think that no all stories suck? Because everyone gets killed in them? Or at least some people do. Damn, dude. No one should ever die. EFAP 158. Brilliant. Bitches get fridges. Or how I learned it's bad to have females die. Yeah, that's that's the title of this one. Uh, it's, been, it's been an adventure, to say the least. Uh, Thanos tries to do what he thinks will save the universe. OSP. Thanos is pure evil. Yeah, what? Well, <laughs> it's, it's weird. I, I would actually like to talk to you about Thanos as well, because... Especially Infinity War Thanos, man. It's like, I think he's a little bit more complex than man can't see past his own shins. You're like, what? Man, I swear I pressed A there, but it didn't didn't, didn't come up. Guy um, tried to fridge half the universe. Oh. Well, that's why he's the villain. The greatest writer of all time. Oh, man, I think I'm doing this all wrong. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to go left. Now I'm winning. Uh, it's not her fault she took a women's studies class. Oh, well, I mean, there's plenty to learn in them, you know? About tropes and writing. Probably not, though. No, probably not. They just talk about the fucking Bechtel test for uh, three semesters. That, I can't the... believe that even, like, has any kind of traction. It is the stupidest fucking test. You might have... Well, it's like the test in this video. It's like overly sarcastic productions tests. Those are shit, too. Yeah. Uh, Boromir would fall under this, too, and that's wrong. Also, Sword Dune, pretty great. I'd argue can't wait for the coverage. Love you, Massives, and high rags. Hello. Mm. Um, yeah, I wonder if Boromir counts or not. At this point, you sort of give up and just assume everyone who dies who is a man probably doesn't. Um, because she didn't use it. Did she use any male examples of it being bad? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't remember her doing it. In this video, her version of Goodell, but every position she has is insane. Well, yeah, but we don't like to put everything in Goodell from every video, otherwise it'll be 10 years long. Um, morning, Muller and lads. Morning. Also morning. high rags. Hello. Good to see you guys covering this video. I normally like OSP's content, but this one was noticeably badly written when I watched it. Keep up the good work. Man, I will admit... You bet. Uh, I feel for you guys out there who would have liked both that channel and this channel. This one would have been a little tough. Probably. Because <laughs> we fucking shredded but that you know video. In your like... heart, you know in your heart that you love us more. Well, Search your feelings and know them to be true. As long as they don't quite love that video, because oof. 
I'm uh, curious did... what some of her other takes are. They can't all be bad. I assume she's got to have some good stuff in there. Uh, did Vision get a bench? Uh, I guess you could say... The, Vision got a the, town. The, well, so I don't know if the joke's being made or if he's serious, because like, Rags is right. In the, he got a whole TV show related to his death, so... Uh, he may not have got a bench scene, and thus you could argue there's more criticism to levy against him in terms of the trope, because he qualifies the same as Black Widow does. Um, and, and didn't get any scenes like that, but then again, she said he had a whole TV show about someone grieving for his death, so I guess she would say that that's more. Um, Jackie Chan and Arnie's movie arcs when? Oh, it's, I think that's definitely on the list. Um, not sure when, though. Also, ever watched a new police story? It's a, ch it's a Chan movie. Um, no. Also, thoughts on... Face Chappelle. I assume I meant Dave Chappelle. I, I like him a lot. I find him funny as fuck. Very, very funny. Very mm. funny. And uh, get a lot of insight listening to him. Glad he's still working. Wanted to keep going. Don't stop. But if he wants to take a break, that's fine. <laughs> um, and hi, Alice. They must be referring to the Resident Evil movies. Um, but yeah, I have not seen that movie we're refer referencing, but we'll have a go at Good old Jackie Chan and Arnie's movies at some point, I imagine. Yeah, maybe. I think we're long overdue for a Batman Well movie. Uh, maybe we'll get one. Who knows? Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Samuel Jackson, Deep Blue Sea, very sudden. Yeah, well, I mean, nobody thinks that movie's good, though, so... <laughs> it's a bit easy. But, um... That's an EFAP movies movie right there. Yeah. Castlevania seasons one and two are great. Three and four are ah, bleh, bleh. Oh. I hear that. I only watch seasons one and two. Well, apparently that's a good move. That um, sucks though that I mean, it's come to shit then. Uh, can we talk about roofing? This bitch needs it. Oh my god. She needs to get oh a roof goodness. replaced. I mean, if it's if it's in disrepair, then yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, leaks are bad. You gotta fix leaks because water damage can. Yeah, it's it's subtle sometimes, but you gotta take care of that. You can't Absolutely. let it fester. But yeah, uh, you know, make sure your roofs are right, everyone. Check your roofs. Call roofers. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish Raw was here for this video. Imagine. <laughs> oh. If only. What do you want? Uh. The wife at the beginning of Up had almost no screen time with no dialogue. It still crushed everyone. So that's just one that just fucks with her narrative. And that's probably why it didn't come up. Because, like, the, the, it's true, it, yeah. Up is practically completing a storytelling challenge, the opening of Up. And it fucking worked. So, what can you say? Um, you don't even need to go to story to know that people love heroic sacrifices. We still talk about heroic sacrifices from battles that happened thousands of years ago. The Battle of Thermopylae is a big one. It was a bizarre yep. statement she made, and I have no idea how to deal with it. <laughs> like, people don't really like the heroic sacrifice shit. It's like, are you insane? Yeah. You're a strange person to think that. Uh, Mr. Freeze's wife in Batman and Robin is a character who got fridged, but has no character whatsoever and only exists for the sake of his character. She's also in a literal fridge. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you're not allowed to do that. Bad. That's what I meant, but like, that's, that's I guess, a good example. If you just meet up with this guy who's doing all of these evil things and you find out he's got a wife in, like, perpetual frozen... I don't know what science he's using exactly, because obviously it's uh, sci-fi-ish, but... Is the, it's like, oh, the story would be better if we knew her really well. It's like, I don't know that we have to spend time on that. We understand what's happening here, and if the story is strictly about him, that's okay. Um, we don't care about John Wick's wife, we care about how her death affects him. Yeah, I, I, I feel like John Wick would be one for her to have to address. Again, all under the guise as well of the... She keeps appealing to how the audience don't like these things. It's like, they clearly do. Weird. 
the best anime is actually Australian. And if you can't guess what it is, Sassy is going to be disappointed. TBLS. I have no idea. There's I don't know what that is. Australian anime? I, I have no idea. What are you um, talking about, you fucking... And then they've got a, a licking emoji. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. Is it, what oh. is it? TWS? TBLS. Oh, the Big Les Show. Uh, there you go. People have mentioned it before. The Butt Liquor Syndrome. No, I don't think that one. <laughs> yes, totally. You can't believe what it makes you do. Oh, God. The Infinity Stones are not MacGuffins. They are essential. Stop using it wrong, please. Uh, we've been over it on EFAP a couple of times. It's become a little yeah. bit colloquial to just say item of importance. Um, as opposed to... Uh, I think the classic definition for it is literally that it's a an item that we never know what it does, but it's one that's sought after. Um, also, I gotta use the loot. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. uh, Pulp Fiction being a classic example. There's something in that briefcase that a lot of people want. We never know what it is. Mm -hmm. Does she want a to Tolkien-esque length sort of backstory for every character? And if character has to die, it has to be meaningful to avoid fridging? This is something of an issue, I think, that eventually will happen, is that um, there can be no character that is killed that doesn't have a sufficient amount of information about them to know their, their hopes and dreams and how that's it's tragic that they've lost their chance to achieve them or something like that. Um, if you are ever pulled over and have all the drugs in your trunk, tell them you've seen a spider in the back left corner. Do you see the spider? But why? I don't understand. What's that? Is that? Am I missing something? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Very well. Uh, you want the truth? You want the truth? There is no fridge. Oh my god. Crazy. I mean, it's just kind of mind blowing. Sorry, I had to appreciate that for a moment. I just keep wondering how she got into Arch's living room, and when he's going to throw her out. My god. It would be funny if that was her shtick. She just breaks into people's houses to record and... <laughs> He's like, okay. Uh, is she one of the narrators for Watch Mojo? I've got no clue. She did remind me. She sounded like her, but I would imagine she isn't. Uh, I read the Mortal Engines book. Not perfect, but lots of potential with easy fixes and with uh, with polish. With exception to the third book. The movie is horrid. I have only heard bad things about the movie. Yeah. Like, not only did it flop, it was... Like, it's just something that no one enjoyed. Which is kind of interesting, right? See a movie that no one likes. That is, yeah. Um, I'm three hours Usually behind. someone liked it. Well, yeah, there's probably somebody who was like, No, it was pretty cool, actually. Oh. <laughs> All three of them. Um, I'm three hours behind, but I've been waiting for you guys to cover overly sarcastic productions. There are a lot of bad takes from Trope Talks. King Kong is racist and the defense of Ray from TLJ. I racked. Oh, they've been telling us that it was, it was before TLJ came out. So, who knows? Hold on, BRB. Alright. I want to see a react to a landing craft full of women take on an MG42. Oh. Well, you see, we would say that all the men in, in D-Day were, were uh, fridged, but they ain't women, so. Uh, fridged and melted, perfect balance. No. <laughs> melted and then put into a fridge, imagine that. Oh my god. Uh, if you had to choose between fridging or getting melted, which would it be? Also, high ranks. So, if we're talking about these scenarios lead to your death. Death by cold or melted, I guess, is like the idea. I, guess. I don't know. There's, there's probably a correct answer to this, and by that I mean a least painful one out of the two. Or at least extend it. I wonder if cold is the better way to go. I'm not sure. You could survive in a fridge and not melt, because it's not a freezer, right? You wouldn't freeze to well, death. Well, just... if, if the implication is you die from both of these, which you prefer, then we have to assume you die just from either the cold of the fridge or you just eventually starve. Or, uh, 
dehydrate, I guess? Well, I wouldn't want to prolong my death in an enclosed space like a fridge, so maybe melting's the way to go. Just get it over with. Quickly. Somehow melting sounds more painful than burning, um, even though... <laughs> like, we don't really melt, right? Or just uh, I forget how skin reacts to heat in different ways. Mm. I think you melt with lava if you fell into... Oh, wait, no, that's not true. Your skin can melt. Um, in that case, you might just be right, then. It's if, if we have to choose melting or die from dehydration. Gas melting. It's gonna be quicker, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um. Is the War Movie Arc still coming to EFAP? Also, hi, Green Shad. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, yeah, it's still recording. The problem is just the, the cast for it. We have to find particular times to be able to get it done. So it's just uh, ongoing. World Anvil is free, but there's a subscription for additional features. Fair enough. Um, got introduced to EFAB through one of your Friday Night Tights appearances. Here's some change for some dog treats for rags and some, I don't know, subjective opinions or whatever it is. You eat, Mola. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um... Glad to see some folks from Friday Night Tights. It is a bit, a bit of a different vibe over here, but hopefully not one that's too alien. Uh, and thank you, yeah. Um, did Alec Baldwin fridge his cinematographer? Oh no. In the cinematographer died, the director was injured. Uh, yeah. Well, that'll be... Wait, what image is that? Well, there's like some Spider-Man still sculpt uh, in a magazine. <laughs> People are mad. Uh, why? Um, the color grading. <laughs> oh, so, wait, these are actual, like, final images, The then? one on the left is the color grading, and the one on the right is... Uh, sorry, the one on the left is the actual screenshot, the one on the right is color graded. Differently. And yeah, they are stills from the movie. Oh, I guess they don't like that it's a little bit faded out. Yeah, but that's all Marvel movies, though. Why are you picking on Spider-Man? Oh, <laughs> uh, they picked on Civil War a bit, if I remember. I know Patrick Oh, uh, Yeah, a bit on Civil War, but then they ignore all the other movies. Like, sh why, where was the post with Shang-Chi about the color grading? Look at the... So, so someone said, y'all think color grading is like the most important thing of all time. And then the response is, I think making a movie about superheroes look realistic is the least important thing of all time. It's like, well... So then, it's just up to the Beholder, then? Yeah, at that point. It's like, they're so smug about being 100% right whenever they bloom the colors, but it is kind of like, well... They color code it that way on purpose. I don't know. It just feels like the, the people who say there are no wrong answers or right answers are the ones that always say, this is how to properly color correct it. Like, oh. Yeah. Um, is Rag Snow in the fridge? Yeah, Rags has fridged his snow before, yeah. I oh, fucked up. We don't talk about it, though. Is this, are the movie supposed to look like dark shit, like uh, the Zack Snyder movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> I kind of I like how Marvel makes their colors pop. Well, uh, you get different response and different things, right? Guardians is much more colorful than Civil War, for colorful. example. Colorful, oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. again, That's Civil true. War is yeah. not a is very grounded hey, film. Back. Sorry, I had to take care of something. I am I am back. No problem. Oh my um, my first full live length EFAP was uh, this was good. As an aspiring writer this video was really odd. Keep up the good work. High ranks. Oh, hello. Yeah, this would be an odd one if you're an aspiring writer. I think so, yeah. I feel like any writer would have listened to some of the stuff she's saying and been like, wait, but wait, wait, but wait, and like over and over again. Let's see if it drags no temperature and moisture. Uh, loved your Machine for Pig stream Waller. Can't wait for House of Ashes. Spoiler, it looks like garbage. Gonna see if I can buy the Machine for Pig soundtrack now. You all gay. Yeah, man. It's good stuff. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're gearing up to check House of Ashes out. I'm sure it's gonna be top notch. Uh, in Mask of Zorro, Diego and Alejandro both have a loved one fridged. It kicks off their journeys and leads them to team up together to seek revenge. Yeah, it's a bad film. Everyone knows it. Bad. You can't be doing that. I'll be fridging people. Fuck you and your fridge. Joel literally fridged everyone. 
Oh yeah. Every death is, is his responsibility, so he'll just be fridging everyone. Um. Do, do, do uh, this is a peace offering. High rags. Hello. Oh, goodness. Um, how you guys tell Baggin and end of acts in? Oh, how do you tell the beginning and end of acts in films? Uh, usually the end of a, a scene. So it's gonna be the end of a scene and the beginning of a scene. That'll be where you you look in. But then the particular scenes. Um, the most obvious break I think is between Act Two and Three. Uh, but you can make the mistake sometimes. It's usually just you put everybody who's driving the story in a low point and they gotta rise up to the challenge and win in the end. Um, I find that Act 1 is usually at the end when we've done our introductions for everything and things start to develop. But um, they can sometimes be vague It's often lines. a point of no return. Yeah. Like you, you can't really return to the situation you were in before. Sometimes you draw the line visually. Like, uh, I was thinking of that movie, The Maze Runner, where it's, like, all in one scene, but in in the middle of the scene, they run into the maze and the doors close behind them. And even though it doesn't time jump to a new scene in that instance, I would say that's the line that you draw, where it's like, okay, we're in Act 2 now, because the doors have literally shut behind them and there's only going forward. Um, sometimes you can draw the line, I think, uh, inside a character's head, where they... they make a decision they've like they observe something and then something transforms in their head and they've chosen a certain course of action and you can you can draw the line there too um you can draw it in a number of places mm -hmm. usually it's between like one scene and another and the preceding scene is the the main character makes a decision to go one way and you there's no going back Uh, do any of you have a P.O. box? My ten-year-old has made some stuff he wants to send Mola, Fringy, and Rags. Ten-year-old? <laughs> they probably shouldn't be watching. Ten-year-old? <laughs> probably shouldn't. Yeah, we're not, yeah. Uh, we're not, uh, we're not child, uh, we're not a child-friendly thing. Uh, as for P.O. box, I'm gonna try and sort something out. Um, I don't know if either of you have anything to do with it like that. I don't. <clears throat> Maybe in the future, but not right now. Yeah. Um, have you played Overlord 1 and 2? Uh, I don't think so. Either of you guys? Or any of you guys, rather? No. 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 A fun Pikmin-like game. Also, you should watch Hocus Pocus. It's a goofy movie to watch for halloween -y. Also, Yo Rags. Yo. We probably will do Hocus Pocus at some point. Uh, good old-fashioned witch movie. Uh, Grape, Marry, Kill, Samus, Kratos, Master Chief. Why have you put... Why, why Grape is in there? Why? Grape. I don't know if I have the power to Grape them. But also, Kratos. why would you but put the, that Why in is there? it in there? Yeah. 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 I don't... Yeah. Not doing that. Next super chat. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, you it's disqualified it. if you put that in there. Uh... Don't worry, writing can be a very fun and enjoyable experience for both the writer and the reader, but if you fridge my character, I'll fucking fridge you. <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah, this is vice against it. Um, everyone go buy a CJ plushie. I assume... Uh, CJ's doing a, doing a plushie right now, I think? Fair enough. Uh, you mentioned you'll do a Transformers movie arc in the future, but I was wondering if you plan on watching the 1986 animated Transformers movie. If no I was plans. to watch that, it probably wouldn't be fat movies, I doubt. It's probably just like a normal animated film rather than like the Transformers movies by Michael Bay are just fucking hilarious in lots of ways. I don't know if that would be included in like an EFAP arc. Um, in regards to the speedster animals, one of the 14 Airbud movies contains pets with superpowers, including super speed. 14? Yeah. <laughs> is that hyperbolic? That's probably not even a joke, no. I think there probably is 14. Oh my goodness. Um, it's like the land before time. There's a billion. 
The series before limits. <laughs> Super buddies get on it. I mean, uh, sounds interesting, I guess. Uh, any of y'all seen Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Really good animated show that got cancelled after two seasons. Hi, Rags and Fringy. Hello. I've I, not uh, seen I have not. not seen it. Uh, Rags, could the Terminator beat the Mothman? I don't know. I don't know much about the Mothman. Sure, right? If he's, you can shoot him with guns, right? <laughs> and the Terminator is really tough. It's gonna be half of the Mothman to kill Terminator, presumably. I don't know about the, the Mothman's powers, so yeah, unless he can know. like melt metal with his mind powers, I feel like the Terminator is gonna have this. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, mutually, a friend holds that Simpsons is bad and not funny until seasons made after the movie. But... Alright. <laughs> is he from opposite dimension? A living error? I mean... Mm, yeah. yeah, every bit of opinion is valid, okay? I just... I've never heard that one before. I don't, honestly, that is, that is kind of interesting, because I, I don't actually think I've ever heard anyone say that, uh... Simpsons was better after the movie than before. Fuck no. Um, overly sarcastic productions history content is even worse. Sorry for the late super chat, I'm in rewind time. No problem. Um, and yeah, I, I wouldn't even, I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't say. I have no idea how good the historical content is. I would have a bit of concern after seeing that one, but you know, let's see. So there's five Air Bud movies, seven Air Buddies movies, and two Santa Paws movies that belong to the franchise. Hmm. Jeez. I bet that's not even counting, like, the spinoffs with different animals, like most valuable primate, most Probably, vertical yeah. primate, which is basically the same thing. Yeah, the, I, they need to do one that's really strange, like... Like BMX with a sea urchin or something like that. <laughs> you have to invent. How did you possibly learn that this sea urchin was really good at BMX? Now there's your, there's your writing challenge. Coming this summer, a sea urchin on a BMX. Adam Sandler is a sea urchin <laughs> <laughs> in TV 13. <laughs> Coming June something. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what is the weirdest power that you could call OP? Example, milk bending from Misfits. Yeah, uh... Milk bending? Nice. I don't know, um... I guess you could say cum bending. It would be really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, took, took me a minute to realize. I just had this image in my head, it's like, oh shit. Horrifying. Yeah, that's, I'll go with that. <laughs> uh... What happens when you put a MacGuffin in a mystery box in a fridge and then throw it into a plot hole? Oh. <laughs> you got yourself a bad story at that point. Uh, Metal and guests, thoughts on God of War from the PSP era and Endless Jess video on Kratos was always deep video. If not, watch them and tell us your thoughts on stream. I don't know who Endless Jess is, I'm afraid. Uh... And I played the first of the PSP games and thought it was fine. Um, I've not much got I got much other commentary for him, I'm afraid. No, Mel played them recently, so. Or oh, I say recently, within the last like year. So. Metal does not like the PSP games. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, watch SAS Red Notice. Ruby Rose villain character, intentionally sociopath. Die Hard style doesn't even have to be an EFAP. I just want y'all to see it. Probably will at some point. We've got to see the, the, the back door man or whatever the film was called as well. Any of y'all fans of the Advance Wars series? They're putting it on the Switch finally. I don't know. I it. played um It's okay. I played Dual Strike and Days of Ruin, and I liked them uh pretty decently, so I think I like Days of Ruin better. But I don't remember much. It was a long time ago. Hmm. Uh, hey, Tisms, I would just like to share that I've noticed a strange thing about OSPS Chanel. 
or channel, I'm not sure. Uh, all of their Musk Myth series makes it onto YouTube trending regardless of how it performs. Look at their community tab, they are cataloging the foul play themselves. I, I've got no clue. I'm completely out of the loop on that. Um, I don't even try to appease the algorithm. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, just... Like, who knows what the feels feels like the better approach, you know, just... Yeah. Whatever. Just More make what you want to make, hope for the best. Yeah. Um, hello, EFAP and Hi Rags. Hello. hello. I'm planning on getting a gaming PC and a desk for it. I know nothing about computers. Any suggestions? Um, look up builds online. Yeah, you yeah, can get look a look up builds online. Uh, Gamers Nexus and Linus Tech Tips and all those guys. Uh, you know, just kind of be aware of the relationship and power of one thing to the other. Thing's going to be a bit pricey right now. Not as bad as it was, but still kind of up there. So just be aware of that. Um, Don't forget the yeah, thermal space if you're going to build your own. Just familiarize yourself with the uh, components, what they do, what's important, what you need, you know, that sort of thing. And yeah. look up some videos of people building them. That'll help. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people who, like, make their career from explaining how best to do this sort of thing. So just... Uh... Go shopping on YouTube a little bit, or browsing, rather. Um, There's, we're... like, uh, websites where you can, like, it'll catalog all the parts, and you make a list, and it'll tell you, like, everything's compatible with every other part in your list. Yeah. Those are really helpful. Uh, wait, you haven't heard Alec Baldwin shot and killed a woman on set? No, no, I've heard of it. I was just confused about the whole... Something about... Who the, the she was the wife of or whatever. I don't know anything about that. I just know that he shot the DP. Well, and the director, uh, but the director's alive as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Greetings, EFAP. Hope all is well. Do videos you cover have a length limit? Channel called Geekvolution has long videos on Iron Man 3 and Winter Soldier. Love to hear your comments. Hi, Rex. Hello. Uh, we probably do have a length limit. I'm not sure what it is, especially if it's a video... Say the video was like three hours long, but it made loads of really bad points and supremely missed, like, understood some stuff. We would tr maybe try and find a way of doing it, but yeah, I'd say we definitely don't want things to go over, like, over an hour long video would be preferable. That's really, like, hitting the cap, because even... We did, what was that, a 20-minute video today, and it took, like, five or six hours? It took a while. Hmm. Doesn't YouTube have a 10 hour hard limit? Like you 11 upload? hours and 45 minutes is the stream limit. Oh, I think no longer. Video length, yeah, you can go as long longer. as. Like. I think video is 10 hours, I think. Is it? Mm. I thought videos can be way longer than that. Like, uh, maybe. Just type Wait, in longest on, video on YouTube, and I'm pretty sure you can find, like, well, crazy no, long shit. Well, no, you're right, actually, because I've got a playlist. Oh, not well, 11 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds is the playlist I have open of relaxing Nintendo music. <laughs> so maybe there's 12 hours. Relaxing Nintendo music. Yes! Very to relaxing. jump slash grow big to. Uh, rags, look up Pieces Interactive. Soma writer started working there semi-recently as creative director. Also, hi, Arkansas. Also, hi, Rex. Hi. Um, let's see. Pieces Interactive have released over 10 titles on PC console, blah, 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 blah. Puzzle Geddon, Fret Nice, Leviathan Warships, Robo Surf, Kill to Collect, as well as Work for Hire and Titles on Magicka 2, several DLCs for Magicka. Um, Titan Quest. All right, all right, something. Yeah. At least he's still in the industry, you know, working. So hopefully he gets a writing gig somewhere. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, the girl from OSP goes by Red on the channel has admitted she doesn't understand love well in other videos. Thanos take bad. That may be why, though. She doesn't understand love? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 just, I'm just lost now. Yeah. Well, you know. A serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> well, he said it very well. Maybe she's got some gaps in her knowledge about it. I don't know. Um, 
opinions on the Futurama movie series. Is, um, I haven't liked seen a lot of them. There's four of them, right? I think there are four, yeah. Um, yeah, I like them a lot, from what I remember. I like the first one the most, I think. The, uh, the triumphant return. Bender's Big Score, I think it is, right? Bender's Big Score was, uh, the first one, I think. And then there was the Beast with a Billion Backs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite it. the orgy. Yeah. I'm blanking. Bender's Big Game? That's another one? I think, yeah. Um... Rags, nice to hear you like Price 2017. Do you have thoughts on the Dishonored series, maybe by the same developers? Also, hi, Rags. Uh, hi. Uh, I don't remember much of the first Dishonored. So I didn't play that much, and it was so long ago, but I really, really like Dishonored 2. Arcane, they make some good stuff. Hmm. Hi, Mola. Is a breadcrumb trail throughout the stories surrounding the villain far too tropey, i.e. leaving the viewer to pick up the pieces? Oh, do you mean like when they're not explicit about who the bad guy was, you can only pick it up from details, maybe? Like, all along and stuff? I don't know if that's tropey, is it? I don't know. Or do you mean just the, the villains revealed at the end and you could have picked it up had you looked at different things that were happening throughout or something? Because, yeah, I'm fine with both of those. Though, I don't know that I would describe something as a trope and therefore bad. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess when they say too tropey, do I think it happens too often in this case? No. Have any of y'all read the frictional blog post Amnesia Rebirth five months later and Solus Soma sells one million copies? They address some criticisms, but not fear flashes. I think I read some of it uh, the other day, funnily enough. I was just like, eh. It was on my mind because Mel was playing it. Fear flash meme. I'm, I'm going to be perpetually <laughs> bitter about that shit. <laughs> fear flashes is just a funny way to describe it. I didn't punch you. I stroked you hard. <laughs> I stroked. I gave you all, the old fist stroke and. <laughs> yeah. Rags fridged his snow and Frungus's goo. I didn't know they developed that far already. Uh, any chance for an EFAP con in future? If there's any chance of that happening, it's gonna be once fucking restrictions are lifted, so we'll have to see what's going on. But, um, I'd say maybe. Several five-hour EFAPs. Are Sitch and Adam stealing your long? No, no. Look, we're up to eight hours today. That's yeah, nice. we're doing chungus. it. Uh, if you ever talk about a global language again, look up the Power Language Index. It's a decent list of the top lingua... Francais of the world? Frank is? I don't, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, should I watch Hateful Eight? Rating out of ten. Hmm. I like it. I'd recommend it. Yeah, it's good. Rating out of ten. I don't know, know what I'd rate it, though. Um, hmm. I don't, I don't know, actually. I need to rewatch it. Definitely not my favorite of his, but good. No, it's not my favorite either. I don't think it's anybody's favorite. There's, there's a couple cool of things parts. I didn't like in it, but there's a lot that I do like in it, so... Yeah. Can't quite put a number on it. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch it. I really liked Kurt Russell in that movie. He was great. Yeah. He was awesome, yeah. Um, I want Rags's Capri cum. Mm. Capri cum, oh my goodness. Mm. Rags, fuck, Mary kill, T1 Arnold, T2 Arnold, and T3 Arnold. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just go down the... I, I don't know. I don't know. You'll marry T2 T Arnold. Because... Yeah, he's probably great. marry T2 Arnold, fuck T1 Arnold, and then kill T3 I'll Arnold. I'll fuck T3 Arnold, because he's actually a good one. T1 Arnold might kill you during it, so just kill him. Well, I oh, guess yeah, we that's... presume that that's not what's going to happen, right? Is that what we're presuming? <laughs> Maybe that's what the <laughs> T1 not, I guess if we're not, the then we'll flip it around, you know? yeah. Maybe that's my mistake. Yeah, I'll just go with it via the movies they're a part of. There you go. In that case, actually, yeah, kill T3, fuck it. But anyway, so... <laughs> uh, fuck where I kill Hitler, Noriega, and Pol Pot. Hi, Rags and Friggy. Gib, Figgy Gib? I don't know, okay. 
Um, I, I, I feel like that one answers itself, you know? Everyone, everyone understands exactly which you choose for those three. Easy, 100%. Everyone knows. Everyone chooses the same thing. Mm -hmm. Next super chat. Mentioned a long <laughs> time ago, but still think you should do a year-end episode called The Fappies. Would love your version of the Oscars <laughs> and the Razzies for best and worst <laughs> movie actors. The Fappies? Yeah, we've, we've I like talked about it before uh, as a potential. The thing is... <sighs> Like, I don't know that we, we see enough brand new movies to be able to make it, like, a meaningful competition. Because if we see, mm. let's say, ten new ones per year and a couple of random older ones and then a few maybe indie or foreign and stuff, and it's just, like, it's going to be so limited by our perception that maybe instead we could just copy whatever the nominations from the Oscars are that year and then do our own results. Yeah, it's possible. And then throw in a couple of funny categories. I don't know. Anything would be better than the Oscars. Yeah. If you don't know what's happening, that is the biggest compliment you can give, because that means you aren't questioning what's happening. Black Widow director. Whoa, what? If you don't know what's happening, that's the biggest compliment you can give, because that means you aren't questioning what's happening. What? That's not a quote, is it? I, I I can't know for sure, <laughs> like but they, that's what they've said. I'll uh, I'll paste it in chat so you can Google it as a statement if you want to see if you can find anything. But that's uh, pretty dumb. So what I learned today is that everyone who died at the end of Man of Steel got put into separate fridges. Hashtag release the fridge cut. No, it was just one big fridge. They all got shoved into it. Release the fridge cut. <laughs> um, has Rag seen Rahul Kohli's Joker impression? Also, be hugs. Be hugs. Um, I'm assuming you haven't. Be it was on Twitter. It was pretty neat. You just did the, some lines from the Dark Knight. He's a he's a fun dude on Twitter. I I it's just funny at this point because he's he's so interactive with everything that like everyone just wants him to play everything. He actually um got really pissed off at one point because. Uh, every time, like, a, I guess, a person of color role came up, it would be like, everyone would be adding that he should play them, and at one point he got mad and was like, can you stop doing that? Loads of people are able to play these roles. Right. And, uh, mm. it was super awkward as a tweet, and he was very angry, because, uh, it would be like, someone is already playing it, and then they'd be like, you should play it, and he's like, no, they're fine, they, they're a good actor. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Um, random question. Do you think the CIS would have a good chance of fighting against the Flood since they use a droid army? We actually, uh, that came yeah, up, didn't we? Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah. yeah. I think the answer is it yeah, they probably would. Even taking into account the, uh, the, the, the AI infection thing. Mm -hmm. Logic plague, I think. Uh, hello, Rags. Care for a howling match? Winner doesn't get put in the fridge. No, why would I play that? I don't know, to see who's got the coolest howl. Well, I guess Rags feels like he wins by default, which is fine. I do win by default. How dare you? Um, where are you on watching Batwoman? Also, hi Mola. We've completed season two. I believe there is soon to be a third episode of season three out, so we're going to have to start setting up to record them again as well. So, oh <laughs> but yes, boy. we complete season two. So you'll you'll all see eventually. You'll all see. Uh, Dune was a two and a half hour waste of time. Damn. Wow. Oh boy. Fring Daddy G, what led to the addition of the nose to your PFP? As I recall, it was just a green Spider-Man before, right? Uh, it's not real. I mean, it's not an ad additional nose. It's a um, it's a plague doctor mask. Why did you add the nose? I didn't have the <laughs> nose. Plague Doctor Mars have noses. What are you talking about? Um, beaks. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just a mask, guys. Gosh, calm down. Weirdos. Thanks for giving me the incentive to finally watch the Train to Busan DVD, burning a hole in my cabinet. Also, hi everyone, not named Rags. Oh. Oh hi. Oh hi. Wow. Hey there. 
Um, did did John fridge himself in ANTC? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Climbed in, closed the door. Enough said. Okay, you're not a short man today. I forgive today. Oh my god. So I see the line between short and long man is somewhere between like six and eight hours. Right. Um, me high, me cheek sent me high rags. Oh, I know him. He died uh, recently. Me high cheek sent me high. Oh, did yeah. he? He went to the great cheeks up high. Mm hmm. He got sent to the. Me high got sent to the high cheeks. <laughs> well said. Uh, hi y'all. So, grape soda or juice? Which would you prefer? Uh, uh, depends on the juice. I'm not too fond of grape soda or orange soda. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with juice, because it could be a yummy juice. It could be like a pomegranate juice, you know, something like that. As long as it's not Sunny D. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um... I went to toilet when they were setting up the third act in the Venom sequel. I came back shortly after and the movie was almost over. Bad pacing. Well, pacing's complex. Like, the idea that there's a short third act, I'd be like, I don't know that that's bad on its own. But uh, maybe, maybe. I, you know, I haven't seen it. Um, Red is asexual. Makes sense she doesn't get love. Oh, I, I got no clue. Uh, completely out of the loop on that one. About that. I don't I don't care. Uh, did Hawkeye help Black Widow blow up Dracov's daughter? Yes. But I don't know that he knew that was happening. Because in the scene, if you look at it, he's like, are we good to go? And then she's like, yes. Like, like, like sort of like, hopefully he doesn't know that I'm using a, the daughter to nail this. But I don't know. Um, fuck, marry, kill, fuck, marry, kill, high rags, or fringy's goo. I guess I'll marry High Rags. Uh, <laughs> fuck Fringy's goo and kill. Fuck marry kills. So you don't have to answer these anymore. <laughs> <How about that? laughs> Fine. Fuck marry kill. Mother Teresa, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Anne Frank. I, uh, you guys alright if oh I skip that God. one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we well, we're fucked. Wait, what? Too spicy. All right. Yeah. If we we can skip it if you. Uh, yeah. We can skip it if you want. I'll just say they. I'm sure they know the answer. Easy to figure out again. Uh, yes, the Black Widow director said that in Assembled on Disney+. Plus. Ah. Wait, what's Assembled? Uh, it's like they're behind the scenes, like, they do an episode where it's like, Hey, we here's how we made this. So they've done it for, like, all the shows and Black Widow. <laughs> it's a pretty she great must quote. Have said that in an interview. For, that is... Uh, I... If you don't know what's happening, that's... That's just weird. Surely you'd love it if people know exactly what's happening. It means you've communicated it very well. Well, I would have thought. I don't get that. Springy's wrong. He can't know 2001 until he sees it at least three times. Hmm. Right. You can see it three times, Ring. I'll I'll be watching it for sure. Yeah. Uh, for the fappies, instead of movies, movie critics. We could do that. I still feel like we have a, only a small portion of what's happening on YouTube for review-style content, you know? We only cover, like, 20, 30 people, probably, per year. I don't know. So, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, fuck, Mary kill the Flood, the Reaper virus, and the T-Virus. Why would why would the choices matter at that point? <laughs> They're all gonna fucking yeah. annihilate you. <laughs> what is the Reaper virus? Uh, is it the uh, indoctrination thing? I'm not sure. What's that called? Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what the Reaper virus is. It's like when they indoctrinate you and you go all floompy. Oh no. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I. Was th but that's not is that a virus or is it this like a weird mind control thing? I don't know. I'm not They're sure how it'd be qualified. It's mind control, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, yeah, they yeah, all suck. Just, they all suck. Yeah. With saying they're all bad. 
I don't know what Reaper virus is, but it sounds bad. Two it also them, has the word virus. In it, so. Two of them take over you, and then the third one just turns you into one of a bazillion different things, depending on which law you're going with, so... Yeah, maybe the T-Virus will turn me into Alice. A oh super-powered Alice. Yeah. I could get, yeah, the T-Virus could give me superpowers. It could also turn you into a hideous creature that, like, is just it, yeah. de demanding death, it'll, I don't know. Well, it'll probably give me superpowers. Alright. We'll let you have it. Um. Boop. Where are we? Uh, you put on some music to set the mood, but all you have are video game soundtracks. Which do you choose? Oh. Music um, to set the mood? Uh, wait, sorry. Probably. Music to set the mood? Um. Stellaris? Oh, hmm. Stellaris is incredible. I, uh, I well, adore is that, the soundtrack. Stellaris. What mood am I going for? Yeah, it depends. If I'm going for an epic mood, I might want something else, you know? Oh, I thought you meant fucking. Oh. In that case, um, I don't know what video game soundtrack hmm. I'm going with. Something non-intrusive, uh, I guess. You know what? I don't know. Um, L.A. Noir? You got a lot of jazz in there? Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Um, EFAP 166 Plinkett's Prequels Review. Do it. Uh, we're at 150 something right now, right? We're almost on 60. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, just, I, I don't know. No promises. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I think we will we'll get around to them eventually. They're always there for us. Is Alien 3 intro fridging? I don't know that their death's motivated to do anything, and if that's what is required, for, for, other than she's just fucking sad that it happens, you know? I think the film runs... Like, her goals run the same whether or not they were alive. Because nobody on the island or planet killed her, uh, killed them, necessarily. It was just a bad crash. Um, I'll stop now. Hi, Rags. Hello. Overly sarcastic made assertions that gun control is good and guns are bad in their history of the Wild West. Their African history video is very one-sided, but to be honest, colonization did a lot of negatives. When someone says that like, guns are just universally bad, I do get pretty tired. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> How very juvenile of you. Um... She, Yelena, knows how to function in the things she has been trained in, but she has no clue how to live as a human. And that's from Florence Pugh, apparently. No clue? Didn't come across that way. She didn't- yeah, that's a problem. If that was true, that would be more interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah... But... You say that, but... You say it, but it's not fucking true, is it? Um, and that is oh, the last it? Super Chat for today. Oh, boy! Can, uh, can you, you believe did it. it? I know. But uh, before we do any kind of heading out, John, would you like to tell everybody oh. what you're up to these days? Why they should uh, check you out? Sure. So, if you don't know, I, I make a show called RB and the Chief about two action figures who come to life, play video games. The last one I made was making fun of E3 and how cringe it is. So, uh, if you want to <laughs> yep. look at my fucking stupid content, you can go to John Graham on YouTube. And uh, I just want to say the, the I remember the last time you had me on, which I really appreciated. And we talked about my show at great length. Um, I realized I may have like bored the piss out of some people <laughs> just because like talking about myself the whole thing. And I, I'm very grateful for everybody's patience during that. I hope not everyone was was too bored. It's like one of my favorite but, episodes, uh, dude. I, that loses yeah, it's oh, one thank of my you. favorite episodes. <laughs> the, but definitely I, in the top hundred. <laughs> I greatly appreciate you guys having me on again, just to like go over uh, a video this time. It was really fun. Oh and, yeah, you uh, bet. It's always fun. Yeah, I love talking to you about cool. writing. It's uh, you, you you had influence on myself and Fringy about writing when we were younger lads. It was kind of neat. Yeah, <laughs> it was really cool to like take the piss out of a uh, a video this time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, especially one that's <laughs> like, just was... all about writing rules that don't work. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah. This is a great subject for me to jump in on. It's an entertaining topic for me, for sure. 
Yeah, man. And um, for those interested, the link is in chat and in the description, and uh, you'll see more of John, hopefully, as time goes on. Uh, we'll be booking you back mm -hmm. in if they make a Cruella 2. We'll be doing the... We'll be doing yes. the original sequel, the 90s sequel, and the sequel to Cruella all in a row. Oh, brilliant. Round Epic. two, everyone. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, a couple more have come in, so I'll read these just quick. Uh, did you watch Legion yet? No. I have not no. seen Legion. No. Uh, just as the Founding Fathers intended. A quote from Gearhead. The... Wait, Gearhead's uh, Rick and Morty, right? Or am I making that up? Yes, he is. That's right. Right, yeah. Uh, did you see the Robin Williams biopic test footage that came out a few days ago? thought it was lovely, honestly. No, I, have, I haven't seen anything to do with that. But, um, is it biopic or biopic? I don't know. Fair enough. Please, biopic. I have no idea. I know that I switch between them because I've never known which one it's supposed to be. Um... But at the same time, yeah, uh, that's something you're going to want to take great care with, a, uh, a Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's the last one for now. So what I'll say is, EFAB yeah. is we so Assemble. we're on we're on Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Um, I'm actually thinking I think we're going to try and get Squid Game finished for you and you and Matt all rags, but I yeah. think Sunday. I think no promises on this. It's going to be Sunday or Monday. That uh, another E Five movies is coming out that isn't Resident Evil. <gasps> oh my God! I, I'm pretty sure I said what it was last time, and now I'm pretending as though I didn't. I think you did. <laughs> Wait, you mean yeah. tomorrow? No, he didn't say it. Don't check. All right. <laughs> well, either way, you got a bonus one coming, right? You crazy E Fappers, and then you got the Friday uh, next Resident Evil, and the next one after that will be on Sunday. It's just. A whole bunch, um, and that's the Resident Evil arc that will complete. We've got an additional one EFAP movie as a guarantee, but you might just have an additional two. So you have lots of EFAP movies to watch in the coming week and a half. It's gonna be it's gonna be something. And then you've also got me and Metal gonna play through the new Dark Pictures game because it's multiplayer is ass. But uh, you know, because obviously we would have had a lot more than just two of us. But this time we're not gonna go through the fucking horrible shit that was last year if you guys remember um i think yeah, last year we had john and luckily the devil, right pretty... some like that um so. luckily the gameplay basically didn't exist so it yeah didn't, it didn't cause it didn't that many issues too much, so yeah um and then on halloween night after the premiere of the final resident evil movie myself fringo and rungo are gonna be playing that alien <laughs> game finally efap halloween gaming movie flumes um, and then of course Wednesday you've got an EFAP covered about Squid Game, and the Saturday you'll have an EFAP about League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a film we watched yesterday, if that's right, I don't even remember anymore. Um, and that'll be homework. You've all got homework to finish the show by Wednesday, but then you've also got to watch League <laughs> of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Saturday. Um, so yeah, there is a shit ton of yeah. things happening. Um, oh boy, it's a busy spoopy ween. It is a busy spoop. Yes, it is. So much homework. No, you. You don't have to watch these things. We will take care of you no matter what in terms of the events of them, but I'd recommend it. Gets you nice context and all. Um, so yeah, that's that. Thank you all for joining us. It's, it's uh, Thank you so much for staying with us for the eight and a half hours, John. I appreciate it. Um, no problem. Happy to do it. Uh, did a certain footwear on Cranium watch the Final Destination movies with you? I have no idea what you're referencing there. Footwear on Cranium? Hmm. Oh, no idea. But uh, yeah, we did watch Final Destination. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, with that, thank you all for watching. I hope you had a good night. Is there anything you guys want to say before we, before we stop? Nah, fucking pooped. pooped. Maybe something on Spooky Ween when you play Doctor Friend. Ooh. Keep an eye out. Okay, goodbye, Stay everybody. Third, Get bridge, man. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, chat. Thank, Thank you, guys. So much for watching. Thanks for donations. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye.